Yeah, I'm out. Um, but yeah, okay, there you go. Hello, Fringold, how you doing? Hi. Uh, like, so yeah, the the thing with the sky bridges was, uh, throughout that part of the gameplay, I was like, there must be, like, some obvious explanation or note or character line that I missed where they explain the fundamentally foundational part of how do you, how do you disconnect the, the longer, well, the, the arm of the crane and land it on two skyscrapers. I'm just curious I'm about curious. that logistically. With, without anyone hearing the, the immense amount of noise that would make, or seeing it moving, or they, anything. They almost imply it's like, oh, you know, post-apocalypse, an accident happened and we're just making use of it. And I'm like, what accident? What did this? Like, what? Yeah. It's like, it's also, that. how, I mean, how far is something like that really going to get you? Like, all the way across town? Like, the way they portray it, or is it just gonna, like, link between two buildings? Well, so that's the so interesting really... part. They spend a shit ton yeah. of time climbing up a skyscraper to cross, and then climb back down to the hospital, and it's like, if you guys had just gone to the hospital, it's been way quicker. Yep. Yeah, actually, actually no. But Timmy couldn't have had a story where they crossed the fucking Lindby bridges across the sky. Well, they say, like, well, we gotta we avoid the WLF. It's like, you can do that. You can avoid anybody, really. Besides, I feel like there's more than one way to get there. She yeah. surrenders herself to them anyway. She's like, hey, I'm Abby, WLF. And it's just like, so if you find any WLF, just be like, yeah, take me to the hospital, need supplies. Because for some reason <laughs> at that point, she believes that she can just walk into the WLF, take supplies and leave. Remember, remember she's like, um, Isaac wants me to do it. And they're like, we just talked to Isaac. And it's like, oh no, my shit lie has already fallen apart. Why, why <laughs> didn't she think of something better than that? Yeah, like, it's like, I, I'm out with Owen or something. He's hurt. I need to get some supplies to help him. Like, that's, yeah. that's all you need. Or maybe yeah, not Owen, like found, he's, he's wanted at that point. But I like, found yeah. Owen. I Mel's need hurt and she's pregnant. <gasps> yeah. Great, great strategy sending a heavily pregnant lady out on, on patrol. Hey, that was her well, decision, her body, her choice. You know, you know why they did that. <laughs> oh they yes, because they wanted their plot point. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the interesting thing. That's probably a combo, I would say. Like, uh, they need Ellie to kill a pregnant lady, but they also wanted to have like the pregnant lady is a medic, is about people's safety more than her own, is on the front lines fighting and battling zombies. Um, what a she's just so respectable and so wonderful and so strong. While I think most of us would be like, what the fuck? Why are we all letting her do this? Like, she needs to be at home. She needs to be looked after. Like, no, like, like, yeah, what if your water when she... break, or what if yeah, you well... have, like, a complication from your fucking pregnancy? It's a yeah, really but... sad state of affairs when The Walking Dead has done the same thing, but, like, it, in a way that makes more sense. <laughs> well, it's just, it's, it feels like the game doesn't, because most people would look at that and be like, wow, that's pretty irresponsible, like, downright. <laughs> um, but the game doesn't seem to even recognize that. <laughs> no, no one says yeah. anything about it. Like, this is a normal thing. It's like, oh, yeah. One it's guy says it. Just because like, you guy have a person it. inside of you, that doesn't mean that you should, like, be stopped from doing what you want to do, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can totally, like, leap from gantry to gantry and, like, pull yourself up over walls and stuff. You and it, run it, from it's not going to be physically and... difficult for you in the slightest. It's not like, you know, we're trying to uh, to rebuild the human race and it's going to be very important to keep pregnant women safe, you know? Just the whole well, you just think that Owen would be like, no, you're not fucking hey, going. he doesn't get a say, okay? Fuck Owen. Who cares what Owen has to say? Is, if he was just like, this is the equivalent of you taking like a newborn and strapping them to your belly and walking out into to fight people with guns mm. and a zombie. And she's like, no, my body, my choice. It's like, um... Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the Mandalorian there for a second. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. IG-11 IG does that, doesn't they? <laughs> so I'm comparisons. programmed to do only one thing, protect this child. <laughs> now I'll strap you to my fucking chest and we're going to walk into the middle of a battlefield. Oh, that... And he doesn't, like, try and protect Baby Yoda until it's too late. Like, you know, he's already being shot at. <laughs> it's fucking bizarre. Yeah, that whole episode is fucking crazy. People think that's good. People like, it ended so well. A perfect ending to a great season. When, when you have him and are, Bad Doe right? just blasting away at this crew of stormtroopers, it's just like, boom, 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 boom. We come across Ted at the end, it's like, I must self-destruct. You're like, wait, we could just shoot them. <laughs> Let's yeah, just shoot they're, them. Yeah. they're really fucking you're, garbage. It's like you're really eager to self destruct these days. <laughs> <laughs> but they killed all the Mandalorians. Like, here's the thing if you like Mandalorians, you should hate this show because it turns them into a bunch of whimpering morons. What if, like, yeah. 
What if they all backed up? When when IG Level walks out there and prepares his self-destruct, they're like, it's an IG unit. Move the fuck back. Yeah, we know what yeah. these things do. Also, this is the one who killed like thirty hundred thousand <laughs> dudes effortlessly. We should we should I just don't know why they didn't immediately open fire. I was like, what are y'all doing? Do you, are you trying to take it prisoner? I just hope season two is good. Alright? That's what I hope. Even though we got so many concerns because they're they they're comfortable now, they're probably gonna bring in so many OT references, you'll make your head spin. This is what happens when your expectations are suitably managed. It's like when you come from the, the sequel trilogy to this, like absolute garbage to something which is somewhat tolerable, you're like, wow, it's amazing! <laughs> I think so. I, it's not as a... How do I put this? It's not as, like, offensive? It's not as... Like, oh, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. A lot of my oh, intro my... is, here's why people probably like this, and I go into the sequels and the prequels and... It's like a... It, yeah, it's like a fan movie that's been made by someone who's... Yeah. Like semi talented. <laughs> like that's that's the best I can say. So anyway, we're here to talk about the last of us too. <laughs> Again. Yay. Yay. Oh, yeah. There's there's a certain video that um that that I was told the title of and I was like, really though? Oh <laughs> and uh the, the the it's funny because the title uh the top comment he's pinned is you should change the title and he's just said nah. I was like, okay. Uh, uh, not the wisest way to start your argument with you guys are dumb. It's like, okay, this is gonna put everybody on a on a you know wonky thing. But either way, uh, this is EFAP ninety eight. We're getting very close to that number one hundred, and uh, no new blood this time around, but a mix of all kinds of blood. Look, look at the look at the blood on screen. All different colors. It's wonderful. Drunk people, doggos. Witch doctor? No, what's it called again? Plague doctors. <laughs> Plague doctors. <laughs> um, oh, we even got a replicant. Like, how cool is that? And and then a meme, a chungus punching. <laughs> 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 oh, that part of the game was so good. <laughs> I love the Dude, idea. Maybe the that greatest was a, takedown ever. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a reward for playing through the fucking garbage. You're like, oh wow, thank you. <laughs> Dude, Mike Tyson checks his closet and under his bed every night to make sure that fat Geralt isn't hiding under there. He is Everybody terrified wants of DLC punch. of fat Geralt. Everyone wants it. Even well, those who hate fat know, Geralt want fat Geralt DLC. His life went, you know, like what was fat Geralt doing the day before Ellie rocked up? Dude, I need to see. Games? I need to see him in a hospital room crying over his dad having been killed by Abby. <laughs> <laughs> After his dad <laughs> saved an elephant, it's it's really you know, it's, and it's it just I think it comments on the cycles of violence. What do you think, Fringy? I I feel like that's what it's doing, you know. Oh, what the cycle? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That alone is reason to say this game is a ten out of ten masterpiece, best yeah, game I mean, ever. It, it took it's yeah, because of the risk. Let's not talk about whether or not the risk actually paid off. They took a risk, so it's good. This is you watch the new Star Wars films, the guy shitting in a room for ten hours, you're like, oh my gosh, so risky and bold. <laughs> 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 if it, and it's like, well, it's not very well executed though, is it? It's like, I don't know, I I think so. It's pretty risky. Somebody in uh chat said Crash 4 hype. I agree. I just watched the new trailer. That game looks really good. I'm actually really surprised and happy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Gonna have good things, hopefully. Fucking <laughs> nerd. Play I, games like I, Last of Us 2. What are you doing? Narrative well, focused, I, interesting I, games, not your kiddie yeah. games. We we've uh we talked about this, right? Like um we uh <laughs> we've watched a lot of reviews for The Last of Us 2. It's um, been painful. It's yeah, it's been tough to get through. And one of the, the things you've noticed is a lot of people who say that they're naughty dog fans. By what they say, it's pretty clear that they're only talking about post Uncharted two. The, I think As they in, would like, be like they don't even they don't even know they make anything outside of Uncharted. Last yeah, of Us. they're like those are their it, games. It, it feels it feels like because they're like oh you know Naughty Dog's games are typically you know pretty railroading and restrictive. It's like dude, Jack two and three are open world games. <laughs> like what are you talking about? It's funny it, though because most it, people it, won't even know what you're talking about. It's like Jack what? Well. Yeah, because it'd be like, what? What's Jack? What? What? You, and if and they probably don't even know they made Crash as well. And it's like, it it feels like Naughty Dog, and I don't really want Naughty Dog to make Jack Four anymore. <laughs> I don't really want them to. Jack Four. 
What's that? Could you imagine Jack Four under Neil Druckmann? Well, it'd be a subversive. <laughs> like, it'd be subversive. You know. yeah, it's gonna, it'll it'll comment on the cycles <sighs> of peace. You know, of uh, the cycles of Dark Jack. You know, Dark Jack, maybe a little too dark. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It just opens <laughs> with like a domestic Edgy abuse away. situation. He's at home and he's just throwing bottles of alcohol at his wife. And you're or like, maybe oh, it'll no. be about um, like maybe Daxter will be abducted by like um, super hardcore like I don't know, omnivore supremacists. <laughs> like you know, a gay hating story. Christian cult. Well, I feel what an artsal hating cults, you know. <laughs> yeah, got to go allegorize save, it. Save Jack. And uh, you're gonna, we're gonna have that scene where he's forced to kill someone, and he like mm -hmm. goes onto his knees, crying with blood all over him, and the game. Well, no, because away. because this is the thing, right? Jack is like a cool franchise that actually has some pretty good writing, and they've already addressed the whole thing of Jack killing a lot of people, and they just kind of like hand wave it away. He's just like, yeah, I kill a lot of people, you know. You get used to it. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good series. Like it's actually well written, but it feels like. It feels like I don't think Naughty Dog are gonna make those types of games anymore. Like also, it, it seems like blah, you mean yeah. fun, lighthearted games. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like? You think? Yeah, it's but it's the packaging though. I think with a lot of things, people don't even you know like we talk about a lot of classic Simpsons, how well written it is. I think most people yeah. be like, "Well, it's Simpsons." You know. So. Well, I think I think that's absolutely right because I've I've said this a lot of times, but uh those PlayStation 2 platformers, uh Jack, Ratchet, and um Sly Cooper, they're all really well written games, like surprisingly well written. I think uh if people replayed them they'd be like, Wow, this is pretty sharp. And it, it feels it wouldn't like be looked that way because they're not they're not a narrative no, because serious well, drama. It, it's a it's funny, right? Because they're games that actually have pretty big narrative components but they're also gamey games where once you play the game like it lets you play the game completely you know until the next cutscene basically as opposed to interrupting it constantly and forcing you to play it one way you mean you don't like walking simulators well it's not even well i mean i don't <laughs> yeah. but, it, but like imagine watching a movie in the like like end game he goes i am iron and he pauses and it has a square on screen you pick up your controller and it's square and then he clicks and you're just like why why did why just do it why am i here and they they simultaneously are like oh well you know it's it's supposed to make you at odds with the character like you don't even want to be here it's supposed to make you feel as though and i'm just sitting there like it's not why i don't need to like want to do a different action and then be forced to do another action to experience like this brand new modern look at how video games make. I'm just like, you're just using that as an excuse for your shitty railroaded game. Like, you, we all know this. Every time there's a cutscene with a fucking QTE, as as people who've played a shit ton of games, you're just sitting there like, oh god, they want to make me feel like I'm involved. I get it. Yes, I'm playing too. Look at me. Yeah, I'm here. pressing the it's button. It's a game. I understand. This is a video game, what we're doing. And right then they here. kill me because I didn't press square fast enough, and I'm like, okay. oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, no, I get to see Abby die. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's just the worst thing ever. Can't believe you've done this. Very few players did not take advantage of that. I think I've seen every single possible death animation for her. It was great. One where Ellie shoots her in the face after knocking her down in the theater. It's just like, yep, yeah, I'm on board with that one. <laughs> just get that split <laughs> second just, just end the game there. <laughs> the game is here. Oh, Oh, man, so you just get a split second shot of her uh, face just getting obliterated by that shotgun. People, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. People, one of the first things I did when I played as it was to see if I could kill myself off the cliff, and I've realized by watching other stuff that that's something people have been doing because they hate it. I was like, oh, I was just yeah. testing mechanics. I was just curious if they'd let me go off the edge. Because a lot of games, especially games like that, will be like, nope, you're not allowed to kill yourself. No, that's you naughty. And you're like, eh. Yeah, it's like we couldn't be bothered animating that, so yeah. Well, it's interesting because um I think that I think the most telling example of uh the game forcing you one direction is if you don't beat up Nora, the game will automatically do it anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter for Which how is long totally you at it. odds with the idea that it's forcing you to, you know, come to terms with actions you don't want to commit. It's like if I just let the controller stay down, I still win, so Gameplay Win, you know, progress. And when Abby's getting uh, attacked by a runner just before Joel saves her, right? Um, I actually was not pressing square at all, and she still survived. So what, what's, 
like it's easy just on make movies really interactive it feels that way doesn't it like it feels like you don't want me here along for this experience doing anything so just just play it for me you know mm -hmm. yeah i actually do think it would have uh, been able to function better without these arbitrary moments where it's like hey 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 press the button well like, right, the yeah. interesting thing is a lot of reviews say that it like takes it like as though it is a good example of what you're meant to do as a video game in terms of trying to tell a story and that really frustrates me well you're like no don't advocate for this no stop yeah. don't advocate for things being more like movies where i have no agency well, it's more like the idea of what is it about the last of us 2 that it benefits from being a video game because the game doesn't make me feel bad about what's happening so i don't see how it it's you know... <coughs> if it, it disregards your input it well, doesn't make me feel connected to any of the quote-unquote choices being made Mm -hmm. the, the fundamental of interaction, like choice, being able to choose to, even choose to not act, just all these different elements, and it's just like, are you really taking advantage of that? It's like, not really. Yeah, well, well the, 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 the example that I've used before is like the, the um, Walking Dead game, the, the Telltale one, where you've got the option at one point, your, your group's starving and you, you happen across like a, a, an abandoned car with some supplies in the back. You can choose to take them um, and help some of your group, or not, and if you don't take them, like your group is got less likely to survive. You, they're all going to hate you for it. Um, you do take them. You can find out later on that the, the person you took them from um, lost one of his one of his family members because of that, because they didn't have enough supplies to survive. It was a choice that you made. You didn't have to do it, but it recontextualizes it because you get to see the well, repercussions of it. The, uh, the interesting one with that is if you do choose not to take it, the group takes it anyway. But I don't actually have a problem with that because I think video game choices that don't necessarily directly impact the plot will still make you, will still say a lot about you, you know, to where like, yeah, it's even. Well, well they, they will then hate you. Well, they won't hate you, but they'll, let, they'll trust you less yeah, and they'll like you less yeah, because exactly. you didn't want to let them take it. Um, I guess what I mean is the whole idea of like, I think the reason why I like choice in video games is not because of the consequences necessarily, but because it can make you think and it can make you wonder if like, huh, I wonder why I thought that that was the right thing to do. You know, yeah, that kind of thing. Why did I make mm. that decision? Well, it's just Last funny because we that. would shit on Telltale a lot of time for choice that isn't like fulfilling enough or deep enough or blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, well, I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than someone going, you have no choice. Isn't this meaningful? I, but feel bad. <laughs> like, feel bad yeah. about the choice that you didn't make. And you're like, okay, and I'll yeah, try. Defense, but Spec Ops: The Line that has that game has decisions, and it doesn't tell you what your options are a lot of the time. So it does actually say a lot about what kind of person you are. I mean, what what keeps getting repeated is by different reviews that we've seen is the whole like, if you finish the game wanting Abby to die, you 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 like failed the game's test. Oh, uh, no, not really. Because <laughs> Abby, no, this is a failure said, of the game. The you know, the game failed to tell an adequate story. Um, I've I've been. It's been interesting because I've actually been replaying through Infamous Two recently. Oh and yes, <laughs> great great game, love it. Um, yep. and while the the karmic choices are, it's it's not like super complex. It's nice because um, at least when I'm playing like Spider Man PS4, I don't have like the option to hurt civilians but in infamous i actually do so i have to be a lot more conscious about not uh hurting anyone when i'm in the middle of like a, of a of like a, a firefight with the mm -hmm. militia yeah yeah basic i i think uh the mora morality systems tend to be wonky but like even morality systems can be cool in mm -hmm. that they are uh at least give you a reason to replay the game twice and play it in a different way, but The Last of Us 2 doesn't really beg to be replayed. Yeah, unfortunately, when you look back on that era, because I think Bioshock can jump in there as well, the whole kill the little yeah. sisters or uh, save them, you, you, I think the the criticism would be like, well, oh, it's a pretty simple system, it's not, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, the criticism would be like, maybe we can move on from here, maybe we can make it more complex, and it's like, as time goes on, we just more things against yeah, stripped away. Yeah, we decided to abandon it entirely. Like, the problem with the system was that, uh, there was too much incentive to play one way because of all the benefits yeah, you get from going full one way or the other. Yeah, that was my. That's always been an issue with Mass Effect. As good as that game yeah. was, the morality system in that was really kind of shitty. Yeah, um, you just need to be full Paragon or Renegade. The Bioshock yeah, you one, one, you get your the you the returns are better with with saving the little sisters about a third of the way through the game. Like as long as you can last that long, then you'll start getting way better shit <laughs> if you do that. And I don't know. I think it's more potentially more interesting. 
to um, have it be that you get better rewards for being, you know, for doing devious shit, like killing. Well, that's, that's generally they the way tell it works, you. Yeah. That's what they say to you at the beginning. They're like, oh yeah, if you if you, you know, True, suck yeah. them dry, then you'll have more Eve uh, to Which spend. Which is why on, I would say you know, it still functions, especially for a first playthrough, for a player to think about. Like, it still yeah, works yeah, in that I end. So. But once you well, know like... the game, you'll be like, nah, I'll save them. I get more shit. Yeah, I think <laughs> I personally prefer if, um, if, an, if an infamous, the powers weren't locked to which karma you were on so you were allowed to be more morally gray and still unlock like the good powers i guess um, um yeah like, you know, unlock a mixture game. of good powers and bad powers that would be cool um actually i was about to dis like yeah that would be cool <laughs> entirely i think i'd be up for that i think games like the witcher 3 maybe do it the best where there's no karma well, system no, no moral system, system at all choices. it's just Here's the story. Here's the characters. Here's the scenario. There, go make your decision. Yeah, do it's like whatever. Yeah, Deus Ex, Witcher Three, just general RPG. Here are your decisions. We're not going to tell you what is good or bad. Yeah, <laughs> you you get to choose. There is going to be consequences either way. Go for yep. it. And Witcher then, Three was really good at that. Like there, there was quite often like not a, a strong indication of which was the morally correct choice and which was the more devious one. Like you, you just were presented often with difficult situations. That's why I uh, think yeah, that was... Last of Us could work way better if, like, the game presented all of the repercussions and benefits of pursuing revenge slash justice, and then the game ends with a choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. the game should have ended with a choice, and it's funny because Ghost of Tsushima ends with a choice, and it's a really good choice. It's, it's like, basically tethered to exactly what the plot of the game is about. It's pretty good. Well, technically, the first game ends with a choice that's similar to Spec Ops The Line. If you just shoot the doctor in the foot, he goes unconscious and it doesn't count as a kill. So it just decanonizes the second game. It is like, oh shit, my foot! And it, the pain is just so much that he just falls no, unconscious. Man, he's, oh he's, no, he's he could have dead. killed me, but he didn't. What a good person. In his head, he's yeah. like, if I, if I've been shot in the foot, that's enough to kill a person, right? I'll play dead. Eh. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Just leave the other two doctors alive. Is like Jerry, you okay? We'll, we'll we'll patch you up, buddy, and you can you, you'll be saving zebras again. I like, how, uh, I like how in the first game the doctor looks pretty disheveled and you know like he's got really dark bags under his eyes, but in the new one he's like, well, nah, he's a nice good man. The hospital he's room too. Night saving zebras. The hospital room is yes. all like dank and um, there's, there's bits and bobs that are very indicative of like a run down hospital that they're desperate. In the new game, they're like, it's a pristine hospital. There's such a look at this nice man who's trying to we perform. We care about the medical world. procedure and sterilization and yeah, the and people argue that don't you idiots see? It's it's narrative bias. It's like an unreliable narrator. In the first game, it was Joel. In the second game, it's the truth, or at least the other side of it. And I'm just sitting like, nah, the game just retcon shit. <laughs> don't yeah. lie to me. Yeah. Like, no, it's doesn't, not. It, doesn't it retcon it's the entire weird. race of the doctor that, that's performing the operation? Because well, I'm pretty uh, sure he's black in the first game. He's very dark skinned, but his facial features aren't exactly similar to a black person's. Um, I can try to find the he photo. Looks like he's, he looks like he's um like tired and old and has been through a lot more so than like he looks darker, but he, I'm pretty sure he's a white guy. Yeah, it's it's tough to get the. But different he looks on like that. a really old man. Like that's kind of the thing, or at least if not yeah. old, it's, really it's, weathered. The the well, debate is still raging is about... on that one as to whether he's well, yeah, black. C the fact you... of the matter is that we're trying to discover what they have and haven't retconned from the first yeah. game, just to be sure. Well, I can well, give you an you... example of a retcon, which um, I think so I can't. I think South Baldwin and I have talked about this one, but um, in the first game, you find oh, yeah. the recording that um, Marlene says that she's grappling with the decision as, as to whether or not to kill Ellie, and she's like, "I think I'm going to do it." Like it, the recording ends with her basically committing. The cutscene we see where she finds out this is the case, she approves of it instantly. Yeah. So that recording is now like. Well, not instantly, but she she approves well, not, of it by the. I just mean within that conversation, like that same conversation, yeah. it gets approved. So it's like, when did you hit that recording, and what that doesn't even make sense anymore. Do you want to um, pull up the thing that I sent Muller and have chat debate? Chat debate whether this guy is black or white. Well, I mean, this is this is why the debate's raging on. Isn't Race it? debate on E. Fap. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they've got him smiling in the in the revised version. <laughs> well, I think it's clear that um, like we all understand that the Last of Us Two wasn't in mind whatsoever when they completed the Last of Us One. No. 
Yeah, which is funny because one of the reviews we watched said, "Oh, this is a part two. It's a it is a part two, not a sequel. It's it needs to exist, you know." Ugh. It's like, dude, it was not like it was clearly not even conceived when they made the first game. <laughs> this yeah. game as a whole doesn't need to exist. It doesn't <laughs> add anything valuable to the story, and it it undermines. Oh, so if much. anything, it undermines it and detracts from it. By the way, people say that it, he only looks this way because of the lighting in the room. You can see a dude in the background who's clearly white. <laughs> yeah, it's... I'm pretty sure if he was intended to be white, they would make his skin look lighter than this. It is really weird. Because yeah, like... um, I, I think I showed a screenshot, I can't remember if it was Rags or any of you guys, but where I, um, I shot my gun in the room, and you screenshot him at that point, and he looks pretty white, but I don't know if it's from the glare of the gun fire, or if it, because his model is white, I don't actually know. It's like the the black and blue or white and gold dress again. <laughs> they just look, tot <laughs> look, at they just look totally different. Oh, of course. These two aren't the same person. We know that much. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, right, if, if someone had been asked to come up with the concept of a sequel to this game, this feels like the kind of efforts of like a fan fiction writer who's like 16 years old. It's like, oh, how can we tie it together? <laughs> oh, the daughter of like the doctor from the first one, she wants to kill the person who killed him. Yay. And, yeah, and the game thinks it's smart for that. But it's like, the game, we've killed so many NPCs. What do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> this is this is a really tenuous link in the first place. Not only have we killed a lot of NPCs, but the game is now going to make us kill a bunch more just unskeptically. <laughs> Well, it, and it, Abby it, as well. It, it no, really, they say their names when they die. It, it feels oh, like yeah. the game is driving through a whole city of people while being like driving people, uh, like driving into people is so wrong. And you're like, uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> you shouldn't do it, right? And it's like you shouldn't do it. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's like I don't know. This seems awkward to me. Especially with their their efforts to the fucking. I think the explosive arrow really. Puts the argument to the grave. It's like, why do you have this? It's like, because it looks cool when you kill people. Yeah. You're like, right. yeah, like, <laughs> like, I don't know if explosive arrows are something that people would really be worrying about in the post-apocalyptic future that you're presenting us with here. Seems like, I like... feel like those explosives could be put to much better use than sticking them to the ends of arrows. I, was thinking, I think they added it because it's cool to watch a fountain of blood explode out after piles of flesh from an enemy. I think that's why they did it. And honestly, they're so. damn right. It's and, it's cool as fuck. Yes, the, the thing, um, and, and of course, <laughs> that is at odds with the game's thematic goals. And you're like, guys, oh, yeah. you need to be Violence making it cohesive. Bad. Badass. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how this, the the damage physics sometimes just goes batshit crazy. Like I shot someone in the leg with a pistol, and their entire leg just fucking came off. Oh yeah, and I hate like lying that. on the ground <laughs> screaming. I hate that. Like, like, I, I'm no oh, expert, yeah. but I'm pretty sure a, a pistol shouldn't do that to you. Not a nine mil pistol shot. round, no. You tell me that nine. You tell me that uh, nine millimeter shots can't take off a person's leg single handedly. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe a really skinny person too. I'll shoot you with my nine millimeter handgun, and it just blows off their entire head. I'm like, no, this is silly. Well, what do you expect hey, from a developer? Rounds, okay. What do you expect from a developer that's based in California and refers to uh, uh, pistol magazines as clips? I don't like it. Hey, I do that. Oh, do they call them clip? Oh man, I uh, I've Your learned that lesson fully. They're mags, yeah, magazines. A clip is like a World War One type thing that you put in the gun and then clip the thing off, right? It's like basically, bullets yeah. attached to a long strip of metal, basically. No, is that a yeah, like it's not in it. It's not it's a housing, you is it? Read, idiot. No, I don't think. I think a magazine is the one with the housing. So basically, yeah. all modern weapons. Clip is yeah, a Democrat yeah. word for magazine. Yeah, the uh, yeah clips are basically obsolete. I use clips in my guns, but yeah, people that's... think it sounds cool to say. But that's weird that an Australian would get it more accurate than an American. <laughs> like a lot of Americans actually. <laughs> oh. So anyway, I, I figure this, uh, this is, we, we should probably jump in because we got you know so much to cover. So the first video is arguing, I guess, from the title that you're dumb if you think The Last of Us is bad. So, right. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, well, good job. Well, me color me dumb. <laughs> yeah. like, well, this is the thing, it's like, go ahead, uh, provide your counters, I suppose. Um, but it's just funny when you have videos that are like, I'm getting mean comments, it's like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna label it that way, I don't like, what do you... All my videos get lame or mean comments, fucking grow up. Well, yeah, that well, too. Well, I, 
yeah there's that but it's also like i don't think people realize how like cruel they can be without realizing it and then they're like why are people mad at me it's like because you were really mean to people you told us that i was dumb because <laughs> i didn't like a video game yeah you may not have sworn but you said something pretty nasty like yeah like, so, you don't uh, have to try and be mean to say things that people will be like, eh, that's, that's, yeah. that's... Is everyone in? Actually, let me just... I'll pull up the video and... Uh, oh, God. Yeah? Is everyone seeing that? Yeah. No, hold on. I'm am. not on the watch together yet. Hold on. You I don't like, what I do. It looks like a much better game than what we got. <sighs> well, the, the oh, shot is just a shot of Ellie and Joel. You're like, ooh, this looks better. <laughs> Can I, can I, yeah, can I just say that, that part in the trailer where they superimpose Joel's character model over, like, a different character that's actually in that scene in the game to make it seem like he's gonna have a bigger part. Yeah, fuck you, Naughty Dog, for doing that. Like, there's, like, there's hiding stuff, like, plot details in trailers, but then there's, like, just outright lying, saying, oh yeah, Joel is gonna be in this, and it's gonna be a Joel and Ellie adventure. It's even more spooky yeah. than that. Uh, all the reviews that, uh, Fring and I watched that were all embargo-related, so ones that wanted to get shit out but couldn't quite. None of them have any mention of Abby by rule, and all the footage in Seattle of Ellie doesn't have Dina on the horse. It's yeah, she's not so there. It's yeah, that's just how that's is the that conversation. Allowed? It's almost like they yeah. knew no one would care about Dina. <laughs> like, yeah, she's got no one does. Uh... She's such a boring fucking character. <laughs> yeah, if you want to have a conversation about, dare I say it, ethics and game journalism, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. This is flat out false advertising. Is what this is. Because yeah, well, if it... So that trick, because I didn't know about this, I stayed away from uh, the trailers and marketing and stuff. So there's that that shot. There's a there's a trailer. I was kind of shocked to see it, and uh, Fring was like, "Oh yeah, do you not know about this?" So the trailer where they're, they're like around a campfire, Dina and her, and Dina's wearing a bracelet, and then it cuts to um, Ellie wearing it in a fight. The implication being that Dina died, and that that's that's what the game's going to be about. And then you have a shot where Joel is saying, "Do you think you're going to do this alone?" They lead you to believe that Dina uh, is going to die, someone's going to kill her, and then she's going to go on a revenge quest with Joel, which, by the way, sounds like a crowd-pleasing sort of storyline. You'll be like, oh, yeah. Such, such that, a better yeah. game. Yeah. Dina's a terrible character. Joel's a great character. Having Joel and Ellie traveling together. I mean, oh, fuck, new having, having Joel and... Sorry, having uh, Tommy and Ellie traveling together to avenge Joel would have been better than the, what we got. Yeah. Imagine the game was just Joel. <laughs> it wasn't anyone else. He's just running Joel, around. Joel, like, Joel, Joel goes to avenge Joel by killing Joel. He just no, he, dude. He just walks around yeah. with his musings on the world. He's like, hmm, this place is pretty pretty. I mean, imagine like, you know, as much as I would hate for them to kill off Ellie, if it were you playing Joel to avenge Ellie, would be like, oof, like player engagement would be at like. Firing on on all cylinders, basically. Oh yeah, right there. It's like I couldn't protect her, but I'll you know I'll, I'll avenge her. Yeah, that sort you, of thing. Could you imagine would, Joel would, even like forgiving Ellie's killer the way that Ellie forgives Joel's killer? Well, fuck no. Oh. He strangled that bitch. <laughs> the story that's um the story that's you know baited in those trailers gives me the the idea of being like oh shit we're we gonna you know it could be like a journey where Joel sees Ellie slowly like getting stripped away by all this anger and goal to kill while he's an Ubi One is is mid fifties at this point or some shit. If because yeah, she looks quite old. Uh, like like she she looks more like a woman than a teenager in in the trailer I was referencing I with think with she's the bracelet. Be Nineteen. Well, what I'm saying is the trailer made her look like she could be early twenties, mid twenties, and so it's just the implication is that Joel would be much older. She would be relied upon for a lot of uh, things where he might be stumbling and. And, and in yeah. his age, he's he's like maybe we shouldn't, you know, do X, Y, and Z. And then you can you can have all the shit that happened in the previous game come up. She can Ooh, be able, she funny. can reference it as being like you you didn't even tell me what you did. I know she's like I'm not stupid. I know you did something. And he can have guilt about it. you know. You, there's so much to explore. And instead, it's like yeah. what do we get? It's like well, he's he's just dead straight well, away. <laughs> like okay, it's funny because uh, one of the things you notice a lot in the reviews is the implication that having a, a Joel and Ellie adventure would just be the same as though there's no way that the I dynamic that logic, could man. change. Uh, yeah, well, it, there's it, a million things you could do with the characters yeah. and progress them like characters Absolutely. evolve you don't have to evolve them by murdering some of them well back to the future yeah. one two and three are all the same lord of the rings one two and three are all the same it's all the same characters 
all no, they all suck. Stuff. It's, I think we talked about it as well, uh, Fringy, the whole logic of, uh, they did it in the sequel trilogy. It's like, you know, Han, Luke, and Leia's story is over. And it's like, why Why are you saying that? Like, why, they're yeah. old now, so it, they can't be, they can't have a story? It's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, do we really want to, I mean, sh and, and also, like, I don't think, do they not realize, like, the old cool dude is, like, a really cool kind of story thing at this yeah, point? Lots of people yeah. like dude, old God of War 4. Kratos is yeah, fucking I think awesome. a lot of people would be super keen on the idea of having characters who used to be very physically fit and active and young turning into the wise, sagacious um, yeah. types that you know they instruct and they teach and they take all mm -hmm. that experience and channel it into good, we positive, start to think, and productive well, Particularly way. characters that have got a long history. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. by, by definition, that makes them interesting. Whereas if you're trying to bring in these young new characters who, who are just blank slates, essentially, you're never going to form the same attachment to them. You haven't known them as long. And you start uh, to think Logan, of payoffs. Anyone? Where, um... Yeah, well, Logan is obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like Ellie's beating someone for information and, and like he stops her halfway through and he's like, you got, this is... It's like and, we and got then, the information, you can stop beating him. And, and she, well, and yeah. she can look at him like disappointed and angry because she feels like she may have learnt it from him. There's so much you can yeah, do like, with a campaign yeah, like, like that. You're like, what did you learn from me exactly? You know, when I was doing all that stuff, what did you, what did you pull from all that what did that you, I was yeah. doing? It goes to show that you don't have to kill off Joel, even though I am going to argue that there was a way that they could have killed Joel you off killed two hours off in. Sure. Two hours in. Not, not to like uh, an amazing romanticized blaze of glory type death. It could have been brutal and anticlimactic and sad, and it could have kicked off the story. And, it, and then you would be forced to try to sympathize with the person who did it, and it would have worked. And I will go into that later on, I guess. Um, but I will say the direction that they wanted to take, even though I personally would have gone a different direction had I been the writer, I'm not opposed to it inherently. I just think that the execution of it is terrible. Well, one of the ideas I suggested was that um, they they confuse Tommy with Joel. Like Joel, uh, sorry, Tommy takes the rap for Joel and um, they murder him. And then Joel is the one who goes off on a revenge trip, and Ellie's the one who has to try and bring him back again. You can. You can take it in there's, that direction. There's millions. And... This, uh, they're all better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, why Why did you decide to knowingly do the thing that would just upset people? As, like, all the options if, you could have done, as if and you they went think... out of your way. Because their everyone message... needs to be miserable, and you can yeah, need apparently. to come away from That's games the thing. just feeling it's deflated. As if... It's as if they think their message can't be achieved without making the audience miserable. And I just feel like, oh, that's, that seems like a limit on your part, to be honest with you. <laughs> like you're like, no, oh, we can't explore this we topic without ever being sad. We shit on the things sad. you love, and if you it's, don't like it, then that's weird. on you. Yeah, I'd be okay with, just... with doing a crowd-pleasing type story, absolutely. That's the one that I would personally go for if I had total creative freedom. But if I'm having to work under the confines of what the writer wanted, I'm like, okay, I'll try to achieve the same thing that you're going for here, but I'm going to try to achieve it with a better execution. One thing I don't like is the uh, implication in a lot of reviews that it is diametrically opposed. It is either a crowd-pleasing story or a story with merit, you know? Yeah. Like, you see that a lot yeah. in these reviews. Like, oh, you know, they could have done what you wanted. You could, Like, it's the whole Luke flipping around argument, right? It's like, well, I mean, what I yeah, why why can't I have Luke flipping around necessarily? <laughs> you know, well, Luke flips around destroys the at or he drinks green milk and gets all in yeah. his beard. It's like, those there's are the two options, the okay? Oh, well, there's this oh, there's passage from Esquire that says, so of course I don't assume that The Last of Us Part Two will please everyone. It's not built to please you. Good stories never are. Yeah, like, that's, that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of good stories are built to make people happy or just enjoy well, it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> What's the point of telling stories of not to make people pleased for having yeah, yeah. They, they don't necessarily like have stories? to. They, yeah, they don't have to necessarily make you happy, but it's usually a no. good byproduct of a, a quality story. If well, all stories know, just did. made you miserable and sad, then people would stop telling stories and listening to stories. Like, I don't want to feel miserable. I guess the problem that I have is there's almost like this, it's almost like people think that the correct feeling after playing The Last of Us 2 is deflated and just like <laughs> pretty apathetic. Like, and, and I don't know, like, all of my favorite movies, like, including the ones that are sad, uh, do not make me feel deflated and apathetic yeah, they, at the end. I usually yeah. describe my experience as engaged. 
yeah, engaged is is pretty much the the right yeah, way. To yeah. Put it. When I watched Don't Not Given, I didn't get to the end, and I'm like, I'm I'm upset that that happened. I didn't like it. It made me feel uncomfortable. I regret watching it. I'm like, no, it's depressing, in a way. But you know, I I feel there's a lesson learned, and I feel like I can apply this in a way, and it makes sense. And all this sort of stuff is a way to do it. I didn't come away mm-hmm. hating it and hating the people who make it. Like they weren't. I didn't feel like I was getting shat on as a person mm-hmm. for consuming yeah. their content. Well, Same way about like or prisoners or American History X. Those yeah, movies yeah. are like satisfying to watch because like you can you can get invested in the characters even though they're depressing mm-hmm. stories or they're they might be hard to watch at times. They're still they're still satisfying. Yeah, yeah. That's well, the thing of the last. Uh, episode not satisfying to play like everything everything deflates and just falls apart and it's like oh i just played that sure mm-hmm. and, and you know the, a lot of the time when you have a an ending that's so well executed that you would argue you're enjoying it and then you have to have a friend be like this is this is a sad ending by the way and you're like yep because mm-hmm. like, yeah. of just how well executed it was that you were just like that was fucking great and you're like this is this is bad though and you're like yeah, the whole point is that this is like yeah yeah and you're like yeah sad face dude <laughs> this is this is where we're at <laughs> however with this game someone would have to be like well this is the funny it's the reverse with this game people are like no this is a good ending because she didn't kill her and you're like i don't know oh, <laughs> yeah. i don't know i i would have done differently than the character and i think the character would have as well so she would have definitely would have done not different can... it's the yeah ellie yeah. from the first game like yeah there's no way fucking abby would have been walking away from that breathing if there was a time for her to give up i think it should have been that um abby put lev into a boat and then offered uh ellie to come with them and then ellie would have mm. be like fucking hell like this is <sighs> like i was and then she could be like i came here to kill you and Abby could yeah. be like, oh, and you could get them to have a conversation. That would have been so much better yeah. than your stupid Why did you climactic kill Joel? Tell me in the ocean. To well, seriously, like, if, you, if you want to just give the character, the player a choice, like that could be the ending choice. You have the two boats. One of them is she goes to her own boat and then she talks to Abby. And the other is you go to her boat and then Ellie tries to kill Abby. I'm like, that, that could be an interesting choice. Like, and it's like, there, but. That's the trouble that I have with the ending. There, there needs to be some sort of like reconciliation between them. They need to talk about like Joel and everything yeah, that's happening. Yeah, because yeah, there's I mean, there's no indication that like this couldn't just happen again. Like mm-hmm. Abby might go away, like recover from this, and then come after Ellie again when she's ready. The like, cycles of Viola. <laughs> it's, it's never going to end. Well, 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 my, my my interpretation of the ending is that Ellie walks off into the woods and she decides, well. I can't play guitar anymore because of Abby, so I gotta kill Abby again. <laughs> yeah. You could just um, flip the guitar around the other way. Blame the controller just mentioned as well. It's not Joel's death that's the necessarily the the problem. It's the fact that she never went she never she was never punished for her crimes. She never got to. And a lot of people in videos will argue that's ridiculous. Look how much she goes through. And it's like none of it is connected to Joel. Yeah, none, it's none of it is a result of, of Joel. Revenge. It's yeah. all different shit. And you might be like, well, what Ellie does to her at the end? It's like, I don't even know what Ellie's fighting for at that point. <laughs> like, Ellie's she just never... lost her mind. Like, if she Ellie never... was the. Yeah, if Ellie could have killed her when she was still strapped to that post that she was on, but she lets her go so that they can have some, well, like, weird. She could have killed her a lot it's of times. Fight in the ocean. Fight. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's hardly, you can hardly call it punishment for Abby that Ellie killed all of her friends. I'd be like, that's some bullshit morals there. <laughs> it's like, she's, she's suffering as a result. You're like, that. She never acknowledges the pain that she put Tommy and Ellie through. Nope. She never realizes that she basically became Joel for Ellie. Like, she took someone's father away from, from them. It's like, there's no realization that they became the monster that they were fighting. There's no uh, her explaining to Joel why she's doing what she's doing. There's no second thoughts because of the fact that Joel saved her life and is the reason why she's still alive and not having her throat ripped out by... Which, by the uh, way, by, by I think was a big mistake. They shouldn't have had him save her life because it made everything even harder to believe that she would do what yeah. she did. Yeah, yeah. I it's like misfiring at every stage of the story. I would actually argue it may have been better to have repeated what we've seen of Joel before, where you see like she's struggling with a zombie, and she's like, "Help me!" and she sees him, and he's like, "It's too late for her," and like they move away, and then she gets out, she gets to them, she's like, "What the fuck?" and they're like, "Sorry, just you know, like like you can keep it relatively in character, and you can also give her even more reason to be like, this guy is a fucking pure asshole. Like, it's it's not going to surprise me that I'm going to want to fucking kill him. Instead, they're like, he's a pretty good guy. 
<laughs> it's like he constantly that. is victimized because he does nice things in this. Like when he helps, <laughs> when he when he helps Ellie. Like yeah, think about how what that does to the fucking theme. But he helps Abby. Abby ends up brutally killing him. Okay. Uh, he comes to the defense of Ellie and Dina when she gets called a dyke and he gets shat on. Like man, Joel, you're just this game he's just a, he's a doesn't like dog. you. Is, is how it comes across throughout the whole thing when yeah. you look at him. It's a, He's just a being nice and good and dog. wonderful and the game's shitting on him for it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. why do people not like this? Poor Joel. Poor Joel. Is it better? This game, does, this game was not Joel. <laughs> so, this game took a dump on I suppose Joel. we'll get started. Is everyone ready? Yeah. So let's yeah. find out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm ready. Let's, let's learn out. how dumb we are. Yeah. Two 20 minute long videos coming right up. You can do it. So, after a few days, I have finally beaten The Last of Us Part 2. And did I enjoy it? Well, not the whole time. I mean, I should point out that I didn't even really like the first game all that much. Oh. I think that game has a 10 out of 10 story with 6 out of 10 gameplay. Oh, that's actually a pretty fair assessment of the first game, I'd say. 10 out of 10 story. Nah. Didn't go that far. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, like, I'd say it's, it's you know, good. It's better than him saying that he just hated the story and the gameplay. Those are really <laughs> I, bad. I feel like I'm surprised, he's, I'm surprised the same. he didn't really like the first game. He really liked the, an average rating average. of 8 out of 10. Though. Well, like, you damn. can't tell with these people. You never know what they're going to like and not like. You just don't have, you have no idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, a sequel has to justify why it exists. Did this story oh, need then to you be... must have hated it. I don't even know. This don't game does not justify its own existence at all. I'm not even Hell sure conceptually that. what exactly that means. Like, it has to... Add meaningfully, maybe to the content or something. Like I don't know if you, do you do. You, would you guys say you you adopt that same metric? Like a game, uh, like really a game justify itself. Yeah, a sequel has to justify itself. Well, I think it it it, it has to add something. It has to um, feel like it's it's built on the predecessor. I mean, I mean, I would say in the sense of it being a video game, if it's nothing but this is a fun game, it just is. If all it is is a game that carries on the characters or story in some way has a two slapped onto it and it's just fun to play i think a game that's fun to play is justified yeah video games are different to our like because it's not strictly narrative focused the main but, point of a sequel is to expand gameplay and mechanics well like if a star time. wars a sequel to a new hope didn't actually take on anything in terms of characters or world building from the first one and it was a different part of the galaxy and it was a pretty strong film i'd probably be like well i mean it's okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was good. It was well written. It was a well made film. And with a game, it's like, well, was it fun? Like, if mm -hmm. it didn't shit all over everything that came before it, and it was <laughs> a fun game to play, then yeah, I, even if it was mostly removed from it, sure, a fun yeah. game justifies itself with the fact that it's fun. Pretty much like all of the Uncharted games are pretty much standalone stories, and you can just jump into them, and you don't have to necessarily play through the previous one to understand what's going on in the one that you're currently playing. Um, so it's like it's not like there's a continuing through line that's going through all of the games. Um, they're just fun standalone adventures. Well, I was about to say pretty much every sequel is going to stand alone. Like you, pretty much every sequel could technically have not been made, and the other story still lasts. Like even something like Fellowship of the Ring, which is like all one continuous story. Like Fellowship of the Ring is still a great film, and it stands on its own. So like technically, you could say there's no point in having any sequels. But like why? Why do we still watch them? Why do we still play them? It's like it's because they they add to the story, they add to the characters. Like that's that's the point of a sequel, I'd say. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess it would have to qualify as part. adding to the IP in some way, shape, or form. Otherwise, you'd be like, why does it have that name? Yeah, it could have totally different characters in the same universe, and otherwise be totally removed from it. I'd be fine with that for the most part. And on the flip side, they could end up in a different universe, but we keep keep the same characters, right? Like if um, yeah. Universal travel in some way, shape, or form, and it's just like, yeah, you, you know, I think I think the key element is just you gotta have something from that first one, as long as it's something, <laughs> moving it on a little bit. But I don't know, justifying its existence is an interesting concept to me, just in, as a thought in my head, like as if it has to prove that it should have been made to me, while I'd be like, well, I mean, I don't know, did I enjoy well, it consuming didn't it? Decide to be made, so it's already a weird kind of concept for talking about anyway. Mm -hmm continued is the second game really worth it 
And that's what we're going to talk about today. As usual, I'm going to start with non-spoiler stuff and then warn you guys for spoilers later. So let's start with the only non-spoiler aspects, the gameplay. My relationship with the gameplay in The Last of Us 2 is very strange. For the first quarter he of the game... He must be hurting his voice when he does that. You'd think. Uh, he must really be fucking up his throat. Yeah, what, what, what they say is when you, like he has that voice. when you speak that way, it does fuck your throat up, like, consistently, right? Eventually? Is, well, that's the thing. Yeah. Turn it on purpose? Is he, like, specifically oh, yeah, talking act. doing this voice? It's like, it, that would hurt, you'd imagine. Just just do your regular voice, man. There's, there's no problem. Yeah, like, he doesn't seem to be playing a character. Like, it just, he's still acting like a regular person. He's pretty, like, you know, neutral in terms of how he presents himself. Like, just, why would you why do it? this? Because it's not binary. I'm pretty sure, because people are going to start saying, like, he talks like this normally. It's just like, he, he, um, he's like, he cranks the vocal fry when he does his videos. Um, you can even tell between his videos. Sometimes it's heavier, sometimes it's lighter. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Mahler. And you're like, oh, God. It's like the girl from Knives Out, isn't it, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What are you talking about? Why why do that? Why you don't have to. And yeah, so, sometimes like I said he cranks it up. And it's the same with um closer look. Sometimes he cranks up the voice he puts on, sometimes it's lighter. The um there's a weird thing with I guess YouTubers do like to to sometimes put on characters and voices and stuff and it's just different amounts of success with uh, whatever you end up going with. Even Drinker kind of does it, right? Right? No I, no idea what you're talking about, Mauler. <laughs> <laughs> I was not having fun at all. The game did not really challenge me, and most of what you do is walk around in a semi-open area looting cupboards and occasionally sneaking past zombies. Well, only Opening to drawers Seattle and part, unlocking right? safes is yeah. semi-open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But I think he's talking about like uh during that part of the game he was he was bored. Like he's saying at first it wasn't a uh, very engaging oh, game. It doesn't really change much from there, so I'm not sure what's going to yeah. be the, the, you know. The, well, I mean, the, the entire concept of world's exploration in this game is not satisfying in the slightest, because you never really uncover anything particularly interesting. It's just mm -hmm. more ruined buildings and, and kind of empty rooms. You'll find some junk, you'll find some medical supplies. That's it, for the most well, the part. Of, of Seattle Day 1 is definitely the most sandboxy part of the game. Yeah. I recall yeah. that being like the biggest slog game gameplay wise, like feeling, I, I don't know. Um, you've built a massive world uh, for a, for like a, a last of us game for a last of us environment, but I'm not feeling particularly engaged here. You know, it also, not, uh, it also feels like a bait uh, because that's in the earlier parts of the game, which means all the reviews will definitely mention it. And it never turns up again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, mm hmm, gonna put a big old thinking face on that. N not to mention, by the way, that I, I think you even said in my stream, I'm not even a huge fan of it in this kind of game. Like, this kind of game just it kind of annoyed me. I was like, exactly where do you need me to go? Because uh, mm -hmm. the map, I, I just, it's like it's it's faux open world. It's, it's just a series of linear options, even though you could argue that's what open world ultimately is. But uh, especially in this game, there are like seven specific locations that can be explored and they've just maximized this current area in terms of loading like amount of the amount they could and I'm just like you're just kind of pretending to be open world really I think um we need a new term for it you know not non it's it's, it's between two and yeah um I've, I have noticed it's it's all right Evan echoes if I'm assuming he's on push to talk is that how uh, I Sorry if it's echoing. I, I might just need to turn down my headphones a little bit. Nice. Oh. Oh. It does this. It's whenever you're talking at the same time someone else does it, um, it reflects back. I, I, I just assumed it was push to talk or something. Yeah, probably. Enclosed world, pseudo open, loud soup. These are all very good descriptors for what I'm talking about, yes. And if you, if you want to take a game like Bioshock and Bioshock 2, which are fairly linear, but mm -hmm. there is a lot of stuff to explore, and there's a lot of side rooms and side little That's mini businesses. Like Metroidvania, and... almost the fact kinda. that it has. It is kinda, honestly, yeah, because you can go back to places that are frozen yeah. or whatever else and open up new areas. The benefit that I think Bioshock has is that it feels like an actual building, uh, or you know, like Rapture. It, feels like a place. it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. feel like what Seattle does, where it's like, where's the invisible wall? Because I know this isn't a city. Like I can't explore the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So where's the max? Where, where am I not? And you'll find a huge pileup of cars, and you're like, oh, I guess that's there. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and it, and it, and a lot of it is just 
it re it rewards you in a good way for exploring. It really is like, hey, here's some really good stuff. This is uh, you know, here's some cool ammo that you could use on Big Daddies, and here's some upgrades, and here's some stuff. It's funny like, you yeah, say that. It, it yeah, like time, here, cause... yeah, there's nothing like, and you've got your you've got your set um grouping of weapons and stuff that that don't really alter throughout the course of the game. You can't um you can't get new ones in particular. There's not like exciting new armor or anything that you can find so there's no real incentive to do it and well, I, I think i explored like one extra building in seattle day one and then i was like oh fuck this i'm going to my next objective see so i think that's a perfectly reasonable position to take um you can get an extra holster and a shotgun in seattle day one like you can in terms of this game you can make yourself a tad more threatening but like i'm i would play it again if not for the fact that it's a nightmare game i'd like to see how far i can get in the game with basically just the pistol, just to see how much trouble I have. But I have to imagine there's quite a bit of it, but um, especially on like the harder difficulties. It, but it, well, you, it doesn't... You'd probably pick up the shotgun from like an enemy if you didn't pick up the one in the, in the one building in Seattle. Oh, wait, you're saying like... You know the... I guess you might know the answer to this. You know like the holsters and stuff? If you miss them, do you miss them forever or do they show up again? I think that you miss them forever. Hmm. Huh. I don't I like I I mean the thing is that I picked up the holster at the same spot that you did so if uh if there's a different holster somewhere then it probably just like disappears if it detects that you already have one because you know the um the pill upgrade books and stuff I'm assuming if you miss some of them they'll spawn more of them or you can find no, more No that was my assumption not, not if it's like in Last of Us 1 because there's uh there's there's one book that I keep on missing because it's towards the end of the game and it doesn't like um, it doesn't, you know, spawn in a different area when I go into like New Game Plus. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it doesn't change one of the books that I already have into the one that I'm missing. It, it's like, nope, it's always in that one spot. There's a, there's a few you... people in chat saying they do show up again about the holsters. Oh, do they? Okay. Hmm. I'm. That's that's just because I I picked up the holster in that one spot. Yeah, I, I just I figured that's probably how they would do it. It does make it feel a little bit more natural in your playthrough. That it's like, oh, I found it here. It's like, oh, you found it there. Oh, I found it. You know, there's like a cool yeah, back and forth sort of thing. The the main weapons, though, I think usually they're they're found in like a mini cutscene. Like you you recover them from a dead body or something. Weapons are found somewhere where yeah. it's impossible to miss. Yeah, <laughs> most players well, will yeah. be seeing them. Yeah. Well, like when when your pistol disappeared in your last plus one playthrough, Mauler, um, there was a guy that was carrying a pistol. You killed him, and he drops his pistol, and you could pick that up. You know, so yeah. I assume that the same thing would go for this one. But then again, there are certain features from the first game that are missing in this game, such as the ability to swap out a bottle for a brick. So, <laughs> and yet the mechanics have definitively upgraded, according to basically all reviewers, or at least all the. What do we call them? Access reviewers? People who, like, get to have access you to know, the game the ahead IGN of time. Type so basically the people who play the first half hour on minimal difficulty. Yeah, and they're then... like, oh my god, it's so good. Oh, it's so deep. Oh. I mean, oh. I like the fact that you can go prone, that there's tall grass, that you can, like, crawl under cars and certain yeah. objects, but um, that doesn't... That's not a good enough pay, uh, trade off for the fact that combat is absolutely garbage now, both when it comes to guns and hand to hand combat. I think the stealth is a little bit OP. Like, drop into tall grass and you're safe. It's like, damn, that's, uh. Hmm. Did, did any yeah. of you guys notice this as well? You know, some of the sections where you'll, you'll get ambushed or whatever and you've got to get through an area. And they've, they've set the mechanics up so that it, like, it takes ages to force open a door. And the idea being that, like, in the time yep. that you're trying to get this thing open, like, they, they'll be on you, and you, you just can't do it until you've you've kind of killed everyone or snuck your way through it. Well, that's the way they I, I, typically do it in both games, is they have, like, kill arenas, and then the way to yeah. escape the arena will be a door you have to tap triangle on, they'll try and aim to have one NPC near that door-ish, so you have to at least was... kill him or do something with him. <laughs> Well, there was multiple times I was just able to sprint right through and get to the door <laughs> before they could even get to me. And like, even though it takes a while to get it open, it, there was still enough time to squeeze through before they could catch up to me. And I was just like, this is broken mechanics right here. Oh, for sure. The game does not protect itself from people messing around, even on the hardest difficulties. It's like, don't mess around. You're like, I don't know. It seems to work, though. What just annoys me about the uh, the sandbox section in Seattle uh, I'm not going to call it open world, but sandbox works well enough, I guess. 
is like with The Last of Us 1, when you're going around different rooms, exploring, trying to find supplies and everything, it's a small enough area that you're not feeling like you're being taken on too big of a detour from your actual like objective and your destination. But man, with uh, Last of Us 2, you're feeling, well, if it's like the first game, I'm going to want to pick up as many supplies as I can. And I have this massive area to to search through. Not to mention a map that's not exactly like the most fun to keep on checking because I have to go through this like uh, animation where she's pulling out the map and it's not exactly an easy map to read either. <laughs> so it's just... Yeah, I, I didn't find the map too useful at first because I was just like, I'm not exactly... Not only is it not entirely clear exactly where my sort of places that I can go are, but where the limits are even on the map. Because I, I, I didn't realize I could go to... People were saying, like, go to the bank. And I was like, I, didn't, I, I thought I'd hit my limits. I didn't realize there was more to this area. Mm -hmm. Well, did you circle where your home was? Oh, see, that was the issue. And it's yeah. funny because, again, like, you play Metroid and you're just like, oh my god, maps will never be better. And then you play Last of Us 2 and you're like, yep, maps will never How be better. How did they make it worse? <laughs> I thought we learned our lesson 20 fucking years ago. <laughs> it's because hey, they, yep. they want to make it realistic. They're like, it's like a real map. And you're like, yeah... Yeah, but yeah. if it was a real map, then I would understand it. So apparently you can pick up the holster <laughs> later and the shotgun later, but you know what you can't see later if you uh, if you skip over the Seattle sandbox? You don't get to see Ellie singing Take On Me to Dina, which was oh. such a romantic uh. scene with so many feels. And you also don't get to, to pick up the Dr. Uckman card either. So it's all worth it, right? Big losses there, like, yeah. <laughs> of all the all songs you that you could fucking pick as well, take on me. Like, if you wanted a good map, and you want it to be real, then whenever you pull out the map, you give it a second, and then Ellie says, all right, so I'm here. And she points on the map to where you are. Like, she's actually reasonably talking to herself. It's like, okay, you open a map, I'm at this place. Point, there I am. And then she holds it open, and then... It's just there's so many ways to do this that are better, and I don't feel like they just explored any of it. Comes across as a game where they just went with the first idea that they had. Oh, I think the when he decided, I'm going to kill Joel and then have a story that says, hey, revenge, maybe it's not so good. He, everything followed after that. It was like, right, oh, we've, yeah. we've got Everyone our game. Oh, yeah, in the room was like, I, you're Neil? Like, we ain't got to do that if you don't want to. <laughs> it's like, just what I People idea. really like in. our first game. We got a lot of goodwill. Like, yeah, but that's an investment and it's time to cash in. I was oh. like, oh my God, fuck me. Jeez. Pretty much the only thing that I felt uh, like rewarded for exploring the area was when going into the bank and seeing like the, the corpses in the bank vault. And like, that's some interesting lore there. The guys planned a bank robbery on Outbreak Day and just had yeah. really like that was cool lore. But and the rest of the game actually doesn't have like documents and notes and lore. That's nearly as interesting as guys tried to rob a bank on outbreak day and they, they just got stuck in there. Yeah. No, that's just great little bits of, of storytelling that you could work in everywhere. Like when you play something like the Fallout games, you everywhere you go, there's these little, you know, hints about people that have survived the, the war or like what they were doing, the, the days the bombs started dropping, like all these things are just interesting to look at as you pass by. They create a sense of atmosphere and, and a world that's lived in. But here, it's kind of just a blank slate with these occasional bits of, like, you know, tiny little hints of a story. It's just not enough. Like, that's that's the incentive to explore for me, is, like, you know, learning more about this world and, like, finding little clues about things that have gone on before. There's just not enough of it. Honestly, got it's kind not... of bored of reading notes where they were, it, 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 the meme is, like, day one. We, we managed to make it to blah, blah, blah. We have supplies. Everything's going great. Day two, I'm infected. Oh, no. Day three, everyone dies. Oh, man. <laughs> You're like, all right. It's not that these things, like, it doesn't make sense that there's this wide open area to explore and uh, there's so few supplies that are scattered everywhere. It's not that that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make for a very engaging gameplay, you know, at least for me. Yeah, if, there, if there's no reward in terms of like resources, particularly for doing it, because often you have to clear out areas in order to like find the things that are in it, and you end up using just about as much resources as you are able to harvest anyway. Mm -hmm. So there's not that, and there's not really much satisfaction to be had from like a storytelling world building point of view either. Pretty soon you're just like, yeah, I'm just not going to bother exploring. I'm just going to stick to the critical path and get through this as quickly as possible. Well, uh, Fringy and I watched a review that was positive about the game and 
commented on how annoying it is to have to uh, search all the times, all the places. So you could just turn on an accessibility option that highlights everything that's collectible. You could just do that. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yep, yeah, I actually used like... that during my playthrough because I just gave no fucks about the game. <laughs> but this person was like, this game is good. Also, I did this. It's like, you you put the game on autopilot. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like for a review, I you want to sort of play on the default sort of settings for a review because mm -hmm. this is what the developers, with their understanding of how they've made the game, have decided is going to be the the base level that most pe that's made for most people you know yeah. so you want well, to get a grasp on that what what the, what are the, the people who made the game what they think the difficulty is yeah and I th it's a major component of how challenging and enjoyable a game is is like okay what's the difficulty level pitched at you know the, there are games that are just unreasonably difficult and like th that presents a real challenge for you and you can you can talk about that I, conversely, there's plenty of games that are way too easy, and you just breeze right through them. You know, again, that's something that you can feed back in your review. But like, yeah, to intentionally just put it on the easiest possible difficulty so that you don't have to try, it, it undermines the whole point of the game. And then, if you're unable to go through certain combat sections, you can turn on the option to go invisible when you go prone, and you can just crawl through the area, and the enemies won't see you because. You know, or, unlike the first order, which just... doesn't know how how to like, they don't know which way is up. These guys don't know which way is down. So at what point? It's, it's like that Mario thing, you know, where you get the power up where you're invincible if you die too many times. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I guess it's curious if you're making a game that has that is so mature in terms of its content that it's clearly only made for adults, and then they put in accessibility options for like children. In vegetables? Well, I think the accessibility options are like more, you know, if you have a disability, maybe colorblind and stuff. Be. And like, I'm, oh, I'm for cool sure. with that. I'm cool with that, like as as a thing. It's just weird. Well, I would argue it's great. Bodied, like, yeah, it's it's really good. But it's a really awesome feature. But then, yeah. <laughs> like, holy shit, you're you you're just a normal. Uh, this uh, you you're standard in every single way in terms of uh, senses, and you choose to add all these things on. It's like, damn, okay. I don't know. <laughs> like, I would expect most of these things in a Lego video game and not a Last of Us video game, you know? Well, so, the, I mean, we could almost go into the conversation that got brought up with uh, Dark Souls. It's like, should it be, should there be modes and options to allow even the, 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 you know, the worst of players to be able to complete it? And it's like, but the whole point of Dark Souls, the, the well, the, the experience that is Dark Souls is defeating the challenge they're presenting rather than being like, can I skip to the end? It's like, oh, well, I, I don't know what the point is uh, at that point. Yeah, I I mean, if they want to put it in, sure, fine. But it does have the effect of lowering the prestige of beating it. Yeah. I, uh, well, I, I, I would just, that. Isn't it a little bit self-defeating for some games where that's the entire reason the game exists is to defeat that challenge? And then you're like, I'd like to play a version where there's no challenge. You're like, oh. Um... And All right, then, well, then maybe you just should watch a movie. Well, because of course there are some games where it's like, well, I just want to know the story, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who've consumed The Last of Us as a film rather than a game, as in like watching their partner play or watching a friend play, whatever. Like because they're like, I, I can tell the gameplay. I'm not too bothered, but I'd like to you know know the story, and so I think it's way more valid for something like this. But there are some games where I just don't see the point. I just be like, why, why, why are you here if that's it, you literally skip to the end and then well, you put it down. It's like, what was I mean, the point? Mario is a good example. I'm not in it really for the story. So if you don't want to be jumping around, what what's the point? <laughs> you know. Anyway, back Are to we, the uh, yeah. Ready to continue? <laughs> back to the video. Yeah. I mean, in usual fashion, we will be going because there are several things we still haven't addressed, even with the first EF app on this game. So Cosmonaut can provide us the vehicle in which to to tangent. Thank you very much. Yeah. What's funny is that we haven't even really, like, shat on him there. We were just nope. discussing the game. It's not gameplay. The safes are honestly the most irritating things in the game. The combinations are always located in... The most irritating things in the game? I'd say that's probably the dodge right. button. Um, and how are the safes irritating? Like, dogs are pretty irritating. You yeah, explore dog. the world, you mm. find the code by, like, you know, 
doing your exploration thing and then you take it to the safe. Like, well, see, it's not like, like you're going to sit there and try and figure it out or anything. Well, there's well, two other this... things you can do. You could like look it up on, on Google or you could just simply like go through every number until you hear that click. Right, <laughs> there's a lot to say about this. <laughs> First of all, he's I guess he's complaining in a narrative sense. Like, oh, how convenient there's a fucking code next to every single safe. But mechanically, it's, it's relatively satisfying for most people, I'd say. It's like, look around for the clues. It's like, oh, this one says it's this number plus this number. Go find that yeah. number, that number. And you go, oh, okay, cool. Mechanically, I don't really have an issue with that. I kind of wish they were a bit more complicated and harder to find. Um, yeah, but I think be. it's I absolutely ruined. Puzzle. By the clicking thing. I think the clicking thing is way too easy to use. I, it's funny, I need to get the clip, but in my stream, someone says I can do that, and I'm like, nah. Like, I'm, I, I, there's no way that they would let me unlock the safe by using click sounds without it taking fucking ages. Like, that's gonna be the trade off. That's how you do it as a developer. You like, want to encourage you to look around, but if you really or you want that take payoff. The guaranteed slow route. Yeah, which, funnily enough, is kind of. How Dark Souls does it as a core. You can kill loads of trash mobs and get higher levels to take on bosses easier, or you can try and you know go in with uh, low health, low damage, and stuff. It's um, it's, it's something I just think works relatively well uh, balance wise. But no, I, I the first time I tried it, I was like, wait a minute, this is like super easy. And then I just did it for the rest of the game. I didn't even need to find the codes anymore. You know, like I, I just preferred how The Last of Us One did it, where you actually had to have Joel find the code to uh, unlock the safe because at least then it's like well uh no matter how many times you play the game like this version of Joel doesn't necessarily have the same knowledge uh that he had when you like like in your previous playthrough right so he always has to find the code whereas in this game you can just skip straight to either like googling the cheats the the the, the codes online or just hearing the click and I mean, I guess it sort of stands to reason technically that characters that have listen mode abilities could could do this, but um, still a bit of a of a funny mechanic, nonetheless. It's I, weird because in a game like this, yeah, because I just googled Last of Us Two state save code combinations, and here they just they're all just right here. I'm thinking a lot of games randomize it on a playthrough, so the guides are here's how you get the code to put in, not, mm. yo, year well, is the code, just put this number in. The Last of Us 1 accounts for this. Your character cannot open the safe until they have viewed the code. Yeah, that's the better way to do it. And you might be like, well, yeah, but then you can't do it the listening way. And I'm like, I don't think the listening way is a good thing. I think it makes it way too easy. I'm not even sure how I would fix it to maintain it, other than making it a really slow process. But even then, I'm like, ah, I don't know, I don't know. Like, we're not safe crackers. It seems like really... I think it diminishes not, it a little bit. Not to mention that, like, it just it slows down the pace of the game a lot more when you have to input the codes yourself, rather than you find the code. Joel goes up to the the, the safe or whatever, and he you press triangle and he just goes through the animation. It's also, like I, I do actually want to be an advocate for the whole. Um, if you look it up on Google, I do think that's outside of the game's prerogative at that point. Sure. There's a lot of things that can be ruined in a game by looking it up on Google, sort of thing, in terms of like puzzles and stuff. But not the... like you say, like it's, it's easily overcome just by randomizing the code, and it's like okay, oh, well yeah, you could exactly. still use the clicker method. It'll take a while, or but you like, can just yeah, go every hunt for the play code. Through, yeah, every playthrough just randomizes the code. Um, I I think that adds a lot because I I just think that's one of those things that's so obvious in terms of you know people will look it up. There's no, like, even if you look up things like, oh, how many enemies are in this location and stuff like that, you still have to go through the actual doing part of it. Whereas with this, this is this is both the knowledge and the execution right here with just looking up the code. And it's it's it takes so little effort to just say, oh, this, they're all randomized every playthrough, and you well, have to actually do the thing. So this would be another example of a mechanical downgrade, I would argue, from the first game, even though arguably it's more complex... I'd be like, yeah, the, I think you've achieved less by doing more. I, I suppose that's how you put that. It's technically more immersive. It's like, um, imagine if you were playing a video game where to reload um, and still have like the same amount of ammunition, right? So uh, you shoot a, uh, like one bullet out of your gun and then you eject the clip and it's like you, you had 14 bullets left. Oh, yeah. Sorry, not clip, magazine. <laughs> and um, you lose whatever's <laughs> left in it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, what if we made it a, a, like a mini game where you have to basically put each individual bullet in your magazine? It's like, well, that's more realistic, but that makes for a less 
like fun game it slows down the pacing tremendously yeah i feel and like so, if you're doing that then the whole game is probably going to reflect it as in this is well, a very it, grounded game it would have been good to find like that that could be a good upgrade to the weapons is you find more magazines sure so you can do that and it also changes the dynamic and balancing on weapons that are like shotguns that are tube fed or weapons that are magazine fed where if you can individually load rounds into weapons then like well that has some gameplay impact on it you know maybe sure if you have a magazine for a gun being able to pop off 15 rounds before you have to reload or, or at once is like that's a really big deal but if that's the only magazine you have then maybe i would prefer to have a weapon where it holds less per you know internal magazine but i have to load the rounds individually you know that's that would well, be one of those kinds there, of things that you well it's also yeah no and it, it's also like in combat obviously the, the temptation is like you fire off a few rounds you've still got say three quarters in your magazine but if there's a break in the action, you tend to just reload yeah. anyway because you never know when you're going to need a full mag. And you know yeah, you can do it in the context of a normal game because it'll just use up however many bullets are needed to fill it up. But if, you, also... if we have this new system like you're talking about, you'd have to really think carefully like, oh, well, do I want to eject a magazine that's still got half the rounds left in it or do I want to keep them because that's more like, you know, I'll be wasting ammo in that case. There could also no, be guess. like an interesting mechanic to it where you only have one magazine at the beginning of the game and you will have to like in the middle of a gunfight, you have like bullets in your pocket and you will have to manually put uh, bullets in like back in the magazine to yeah. reload it or something like that could be that could add an element of suspense to it where it's like, OK, how much time are you willing to risk staying in cover and just loading bullets into your magazine before you're ready to fire again. It could be an interesting mechanic. I'm just saying, like in a game like this, would we really want to, uh, would, would we be really willing to sacrifice pacing for more realism there? I mean, I think this would be the game where you'd want to do that. Sure. I mean, especially if you have a choice between the two. If the, if, but like before you leave on a mission, if they say, all right, you know, you, you can't go out there with nothing. You know, we've got this and we've got this and they're two different things. Like, do you want this? Do you want this tube fed shotgun or do you want this handgun with one magazine in it or something like that? You know, we can only spare so much for all of our guys. Mm -hmm. you now you get to, you know, which do you feel more comfortable taking out there with you? Um, and that could be an option. It would also encourage you to play at a different time if you wanted to play through again and have the different gun, which would dramatically change how perhaps your combat works mm -hmm. um and the and these concepts can be executed really well um, yeah the i mean the the so general adds to the survival aspect i think <laughs> loading oh, individual bullets but this, this game has a long way to go i'd say if uh if we added that and then oh yeah we wanted the to do least more. of its problem well, i mean yeah the 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 whole inventory management in this game is kind of shitty because you can't tailor your inventory to to you know take the things that are important to you like you've got you've got categories of things and you can only carry a set amount of that and you can't like reweight it in certain ways like maybe i want to carry more medical supplies but i don't care about like cr um, carrying junk that i can use to like upgrade my weapons and so i can tailor my loadout that way it's just like it's all predetermined yeah so there isn't you, really an inventory management aspect to it well, There's you had, I mean, we keep going back to stuff like Resident Evil 4, where you this is your inventory space, and yeah. this is all that you have, and if you find a new thing, and if you're full, you have to swap out an old thing for the new thing, which do you need? If you're doing really well and you never get hurt, do you need as many much medical stuff? No, then you could chuck it for more ammo or something like that. Yeah, the, the, the original Resident Evil even figured this out. Give a person limited inventory space, they can put whatever they want in that space, it's up to them. And it, they can just tailor it based on how they like to play. Great. So, to address, someone in chat said, you're taking it way too far. This wasn't his point. We're not responding to his point. Yeah, I don't give a shit about what Cosmo has to say. <laughs> yeah, we're just going off at a tangent. We're, we're talking about <laughs> video games and mechanics. And um, if you want to see the rest of his video, go watch his video, I guess. Like, if you want to uh, see us talk about... Yeah, um, if you're here for him, not us, then yeah, like you're it's totally the up to you. It's, podcast. But uh, this is this is EFAP, my good man. <laughs> well, it's nice to be able to talk about games. Normally yeah, we, we have... We, this movies, is the thing. So. The tangents should probably be pretty pretty long for this one because we don't... We don't get, we don't often talk about games. Games don't come up as much as movies in, uh, in all EFAP. Yeah. 
There's also um, the fact that like this is the same game where it says, yeah, just stick a rag inside a, a a water bottle and then tape it to the end of a pistol and it works as a silencer. Like, no. Oh, we had a whole <laughs> shiv scissors tangent <laughs> yeah. on our <laughs> the other day. Well, that's, about, that's what I mean, though. With the with the refilling your magazine, I'd be like, we got to fix loads of other stuff at that point. If we want to, if yeah. we want to go grounded and realistic, we have to. Fix yeah, bits a lot of, of stuff. stuff that you'd put in if you really, really cared about depth of mechanics. With this game, just didn't. How about the fact that uh, in order to stop bleeding out from getting hit by an arrow, you pull the arrow out, which is not how that works. I'm gonna do that if you get a puncture wound like that. That's the last thing you want to do. Christ, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, that's, it was only when he got pulled off the rebar at the uh, in, in the first game. He gets impaled on rebar, and it's only when he gets pulled off the rebar where he's like, "Fuck, I'm bleeding out," you know. <laughs> well, think about it. You have um, the climax of this game. A huge element that's important to understanding the stakes is that she was stabbed by that portion of tree, and it's like mm -hmm. you have a sequence where I am shot through the shoulder with an arrow, and it doesn't mean shit. Like, it's so confusing, like, the mechanics fighting yeah. the, the storyline. You, you just make it a balance of, you can choose to pull the arrow out whenever you want, so you have to choose between two states of, do you want to keep the arrow in for now, which will have a negative impact on actions that you take, it will increase the, the, the clambering time, or your climb speed, or your move speed, it, it'll have just a, a passive negative effect if you keep it in. And then afterwards, when it's safe, you can remove it, but it takes extra medical supplies from you in order to get back to your, you know, your normal state. Um, I think that would be really interesting, and you could choose between when you go from one to the other whenever you want, but if you don't have the medical supplies, then you're just going to have to walk around with that arrow sticking in you until you find or craft the material you need to you know, staunch bleeding or make a bandage or something like that. So if you're having a bad playthrough, maybe... Maybe you play with 10 minutes where you've got an arrow sticking in you because you can't pull it out yet. And of course, or just lol, it's gone now. It makes me think about the malaria mechanic from Far Cry 2. It's like when you take mechanics to a certain mm. degree where players are like, nah, I don't like this. No, it's annoying. It's annoying. Like if you had a blood yeah. amount in the game, like however many pints, and once you go below a certain amount from different wounds, you just start to, you get sluggish. And then you fall over, and if it goes sitting below you, you get knocked out for an hour or some shit. You're like, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> like, I, I, I get it, but like, eh. In the same way that a lot of people don't like eating and sleeping mechanics in some games, it's just like, I don't want to, I don't have to eat. Uh. Yeah, um, there's an aspect to, with games where you kind of, you go in and you, you know what you're getting into. Nobody buys, when, when people, to an, there's an element of, um, uh, like when you buy into a survival game and you know it's a survival game, you can expect those elements to be there. You know what you're getting into. Um, yeah. But to have elements like that almost out of place in other games can seem really... People would be far quicker to point those out where they don't feel like they belong. When you buy Daisy or Seven Days to Die or Escape from Tarkov, you can expect certain aspects of it to be there where they belong, but if they were to randomly pop up in like Doom or something, Call of Duty, you'd be like, "What? Why is this here? What? What is this game trying to be?" Some overlap is good between genres. Some, not maybe so much. I guess it, it for me it comes down to like, okay, does it present a challenge that's rewarding to overcome? You know, the yeah. managing this stuff, or does it just become a fucking drag that really kind of annoys me after like you know, the first hour, and it just, this thing that never goes away. Well, yeah, like, yeah, it's, you know, you gotta... your, your enjoyment of games. Like reloading those bullets p personally into the into the magazine, you can have a lot of players being like, this really made me appreciate how important each of my bullets are, and it raised the stakes significantly, while someone else is like, it's boring as fuck. So let me give, give me back my gun. Yeah, and, and sure. a lot of it is execution in terms of, you know, the buttons that you use and how you actually do it, which is, might be an issue on, like, a, like a controller where you have very limited buttons in, like, in DayZ, if you want to reload a magazine, you equip the magazine, you put the amp, you put the magazine in your hands and you hold R if you have bullets to load the bullets in. And it's not a particular, it's not complicated, mm -hmm. fairly simple. Um, but, you know, if you've only got one magazine, but you've got spare bullets, those bullets in the magazine become pretty valuable. I just read James um, Moore's comment as Fallout New Vegan is hard uh, hardcore mode is perfect. It's like, new vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually played the hardcore mode, uh, but I gotta 
going to top up my drinks. I'll be right back. I will say that one of the new mechanics that they introduced in this game for gunfights, I did like, and it was the fact that when you get shot and you get knocked on your ass, um, in the first game, you can't shoot from that position, but in the second game, you can. Yeah. And I kind of liked that aspect. It's, it was like, I can actually defend sense. myself from this position. It's If I got shot and I got knocked on my ass, I'd probably be uh, desperately shooting while I was uh, still lying down on my back. So yeah, it's, I, the, it's I like the kind that. of thing you do see in, like, yeah. I guess, like action movies or whatever. A character gets injured, they get knocked down. One of their enemies is closing in on them. They they draw a pistol or whatever and gun them down mm -hmm. from from that prone position. So yeah, it makes sense. It the game has a real tendency of hitting you just as you're about to pull the trigger. I don't know why, but it's yeah. like just you're you're aiming at someone, and just when you got a good headshot lined up, it'll you'll get hit from yeah. something. Even times where you're like, I'm pretty sure I pulled the trigger. Why are they not dead? Even though I'm on the floor, I'm pretty sure I fired my gun. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I honestly... I would say that if, if the game was more... Like, just have The Last of Us basic combat, like hand-to-hand -hand combat and shooting mechanics, um, then... Allow Last of Us 2's like prone shooting while on your back, that kind of thing. And then I'd say, like, I liked the upgraded melee weapon buffs in this game a lot more, too. Um, and have that in it. And that's basically about as good as combat can get in The Last of Us. Um, but there's too many negative, um, I, I would say, like, uh, downgrades. To the, the the gameplay that it doesn't really um, make it ultimately better than the first game when it comes to that. All right, I then. remember I, one of my fond video game memories was when I was years ago. I was playing Fallout New Vegas on my Xbox because that's what I was New using Vegas. at the time. Playing Fallout Three, really just lost myself in that game. So great, so immersive, especially mm -hmm. the subways and everything. And one of my first playthroughs, I, I I didn't have a shotgun, and then I found my first shotgun, and it was really beat up. Like, the durability on it was really, really low. Well, it was barely hanging in there. I knew I didn't have many shots with it till it broke. And man, I saved that shotgun and saved using that until I was, you know, desperate or when there was a guy right on me or a big target that was up close. I was thinking it's just little stuff like that sticks with you. And I'm thinking if only if only people knew how to do mechanics like that in a way that was consistent and enjoyable to where you could have weapon degradation and stuff that really kind of just gave people those awesome memories that they could look back and say, man, that combat shotgun that one time, man, it was oh, I, I it really made me not want to abuse it. I really treated it with a lot of value and care, but knew it didn't have much left in it. Hmm. 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 Located in the room right next to them, so they're really not that hard to find. And if they're not hard to find, then just let me open the treasure chest without having to unlock it. This mechanic exists to waste my time and make me feel like I earned the loot. I'm mostly on his side. I would just say that, you know, if you find the note that says... I still find it dumb that these notes exist, but it's like, Hey honey, if you want to get into the safe, it's our anniversary, but obviously negative 30 years. It's like, ooh, I got to figure something out. Okay, I, my brain has something yeah. to do. Oh, I'll go to the calendar. <gasps> oh my good, it's it's circled on the 23rd, you know, so it's it's just one of those little things where it's very simple, cool. but it's it's it makes people feel satisfying when they people feel like a puzzle solver. People feel smart yeah. when they do stuff like that because it's just it feels intuitive even though it's contrived that it's in the game like that. It's intuitive and normal people can figure that out and it makes them feel good. That's what I mean. Like, all right, I'm playing the game. I'm doing it. Narratively, good. I agree. Mechanically, I think there's we it's a good start. And that's the problem with a lot of the mechanics in The Last of Us. It's like, oh, this is good for the year two thousand. Not bad. I don't agree <laughs> narratively, just because if uh if the chest is just unlocked, then someone else should have probably already gone through the area and, and No, gone I don't mean it. that narratively. I mean the oh. um the, the, the very fact that people are putting their codes next to their safes narratively. Yeah. Like Oh, oh, sure, sure. Like, I don't believe that was is what every but let alone one person doing it, which is kind of like, why would you do that? But fucking like all fifty? Like really? All of you? Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> so how has no one else broken these things open? There's there's a couple problems there. I like it mechanically more than I do narratively, is what I was saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if I was going to try to explore the idea of how do you... Because essentially what safes work as, it's, it's that you do a tiny quest to get a reward. And you can do that in so many ways that don't involve a safe that it, it could be anything from just going slightly off the beaten path to find something or following the clues on a note that you find. Um, or I, I just feel like they just went with the first idea that they had. And it's kind of a shame, especially because I had seven years to make the game. Huh. Joel hmm. started the fire. How about that? Oh, no. The fire that burned <laughs> the world. Fucking Joel, man. What an asshole. Behind it all. It really is the most shallow type of puzzle that this game has to offer, and I am saying puzzle very loosely. The other kind of puzzles in this game usually revolve around ropes. Last of Us 1 had a dozen ladder puzzles, and this one decided to shake things up. Yeah, again, I probably agree with him. Like, even in the first game, those ladder puzzles, it's like, you gotta take it from one place and then put it over here. It's like, whoa. Like, all right. <laughs> I am I engaged. Puzzle I, I, I like to, on a technical level, I like the physics that they obviously put into the ropes, like the way they, they move, you know, the mm -hmm. way they hang. You can use them in so many different ways. It's kind of cool to look at. It just, yeah. There's a little a bit of a mechanic. It's kind of frustrating. They're a little floompy, but I would say overall they did a good job making rope physics. Uh, yeah, the animation for the rope physics, the physics was like that's a it's a technical marvel. Um, even though it's like, I would say it's a neat pick at best. Good it's job, repetitive. Good job. Do it a lot. You're like, okay. Well, every time you see a rope, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're <laughs> gonna have to do a thing. Yeah. Sorry ladders, ropes are my new best friends. But ropes aren't as prevalent as the ladders and they aren't really as annoying, mostly because the ropes are used differently every time. You can get kind of creative with how you use them and the rope physics kind of stop the puzzles from being annoying. Now while the puzzles aren't really a deal breaker for me, the one thing that got really annoying was the level design. This game has much there? bigger environments than the first game and honestly it's kind of overwhelming a lot of the time. There are a lot of situations where you'll get disoriented and lost and have no idea where to go. I mean, I want to agree with that, but I'd be like, surely that's down to the person. It's just your perception. Well, yeah, I get whether lost very often. Yeah, there's uh, whether or not you get lost at all, and then there's whether or not you like being lost. And how long do you enjoy being lost? It is so weird looking at that pregnant chick with a gun. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> there is a. Sometimes I have. I have come across people who ask me for advice in games and they say this, uh, and they'll say, I feel lost. And I kind of tell them, like, enjoy that feeling, that feeling you have right now of being overwhelmed by mechanics, of being lost in a world. Legitimately try and cherish that because it will go away and you will never get it back. Once you learn the scale of the world, it all gets so smaller. Once you learn it's... all the mechanics, everything feels like a game. So some people really enjoy the sense of being lost, and some people really, really hate it. Is so, this something? Yeah, but, I mean, is this something that's changed, like uh, as the years have gone by, with people's attitude towards games? It's almost like the game designers feel like they have to always give people, um, you know, a direction to the next waypoint or the next mission or whatever, because if they have to think for too long they'll just get like disengaged from the game and give up. That seems to be the mentality a lot of the time. I always find like now the games just kind of hold my hand and tell me where I need to go. That awkward balance between holding hand and also not making it unclear as to how to... <laughs> yeah, that's the balance that's been trying to be stricken for ages and most people who've been playing games for fucking ages feel that games have gotten way worse in that regard in terms of like, you don't find out yourself, you have to be told where to go. Yeah, it, it just it used to be that you could invest more time in a game, and yeah, it would take time sometimes to figure out where you needed to go next. But that was part of the enjoyment. And mm -hmm. I was like, someone highlighted there's there's lost, and then there's confused about how to progress. Yeah, um, I would definitely yeah. agree. That's a that's a balance that has to be struck. Yeah. You want people to be only confused briefly at the beginning until they can get all the clues intuitively from their environment as to what to do. Um, and if you don't have that right balance, then I think probably my biggest pet peeve in games is when I don't know where to go 
and I'm just wandering around. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. What am yeah. I supposed to do? What's the win state here? I don't even know what I'm supposed to actually do. I mean, this game mostly sorts you out in terms of once you hit a certain timer, it'll give you a, a clue. It'll just be like, press L3 yeah. and you'll, it'll tell you where to go. The one time that was funny for me was I spent too long, you know, quote unquote, too long searching an area. And it was like, press L3 for clue, where to go? And I pressed it just out of curiosity, and it just pointed to, like, the only giant way. L like, if you think about it, there's, there's just one opening you can go. And it was just like, this is probably it. And I'm like, wow, thank you, game. <laughs> I guess I'll... Th that was uh, another thing for me throughout the first and second game, was just figuring out where the actual way is first, and then checking everywhere first, uh, after that, you know? Because that's the one place yeah. I don't want to go. And this game... James Moore tried to, to warn me during the stream, but he was like, there's a red door. If you walk through the red door, it'll make it so you can't check anything in the hotel after you've done that. And I was just like, oh, hopefully I'll be okay. And um, I just made it in terms of searching for stuff, but man, is it annoying when you've got three rooms to check and one of them is a door that's ajar and the rest are fine. And it's like, ooh, that could be a cutscene door. Don't check that one, because otherwise you'll lose everything that you could have gotten had you searched everywhere else first. Yeah, invisible points of no return are shit. If you yeah. make games, don't do those, ever. I hate them. And Dead Space was always the example I go to of, like, Dead Space protects me from them because you press the, the waypoint thing and it's like, this is the way. And you're like, cool, I'll search everything else yeah. first. It makes sense in-universe, it looks nifty. Yeah, it does, just, it does look cool. People would prefer a slightly immersion-breaking, are you sure you want to proceed, yes or no, than, oh, they mm -hmm. decided to do it and then now they can't go back and check all those other rooms they haven't because they chose to look in the wrong door. Or even yeah, in, yeah, in Last of Us fashion, you walk up to the door and it's like, hold down square to enter through door, and you're like, oh shit, okay, this is probably a cutscene one. I'll back up. Yeah, there was like that one uh, cutscene door that you went through, Mahler, and you were like, oh no, please, 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 let me go back, and then you went back and sure enough, you would have missed a couple revolver bullets and, yeah. and some supplies and gears. It's like, ugh, yeah. Thank God that that one was one that you could still go back through. You don't get that look sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the game's like, nope. You're like, oh. Hmm. For the most part, they try to block off areas that you can't traverse with like vines and shit, but it's still really hard to tell where the game wants you to go. And yeah, there were several points where I was like, I guess I can't go this way. Or I guess I can't. I can't do this. And then sometimes yeah, the game would surprise like, me I with. Can't do this. Oh, I can do this. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I didn't think so, Gabe. Good for you. I, I think that's part of the folly of making a game in this setting. Um, because if you're if you're in a post-apocalyptic world, getting around should be really easy because buildings have clearly marked exits. It's very open. You could, if you need to, break glass and move pretty you can pretty much go wherever you want in the real world. Um so being able to having feeling like you're bottlenecked into going a certain direction kind of sucks you're like uh, i feel like if this was actually where you said we were i could i have 30 different ways 30 different routes that i could take to where i need to go uh, yeah oh well i guess we're going up the escalator because we gotta um there was i think it was the near the end of the game in santa barbara where um i was like i saw a staircase and i was like i could prone underneath that and get to the staircase but let me guess it's blocked and he was like no that's how you do it and i was like oh, <laughs> good job game you did it because there's just too many fucking games where there's a clear way for you to get to where you want to go and it's just like nope no 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 yes you can turn on a waypoint setting that'll tell you where to go but that's not really an excuse if the developers added that setting knowing that you're going to get lost sometimes then it's on them to just make the layout of these areas less confusing I would like to hear your argument for how they would do that exactly, like just suggestions, because right. it is gonna like I'm curious how far you would go before you would probably say like okay this is breaking immersion now. I mean, if most of the, a lot of this game you play with a companion, if the companion can set it up for you to finish yourself. If you are in a you go into an old derelict hotel, and they say, well I guess it, to get to the waterfront I guess we got to go down a floor, and that's all they said like they suggested it. They didn't tell you how to do that. They didn't tell you where to go. They were just like, yeah, we, let's go to the next floor down. And you had to do things like look at the signs, look at the direction stuff that's around for guests to follow and stuff of that nature. Like people what? would feel good about being able to solve that barely puzzle. Yeah, or just them saying like, I think this is the way. Yeah, if you want, yeah, like if you if you are making progress, you can confirm that to the player with the your partner saying, yeah, I think that we're on the right track. 
I mean, I'm trying to be fit of the game. I'm pretty sure they do a bit of that, right? With the, the um, NPCs yeah, do kind of direct they do, then they, you they will, power to them. They will if you're, if you're struggling. Yeah. Well, like when um when you clear out an area full of enemies, they're like, all right, I think that that this is clear, so that you're no longer on like alert. You don't have to be constantly taking cover or being cautious. You can just like roam around freely yeah. now. Yeah, I'm like no... set people up. This set couple... people up to solve problems in an intuitive way. It doesn't have to be difficult necessarily. It just has to if it just something you know set people up for success. Mm -hmm. Then have them do it. I think in every wide open area, I got confused at least once. I mean, but like, so I wonder if that's something that maybe they should be present in a game where you're in a cityscape sort of thing running around. That it shouldn't be clear as to exactly where you're supposed to go all the time, right? Some mm -hmm. degree, it should feel. Well, they should be aiming to get you to feel like, oh, I'm in a city right now. Level design is really complicated. I guess the problem here is like level design is really complicated, uh, especially when you factor in when you have to add it up, and he's being very reductive. Like, I don't know where to go. It's like, yeah, but what if well, they wanted you to kind of look around first? You know, what if they wanted you to be a little lost a couple of times? One of the complaints for Somo was like, like was people got lost in the water bits, which a couple of people complained about, it, I think is a real thing. However, part of that was on purpose. They wanted to make you the like, crank thalassophobia, be like, you're in the middle of the bottom of the ocean. You can't quite figure out where you're supposed to go. You're in you're a droplet in the universe of, of being alone and lost. Like, it's supposed to give you a sense of fear and horror, but a lot of players are just like, this is annoying, where do I go? As a, it, there's like a conflict of ideas, I would, I would guess, mm -hmm. and that's the, the tough part with a lot of gaming, it's like that striking that balance, because the player interaction with what you're presenting is just, doesn't always work out. Either really uh, stupid, huh or the levels are confusing, and since I refuse to accept any of my mistakes, I'm gonna go ahead and blame the video game this time. Now, yes, between the exploration, really there are combat segments, and this is where the game really saved itself for me. To put it simply, oh. murder <laughs> never felt so good. Now, when I started playing the game, I was playing on the medium difficulty because I wanted to beat the game fast and get this review out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, well, all right then. Okay. I like that the Sweet. shot he has of himself at that point. Look, he looks so apathetic. Like, uh, come on, let's get this over with. Gotta get that review to. This Never felt so good, and then it cuts to him just being totally. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. But I got really bored, so I turned the difficulty up to the highest setting, and it was like night and day. Before I could just run and gun like I was playing Doom and there was no tension whatsoever, but the highest difficulty really feels like the true Last of Us experience. Ellie dies so fucking fast and ammo is so scarce that you really have to use every tool at your disposal to survive. Bottles become more valuable as they're more common than ammo and they can net you a kill if you use them I, right. I feel like but, the AI is retarded well, when yeah. I watch like stuff the AI like this. Would see where the arrow is poking out. Yeah, like, oh, which is something they, this, like... that's something they said that it was supposed to be possible. From what I've heard, a lot of people have told me about this. There was a quote they said like the AI should be able to tell where you fired the arrow from from the, the kill. I should be able to tell where you shot everything from. But yeah, like, arrows, I'm... like, they're not invisible in the air. If he looks see over, them? he should be able to see her very easily, but he won't. It'll be like... The, yeah. the... Well, it's the aspect of... I was referring to I'm... him just standing there, out in the open, yeah, the... going like, Oh well, no, my dog has been shot fatally by an arrow. He should, I have guess... seen... he should have heard where the arrow came from, just from the whiz. He should have seen where the arrow was poking out of the dog to know which <laughs> direction it was shot from. And once he's... And also... If if you saw your dog get shot, you were not standing out in the open. Like you're exactly, for you're like diving away. for cover. And here's yeah. the thing: even if it was like, if he didn't know, if he dove for cover, like into that the bed of that truck, you know, yeah. or even even if it was to a side of the truck that you could still see, at least he's diving to cover. He, like if he doesn't know where it's from, at least he's taking his chances with going for cover somewhat. Yeah, you'd think he might you take know, cover on the, around the other and... side of the, the car to be like, it couldn't have been shot from here, so I might be safe here, but he'd be panicking and looking around all over the place and calling out. Instead of going, yeah. huh? What? Oh, God. Yeah, oh, it, no. It me so much. It's the whole Skyrim, oh, must have been the wind when you have an well. arrow sticking out of your ear. <laughs> <laughs> The game constantly forgets it's been 25 years since the apocalypse happened. Everybody at this point should be pretty seasoned 
So the fact so, that he's gormously walking around like, oh, someone killed my dog. It's like, dude, how'd you make someone, it this Someone far? said, the AI isn't retarded. The difficulty is, Mauler should have tried the hardest one. If I put it on the penultimate difficulty, it shouldn't be this shit, okay? <laughs> I'm more I'm more focused on the fact that the guy apparently named his dog Jesus because she kills his dog and he goes, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus. Well, they shout out the names of their... <laughs> I, I, just, I just love the idea that they were like, okay, we'll make the AI functional on um, literally survivor difficulty, the one we tell people only seasoned like veterans of the game should be playing. On the rest of the difficulty, they'll just be retarded. It's fine. Yeah, they're they're yep. dumb. They're just kill me bait. I think this is an absolute failure of the game to watch this clip and see how this this AI reacts to basically his buddy getting shot dead and he's just standing I've, there like this surely won't happen to me in just a moment i've got so many i'm sure clips. they just really had it out for this dog so many yeah. clips <laughs> to use from my stream of the ai being fucking retarded the game seriously turns into metal gear solid on this difficulty Somebody got i'm one dog. of the few people who like when stealth is done well in video games and the stealth in this game i'm one is of the few really... people who like no when you can't done well in video games who the fuck what doesn't a, like what a statement yeah who doesn't like stealth? I would, like I would like to meet there. the people who hate it when stealth is done well. <laughs> well, he's saying we, stealth is we done so broken amazing. mechanics. As he's showing this clip, and like, it's really no, this is crap. Like, stop Last praising it. Is, Last of Us is bare bones stealth. Like, oh, yeah. when you compare it to like Splinter Cell or Thief or Deus Ex, it's so bare bones. I, I have to admit that as a as a person that loves the um. Uh, the Last of Us stealth is not very good. I I, I enjoy playing the multiplayer because the of the fact, fact that I'm you can't against, hide bodies is humans. Like, multiplayer yeah. is kind of I I like the multiplayer in the first game, but like the fact that you can't even hide bodies is kind of like yeah, this is not like I can't I can't increase my chances of not being detected. Like, like this is this is, this is the failing. advantage of in the last game where you fought a lot of you know clicker enemies. That are really very matter. rudimentary in terms of their intelligence. Very dumb. Should be super easy to program, you'd think. Where you don't have to worry about a lot of the you know, intuitive aspects of what a human enemy yeah. would think and do. So you had a huge advantage because of those enemies. So if you're going to swap over to mostly not those enemies in a lot of these sections, you are making it more difficult for yourself. And yeah, the fact I that... Tell you that you like to do that narratively, but mechanically, can you handle that? Yeah, like the fact that I have to um, basically drag an enemy over to where I want to hide their body before I kill them, before I stealth kill them, rather than I, like giving me the option to do that afterwards like I can in Hitman. It's just like, eh, stealth is not well, very deep in this game. Yeah, like Metal Gear yeah. Solid figured this stuff out. You know, well, and I, you could I, do that like 20 years ago. I would genuinely like him in this call to be like, what is it about this game's stealth that really made you think like, yes, they've nailed it? Is it the fact that when you're in cover, you are in cover? Is that is that the standard is it now? The fact that uh, when you shoot somebody with a silent weapon, nobody heard it. <laughs> is, yeah, is that, which isn't good, by the way. <laughs> Just FYI, if you have a person right next to another person who gets shot, but it, it bugged me in the first game. But I feel like it's cranked in this one, where you grab someone and start strangling them about a meter away from another person. They're just like, mm -hmm. do, 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 do. It's like the noises of grabbing someone's jacket should be enough for you to go, wait, what? Like, what is that well, noise? I think I think here's here's a great example, right? So like in in Thief Two, there are different surface types, and depending on what surface type you're walking on, you will make more or less noise. I don't think The Last of Us Two has that, and the Thief Two is twenty years old. You know what, mate? If can, <laughs> that sequel, it, it, it is, but it, it, it's not present beyond the first game where in when you the David boss fight, you can walk on. Um, a broken oh, glass and stuff that'll yeah. set him off. Yeah, it was like well, the first one tried it a little bit, but this game was like, nah, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> I, well, yeah, because when I was playing this game, I wondered if stepping on glass would do anything, and I'm pretty sure it didn't do anything. <laughs> like, honestly, in terms of game mechanics, the stealth in The Last of Us 2, I'd be like, it's it's like, what are we looking at here? Like, pretty low on the, on the scale of... This is like the minimum, right? This is like the minimum, minimum functionality. Minimum functionality, yeah. Because, and, and... I, I don't, it's frustrating when people are like, this is like pinnacle stealth action. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, really, lowest common denominator. Yeah, most, 
most of the challenge came in from like the shitty controls like the characters handled really badly <laughs> they're sluggish oh dude i agree yeah with like you so you're much. back up against walls that you don't want to and like yeah it's just that's the the difficulty it's not that the ai is good or anything well, i argue uh, that the stealth in the uncharted games is better i think the stealth in the uncharted games might be better just for the fact that you have a lot more verticality to I work mean, with it's so annoying enough because this i think is both a sign of the bad stealth and bad ai but Say there were two people in front of Ellie right now, you, you shoot one with an arrow and kill the other one with a melee weapon, and then someone is three meters away and sees it. You run behind the, the, the van right next to you, car, sorry, and um, three, four, five seconds, that other AI is like, where'd you go? It's like, you should know that I'm here. You saw me go behind <laughs> you watched, here. You, like, watched me. Just this a second is annoying. Ago. Like, where do you think I am? Do you think I can teleport? And if you're really you lucky... You'll have the AI check behind it first, and then go, Whoa, they must have disappeared. <laughs> Do you remember Splinter Cell Conviction when that came yeah. out? One of the big advertising points is that they had the last known position. Like, it was basically an outline of you, which was the last time you were seen by an enemy, it would create, like, a ghost image of yourself, and that's where enemies... So to tell you, this is where enemies kind of think you are, um, and it worked really well. It was super simple. It was really fun to play around with. And this game is well. It's all we're going to be doing is talking about like, games that do stealth better than this. It's funny because Splinter Cell Conviction is like watered down Splinter Cell, and it's still more mechanically interesting. Yeah, than, um, it Last plays Master. really like, well. Because I remember playing Blacklist. I really like Blacklist. <laughs> Me too. I and, love Blacklist. And it's just the whole idea of um. We drop you into a place. You can learn a bunch of things by, you know, you have a bunch of different gadgets and weapons you can use. You have a lot of different options. You can hide people. Like the the fact that you can't even hide the the people that you take out is 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 insane to me. It's only like, ever Assassin's Creed one, even you know. Again, like, so mechanically Assassin's limited yeah. that when I kill a person, I'm like, well, if I hang around and aim at their body, once the new person comes in, they'll spot it and they'll be stationary for a while, so I should get an easy shot again. Just pile well, up the bodies. I, I guess it's just um, it's the limiting of the options, right? That the whole idea of I, I, I'd like to fix that up, but the whole idea of hiding mm -hmm. the people you take out is that it means that you can control whether or not you're going to be detected. In this yeah. game, you can't. Like, once you kill somebody, it's like, oh, this area now, as soon as an enemy walks through it, it's going to be an instant alert zone. That's yeah. great. I mean, if you're just, if you're designing this, all you have to ask yourself is, if that was me, what would I do? Yeah, right, exactly. What would like, I do if I... Yeah. Because I like, sure as hell wouldn't do the stuff the AI in this game do. Yeah, Not even close. and that's that's the real big thing, man. The AI are really fucking dumb. And the only thing that I really like about the AI regarding the stealth is the fact that the dogs are able to track your scent. No, like oh, we got to talk nah, about this. Um, nah. yeah, oh, really? <laughs> well, it claims that you can get the dogs here. off your scent. There's no fucking way. Like once they pick you up, that's it. Your only option is well, to fucking kill them. <laughs> Can we, like, dogs are a terrible idea uh, in stealth games because We're they just, just too smell good. you. They're so like, fucking They good. smell you. Yeah, yeah, let's, 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 like, let's go awesome. mechanical. Ignore, ignore all the labels of, of functionality or the, the, the species, whatever. It is an entity that automatically discovers you and will go toward you. Yeah. That is annoying. <laughs> pretty annoying. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know. I personally liked the, the, uh, the added threat that they... Um, that they provided to the, the to whole like, I, I have like, to take care of this dog before I, I can uh Yeah, but that's I feel like that's bad that the dog is the first one you have to take out every time. It's like, wow, this is not very deep at all. I have to yeah, kill the dog first. Yeah, yeah it's not like it's there's one special step tactics short. you can employ that will like you know, no, you can it, outsmart them. It's like they're there, you have to kill them in order to progress because they're gonna find you otherwise. Um, for clarification, Das Bullshit said you can get them off your scent entirely if you throw like a bottle. Or whatever. I don't think that that's, that part is that's, good. I think it's dumb. That's I think that's, silly, isn't it? I think that's really <laughs> stupid. Yeah. I I would it's... see why a dog, if it was tracking a scent, would shift its priority to a loud noise that just occurred close to it. Surely it shouldn't work forever. Like that, that should only distract it for a little but bit. It should get it back, back on the scent. Yeah, I could yeah. see it's a temporary right, thing. Yeah. Um, it's, but also, I, if you want to have a dog as a more persistent threat than a human in some ways. Just have it, if it's going to track you around, have it do it really slowly so that you know you're kind of on a time limit where the dog will eventually catch up to you, but it's not like, I have to kill the dog first. It's, you um, want to 
I guess Use dogs as a way to encourage the player to stay mobile. You can't well, just camp behind of, this cupboard forever. That's kind of what they want to do here. But yeah. it, for me, it's like a more fundamental thing. The whole idea of like stealth is, you know, you have a good idea of what human beings can see and hear. So you have a pretty reasonable idea of what you can or can't do. But once it's a dog, it changes everything. Because it's, it's, it's now you have to control scent, smell in a video game, something that you can't track and that you can't really tangibly understand, and then ping it gets you, and then it's like, oh, I guess it's got me now. Uh, it's almost arbitrary when it, you know, when the dog's going to pick up your scent. There's nothing uh, you can do. Well, to is it based? Chance. Well, no. Listen mode actually shows your scent trail. Yeah, but that doesn't. That, what does that? You see what I mean? Change, like though? the fact that the fact that I need listen mode to know what the dog can see. Whereas Wait, yeah, I was going to say, how does I that even make sense? reasonably deduce what they can see and smell. You know what I mean? Uh, see and like, even if, yeah, but even if you can see your scent trail, I don't think, there's nothing you can do to disrupt that trail, is there? No, no, you can't, because I Which, think, by uh, the way, Moloch and I've talked about, like, Another oh, yeah. example, yet again, of paying lip service to some level of depth. What you'll have is you introduce that mechanic, and then the reviewers will do it all for you. They'll be like... You've got an ent you've got a mechanic now that involves scent is in the game. There's several reviewers who who keep talking about it as like this this thing about that's more dogs, than what it yeah. is, which is just it just auto tracks. That's all that is. Yeah, it's just an enemy that mm -hmm. can see you through walls and pursues you through walls. And it's of like course, that's what it yeah. really is. Then they'll be like, on. and it, really it adds a whole layer to the gameplay because you can't just hunker down. They're gonna come for you. You have to keep on the move. You have to in the same way that like what the spitter was to Left for Dead, but that's not terrible like that that's, it's like you can't camp anymore because it'll drop you know floor lava just... temporarily dogs dogs remind me of um in halo 4 when they introduced that flying enemy that pr do, does shields and throws grenades back at you and revives dead enemies it's like oh so i have to kill that one first yeah it's and it's that's automatically less interesting than like what the covenant huh. was where you had options sorry go well ahead. we I have this, this uh fringy when we played destiny 2 together yeah um, we yeah. had there were enemies that would just produce shields for other enemies so <laughs> yep. it was it was to the point of oh see now you have to do this but it's like that's the point now you have to kill those enemies first it's it's not a choice i'm not making a choice you're just saying that now I have to kill this other enemy first. Yeah, it, it, it should be the whole idea that um that if you're designing a group of enemies, um, it's better if you have options for what you think you want to do first. Um, and the problem with dogs, just like the problem with the watches or whatever they were called in Halo 4, is that there is no choice. The, if you don't take the dog out first, you are playing suboptimally. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's never not the correct option, which is virtually indistinguishable from you have to do this. Um, so, well, someone, I mean, someone mentioned like... they want a clarification. It can't see you through walls. It follows your trail. It's like functionally no different. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. It's it's functionally identical to something that slowly tracks you through walls. They just mm -hmm. they the in universe explanation is that they're using your scent. There is there is no like actual. This is what I mean. If you want to explore scent and smells, it's like okay, so you got to get a whole bunch more mechanics and options in there. You can't just go. Yeah, they just find like, you. That's how it works. Like what if there was alcohol ahead. maybe to to you know subdue your scent. Like if you could use alcohol and rub it all over you to uh, get the dog off of your trail, that might be cool. Or mud or something like yeah, rolling that like. So someone said it doesn't it doesn't beeline towards you though. It's like so when you're tracking something, you don't make a beeline towards it if there are obstacles in the way. You mm -hmm. go around the obstacles just like dog would. Yeah, dogs can't go through walls in fantasy. Yeah, um, we are amazing, but we cannot traverse through walls. I like someone obstacles. said it smells so bad you could hear it <laughs> through listen <laughs> mode. <laughs> Um, I don't. I, I don't. Was, honestly, I don't get that. Why is it that you see the old trail of smells through listen mode? Well, what listen, is that? I like how listen. Yeah, listen mode helps you detect your scent in the air. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> you know, if the, if, if they wanted to mix it up, then have visual clues as to what way the wind was blowing. Yeah, but that. You see what I mean, though. It's like were these conversations had like when they were like remember the how mode? they did that shit in Call of Duty Four. <laughs> it came out like 37 years ago or whatever like we're not introducing new mechanics to video games here no we're just we no. could just reference well, things that have already, already been done from, years uh, ago yeah borrowing from the best really at this yeah. point
Dude, the, my favorite Pretty quote. Much. You guys will see this in the eventual video that comes out. There's a, a reviewer that's listing like the awesome things you could do. One of them is you could shoot rage. You could use raged combat. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's revo revolutionary. Oh, yeah. I've never done that before. Who'd have thunk? What'll they, what'll they think of next? <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I don't know. Looks like, like I don't have to hit them with a club? Whoa, is this magic? The future of gaming. That'll never catch on. Ranged combat will never catch on in video games, mark my words. So yeah, I suppose People that's, yeah. that's our tangent on the stealth of this game is, is pretty meh. Honestly, go, yeah. go play Hitman or something, I don't know, Thief. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, we're on a pause point. Give me like two minutes and I'll be right back. Yes, man. Talk about stealth. Talk about all the games that did stealth better than this years ago. <sighs> oh boy. Deus Ex? Yeah, Deus Ex. <laughs> <laughs> the, problem is, the problem is I constantly talk about it so people get tired of me bringing it up. But yeah, I just, I get frustrated because in Deus Ex you've got all these options, you've got all these different abilities that you can use. Well, a lot of and the like, reviews mention the silenced pistol as like this big deal. It's like, you can shoot people with a silenced gun in The Last of Us now. And you're like, oh well, my god. I guess it's just like, okay, so in the newer Deus Ex games, what are, you, what are your strictly non-lethal silent stealth options? You have the tranquilizer gun, you have the stun gun, which both have very different range. You have your, uh, you know, like, concealed takedowns. You have the, uh, you have the um, Tesla coil, I think it's called, where you can, like, shoot... Uh... Oh? Uh, what? <laughs> I felt I felt like watching the Sopranos finale there. It just like ended abruptly. Yeah, I thought uh, we've lost him. I th yeah, he'll be back. It's okay. It just disappeared. Just like, press gone. press F for fring for fringy chat. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. No. So many. Zero one's ever really gone. Joel is the fucking worst from what I'm gathering in these memes. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> how how Joel drinks milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty ironic. Oh, this is so... yeah, if that podcast talk is killing it tonight. It's funny because these are all memes from the previous EFA. <laughs> like technically, <laughs> that's where they come from. Um, maybe Cosmodot will shit on Joel. Uh, you, you could, you could, you could definitely combine the memes if he does at that point. Which, by the way, I want to mention his video so far is probably the best one I've seen from him. It's not very good, but you know. It's not a, it's not the highest of bars. So good job. It's talking about gameplay. A lot of it's just kind of relating to his experience. And it's just like, yeah, okay, pretty accurate. I'm like, all right, good job. I think it's I gonna really... be a trip. Somebody gets to the story. I think that's where it's gonna yeah. fall apart. Yeah. I've seen. Yeah, that's yeah. What I've seen. Maybe yeah. Probably. Probably. Definitely. Who knows when Definitely. Pringle shall return? I suppose we shall carry on. Bringy. Yeah, he um, he abandoned us. Suddenly. Oh, I was I was gonna tell him that uh, yesterday on our EFAP uh, catch up stream, I was saying that if I was if I'm gonna play a game that I have that I haven't finished, it would be Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Oh, save it. You'll be back. You'd enjoy that. Good. Yeah. Oh, Yay. Wow. there you are. <laughs> yeah, because I liked Human Revolution yeah. so much, and I'm it was so fun to do a no kill now. playthrough. I enjoyed it so much. Well, uh, basically, for, for a uh, Mankind Divided is a Oh, yeah? Oh, I was just saying, uh, for a minute there, you went the way of Mahler's first pistol from his uh, last <laughs> one playthrough. That, the, the, talk about noisemakers <laughs> in, in, talk about noise makers in chat. It's like, yeah, why couldn't, why couldn't it be low craft costs to make something that is just, it just makes noise, you can throw it and that would distract the shit out of a dog. Like, even that, just one step above. Well, Mahler, we're talking about other games that do stealth better. Fucking Far Cry has a throw rock button. It's like T, yeah, where whenever cry. you are, <laughs> yeah, you can just throw a rock on the ground because there's always a rock on the ground. You just throw rocks to make distractions. Fuck, Far Cry did stealth way better than The Last of Us did. <laughs> Which oh. is funny when Far Cry stealth is still pretty minimal. But it's just like functional and it's fun. This <laughs> thing, it doesn't have to be complex. Just make it consistent and functional. And that's the thing. I think that Last of Us 2 fails on all those regards. It is not complex, it's not consistent, and it <laughs> regularly rewards you for doing stupid shit. Uh... It's, uh, yeah, yeah. but, but it's, it, it gets high praise, honestly high praise from a lot of people, the stealth, which blows my mind. Good.
the enemy AI makes things super unpredictable too. Sometimes an enemy will cry out if you jump at them with an axe, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Why would they cry out if you I, attack them with an axe? I have so much to say about um, <laughs> that statement. So, let's... Going forward, I want it to be said that a lot of inconsistent bad mechanics can be hand-waved away by it keeps you on your toes. You're always <laughs> guessing what'll happen next. We throw that one out. I think that if you want to praise something, for, uh, what's what's a comparison that's easy, I suppose? Like, um, I hate keep, I don't want to keep going back to Dark Souls. Any game does this. A boss that has one of like 15 moves and it could use, it could go 1, 13, 2, 13 again, 4, 4, 4, 3, 5, 17, 18, 6, it's going all over the place. And you'd be like, keeps you on your toes, you don't know exactly what move it's going to use next. Versus, oh, the boss, oh, it fell through the ground. Oh, I win. Well, that kept me on my toes. <laughs> that's, that's what, what, I would, what I would do if I were trying to go for, a, like, a, an effect similar to this would be, um, occasionally enemies will actually fire their gun as they go down. Uh, as you know, some people might do when they they get hit, they like mm -hmm. shoot their gun a few times. It's sort of like a like a flare, like a like a noise flare of sorts. I mean, well, so he's like when he says they're unpredictable, and his example is sometimes when you come at them with a weapon, they'll say like, "Oh God," or they won't. To me, that's like that doesn't change anything mechanically. Right. It's just whether or not they say a thing. So I wonder if he's got more examples. I guess. You may do the exact same route the exact same way, but sometimes the AI is just going to do something completely different, and that's kind of cool. So there's, there's unpredictability. You, unpredictability is good in some aspects, but you can have unpredictability to a fault as well. Yeah, this one's complicated because a lot of people like uh, approaching a stealth mission when, when understanding every variable. Like, so... These people are heading this way, these people are heading this way. If I activate this, put this there. And if you have all of the enemies, they will move one of four directions. Um, and this is the thing. I'm not actually saying this is a bad element of The Last of Us 2 right now. I'm just saying they, they offer two different experiences. Um, but that's not... I'd be like, there are way more problems with this AI. And, and complimenting it for having an AI that sometimes it walks down this street, but sometimes it walks down half the street and then turns back. I'd be like, oh. I mean, yeah. I don't understand why we're praising that again. It does seem pretty basic to me. Yeah, the balance between intuitive gameplay that can be learned and mastered to give a sense of progression and understanding is always balanced with, you know, is it too repetitious or mm -hmm. when does randomness become unfun and unsatisfying to encounter? I mean, does it really, like, surprise you guys that Cosmonaut Variety Hour, the guy who will say in one video that it really matters for a a comic book adaptation to faithfully adapt the source material in one video, and then in the next say that it doesn't matter if they do that, is praising a game for its inconsistent AI. You've, uh, <laughs> in fairness, you've made him sound a lot better than it was. That was the same video he said those two statements. Oh, wait, seriously? That's what's so shocking about it. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Well... Never mind then, yeah. In Infinite, it's a really long course. video. It's like 40 minutes, you know, super, super long. But, uh, yeah, it's from the same video. Oh, no. 40 minutes, that's it? Yeah, it's one of them real long videos. Oh, wow. Uh, Ain't yeah. nobody got time for that. Well, this is the thing. What we've discovered about Coswell is he's incredibly inconsistent. Uh, and that's okay for a lot of people. As I, 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 I don't think I've got Clearly. a comment on me, but there was the one I showed you guys where it was like, um, what you've misunderstood about the channel is that it's a variety of viewpoints. And that's the point, the Cosmo Variety Hour. And I was just like, but it's one dude. <laughs> yeah, it's not... one... It's like, like, if you're like playing multiple characters, <laughs> sure? Is well, it like well, one dude I... with multiple personality disorder or something, and they're actually in conflict with each other constantly? Well, I would just like to personally apologize to Cosmonaut for misrepresenting what he did in this in the stream. Very mm -hmm. sorry. Also, Fringy, how are you doing there? You right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, that, oh, right. Yeah, internet cut out. <laughs> oh boy, yay! <laughs> I love it. it. Cuts out. Uh, this um, is uh, all Matt and Tim's fault. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I also yeah, wouldn't right. want to be at the point where we would be praising the AI for being nonsensical. So, for example, it's like sometimes they'll lose sight of you in seconds, or sometimes it'll be 
10 seconds or so, I'd just be like, I don't think that's praiseworthy, but it, it seems to me that he's just talking about their movements. They're not, they could do a couple of things, which again, just like, yeah. yeah. And in stealth games, I like to take my time, learn what enemies are going to do, look for openings, and then actually execute a plan that I had in my head based on what I've seen. Um, I think that's how most stealth goes, right? When you have predictability, it gives you some a, a challenge to well, overcome. The whole idea with a lot of stealth like games is... Accomplish something. Like, I think, I think stealth games tend to recognize, like, that a human being who sees you once, it's over. But they give you that little mm -hmm. bit of leniency because it would be annoying. Yeah. Or like, you well, know, you should. Stealth in the real world is fucking hard as shit. You should have to yeah. go into like a vent and enter a different fucking area of the entire place in order to get that 100% invisibility back. But in this game, you can literally like go by and have a fucking chair and they'll be like, hmm, where did you go? And to me, that's like super childish stealth. It's like, wow, you're really giving me this? Okay, I guess. Like, doesn't he, doesn't this enemy like care for his life? Well, like what doesn't the, he have it he it's nothing better to do if i'm here the big element i would say is the enemies lack object permanence they're like the second you've <laughs> gone they're like oh my god he's disappeared <laughs> well if i can't see them then i guess they don't exist anymore in fact i don't even know what i'm talking about um i think i think i was sort of thinking about it but like if you are spotted on one side of a building and then you run through it's like a destroyed building windows are out most of the walls are out you run through three parts of it over to the other side if they see you for certain little moments running through the whole thing, it's like, you can reasonably deduce they are now on the other side of it, not like, I have no idea where they are. I, I, it's no fucking way. Mm -hmm. Impossible. And even if it's just as rudimentary as, like in Splinter Cell Conviction, this is the last known place that they saw you, this is where they're going to be focusing their attention, you can use this to your advantage, go have fun. Well, yeah, that's the way that it should work, but in this section, this particular section that's on screen on his video, uh, once you go through a house, there's like this well on the other side of the door, and I hid behind that well, and they lost me. And it's insane, because they should know where I am. I'm behind this well. You saw me run through this house. There's no other pieces of cover. I'm behind the well. But they didn't. And um, I think one of the examples that really threw me off, because I didn't even expect it, was, you know, like the typical situation where an AI is hiding behind something, poking out and shooting, and you're doing the same thing? I, like, mm -hmm. reloaded, s s sat behind my, like, pillar, and looked around, thought, like, where am I going to go, who am I going to kill, how am I going to do it? And then, uh, they were like, where'd you go? I was like, oh, wait, I thought, like, we're in a, we're in a fight right now. I didn't, oh, fuck, he's already lost me. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry. Where <laughs> go? I mean, ooh, I disappeared. I'm over here now. Ooh. They really do feel you. more unique because they act like real people. <laughs> Uh, uh, no. Just oh, cut no. to that bit in uh, Mahler's playthrough where Yara is shooting a million rounds at that one Seraphite who's just standing there. They <laughs> act like real people. <laughs> like, yeah, that's I'm putting that into that. That's got to go in there. What's, what's Fuck that? it, I'm gonna add that to my critique. They act like uh, from watching people. this game, the people in this are the most unpeopled people I have ever peopled. <laughs> I, I got a strong sense they were AI. My my immersion was oh, yeah. definitely destroyed. I was like, these people are not people. <laughs> We've said it all the time, over and over about this game, is it feels so, so artificial. If you shoot from a hiding spot, they'll call out the exact place you shot from. People wow. clown on the fact that the NPCs shout each other's names, but I actually kind of like yep. it. It's names. <laughs> names. It gets repetitive. It, they they do it to the point where it just becomes a gimmick, and you're like, "Yeah, you know what they're." I doing. think the presence. Feel bad for that person really you just shot. shot. Because, and the thing is, like, they're people that are trying to kill you. It's not like you have much of a moral choice in this one. Why would you feel guilty about it in the first place? Well, like, there's never the, an option to like. People argue it's like, but it reminds you that these are people. It's like, well, I mean, I never forgot. Yeah, that was never the. I was yeah. never. It's not Tetris where I'm just like, this is clearly a video game. Nothing else is happening. It's like the whole fucking idea with this is to make us feel as though it's real. I don't feel bad for killing the person trying to kill me. I don't exactly. care if their name was Amber and exactly. she had a pet dog. I just, I don't care. She's trying to kill me. It's this done. Game, it's settled. It's over. This game expects you to remember multiple faces and several names. Several names are in <laughs> shitty. It's, shitty. Ju it's just like in Mission Impossible Fallout, just as awful. Mm. <laughs> uh. <laughs>
It adds another level of realism, and other games have done it before. However, I think it is really silly that there are only like 10 enemy character models. If you're gonna painstakingly name every NPC at least, that's not make painstaking. Them... You're just take, saying, "All right, this NPC's name is Bob." He almost this had it. This he was almost there. He he just needs to connect the last piece. Why do you think we have individual names for all these NPCs, but we don't have individual models? Which do you think is easier? Just take a random James, like not James, name generator. You know, name generator. Great. Yeah, <laughs> James name generator. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, just geez. take. It. Get a voice actor in a room the, and just so give them like fifty names to read. You often talk about like returns, so like they're, they're like, "Hey, if we have a voice act, two voice actors, one male, one female, just shout out a bunch of names uh, for for one hour, just get a whole bunch of names." In exchange, we get all these reviews saying, "You know what's amazing? They actually call out names when they die." How it, it, that is so meaningful, and it, and you know what it does? A lot of people clown on it. But you know what it means? It means they're real. It means they're people. It adds a layer to the realism. It's like, oh my god. I bet you didn't think that that person had a name. Boo. So... Like I said, he was close. Uh, he was close to cracking the case. He was like, this is good. This is deep. Although, there's lots of things that point to it not being deep at all. Anyway, moving on. It's like, no! Eh, it's still, <laughs> I've already pretty said it's amazing. Moving on. Ironically, they reuse uh, several of the assets... Uh, like like basically the same 10 assets for a different enemy's faces so they don't individualize what the enemies look like but they will you know give them all names as if that matters like i said i found it funny eventually like i think if they had done it once per hour i might have found I would it okay laugh then, yeah the one what's the one i was i shot a guy Amber. and someone was like well not that one the one that was like chris and then chris. i killed i killed the guy for the, the other guy and then he shouted chris again and i was like oh god is there two chris's <laughs> oh man that's, that's what are the common odds? name lots chris. of chris's in the world chris. I, I, I want to see chris stuckman's review of the last of us part two <laughs> did he do one he does games yeah. today I don't know if he's done one but he does game reviews it's you know eventually well not eventually uh occasionally Let's see, Chris Stuckman. Uh, he hasn't done one yet. No, right. but that's definitely that's definitely one to Fucking, cover. I'm almost it, certain Chris. he would mention that he'd be like, the enemies sometimes call out each other's names when you kill them, and it really makes you feel, you know, kind of guilty about, about the whole experience. Old... And you're like, shut the fuck up, Stuckman. <laughs> you just, you're not making anything <laughs> meaningful. You're just like, it's exactly what they wanted you to say. The developers, I mean, they knew this was the quickest way to get you to say something like that about their game. I think the last game review that he did was actually for Fallen Order. So, oh, that game like... yeah. Oh wait, sure, no, sorry, Animal Crossing. Game. He did, he did Animal Crossing. That's a Chris Buckman game right there. Well, do you think he could uh, handle it? Maybe. We'll have to see look different but anyway once a fight does break out the huh. gunplay is explosive and heavy hitting the guns Whoa. really feel good in this game it felt like I was actually in a life or death gun oh no mauler would you like to talk about the gunplay in this would you like to, to um, talk about the aim wobble wobble all over the place so the sounds of them shooting and the clicks and the, the, all the sound design around like i'm mostly okay with that i didn't have any problem with that uh but fuck me like all the aim sway and the, the the amount of effort they put into making aim just just awkward and, and heavy really hard. and clumsy yeah. like and yeah. I know there's a, there's an argument for like well it's supposed to feel kind of like that because you're just a random you're not like a soldier you're like I'm just like dude I I don't play oh, video games to, to, hold straight. to be drunk <laughs> like, I don't, that's not my goal and that's the thing yeah they, they pretend like real people can't hold a gun straight like that's just not a thing people, people can do and we're not talking about average people this is a girl who survived for many many years in a post-apocalypse with guns and goes on, on on patrols and shit like i i don't believe that she's got no understanding of how to hold a gun it would stand a reason that after you know some years of experience with a gun that you will you know be able to use a gun better and yet for some reason in the first game it feels like she can handle guns more easily than she can in this game and it's like like even in the first game where you can't upgrade her aim sway like you can with joel which by the way when you upgrade joel's aim sway the aim sway is barely even there but when you upgrade aim sway in this game like oh it's still there and it's still noticeable and it will fuck up your headshots and a, a, a lot of shots really 
Um, someone in chat just said, in the clip we just saw, he shot at an AI with a rifle that was vaulting over something, and the, like, the game doesn't account for that, they don't notice. I just want to see it again to make sure. Breakout, the gunplay is explosive and heavy hitting. The guns really feel good in this game, and it felt like I was actually in a life or death gunfight. Oh, Whatever shit. Thought, shit. Oh, wow. Wait, wow, why would you use that clip? Yeah, I, uh, Go, let me see that one more time. Well, I was gonna say, what exactly happened there? Explosive and heavy hitting. The guns really feel good in this game, and it felt like I was actually in a life or death gunfight. Yeah, they. Oh, well, yeah. The like, bullet doesn't the do shit to them. The animation needed to finish before. <laughs> yeah, if it was actually somewhat deep, they would have been knocked off their ass in the middle of the animation. Which I... some games do. This game does not. Either, yeah, either commit to having the bullet. Probably if they're vaulting over something and they get hit like that, they're probably just gonna go limp but continue forwards. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of immersion in the subtlety uh, sometimes. Um, I went back to play Battlefield 4 not too long ago, and it kind of reminded me of how subtle the, the feedback is when you kill people in terms of the enemy animations and yeah. the pop-up for like feedback it's not like a call of duty game where you have loud hit markers and <laughs> loud noises yeah yeah you just see the the enemy just sort of drops and ragdolls a bit just goes down and it's really kind of like oh wow you know that's kind of impactful because it, it doesn't it's not glorified and made grandiose and amazing it's kind of unceremonious yeah just where you didn't because yeah we have to kind of confirm yeah, you have to confirm visually that you killed the person because, you know, they they fell to the ground, they stopped moving. There's kind of that aspect in it. Um, and yeah. I kind of wish more games would do that. I know in, and I played, I, I'll reference DayZ a bit, but in DayZ, there is that aspect of, you know, there are no hit markers and there's no points that pop up. So if you shoot someone else, you have to be like, oh, shit, did I kill him? Did I just wound him? Like, did you know, I, you you double tap the bodies just to make sure before you go over there, you know, that sort of thing. I agree that I actually like that more. I think the problem is, because the reason why Call of Duty has those loud hit markers is because it gives you a dopamine rush. It's the yeah. instant feedback of like, good job, good job, good job. Boom, oh, you got him, good job. Yeah, like, like I, I wouldn't know. want that to be universal. Like in Doom, I love the, the Doom 2016 multiplayer is great. And, you know, it's very obvious when you kill players, things pop up, big hit markers. It's very arcadey and everything, but... I think there's definitely a place for more subtle feedback in terms of, you know, you're, you're, you, you confirm that your target's hit and it reacts mm -hmm. to something because sometimes you just shoot something in the distance and it just falls over and it's, that's it. That, that's all that there is. Now it's just you. And sometimes I feel like that's the best way to go. With. That's the most impactful way yeah. to do it. You could also, uh, this meme right here that you have up with Soma uh, giving The Last of Us Part Two the Fat Geralt special. You could <laughs> you could put Spec Ops The Line over that too. I also, I mean, part of it, I, we talk about this a lot, but part of it is these games uh, provide the conversation rather than providing the answer. Like, a lot of them present you so many different yeah. scenarios and results, and it's like, what do you think about all this? While The Last of Us Two is just this complicated nightmare of all these different points that are all over the place. <laughs> Joker. And the only thing most people conclude is, oh, revenge bad? And then you have people being like, no, it's much more complicated than that. It's like, well... Like, uh, we're, we're making it as complicated as the game did. I, I feel <laughs> you know like people, in the same way that you could say, oh, so much shit, it's like, oh, what does it mean to be human? Like, like that's a simplified version. But revenge bad, the reason why that's more dismissive is because it's not what is revenge it's revenge bad which mm -hmm. is way more interesting oh, yeah. to talk about what the, the the ideas behind revenge and justice and all, how it all works instead of just being like nah just stop it's bad it's bad how far will a character go to get what they want what's their stopping point and like, when do they decide it's not worth it anymore it says a lot about the kind of person you're dealing with you could say and the same game just but Joel, Abby, and Ellie, but I really think, because this has been discussed before, but Tommy, such a perfect representation of this game having no fucking clue what it's doing. He's against the idea of seeking revenge, but then he does it, and he's incredibly successful up until he decides, nah, I don't want to do it. And then he gets punished harshly, and then he's back on board with doing it, and then he gets denied. Yeah. You're like, what in the world are you trying to say, game? 
And then Ellie, you know, she wants revenge too. And then she gives up at the at the very finish line and she gets punished way worse than Abby does. Yeah, it's the whole idea. Abby got her revenge and wins. Uh, Joel, uh, Tommy and Ellie abandon their quest for revenge and are punished severely for that decision. <laughs> and we have people trying to tell us that, no, this is this is good because Abby, you know, she was really a victim of Joel's and her dad did nothing wrong. Like, that's the perspective of this game. That's what the perspective trying to of sell. the game. But it's not working on us. It's like, it's really not working on, on <laughs> folks like us. Joel did nothing wrong. You're like, I just don't, I just don't accept everything that's presented to me at face value. Dare I say it? I'm a little critical of this stuff. I'm a bit skeptical of the things that I'm being just given. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't. And it's, it's shitty to see reviewers who are like that, who are, who are fooled by these empty moves by games to trick them. Well, like, no, you need to be critical and skeptical. You You're a game you know? It's basically PR. It is what it feels like when you watch a lot of like the IGN GameSpot type reviews. They're just oh, yeah. information that was said by the developers and developer commentaries and stuff. Do you mean like with, oh, uh, like yeah, ad- the advertising ones, well? They are just extended adverts yeah, for the, yeah. the game. That's it totally that become... Yeah. I just I like it when several of them start with the music. It slowly comes in. There's a there's a shot that's beautiful, and he goes, "The Last of Us Two is," and then yeah. they say something flowery. A game, or <sighs> is it? An experience. An experience. A surprisingly yeah. large amount of them are British, and that bugs me. <laughs> <laughs> are there any Welsh Welsh ones in there? I hope not. I hope we've escaped <laughs> the curse of access <laughs> media. Fight. Whenever I saw a group of humans, I got super excited to try and find an ideal route for taking everybody out. While dude, that's so fucking no, funny. Bad. If 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 the developer was like, "Don't you feel awful about all this?" And he's like, "I got super excited like, whenever no. I saw people to kill. kill them all, drink their blood." This this is he just commented on how it's like, "Oh, it makes it's more realistic. It makes it's like they're more human. They act more human." It's like, "I love <laughs> fucking killing them." Now he's like, "I want to optimize my death." <laughs> <It's> so... <laughs> Yeah, I I feel like if Druckmann saw this, he'd be like, "Oh well, no. okay, <laughs> that wasn't mm, okay." Like it's one thing to actually have to kill someone in self defense in real life, which I would think would fuck any one of us up. But yeah, when yeah, it comes to degree. Degree. Uh, I I the concept of ending someone's life does get to me a little bit. Whether mm-hmm. or not I did it in self defense, I would. This is the thing. I would feel justified, but still be like, "Damn, that guy is not going to affect anything ever again because of what I did." Well, that's, that's- that's what I mean. Not feeling like you're just a monster for what you did, it, it, like just for, for killing someone. But when it comes to like a video game, it's kind of hard to achieve that same effect. Really well, hard. It depends on right? me. I'd like, fucking it's... get a license plate that said KD1. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, hard. it's hard because I think, well, I mean, for starters, it's not being real makes it hard. But I think you can, like, if you have a choice, that generally is the way to make it feel a lot worse. I would argue it's relative. Like, yeah, uh, Soma, yeah. you can only even end the life of, like, fucking three people. And that's also about def- defining how life works. In this game, you're ending fucking thousands of people's lives. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 eventually, you eventually become numb to it. And so, That's yeah, I just think that if you want to, this is what I mean, it was the wrong IP to do this with, as far as I'm concerned. And if you were like, what, you can't work it at all? It's like, okay, if we are, we have to make some changes. Oh, certainly, because this is a post-apocalyptic situation where killing is going to be necessary for survival a lot of the time. And uh, it, it doesn't seem like like this is the right setting for talking about how violence in general is is bad and you should be ashamed of yourself if you ever kill per kill a person you know what does it mean to cause pain and you're like what i can't hear you over my machine gun i hear you over all the xp i'm good serving as much ammo as possible i used the gun so infrequently that it felt really good whenever i was left with no choice but to tap into my ammo and just go crazy on people Left no Uh-oh. choice but to use your ammo. You're not supposed ammo. to do that, though. Yeah. I'm sorry, did he just hit that person with the reticle on there, but there's, like, no hit marker? I don't know, it's really Like, bad. when he goes for the second shot. Taking it's everybody weird. out while conserving as much ammo as possible. Like okay. I used the gun so infrequently yeah. that it felt really good whenever I was left with no choice but to tap into my ammo and just go cr- Okay, so they should be on their ass right, right there from that one shot, right? And then... Yeah, they're, they're done. 
And when we see the reticle is on this person, it's fixed on this person as he's reloading. Crazy on people. However, the zombie fights were still. Oh. Looks like he was just about oh, to marker. shoot. Well, I think I don't think he's shot yet. I think it could no. He... I, I saw him shoot. Pull it back one more time. Serving I did as much ammo mind. as possible. I used the gun so infrequently that it felt really good whenever I was left with no choice but to tap into my ammo and just go crazy on people. However, the zombie. Oh yeah, that time I did. Um, I didn't see a hit marker either. I mean, it might have turned up just a little bit later than the clip showed. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. The fights sure. were still like... kind of hit or miss for me, even on the higher difficulty. Their AI is kind of bad, and yeah, I get they're zombies, but most of the- Wait, he thinks the human AI is good and the zombie AI is bad? I reversed that I shit. I don't understand. I think the zombie I... AI is almost fine. I, I don't really have much of an issue with it. There's oh, less of a fine. demand placed on Calm them, down. so... Yeah, I... <sighs> It's um, the zombies. I don't rely on you know. Yeah. They get the benefit of acting them to be weird. Complex? Some some of the humans have good AI once they're in combat with you. Like they will try and outflank you. They will put down cover fire to keep you down while they they maneuver around. They they do work in cooperation with each other well when the game's set up properly for it. See, it I'm, just doesn't happen all I'm that often. I'm a cynical often. bastard to the point where saying they flank you. I'm like, wait, I thought you said something good, not something standard. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's at that level where it's like okay it works you know yeah, it doesn't do yeah, anything I'll give you spectacular that. but they function once they're in combat it's when you're in stealth mode that they're shit you know what I mean it, it, to me it's almost the same as being like in fairness the cinematography is good and you're why it's like well you can see all of the characters that are speaking when they're speaking <laughs> I'm like yeah there are colors on screen <laughs> visuals accompany the audio and so like, like, that's the fact that they slank you while others are shooting at you is probably the most complicated thing this AI can do. Yep. Well, yeah, because it would, it would be really cool if they threw, like, smoke bombs at you, you know, to flush you out of cover. Like, wouldn't it be cool if you had enemies where they're, like, they toss some explosive to flush you out and they're like, he's open, kill him or something. Like, there he is, get him. Uh, they, will, they, the, they will do that. In the first game, they at least have the, the guys with gas masks that throw molotovs. But it's always... Like, they are always wearing gas masks, so you always know which are the Molotov enemies. Well, so, oh, yeah, they did do that in the first game, but did they do that in this one? Did they, like... Yeah, I can't well, they, 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 threw, they threw explosives a few times, for sure. Oh, okay. well, I damn, think I, I got hit with a, with a Molotov once on my playthrough, at the very least. Yeah, and you don't okay. have to have intelligent AI <laughs> to disrupt players getting into a rhythm. Um... If you killing floor two is a good example of how some enemies just by the way that they will attack you will force you to move yeah and do stuff and it's it's very simple super rudimentary ai that works really well for that kind of game but just yeah. because that enemy will do this and that enemy attacks like that it forces you to not just stand there and shoot kind of like left 4 dead they introduced kind of like left 4 dead special infected to so shake it up um killing floor two for example you can mostly headshot everything, but now there's enemies that uh, not only are killed easier by going for their weak spots that aren't their head or chest, there's ones that are exclusively their chest, and it's like, hey, that's good, it, it can yeah, shake And they'll up. do things like, if they get too close to you, they'll tether you in place and you can't move until you shoot them, and some will shoot at a distance and you get an audio cue before they do so, so you know you can't just stand there still, you have to move and... I mean, just little things that, 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 that shake it up and make Do the AI in uh, cool. this game ever, like, grab you and hold you and use you as a human shield? That you can get into grabs, but I don't think that happens. I I think it's more like they uh, they grab you and you have to um to like fight yeah, against right, it. Right. Well, it's just because I remember like this is what I mean. Every time I think of like those demos that they had for uh at E three for both of these games, the AI are way smarter in the demo than uh yes. than, than they ever were in the game. They do things that they never do in the game, which makes you, you know think. I... Oh, is it scripted? gameplay like is it they scripted it all but they made it play out in a in the game engine which in which case is like eh. well it's annoying because like yeah. when a, when, you, when you're getting swarmed by zombies right one zombie grabs you um and the other zombies just kind of like watch and they they attack you one at a time whereas yeah. one thing i really remember liking about uncharted 3's gameplay was you could have enemies grab you and you're like you're mashing square to um to like sort of elbow the guy that's grabbed you but then you'd have to occasionally press i think circle or triangle to kick away a guy that was like trying to attack you while yeah, you're grabbed that. i like that that mechanic and i love it if something similar happened 
in the Last of Us games, but I don't You're think done. that either game has done something like that. Can't be done. No. <laughs> and in a lot of the games, if you're playing Left 4 Dead or Killing Floor or fucking Seven Days to Die and all these other games, like, no, if you're surrounded by five enemies, that means five enemies are attacking you. You you shouldn't let those five enemies surround you like that. Oh, you, that you knew it was going to happen. There were a couple like, of awkward yeah. moments where uh, I was tussling with, like, one of the infected and I could spot some of them in the background just awkwardly, like, waiting. Like, you guys, you done? Some of them don't, though. Some of them do attack you as well. It just, it, again, just comes across as, like, the... The bots have pathing issues. Um, most prominent is when I was prone under a desk just outside the the arena, if you will, and I managed to shoot um, a clicker at a distance. And instead of it like panicking, running around, not knowing where the fuck that came from, which wouldn't be preferable, by the way, it should come to the sound. Um, it just stood there, and it was like ah, <laughs> like what? What's going on? I'm spooky. And the reason really it did that was because I imagine the mechanic is scripted so that it'll attach to where, wherever you are, and then it'll build a pathway to you. And if I'm prone underneath this desk that bridges two areas together, it doesn't understand where I am. It's like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how to get there. So it just doesn't do anything, which is really bad. Yep. I, I really feel like um, if, they, if they want to have you feel immersed in the experience, right? Um, if you get grabbed by a zombie while you're surrounded by other zombies, you're fucked. Like, that's the time for a quick time event. That's where you want to have games that have quick time events in them. If you get grabbed, you want to have that quick time event there to simulate to a degree frantic, you know, a frantic action that isn't exact. You trying to just batter this thing off of you and you just turn into mm -hmm. a button mash. Just mash that button as hard as you can to mirror what the character is going through. Which is what they do. Probably but one thing is like you shouldn't have invulnerability to the other zombies that are around you who just <laughs> stand still. Probably worth re reposting this meme for this stream. Too. Oh, that one's so good. <laughs> so <weird. laughs> I feel like Fat Geralt and the Dawn would get along really well. They're heroes. They're the hero the the their their movies Last of Us Two is basically a movie. Their their movies tried to portray them to be bad, but in our hearts we knew that they we knew they were the real heroes. That's the sad, sad reality just that the, they have to fight so much harder. Just the fact that people have latched onto Fat Geralt as like a hero <laughs> is it yeah. says so much about the game. Well, it's because it if reminds me of for, the dawn. Well, <laughs> like, you know. if, if it weren't for for Fat Geralt and the Rattlers, then Abby and Lev would have just gotten to the to the Fireflies with no problem. Yep. Whereas, like, at least. They got enslaved for a few months and got some form of punishment. At least they got enslaved for a few months. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sentence I ever thought yeah. I would say. <laughs> I mean, at least those women tricking cross country got enslaved. They were trying to deliver justice and then Ellie accidentally saves Abby. You're like, oh. Joel designed Sonic, huh? Damn. Anyway. Time, you don't have to think too hard to get past them. And while I got really excited for each encounter with the humans, I felt equal amounts of dread whenever I heard zombies nearby. However, the one fun thing is that if you're good enough, you can just melee the zombies and save some ammo. There's even this mini boss that I had to fight later on, and I didn't really have any ammo to spare, so I found out that I could just beat the shit out of him with my bare hands as long Why as I dodged his counterattacks. Why would you say that if you knew it wasn't true? That was pretty fun. I was actually glad that I got to do that. But... I don't know, it's just one of those things where if I was going through the video, I was like, oh wait, I said something that wasn't true. I should probably just edit that out of me saying that untrue thing. I'm having a brainwave here. I'm pretty sure, guys, people in chat who saw this, I'm pretty sure I tried to beat this thing to death, and I was told in chat that that was stupid of me to try because it was clear the game was telling me it can't be killed by melee. And then I said my issue was with the camera, less so my yeah, damage on the thing. Mm -hmm. But apparently you can kill this thing with me, uh, fists. So that person, was up and that person was fucking with me. I tried that a ton. I, I, it didn't work for me. At least when I was fighting the Rat King, I don't think you could defeat that thing with melee. No, you can't defeat the Rat no, King no. with melee. <laughs> no, no, no. The stalker. The stalker. Yeah. That thing I don't think you can defeat with melee. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even know whether or not I could. I just assumed I couldn't. Yeah, well, I did, and I'm gonna have to get the footage back, but the camera fucking couldn't handle it. I kept, like, doing, just doing the Guitar Hero thing. With the with the shitty fucking dodge mechanic, and eventually like it it, it got all gunked up because they have the um 
The fact that your forward momentum pushes you to a certain place when you're punching, at the same time you're supposed to lock into the enemy, and that's at the same time that the enemy can sometimes decide to start its own, you know, series of attacks. The game struggles to maintain that entire system because it tries to keep everybody on the same track, but sometimes they want to start a new track, sometimes the end track hasn't finished yet. Lots of tismy things happen. And I, I see it as, the whole time I see it as the game fighting itself, because it, it's desperately trying to remain on the same two tracks, but it's trying to start new ones up sometimes. And, uh, yeah, I was told I was an idiot because you shouldn't be trying to beat this thing. That's not, you can't kill it that way, and the game is telling you that. And I was like, I, okay. Oh, it's the game telling us, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just All funny right. because apparently you can do but it. I still wish that there were less zombies and more humans, right. which is sad because this is a zombie game. Now, maybe. Wait, is it? Is Why have, how have you determined it's a zombie game? I'm sorry, he said that he wished that there was less zombies. There's not even that many zombies to begin with. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the general zombies. conversation about this is that the zombies are an afterthought in this game. Which Absolutely. It's a yeah. revenge plot, first and foremost. Yeah, that's right. It's about revenge bad, which I know makes people upset to say that's what the game <laughs> is about, but that is what it is about. Revenge bad. Yeah. It's that we're simple. It, we're giving it as much complexity as it gave us. So, and there you yeah. go. Yeah, it, 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 for him to say that he wishes that there was like less zombies is like, oh, so you want just one zombie you section? Want, yeah. Two? None? <laughs> yeah, because there's very few. You you have um, the things that come to mind are the the I know you said fat zombie in reference to Geralt, like the fat zombie, the big chunk of zombie, uh, the Rat King as people are calling it, the right. the skyscraper descending bit. That's like I'm already running low. I'm like, oh, the bit yeah. after, after you throw Nora. Oh, into the spores, that's another one, I guess. Bit with that's only the, a couple uh, The zombies on the chains in the Rattlers compound. Um, uh, handlers in the subway, that's another one. The, the best yeah. the best ones, like, the, yeah, the, 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 the clickers in the subway when you're chasing after Nora, like, you're able to send them after the... Um, yeah, that's the, like, the, eh. I think, the two times they can do it in the game. Again, <laughs> again, the again game. Yeah. service. In Baldur's playthrough, they would go after him and ignore the wolves. It was so. fucking annoying the shit out of me. I was like, they, they, they will <laughs> ignore all of their human targets to go for the protagonist, and it's stupid. Uh, there was, like, yeah. some zombies in the section where Tommy's the, the sniper. Um, oh, yeah. He's like... Which, by the way, it confuses me that they're going after the the sound of the bullets ricocheting off the car and not yeah, as the opposed to the actual off. rifle. Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> it's uh, it's luck, lucky for Tommy that there's just a big group of zombies near the and area that people for are running. Tommy, he has I'm... Our infinite ammo. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the ricochet thing. I'm. Depending on what you're shooting, the ricochet can be super loud, and you would hear the ricochet before the the gunfire in the distance, and they would probably just, prioritize... Uh, well, he's shooting car, like, windows and stuff. That's what he's doing. I'm fine with him going towards those instead of the further away loud sound. I suppose the other element you can add is that he's lucky there's no zombies in his Around area. Him. Yeah, yeah, it would be drawn to his sniper. You just that's just not the case. It's like okay. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with them going to the to the bullet impacts, especially because if the zombies looked over there, they'd be like, oh shit, people. Hmm. I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm I'm still undecided on it, but the yeah, there's, there's plenty sure. wrong with with that <laughs> sequence outside of that. It's it, to me, it's still weird just because of how loud that sniper rifle is. Yeah, it's and, loud. Uh, like, we're not talking about, like, a suppressed weapon, right? So if, if he had a suppressor on his sniper rifle, that would make sense, at least. But Yeah, but I, then you wouldn't have your I, cool patoon, patoon then, sounds. Doesn't he <laughs> shoot at them when they're inside, though? Yes. They're inside the garage? All right, well, that, that further skews it towards the point of they'd go to the impact, closer to them, in that closed-off garage. That would dull the sound of the rifle in the distance, and it would amplify the sound of the... Well, the, the problem is that the, the rifle shoot. sounds really loud all the time in that sequence. And he's not like that far away. He's also not that far away. Like, it's not a really he's distant shot. He's not that far away, no. He I, is I like... still think they'd go towards the, the impact. I mean, that's what they would... That's the sound that would happen first anyway. And that well, in the game, be... it's not the sound that happens first. That's the problem. The game... Oh, yeah. Like, I guess I'm thinking no about delay. this too realistically. Yeah, in fact, now that you brought it up, there is no delay between the time that the bullet impacts and the, the sound, like the time that you actually hear it when there should be. 
And that's such Speed a basic of sound, guys. thing. It's not that fast. Yeah, it's such a basic <laughs> thing that adds a whole bunch to you well, know, the, it was uh, in Saving Private game, Ryan really. when uh when um uh oh god damn it. It was it was uh uh Vin Diesel's guy. He gets shot, he gets hit before uh you hear the sound of the rifle. Yeah, I mean it's I mean that's it's like it's it's pretty <laughs> basic. Composer, stuff. Composer, that's yeah. right. <laughs> and it's not like you have to it's just all you have to do is just delay the sound. That's all you have to do. It just doesn't seem like it would be that difficult to do. Obviously, I'm, I'm not a coder, but it just seems like that's a great detail to add in. That would make a lot of sense. Also, it's also in uh, The Accountant, that Ben Affleck movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, the delay between the shot and the actual sound. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to ask, well, Rags, you know the, con the concept of you're walking through an area and an NPC is in front of you and says, Hey, how you doing? And then as they finish their sentence, they move behind you and that sound follows through on your headphones or earphones, whatever you're using. Um, <laughs> do you find that impressive? Like, if something is behind me, you'll hear it I hear as though it it's from behind, you. behind me. Yeah. I mean, it's not really impressive. It's no, sort of the standard. It's pretty normal. Standard. Yeah. Pretty... I, again, I would argue that's standard at this point. If yeah, something attacks you from like the left, I feel like that's what I would expect. It like... would be, it would instantly make me question the game if that didn't happen. Directional yeah. sound so that's, that's is what I'm a saying. really standard thing. Like in Killing Floor 2. It's pretty important two, in a, video games. If a clock oh, very shouts important. at you from the left and it, the sound sounds equalized until you look around to see where it is, I'd be like, damn, that's fucked up. Like, they need to fix that. Like directional sound yeah. is one of those things that instantly gets players to be like, "Hey, this this is a bug in the game. It needs to be fixed." Especially if it's a game where you like a PvP game. If you're playing Apex or Counter Strike or anything like that, and the footsteps don't accurately, you know, give you an idea of where the actual feet are, that's something that players will instantly notice and bitch about. And that's the kind of stuff that can kind of ruin games. Right. And uh, it's just yeah, we so, so pretty, free, you know, watching so some, some reviews where they'd be like, "When people are in front of you." The sound will come from in front of you. And you're like, Whoa. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's actually unbelievable. Yeah, like, no shit. I mean, I'm happy to just move on. It's like. <laughs> Now, maybe I'm a masochist, but I actually really did enjoy restarting whenever I didn't nail my run the way I wanted to. Whenever I made it through an area, it's not but I masochism. ended up using... I don't, yeah, I don't... Why, why would that be masochism? I did, I did, often he did hates the same himself, thing. I guess. That's you wanting <laughs> to... replaying it again. Yeah, that's you just wanting personal satisfaction. That's Isn't one of the things that, that makes health masochism. Great. Yeah, to enjoy playing a game again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it reminds me of like the Raid Shadow Legends shit where it's like, if you buy now, you can skip the first five levels. You're like, wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for, for most games, it wouldn't be masochism, but for this game, I, I guess. I, I just think it's the concept more? of running a level twice. That's like, that's like unheard of, even though in stealth games, that's incredibly common. It's pretty common. Is, is he yeah. just trying to big himself up and give himself credit for something that's really basic? Because like, Maybe I'm an absolute perfectionist, but you know, I like to play through the game twice to see if I can do better next time. <laughs> right. I mean, stealth games, that's certainly a pretty common thing where yeah. there's no mechanical reason, like in game reason, why you would want to retry to do better. It's just a matter of, I know as a player, I could have done better. I'm going to restart mm -hmm. this segment, try it again, because I want to feel like I pulled it off like you're quote unquote supposed to. It's like, yeah. I technically succeeded, but not in my head. In my head, I, I didn't do as good as I should have. Well, I ended up restarting because I kind of had to. You only got one bullet every once in a while. Personally, this is how I like playing games, but if this isn't for you, then don't play on the highest difficulty. I guess in fairness to him, a lot of the, the random people of the world do just want to move through. They don't want to be like, oh, I'll do this again, but not spend that one bullet. While a lot of people mm -hmm. who love the challenge aspect would be like oh yeah i'm saving that one fucking bullet yeah yeah this is actually a pretty you know solid bit of advice from him you know i don't have a problem with that a lot of people are probably going to be more than okay with the idea that they wasted all their ammo and they hope the game will restock them gonna hurt your feelings if i was scoring the combat on its own i would say on the hardest difficulty i got like an eight out of ten experience out of that I only feel like the harder you go, the more the game will fall apart. <laughs> I don't think I'd give The Witcher an 8 out of 10 for combat. That's, that's what I mean, it's pretty fucking high. When you're talking about yeah. combat in video games, like, damn. Yeah, he did, he did say experience, though. Really 
said. The implication being how he, he, he felt during all of it. So if that's it, that's it. Eight out of ten would be like for me. I guess it'd be like Infamous Two or maybe Spider Man. Infamous. Here. I wouldn't even give Infamous Two. I really like Infamous, but I wouldn't give it an eight. <laughs> no way. I'm it's got think... problems. Eight out of ten. Um, yeah. Are we Doom? I give an eight out of ten. I would probably yeah. give Doom an eight out of ten. Yeah, because this is a matter of you really want to give yourself room for those nines and tens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. What would like in terms of gameplay? Uh, like, what would a 10 out of 10 game be? Um, uh, probably something uh, really basic. Like Tetris? Like Tetris. Maybe like a Mario game would be. Yeah, yeah Tetris Mario is probably 10 Tetris, out of 10 if know. I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, would be the ten, 10s out of 10s. Where they, Free they absolutely nail the scope of the project. Like, it's. There's yeah, nothing like left it's. To prove on. You, you'd have to struggle to think. It is how as I... good as it could ever possibly be. Almost. Probably, yeah. I don't yeah. see how you could improve something, you know, in that in that sense. Like, how do you make it better? Like, I don't even know what better would look like. Pringy, what about uh, Uncharted Four? What would you What would you rate that? Uh, like, probably a seven. I think it's good, um, but not like fantastic. It's pretty straightforward. Is I guess the problem. So, like, I'm not sure if I would give it anything. I think I need a little bit more mechanical depth. Like, Devil May Cry is more like at, you know, eight, nine territory there, like, in terms of our gameplay. And I would say the difference between, like, above five and below five would be its functionality. Um, yeah. It, it would have nothing to do mm. with, you know, spectacle or anything like that. It would just be, does it work? Is it consistent? Uh, and do then you from get there, it's how you... well does it work, you know? Yeah, like how well yeah. does it does it yeah does it work gets you to a five, um, yeah. And then complexity takes you the rest of the way, is it? Or? Um, maybe. I don't how, know if I need complexity necessarily. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so either. That's why I put Tetris as like a ten, mm. because it's, it's it is kind of, both. It's kind of relative to argue complexity on Tetris, is it not? Like, there's people out there who are the best Tetris players ever, and they. they oh can... yeah, the game is uh deep, but mechanically it's very uh straightforward. Yeah, like, almost in the same way as chess. Functional... Like chess so mechanics they're are very straightforward. Like elegance and like implementation, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. sort of in a sense, yeah. Uh, but that's why when you know I was thinking of a ten out of ten, I instantly went to a very simple concept executed extremely well. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's necessarily um rewarding or um yeah, you know, it gives you incredible feedback. But it is executed incredibly, you know, perfectly, essentially. Which is not how I would describe The Last of Us 2. No, <laughs> not, not quite. I was bored out of my fucking mind, and it was not an experience that I would like to relive. I understand that not everybody is a masochistic gamer like me, and some people just want to get through the story, and they don't care about the gameplay that much. But I played it on the hardest difficulty, so and I really... ask why you're playing video games in the first place, but... Yeah, um... Yeah. I think that it's kind of a prerequisite, I would say, for people. You know, should I review games, Rags? It's like, well, do you like playing games? Eh, not really. It's like, then maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. If you didn't really care about gameplay, then you're not the medium for you. Maybe movies are more your thing. And we know movies aren't cosmonauts' thing, so he's kind of in a pickle. <laughs> maybe his, his forte shall be books or um, um, food critic. How about that? Mm. Mm. Only liked it because videos. I was on the hardest difficulty, so I think that's worth noting. So anyway, now we got to talk about the real meat and potatoes of this game, the story. Oh boy. And you can't oh do God. that without spoiling. If so the meat I'm... and potatoes of a game is the story, I'm like, oh, that better be really fucking good story. If I'm playing a game, but the meat and potatoes is the story. Still want mechanics to complement the story, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna spoil the game now, okay? That's your warning. Don't yell at me. I'm going to spoil it. Let's -a go. Honestly, the story of this game is a mixed bag, and that's putting it lightly. There are aspects of this story uh, that I add. It's shit. Wow. I it's it's shit. pretty yeah. trash all around. I'm struggling to think of good scenes that aren't the flashback. The well, flashback. Well, just that one <laughs> flashback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, the flash I, almost, I was almost about to say the flashbacks, and I stopped and just like, well, oh, that's singular. There, there is that one uh, bit in that one flashback where Joel cuts up a uh, a bloater like it's nothing with a machete. I like that part. 
That's that's cool. And depending on your playthrough, he did all the damage to that bloater. <laughs> yeah. I was half expecting Ellie to go, Joel, what the fuck? What are you doing? I can't believe you. This is just like I you. <laughs> I was supposed to die in that motel. Absolutely love, and there are a lot of things that left me baffled. Truly and utterly baffled on why they chose to do things the way that they like did. Like the same. Them. But my annoyance is mo oh. Well, no, go ahead. No, I was about to say, this is the whole scene where you have, you know, them confronting each other about what Joel did, and I'm like, Joel, explain this to her. Joel, no, yeah. don't sit there and say, explain this to her. You have so much information to give her, and you're just not doing it. Yeah, Fuck, yeah. Joel, I can't believe it. Lost. It's like he doesn't know what to say, and it's like, Joel, did, did you not think about this? Did you not think maybe this day would come and plan anything out to say no, exactly just, what you just would tell say. her what happened yeah it is so it's simple it's like you hate me but let me tell you what fucking happened well it's like what they did Toy Story 4 where they have Woody just at a loss for words uh, in that argument with Bo and it's like no Woody you're in the right here and Bo's in the wrong and they just uh, the, the writer doesn't believe that Woody's in the right though and the, yeah, he, and so he, then Woody he doesn't make the arguments that he should be making. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the frustrating part of bad writing when they just intentionally nerf a character because they yeah. it doesn't serve the plot that they want to push. Yeah, their intelligence and their knowledge is getting in the way. This is the thing with um the Joel scene. A lot of people argue over what exactly was his motivation. You don't know for sure. You don't know if it had anything to do with the cure. Well, like, it would have been wait, nice wait. if the game gave us something. What does it matter? Yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't it, yeah, matter. But Joel would know, and Joel would relay that yeah. to the person. It doesn't matter what was actually in his head for the motivation. We saw what happened. He was a gun was put on him. He was knocked out. His shit was taken. The deal was welched on. There's loads of things he can talk about. Yeah, it's like I. Why are you not saying anything here? Use your words, man. Yeah, describes yeah. in vague terms and it's like you don't even need to do that just explain why you did it you can explain why you saved her it's like you had a reason for that and it's like well yeah why did it need to be two sentences why couldn't you just say a little bit more like so because, talk about because what if happened. he explained himself then the retcon would fall apart well if he explained yeah. himself the retcon would fall apart and ellie would seem totally unreasonable yeah ellie would talk to him she'd talk it through Instead, she can well, go, I'm weird, she, dad, she would, yeah. She's the weird, know. unreasonable cunt in this game. And you're like, fuck, man. It's like, geez. Everyone's just ruined. So yeah. We were one tier away from them writing it as him saying, the whole world was going to be rainbows and sunshine, but I stopped it. But I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, I I... that was in their first draft. Well, it's, yeah, it's just... the, the problem all of this creates then is like you're you're frustrated at Joel because he suddenly can't explain himself, and yeah. you're you're you end up pissed off at Ellie as well because you know what Joel did and why, and it's like you you instinctively then just think Ellie's just being an arsehole and and mm -hmm. being like mean to him and and dismissive and disrespectful without acknowledging anything that he went through and anything that he had to do. So both characters then come across badly they're both like ruined by this you mentioned yeah, this before yeah. but like they act like ellie didn't know that something was going on at the end of the last yeah, yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. like she was completely clueless it's like no she and that, and that, yeah and that's yeah. why it's, it's again it's necessary to change things and have characters not know or not say important things in order to make this this function otherwise it wouldn't work and yeah it's, it's just so simple just just tell her what happened. All you gotta do is just tell her what happened. And this is the thing, uh, there are like 17 different elements to the story that are really interesting for him and Ellie to talk about. Not one was mentioned. So annoying and unfair. But uh, it gets in this storyline. <laughs> well, the explanation is if you uh, find the super secret Easter egg where you get uh, Joel's trading card, it explains that his strength is at 100, but his, his brains is at 10. <laughs> oh, oh, how can he have lived this long? <laughs> he was that smart. Oh, hey, uh, hey, armed strangers that I have never met before. Oh, you're uh, you're just a couple miles away from our town. Yeah, I, I live down there, and my name is Joel, by the way. You're an idiot, <laughs> South Park. Joel, Don't Joel you see? in the first game was never portrayed as dumb. Okay, he's not like the most articulate man in the world, but he's able to convey like situations that happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he can't, wouldn't he just sit there stupid. and that's the thing. Yeah, he, he wouldn't just stupid. accept her alive. hatred. 
If okay. anything, this is the one time where he should, you know, like use his words because he doesn't want this person of all people in the world to hate him. Well, and he passionately when he knows believes it's not warranted. that he would make the same decision again. And it's like, hey, Joel, why do you believe that? Explain it. Yeah. Uh, you were going to say, Mahler? You're an idiot because Joel is soft. You see, spending years <laughs> in a town that's regularly yeah. attacked by zombies with th hundreds of people that he cares about to protect going on regular patrols always looking over his shoulder for all the things that he's done, that turned him soft. Let's not forget, yeah, forget that this game what? established that there are bandits that attack that town. Yeah, there have been bandits and writers, yeah. So it's not just zombies that are, like, a threat to that town, it's other humans. Changes like that at any rate. No one is gonna, like, who's lived in this apocalypse for, like, 25 years at this point, in four years you're telling me he goes completely soft and is just... Trusting everyone. It's like there's so no way. No. Yeah, you're you're never going to trust people after all of the things he's been through. You're never ever gonna just meet a stranger and well, be like, Oh the... yeah, I'm gonna assume you're alright. That's the finale of the first game. He chose yeah, Ellie that's over what humanity. Adds value. Yeah. That's what adds so much incredible value to their relationship and what it becomes. Is she's the exception, but it's earned. Mostly Remember when Last of Us was good? I do. Place that great. with many IPs over the past fucking decade. <laughs> that is whole How does true. it feel to watch your favorite franchises go <laughs> up in smoke would we'll never get old as like a joke? <laughs> yeah, it feels great. <laughs> the fact that people are I'm mad so at the wrong. So you've been untouched by the writing that's happening today. Yeah. They did them. But my annoyance is mostly at the fact that people are mad at the wrong things in this game. Oh, oh really? Oh, Dude, tell. Okay. Let's, yeah, tell, 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 tell us how correct things, things are. are. Thing that I... <laughs> so get, guys, get in your bomb shelters. We got a nuclear take. It's probably coming. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, people already. are just mad at the fact that Joel dies. No. Yep, that's the only sure reason he's mad. It's just the fact that he dies. It has nothing to do with the fact that the circumstances around it make no sense, that he has to act out of character, that this is a guy who is extremely competent after being seasoned for over 25 years or so of, of uh, fighting other humans. He doesn't trust anyone, and he just goes ahead and he gives people his, his name. He just gives his name. Y'all act like you heard me or something. <laughs> when he knows, he knows that there would be people searching for him after what he did in Salt Lake City. At the beginning of the stream, we were talking about it, and I was I was kind of close to telling everyone that we get it. Stop saying over and over that we'd be fine with Joel dying if they did it right. Like we all know, stop saying it. We get it. And I didn't say anything. Just to, it just goes to show how much it said. How much we have to reiterate over and over. <laughs> We're fine with Joel dying. I bet most people expected Joel to die. Yeah, I it kind seems of like, thought it would well, happen. Again, yeah, it seems natural for the progression of the story that, you know, he would sort of die. Can I actually go ahead and uh, offer my idea that I, I sent to you, Mahler, about what to do to kill Joel off two hours into the game and then have us play as his killer later on and sympathize with her in a way that would be way more effective than what we got. Can I read that out? Wow, so you want to you wanna give out your own piece of writing and then say, everyone, look how good it is, you fucking vain, pompous exactly. piece <laughs> of shit. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, all right. So, um, this is going to be in my critique. I say, if the intent is to make Abby an, an effectively sympathetic character, then she should probably be related to someone that Joel has killed prior to the events of the first game. Considering he pretty much admits to having killed innocent people in his past, why not make Abby a daughter of one of those innocent people that he killed back when he was a hunter? You could have a flashback of an innocent family being ambushed in a similar manner to how Joel and Ellie were in the first game. Her dad could get seriously wounded during the ambush. Then her and her mom could find a spot to take cover as the hunters come closer. And Abby could get a clear look at them as they execute her dad. And the camera could pan up to reveal a slightly younger looking Joel. We're talking anywhere between 5 to 15 years before the events of the first game. Uh, one of the other hunters could even call Joel by his name, allowing Abby a chance to know the face and name of the man who killed her father without provocation. And then she and her mother could slip away and evade Joel and his fellow hunters. You could even turn that into a gameplay segment where you're playing as Abby or her mother as you try to get to safety and maybe even have Joel constantly on your trail. And because you'd have to be an undefeatable NPC, the player would get a sense of how frightening it would have been to be on the receiving end of his bloodlust from the earlier years of the apocalypse. So make Joel an antagonist for... A segment of gameplay. That'd be cool. 
I think. Yeah, I think I'm good. cool with like action in in the sense of like in Halo Five, it probably would have been a good idea to have an actual boss fight with Master Chief. Like that that would have been pretty cool. It's kind of a shame they never did that or anything good at all in that fucking game. <laughs> but, no, we're all just mad that Joel died. Okay, there's there's nothing yeah. that we can do to make it work. Kind of reminds me of um, yeah, like, TLJ, where it's like you just mad Luke is dead. You'd be like, it was clearly the method. And then he didn't do his flips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're mad, Luke. Is it the way you want him? It's like, can you stop with this shit? Like, focus on the actual arguments. Come on. I had so many tons of people do it, and it's like, just please uh, argue against what we're actually saying, rather than just saying this is what we're saying. It's like we're not saying that. So, people in my chat who are angry that Joel doesn't get a redemption arc, which isn't even really all that true, because he does admit his lie to Ellie, and they do talk about it a little. How is that a redemption arc? How is that a redemption arc? <laughs> this is, if anything, this is the first step that one might take towards a redemption arc. This isn't an arc. An arc implies completion. Yep. How would he even redeem himself for what he did at the end of the I don't the feel he gets shot on for being himself, nice yeah. to her. That's what I mean. Like... Uh, does he need to be redeemed for lying? Is that is that what we're saying, or is it that he uh, are we are we just being definitive that what he did at the end of the first game is absolutely evil? Is is that what we're well, saying? Yeah, it's like, it's like, like his arc that uh, they're trying to portray in this game is just him coming to terms with the fact that he's been wrong about everything he's ever done in life. <laughs> because of Joel, literally every death that happens after the first game is Joel's fault. True, I do. good authority. I know this. It hurts to listen to people say this because, like, man, they're gonna knock the fuck out of that straw man. They're gonna fuck yep. it up. A little bit. You're fuck that straw man really up. Genuinely think that Joel was the hero of the first game? He was. Uh, he was. Okay, so I will, I will say this: he did bad things in the past, but everything that we see him do in the first game is pretty much justified. Like gameplay wise, everything that we see him do is justified. He is always killing to survive. He is always killing in self-defense. And in the at the end of the game, he is killing a bunch of people who are going to murder a 14-year-old girl without getting surgeon's consent from her. He's the hero. He's the hero. He would define as the hero. If he's saying people think Joel's the hero and he's not a good guy, it's like, well, a hero doesn't necessarily need to be Altruistic. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I hate the idea that if you've committed a crime or a misdeed, you can no longer act heroic. Like what? Which is not what. That's what makes the heroic actions all the more meaningful because someone's breaking from their habits. Like the entire first game is his redemption arc. Like that's what that's what he's all about. He goes from this like callous survivor who just like does what he has to do to keep going to like actually believing in something and protecting a person that he cares about and being willing to sacrifice everything for her there's his redemption right there i'm i'm i hope he gets into what he thinks the redemption arc is because it'll probably tell us a lot about how he views these in media which will probably inform yeah. us quite a bit people played that game and watched the ending and thought to themselves wow Joel saved his daughter from those bad doctors. Yes. Pretty much. He did. <laughs> he absolutely did. They I mean, were going I mean, to kill her. They were going to operate on her without waking her up, telling her what was going to have to happen, and saying, so are you okay with this? And people can say, oh, she's 15. She can't consent. Okay, so legally speaking, no, but we're not talking about laws here. We're just talking about ethics. Okay. So, yeah, we, you know, the idea that was that is built because you know there's a concept that she doesn't understand the ramifications of the choice. But I'm pretty sure Ellie would, from what we we learned from her in the first yeah. game. Mm -hmm. She's mature enough. Yeah. She understands they were going what to death is. To kill their only immune subject, man. They get her, and on the day that they get her, they don't want to run further tests on her. They don't want to study her. They don't want to make her into, like, a living lab rat that, you know, they take care of, you know, but... Uh, yeah, like they just want the standard her. thing for I think it's more the idea that um, is if, antibodies. if the Fireflies were given an option to ask her, and if she said no, would they listen to her? If the answer is no, then that says a lot about the Fireflies. Well, the oh. thing is, they don't give her the option... They're, no, they're they don't because they don't want to give her the option. I don't think. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is arguably worse. If they had asked her and she said no, they went. I'm sorry, we've got to push through. But if they like, don't ask her just in case she says no. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> like, <wow. laughs> you know, to make us feel better about ourselves. It, it's amazing <laughs> that like Marlene is like, this is what she would want, and yet it's like, do you know that for well, sure? Maybe ask her. Like, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You don't. Know. Like, wake her up. 
if you're so confident that this is what she would want, just wake her up and and confirm. If after all, if this is what she'd want, what's the what's the harm, right? Time is not also, the essence here, guys. You've got time, you know. I'd love yeah, to just the world has kind of slowed down a bit for you. No worries. Yeah. I'd love to jump into the game and be like, hey Ellie, they drugged you to say they're gonna do tests to kill you. How does that make you feel? Yeah, it, about that. never mind the fact that you were making plans with Joel. Never mind the fact that you say, after we're done with this, I will go wherever you want to take me right after the giraffe scene. <laughs> like, like they were making plans. She was not planning on dying. She did not know that she would have to die. Now, of course, she's like, this can't all be for nothing. But at the same time, it's, it's fucking crazy unethical well, to just opt to kill her without telling her anything. Here's saying it can't all be for nothing. I'd sit her down and be like, okay, so this is actually where your um your age might be fucking you over. Let's go over exactly what happens if they get a vaccine out of you, okay? There's a lot to cover. <laughs> I don't know if we want to cover it. Yeah, but take a seat. Many variables <laughs> that don't lead so, to happy sunshine earth. Like Nate, the f starting off is the uh the syringes. Like you would need so much equipment to distribute a vaccine and they're like a terrorist <laughs> like, how, are they gonna do that? how about you trials would, well i mean the 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 infrastructure and the transportation you would need to actually get it around the country doesn't exist like, let does, alone the world yep yeah, it's not there and you're then, gonna need million millions of doses of it which you can't that, manufacture because you don't have any factories is that what they would do are the fireflies yeah. good at traveling far distances? No, because Marlene says oh, that she lost yeah. half her. You guys are all are you, operating are under the assumption that the fireflies just want to give this would out. Would even just yeah. give it away, which I don't are know. They, are, yeah, are they going to turn this into some negotiating tool to become the dominant faction? What I happened? Would imagine, yes. And what then, happened? Was what happened like the WLF find out that they're hoarding the that the cure in the hospital, <laughs> and then run and remember clickers, all uh, of the conflicts in the second game. They don't have anything to do with zombies. It's all factual. And remember wars. that even if you make a cure, the zombies can still kill you, which is the main threat that they pose. Yeah, bloaters, yeah. shamblers, the, the rat king, runners, stalkers, they all still exist. And they're all a huge threat. In fact, if you list all of the threats in the world, spores are possibly on the lowest level. On the lower tier, yeah. The, the, the fire fire fire. Fire. The spores, they only really form in, like, basements and things, don't they? Like... Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and you can combat them with wearing a gas mask. The, the Meanwhile, fire... the fucking faction war that's happening, it's like, that's like the biggest deal with all the death in this game. It's like, a fucking cure's gonna do anything for that. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, the Fireflies are losing their war against Fedra. They are growing desperate, okay? And so I'm just thinking, like, you really think that they would be willing to just allow everyone to immunize you think but that they, it's they use probably this? their ticket to survival they're like shit we're really kind of backed into a corner here if we tell them we have a cure and if we just say hey we've got some really really good doctors and stuff we'll work with you just you know in the war do a truce we'll become part of you we'll let you control us but you know this is our ticket to survival here but then with a would fedra even believe them i um, mean you could probably this is something they could test yeah they would check it out at least. Yeah, they definitely they would check it out. Yeah, if you came up to them and said, "Hey, we've actually developed a cure. We want a ceasefire, and you can have all of it you want. We just want to live." Basically, Pedro would probably be like, "Prove it." Then we'll talk. Also, well, someone said and we have the doctors and all the people who can actually make that happen. Um, Marlene helped raise Ellie, therefore she would count as her consent. No. Wait, did, 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 is that even true? How, how was it? I know Marlene. First of all, uh, Marlene sent Ellie to go to the the Fedra like boarding school thing, the military preparatory school. And when um, <laughs> in the first scene that we see Ellie, uh, Joel's like, "Oh, you're you're recruiting kind of young, aren't you?" And she says, "She's not one of mine." I, 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 I they know each other like she she kind of went to her because she had no other choice. She got bitten, right? Either way, yep. um, I was just going to highlight that that doesn't mean you don't ask Ellie. Yeah, that's yep. that's not a form of consent. Someone else. Well, someone I, else. I don't think we should be appealing to law in a lawless fucking world. Like that doesn't even make sense. Ask the or, girl yes. if she's okay with dying in order to potentially create a cure. Which, by the way, there's a lot of dodgy shit with the creation of a cure as well. Yeah. Yeah. Law and and ethics are two separate things. 
I don't think we'll be going by whatever state's, you know, uh, current legal system says is the consent limits. I don't think that's what we'd be going by. Ellie is perfectly capable of rationalizing the concept of dying to save people. It's one thing if she would actually be, like, um, comatose to the point where she will never wake up. But the, 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 the fact is, that's not the case because she wakes up eventually. And if the Fireflies just aren't able to test whether or not she'd be able to wake up eventually, then they're fucking incompetent doctors. Well, so. I, I fail to fucking believe that they decide to, that they need to kill her within the first, like, half day. It's like, dude, do some fucking tests for a while. You got a live they, subject. Yeah, like, they ran, like, a couple tests, that, like, one of which was a spinal tap. They somehow got cerebral uh, spinal fluid from her. The surgeon's recorder mentions that. And, like, you can do a spinal tap, but you can't do, like, a, a brain biopsy. Like, a, a white matter brain biopsy might have some side effects. Yeah, she should have every her. test that doesn't kill her done first. Yeah, what absolutely. Would, like, what, 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 what is, could possibly is, be wrong by just yeah, waiting? Yeah, I think that they'd be testing her antibodies and her white Test blood everything. cells everything. I like mean, that. this yeah. is unprecedented. Who knows what information you can gather from this, this specimen? There's, do all the things. There's no way that you can, like, test for all of those things in less than a day. No fucking yeah, way. Yeah, no. I don't even want to check the amount of time it takes no. to get results for all of these different tests in case it is a lot longer than that, but I'm talking I about, like, stress tests. Have her run for an hour and see how her vitals change. You know, shit like that. I, I don't believe that anything short of the technology that Shuri from Black Panther has access to would be <laughs> able to run that many tests and get results uh, back that quickly in, in less than a day. Fuck no. No, not with the level of technology and, and equipment that they have available, especially. Mm -mm. Also, the fact that the um, that Abby's dad, let's just address the fact that there's no way that he is older than, what, 42, 43? This is 20 years, 21 years after the outbreak. So he was, what, 22 when, uh, when the outbreak happened? He was... In med school, or he was just out of med school at best. He definitely did not complete his post grad, and yet we're supposed to believe that he is experienced enough when it comes to brain surgery and when it comes to vaccinology to create a vaccine out of this. Really, you're telling me he is just the most amazing uh, prodigy when it comes to medical knowledge in existence. He is the and one well, person on Earth. If they, if they could stuck with the that. original character model who looked to be about <laughs> late late fifties, early sixties, that would have been a lot more believable. Yeah, yeah, true. Also, uh, he couldn't pass his information on to anyone in any way, not even a booklet. Nope. No, no, no. Couldn't have dictated anything. Even though no he was he was considered the lead surgeon, implying there are other surgeons that surely can at least understand the concept of what fucking shit you can do. Nope, he is, this is the one guy who can develop a vaccine for a fungus, which doesn't exist, by the way, in the real world. Uh, you know, even with, like, medical communities trying to figure that shit out. No, this one guy is supposed to vaccinate the most aggressive fungus in history. There is no fungal infection that has ever existed that is as aggressive as the cordyceps in this game. And so... And he's supposed to... <laughs> Can, can I, I can't. all of that put together, right, you can conclude the Fireflies are incredibly incompetent, downright malicious, uh, incredibly, like, rushing everything, like, head first. I've no, give no shits, um, about, like, a, a basic level of morality. Like, I don't actually care if you think, um, like, I'm gonna shoot rags and it'll save the world, I have it as a guarantee. I'm still telling him. I don't need to just do it without his consent, just because I know that it'll save the world. That shit's fucked up. And besides, we're in the post-apocalypse. This is not quite the same as saving the current world we're living in, which was all lives on this planet against one. This is all lives, like this potentially is the key word, <laughs> because we really have no guarantee. And uh, people are fucking crazy all over the all over the world right now. I don't even know how many are left or how to get it to them. It's Joel's choice could have been informed by a metric ton of reasoning. Except in the second game, they tell us definitively all he was thinking about was, I don't want her to die, though. That's it. I'd be, okay. I'd be okay with dying. Like, if someone had to shoot me in the head in order to, in order to like, stop Judgment Day, sure, I'd give my consent to that. Like, I, I understand, you know? But something like this? I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be okay it's with not a sure thing. killing me. That's the yeah, problem. it's, 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 it's not, a, not sure a sure thing. thing. Black and white, and 
the last of us two absolutely treats it like it's black and white it's like no it, it, he would have saved the world it's like we don't know that we're just, we're yeah it's, there's, there's no guarantee yeah. that the world would have been saved or even substantially improved and there's no guarantee <laughs> yeah. that the world is going to like completely end if this doesn't happen like this is several years later you've got you know um you've got settlements like where joe and ellie are living now that seem to be pretty prosperous and and safe and they're they're doing well there's probably places like that all around the world, you know. It's actually, so, high in the sky. Sky, actually, like introducing something like that into these different factions that could actually make things worse, cause more conflict. Like that's a possibility as well. Also, uh, there's someone in chat saying, um, "You don't think Marlene weighed those options?" Well, evidently, she didn't figure that it would be, you know, okay to go ahead and and get a uh, Ellie's consent. And yeah, say, is... why would I trust Marlene anyway? What do I care if she weighed it up? She doesn't seem of good character to me. The average experimental vaccine only has Which a funny. chance. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's just... Mola just said, like, oh, I don't trust Marlene. But, like, the game treats her like she is a good guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> especially in this one. Well, she's, well, oh, she's, she's the one that decides Ellie. everything to do with Joel. She's the one who welches on the deal. She's the one who's like, no, you can't yeah. even see her. Get the fuck out of here. And she will, in, <laughs> in the same breath, be like, Invitus, I'm going to go tell him because he's the only one who understands the gravity of the situation. It's like, what do you mean, Marlene? I love that. What the fuck? I'm going go to yeah. go tell him and then tell him to fuck off. Might as You'd well think not tell him anything. <laughs> if they were pragmatic liars, you might, you should might even go like, yep, we're going to house her here for a lot of tests. Okay. You can leave now. You know, not not actually be like we're gonna kill her because she should know the kind of implication they'll have, and then Joel can be like, "What are you gonna do with her?" It's like, "Oh, test, test, tests. Bye." Yeah, can we? Can we? Or all just like this? really, if you were gonna be like super pragmatic about it, just have Joel killed yourself because yeah. like he's gonna suspect <laughs> that something's up here, and he's he's and just only, gonna come back. Only one dude to escort him out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's like the exact opposite of what you, it's it's. Like they have a guide to how to be a creepy evil organization 101, and they followed all of the steps perfectly. Incompetent and maliciously fucking negligent evil. There's there's so many words that apply to everything about it. And if Joel had gotten all of this out to Ellie, oh my god, the game would have been improved dramatically because there's they, it can't fall into the narrative that they wanted it to. Well, I'm but okay with Joel leaving. Doesn't. I'm okay with him, like, not necessarily having this rationale. Like, he doesn't have that, to have all of it, but he certainly has to have some of right. this. Yeah, and I'm just thinking, like, what, what about the trials, man? Like, you'd have to run trials on this vaccine to make sure that it works before you distribute it. <laughs> and it that would take a shitload of time. And they, they run the risk of possibly running out of, uh, of um, samples from the tissue extracted from Ellie's brain before they actually even come up with one. Like, there is a strong likelihood, there's too strong of a likelihood that Ellie would die for nothing. And at that point, like, what is the, uh, what's the value of a human life? What, what's it worth? That's what I think. I think Joel decided it's worth saving her, even with the potential of, you know, it's just too risky to, to risk all of that. But humanity's not exactly in a great position, is kind of where I was going with that. Mm -hmm. Really really bad job trying to recontextualize all that to the point where it's 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 a retcon of all that stuff and Absolutely. if that's what you this have is, to resort yeah. to to make a sequel that's just shitty writing and there's no excuse for it considering it's seven years and you've had all this time to bounce around ideas people would have gladly waited as long as it needed to be if you said you were going to make another one there's just no excuse there's no excuse other than a lack of talent this um, is basically like an Elseworld story at best. Like this is a this is set in a in a universe where The Last of Us played out a lot differently. Not the game that we actually got. And and um, they make him have puppy dog face like in all of his scenes where he's told he's wrong, as if he's like, oh, true. Yeah. It's like what? No. Yeah, you know how, gonna... how about a bit of anger, like of all the things that he had to go through and all the things he had to sacrifice and probably the killing that he had to do that he didn't want to for her. And it's like, yeah, it's all getting thrown back in his face and he's being treated like a piece of shit. Like, how about a little bit yeah. of like, yeah, yeah, you know what? I've had to do some pretty fucking yeah, horrible things for you. Shit. Yeah. Tess was my friend too. I knew her longer than you did. You felt bad about that? <laughs> like, oh, oh, it's dude. like, just have some fucking balls and actually stand up for yourself. But again, he's not allowed to because this game mm -hmm. wants payoffs that it doesn't earn. 
all those uh, precious memories that they made together after he saved her, the museum, the teaching her how to swim, teaching her how to play guitar, watching Jurassic Park with her, like, fuck, man. That, those are experiences all that she will all miss if she dies. Yeah, of all the things that he needs to be invested in, this is the one thing, and he just doesn't. People, people someone tried say, saying to me, oh, well, parents will sometimes shoot themselves in the foot intentionally and hide information from their kids to protect them from the truth. I mean, it's like, no, for Joel, this is like the one thing that's giving him purpose. No, the, the, truth would, the, the truth would only benefit the both of them. Yeah. There's no reason for him to hide anything. It only does good if he tells her all this stuff. Their relationship is better. She feels better. Like, no, actually, your life, your your death wasn't, potential death wasn't wasted. We should totally be cool now. It's weird we've waited this long. But, like, once you know the facts of what happened, your entire tune will change. I think that she should really only be mad at him for lying to her for as long as, as he did. Like, that's a more just thing to feel angry about but the fact that the the final cutscene is her yelling i was supposed to die in that hospital my life would have fucking mattered like no your life you, probably wasn't gonna matter <laughs> like sorry yeah and it's, it it seems almost narcissistic as well to take that it approach does. to it yeah. like it's about me like i should have been important and you took that importance away from me it's like you're you're completely not understanding that the factors at play here and you're making it about you not to mention mm -hmm. again they were making plans with each other and ellie just expected joel to read her mind and know that she would have been totally willing to die and just like fuck the plans that we've made together yeah i never, I never say goodbye to you I, all that stuff she just didn't care about like we, we never she would have wanted, wanted yeah but yeah we it's don't say What a shame. What a game, what a game. Right. And the whole, my it's... life would have mattered. He didn't do a speech that he should have done. Like, your life does matter to all the people here, to me, you know. Yeah. All, all that, I mean, I, if I were writing it, it'd be like, she, may, was, she would maybe want to say something like that, you know, she wanted a meaningful death, and Joel says to her, and I wanted you to have a meaningful life. And then, boom. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, there you start. go. Done. Bang. Yep. That's that's the moment where the character like is just speechless because like holy shit. What a hero. I had people in my chat saying that his death was unfair because they brutally murdered and I quote a beloved character. Yeah. He is. He's beloved he as is. fuck. There's, Wait, you Red. can like you can prove oh, this can metrically. Like it's pretty fucking easy. Joel skyrocketed as iconic characters from video games on Sony's like catalog. Yeah, like the 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 backlash to this game basically proves how beloved he was to yeah, everybody. Yeah, the fact that people are so mad should indicate that yeah, people liked him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, how about how about we look at just the Wikipedia article for Joel? Give me one sec, Joel. Last of Us, and then we'll look at reception. Okay, we'll just no, uh, just go to go to top five Sony characters. Mm -hmm. Go to top five PS4 characters or something like that. Top five PS4 characters. Okay, we've got Joel's character received generally positive feedback. Colin Moriarty found that he cared about the character and considered him likable. Andy Kelly of Computer and Video Games wrote that Joel has a likable warmth in his laconic Texan drawl. Jim Sterling of Destructoid found Joel likable despite his impatience and harsh tone. Eurogamer's Ollie Welsh felt that by the game's end, Joel and Ellie had matured from cliches into rounded characters. Yeah, um, I got this list. I've got Joel and Ellie. I just, uh, another one. To, yeah, I found one. Best PlayStation 3 characters. Number one, Nathan Drake. Number two, Joel. <laughs> yeah. I like how number three is Kratos, number four is John Marsden, number five is Ellie. Joel is beloved. Fuck you. Oh, <laughs> I love Joel. It's so ridiculous. It's like, how could anyone possibly think it? It's like, this is actually a quote from my chat. It's like, yeah, he, he literally is a beloved character. People Why would people absolutely... really like The Last of Us 1 if they didn't like Joel? He's yeah, like he's one kind of integral to it. He's a playable <laughs> character. What the... Okay. 
Wouldn't really <laughs> suck to play a game with a character with a protagonist who's unlikable. Gosh. But you can you see how it's then so easy to frame this and to set up like this straw man argument. It's like, well, he was yeah. never really that beloved anyway. And it's like, you shouldn't feel bad about him dying because he wasn't that oh. popular and he wasn't a good person. Sour grapes, man. Actually, you're right. So the argument here, if we ignore what he just said, the argument is a beloved character shouldn't get a death like this, I suppose. I would just argue it shouldn't be treated this way. But then no character should be treated this way as nonsensically as this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with him dying brutally. I am not okay with yeah. the circumstances leading up to him dying brutally being bullshit. And I'm not okay, I'm very not okay, with being told that we should sympathize with a person who sadistically tortures him to death in front of his surrogate daughter and, and think, oh, she's such a good person, when her motivation is bullshit. If I, if I was in charge of making this game, I would have been like, oh, we gotta make a sequel? Oh, well, Joe's gonna die a hero's death. That's what's going to happen. This is what we're doing. It makes sense. It, it's, it'll be super satisfying to everybody. People will love it. He'll go down in history as a great character. Or he's going to have so much respect. It's just all wins. We're just passing out Ws at this point. It's just this, the obvious thing to do that makes so much sense on every level. And they're like, no, let's do the opposite. Fuck it. I mean, the fact that, like... So, a character being beloved doesn't necessarily mean that they're well written it's just you know they're positively received in general right this is a consensus yeah Bobby Frick, argument yeah. yeah yeah you know this is a <laughs> like beloved depends on yeah basically you have to understand okay the 90 percent of people receive the character positively yes okay well like they're legitimately positive. fat Geralt is that he doesn't have to be written well he just, but he's beloved anyway. <laughs> like, just like the dawn. Crazy. I mean, <laughs> how how could you not love a character whose on screen debut is him barreling into the frame <laughs> with a fully wound up punch against someone a quarter of his size, straight into a garage door, causing them to twirl comic? Uh, dude, it's not even. I actually, I'm going to make a, a case in my video for Fat Geralt to a certain degree, but. You know, like, he, <laughs> he immediately is like, hey, how you doing, buddy? Like, like you got an arrow through you. The guy's like, oh, fuck it is. He's like, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Come on, come on. And then he snaps it, pulls it out, and he's like, right, get that sword, and then get the girl out of here. It's just like, hey, this guy, this guy is doing stuff. Like, he's, he's, he knows what's up. He knows what's to do. I, I, I just, you, you just get a you sense immediately, have, like, huh, he seems competent. You can have yeah, a he doesn't cool mess power. around. He knows how to take someone down. He demonstrates a certain degree of concern for his, for his um, comrades. You know, he's okay, you've established him pretty there. He's a, an effective leader. Someone's gonna be like, it's right. a slaver. And he'll be like, eh, well. <laughs> yeah, well. Well, I mean, here's a good example. I, uh, last night I was watching, uh, some clips of, do you guys remember Hank Scorpio from The Simpsons? Yeah. yeah. One of the great, one of the greatest one-off characters. And everybody in the comments is like, I'd like to work for him. It's like, he's a super villain. It's like, yeah, yeah. But he's, he's nice to his employees, you know? He's cool. He wants to go bowling with Homer. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what I mean. It only takes, like, a few minutes to establish somebody as really cool. Attention! Yeah. I uh, good evening, gentlemen. I have the doomsday device. <laughs> like it's, just... it's like when Homer asks for sugar from him, and he's just got it in his pockets, like <laughs> loose sugar. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Mr. Bond, stop him! He's supposed to die. <laughs> do, do you remember when um... Homer just rugby tackles him to the ground? Yeah. <laughs> when Homer, uh, I think uh, Homer, he says like uh, good because I don't have any cream, like uh, uh, in relation to sugar in his pockets, like as if yeah, he's got sugar like loose for Homer, and then he's like, you want some cream, and Homer oh, just yeah, looks yeah. him for a second, like uh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the uh, the part at the end where he's like, Homer, if you could kill someone on your way out, it would really help me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Jump down with a flamethrower. <laughs> so good. And yet, Welcome he, to the this... episode of EFAP where we cover Cosmonaut Variety Hour. <laughs> we'll be discussing the episode of The Simpsons with a one-off character written better than the protagonist of the game. <sighs> Joel is not a fucking beloved character. He is, though. That's insane to say that. Like, this is where you want to you want to ask a few people before you say stuff like this. Yeah, listen, I'm I'm okay you're, you're with um, the idea of you like I don't particularly like this character, but yes, they're beloved. Like, if you want to take that position, that's totally fine. But to state outwardly is like people don't love this character. What do you mean? It's like, what are you talking about? 
You're losing us, Cosmonaut. You see, you made some valid points with the gameplay mechanic stuff, but now you're just going off the rails. I mean, let's put it this way. I've played half of the first game. Watch the rest. I have not played the second game and watched all of it. I love Joel so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This like, game has made me realize that I like Joel a lot. Joel's fucking uh, awesome. I think there's a lot of people yeah. in your position. Yeah, who were just like, oh, he was really cool. Yeah, <laughs> man, Joel was great. Realize that. Yeah. This is where, like, Cosmona is outright, like, uh, denying objective facts. If you say a character is not beloved because you don't like them personally, it's like you're ignoring the fact that, well, the majority of people do, and the definition of beloved is, you know, let me, definition of beloved. Yeah, yeah, he is about as I, beloved as he can, yeah. It's a matter of like I, I, I even, I, it's not even down to necessarily whether Cosmonaut likes Joel. It's just he's setting it up like this to support his argument that he's constructed for this game. Yeah, and it's like people don't like, like Jesus. It's about what people like. It's not what he likes or even their character necessarily. It's just if people as a whole like like the character. That's what makes a beloved character. Pretty much. Yeah, like I'm not gonna like a I, much like, love. I, that's 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 literally the that. that's Joel. He is but a is much that, loved is person. That, is that loved to a significant degree, or loved by a lot of people. A much loved, a, a much loved person. I feel a much like much loved person. seems like it could be interchangeable between yeah. uh, the two of them, seemingly. Yeah. yeah, because he's both, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'd have to make a strong case to suggest that most people don't love Joel. No, oh, he is many loved by much people, definitely. He, the, the thing that I think a lot of people found so appealing is that he's like a fucking rock, and he's chipped away by this this innocent girl who's just look, looking to have fun in a horrible world, and then you eventually lose, you'll, you'll sacrifice anything to help her. Yeah. That's, that's, some, that's some adorable shit right there that really gets to people's hearts quickly. And yeah. they, make, they make Ellie like an actually endearing person too, so that you're feeling that along, alongside him. Like she's kind of annoying at first, and then she be, you know... She's breaking him down, but at the same time, she's breaking you down too. Yeah, she um, she's incredibly hard to like, hard to dislike. Uh, no, sorry, whatever. The point is that it takes a while for her to get to Joel. It's not quick, especially when yeah. she's like giving you ammunition and she's saving your life during combat encounters. You're dealing with a guy that's you know uh, attacking you, and he's um, he's grabbing onto you from behind. She jumps on his back and starts, you know, shanking the shit out of him. She throws bricks and bottles at people when you're out of ammo and almost about to die. So you can get the, 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 the advantage on them. It's like, ah, uh. also as, as silver groove, just, uh, or grove, just, just highlighted. People are mad that Joel died. That's it. Also, Joel isn't even beloved. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Which one is it? I'm so upset that this character I hate died. <laughs> <laughs> This character I didn't Winnie care the about. Winnie the Pooh is a beloved character. Joel is a vi Fuck Winnie the Pooh. I hate Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh? Goddamn much. I don't give a shit That's about a, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, wait, oh, Pooh. Specific. Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> who, <gives, laughs> who feels deep love for Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> I'm sorry, especially considering what Winnie the Pooh is doing in China right now. Like, he, he's, like you look at how, how China is reacting to Winnie the Pooh and what uh, all of his horrible actions as the dictator in that country. I don't well, think who's, who's your, everyone, I guess, while we're on the show, who's everyone's favorite character from the Hundred Acre Wood? I mean, does ever, anyone have uh, a favorite I like, character? Uh, I like um, Tigger more than, uh, than yeah. Winnie the Pooh. I love yeah. Tigger and Rabbit way more than Winnie I the Pooh. Piglet. I like Piglet more than Winnie. Yeah, Winnie the Pooh uh, is like the, <laughs> Winnie's Winnie pretty the generic. Pooh is like the Mario mario series you know like <laughs> his favorite is more is not mario it's luigi it's yoshi it's bowser it's waluigi it's someone else it's not mario um or, or like do the do the do the movies count like the videos count because gopher is pretty fucking great yeah i remember oh, gopher gopher, gopher yeah, is gopher's good it's awesome he may not be um, in the book but oof. i'm probably gonna go with um I like I like uh, I like Rabbit. He's sort of a straight man, you know, trying to keep it all together, trying to keep things. You know, I, I bet he he's put, he puts up with a lot of stuff. I bet there's a lot of love in that Rabbit to put up with all these people. You know, uh, he's just trying to get by, sticks around. Uh, and then probably Kanga. R Rabbit is like uh, the Squidward of Winnie the Pooh in that you become he becomes a lot more relatable the the older you grow. You know. Oh yeah. He's like, man, this dude is trying to keep it together. He's trying to grow carrots. And he just wants a nice house. And he's 
he, he has very attainable, simple goals. By the way, and, yeah, the, like because he's he's putting him against he's putting Joel against Winnie the fucking Pooh. Like I don't even know. What to do. <laughs> so the the idea like because it's funny because I'm willing to take it on. I'd be like, yeah. So why do you think people have a, a deeper love for Joel? It's like because he's far more endearing as a human being. He's incredibly flawed, and he shares a lot of the same values that people do. Winnie the Pooh. I mean. <laughs> He's he's like his <laughs> he likes his honey, yeah. and he's he's a friendly dude. You're like, all right, good for you, man. <laughs> but like, Joel's a way more like deep character. I think that I love Walter White more than I love Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, same. Like, uh, Walter White, I love character. Absolutely. So, I he said he was saying something about violence here. This is the thing. He's like he's saying he's not a beloved character because he's violent. Oh, I well, let's that uh, doesn't have any. We'll have to let him. Say his thing first, I guess. Quote, a beloved character. Joel is not a fucking beloved character. He's saying, I worry, Winnie... just let me see her, please, in that clip. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's... Okay. okay. Not, the, not what I would have chosen to make this point, but okay. <laughs> the Pooh is a beloved character. Joel is a violent anti-hero. There are scenes... What, what does that have to do with whether he's beloved? Yeah, so you like, why is he doing that? Um, why is he I, I, killing I, this guy? I guess Deadpool is not a beloved character, then. Hey, what the yeah, fuck? Nope. We can I mean, name it. This is so... Punisher. What? Batman, this, man. This, 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 is, this is all contextual as well. This is a world where people have to be violent in order to stay, yeah. like, to stay alive. This isn't where a place where Winnie the Pooh would thrive. What about, what about Rorschach? <laughs> people fucking adore Rorschach. Like, Joel is not virtuous, but that doesn't have anything to do with him being... People what about are Batwoman? The, the Joker. Like... <laughs> Joker is psychopathic, yeah. chaos ridden fucking monster. He's below. This is not how emotions work. Uh, and this John clip Wick. of him, him fucking this guy up, and like, hmm, why is he doing that? Hmm. Why, why hmm. is. Um, Han Solo is, a, is an anti hero in the characters. It's, I, think he, yeah. I think he thinks to be beloved is to be appreciated for your altruism or something. Like pure altruism. Like there's nothing negative about you. Because Winnie the Pooh, has, has Winnie the Pooh ever sinned? In any way, shape, or form. Winnie the well, Pooh is like <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is without fun, him. He is a perfect <laughs> being. Well, let's look at this then. Like, if if you're gonna take it on, like having a flawless personality and being altruistic, like, is Ray a beloved character? Not really. But she she yeah. exemplifies all the virtues that cosmonauts apparently looking for. Luke got really mad when he was fighting Vader. I guess he's no longer beloved. He f he failed once, <laughs> so you know he's no he's not, no good anymore. Not every beloved character is Captain America. Like y you can be flawed and still be a beloved character. It's just a matter of like if people well, relate. One, Iron Man, you know. Winnie the Glutton. Winnie oh flawless. God. Winnie the Dawn. Winnie suffered Winnie. gluttonous tendencies that he had to overcome. I mean, what are what are we were we did the um the EFAP not too long ago about Lord of the Rings and favorite characters, Boromir pops up all the time. Incredibly flawed, flawed. Beloved. Yeah. This is what I mean, like, this is such a weird fo focus in this video. Like, what is all this in aid of? Stop being so sad that he's dead. Like, what? What is somebody meant to do about that? <laughs> I they don't feel sad. <laughs> like... <laughs> in the first game where he murders people just because he wants to. No! 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 no, no, no. This scene no. right here is not the scene that you use to say that he just kills people because he wants to. Yeah. He is trying to save Ellie's life, you fucking prick! Stop yelling, it's weird. <laughs> oh my oh god. god! Like, ju just, just to kill somebody. When does he kill someone just for the sake of killing someone in the first Last of Us? <sighs> I don't think he does that once. Listen, the, no, the, there's, the, there's the, a reason the, for the it. The evil case. aspect of his character that we're yeah. told about is the fact that he would, he would, he would attack and steal from you know innocent people. That's not even a want to kill. So well, even like whole, at the, the worst aspect we know of his character, magic. to want like what do you mean <laughs> wants to kill? <laughs> no, Joel. Joel is just sadistic. He just has this bloodlust. He just kills people because he wants to. He's the serial killer. He doesn't kill for self defense. He doesn't kill to survive. He just has this. This is just this urge, this primal urge to just kill. He has is this to kill. Like the clip that supports it, though, like this clip where he's interrogating this guy so that he can save Ellie. Yeah, he kills yeah, because he's he likes it. Terrible he, example. He, he is told him. that Ellie is being prepped for surgery. He, there is a ticking <laughs> clock. 
Time is of the essence. He has he's he literally says, I have no time for this, and then shoots the the dude in the groin. Like fuck. Yeah. He, he, he more like, <laughs> like he had a reason for that as well. He, he, he'll just come after her. So he yeah. always kills some he always kills with it's a reason. A very pragmatic. He's very pragmatic. Like um yeah. Scenes in the first game where he murders people just because he wants to. I think a lot of people wrongfully believe that this is a story about how you have to protect your loved ones, no matter the cost. I'm um, curious uh, what you uh, think the story is about. Yeah. <laughs> he, he has taken some strange things from this game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I am. I, yeah. Hopefully he'll tell me what he thinks the first game was about. I'm really interested in seeing his interpretation. It's going to be like one that doesn't line up with mine at all, but I am curious to see what he has to say about it. Joel saves Ellie because he desperately does not want to lose another daughter. There is no point. Um, he doesn't want to lose the first daughter either, and both of those are classed as loved ones. So what goes against that doesn't that doesn't counter what yeah. he just said. He wants to protect his loved ones. He doesn't want Tess to die either. Like, what are you? Yeah, why? How is that like selfish? I don't understand. <laughs> like you're protecting people that you love. Like, surely that's. He says it like it's a flaw that he doesn't want go his for. surrogate daughter to die. You're like, okay. I think a lot of people would want that, but all right. Point where he grapples with the morality of his choice. He wants to save Ellie. He does not care about curing humanity. This is a sad ending, and not because humanity is doomed, but. That's humanity a lot to in... doomed. But that's a lot to infer as well, like, to say that he doesn't care. It's like, not you don't know that. Either. He he might be deeply like conflicted about this, but he does the thing that's most important. Yeah, the it's game. Not the, game not, the game doesn't like he, have him like announce says, it. Like, wow. like as he runs through the hallway, shooting all of the um, the fireflies, he doesn't say, "I'm doing this because I don't care about the cure." <laughs> More so, it's clear that he values Ellie's life over the potential of a cure. But uh, that was the beauty about the first game, it was all very interpretable. Not anymore. But because we spend the whole game watching these two learn to care for each other, and bantering and joking and sharing personal heartwarming experiences with each other, and now yeah. that's ruined forever. Ellie By The Last knows... of Us 2. Uh, well, not, that's that, not ruined. He, he's prese he's presenting that as a poor argument, I think, because I don't, I don't think he agrees with that in her heart that Joel is not telling the whole truth and that he lied to her face even though she told him not to. Okay, I guess, yeah. The lie is, if mm -hmm. anything, the lie is maybe even the worst thing he does, which is nothing comparatively. Yeah, yeah but, but I don't like this, this framing that she's like fucking pissed at him for lying when it, I, this whole scene runs so clearly to me that she knows that he's doing this for a reason, and that she's uh, ad agreeing to it, almost. She's like, very yep. well. 100%. Um, it would take a cosmic retard to wake up in the back of his car in a fucking hospital gown and be like, everything went fine? He's like, yep, everything went fine, yep. Yep, moon's haunted. Like, hmm, seems a bit, seems a bit weird. Seems like you're not telling me the whole truth. No, I am 100% telling you all of the truth you would ever need, trust me. You're like, all right. I She's trust you, Joel, because of the adventures we've gone on and how much I know you care for me. Nah, she's yeah, just she, dumb this guy. is the thing. They're very specific about this, because she doesn't go, okay, and then walks off. She goes, okay. Like, yeah. I get it. You're lying. But it's probably for a good reason. That's, that's, it's, this is why people like this ending so much, just FYI. It's a very specific delivery of the word okay. Look at that face. She knows what's up. And because of that, she can never really forgive him again. Bullshit. There's virtually nothing heroic in this story at all. You fuck gotta be kidding off. me. <laughs> Actually go and fuck off. This is insane. <laughs> if all of you aspiring film critics and game reviewers out there, if you don't think that you have enough talent to make it big, I promise you fucking do. Yes. Anybody can become a big YouTuber. You like can, you can it you can get this big while being wrong all the time. It's it's pretty impressive. It's shocking. It's just like it anybody can be, for better or worse, anybody can become famous. And yet people still see Joel as a hero. If Ellie had it her way, she would have died because at this point she is not a selfish person. Mm, it's insane. You don't... She's making an extremely 
ill-informed decision also, based on conjecture of anything. You can't use the Last of Us 2 canon to ex explain that's how Last of Us 1 canon is actually 100%. We don't know what would have happened if we we talked to her. We never find out. We've got information to believe she might have been willing to sacrifice herself. She also wouldn't be ready to, to commit to something like that. We don't know for sure. And I don't think she would had you explained all of the variables to her. I don't think anyone would. It's essentially asking you to fucking kill yourself. You'd be like, uh, why? It's like, not really any reason. There's a very low percent chance that anything good will even happen. The, the gall of this person to make arguments this retarded and then to title his video, you guys are just dumb. <laughs> Certainly mm -hmm. showed us. Crazy. From her perspective, Joel took the choice away from her. And now this story... She didn't story have a choice. Did, how the, 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 yeah. <laughs> there was so no funny. choice to take away. They the took the choice from her. <laughs> yep. It's... <sighs> She had absolutely no choice, so the choice is either to have her die without her consent or save her life without her consent. And to fight in the preservation of life is always going to be the more moral decision it's in like, that case, the information that he has. He's such a shitty YouTuber that he can look at the stuff Joel does next to what the Fireflies have done and like, yeah, Joel's the bad guy. Like, that's, that's, I mean. how that's how detached from reality this person is. It's probably why people like Joel even more is the fact that this just, everybody's throwing piles of shit on him, and he's like, all right, if that's, you know, I got what I wanted, which was saving Ellie. I guess I'll take the slings and arrows at this point. Like, man, you're a legend. Just gotta ignore mm -hmm. all the, you know, the context, all the information and visual cues that were given to, you know, imply that maybe the Fireflies are actually the villains here. It fucking blows my mind that he's considered the one who took the choice away. That's so bullshit. It's nuts. Ellie like, takes what do you mean you jo stopped us from operating on this girl without her consent that would kill her? Can't believe Joel took her choice away that she Dude, didn't have. I don't think that any doctor worth their salt would be willing to operate on a senior citizen, like a like a hundred year old person, without their consent to find a def like a definite. Sure shot cure for COVID nineteen. So does it make sense that they're like trying to gun him down while he's running with her at the end of The Last of Us? Isn't that pretty stupid of them? I yeah, it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, mm. if they truly believe she is the cure to humanity, you'd think. Yeah. See, th this is what I mean, and well, it's funny because you it's, either, I guess as long as they don't hit her in the head. <laughs> oh <know>? sure. <laughs> I mean, I was just gonna lucky. say like you can interpret that as like plot holy, or you can go the direction of. Firefly's probably hoping to make it a power play, and they don't actually, like, have any intention of fucking curing the will. We don't know. They, they have the audio logs that are like, oh, this will be so great for you, man. It's like, how though? Like, how are you? Mm. There's so many unanswered questions about that. Joel's traits. The game opens with her learning how to play guitar like he does. And then we also see her become more comfortable with killing like he was. She was always comfortable with killing. Did in, you play in the, the first game? game? <laughs> Yeah, like, there, is, there, is, there is there is a there is a play clip that I saw on Reddit where she is chasing after a dude yeah. like he is running away, basically shitting his pants, and she just sprints after him. He uh, disappears around a corner. She disappears right behind him, and then you just hear the go, go the, the the guy going ah oh! ah oh! and dying because she's like stabbing him to death. <laughs> like <laughs> I know that's like, that's a that's a gameplay also, bit. That's uh, uh, probably subjective and doesn't happen in most playthroughs, but I don't know, man. She seems I mean, comfortable. If she's, pro killing. if she's programmed to do that, that's still her in the world Absolutely, operating. Yeah. So, the, yeah, the, only, the only exception you get to this is that scene where she returns from having tortured um, one Which of makes no Abby's sense, friends. Way. <laughs> she, like, yeah, she considering everything her. else she's done up until <laughs> that point, the fact that she had to torture one person it leaves her traumatized is just a weird, and one a weird person. choice. That said, yeah, the bitch got what he deserved. Like, I mean, oh, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna feel, <laughs> dude. Like when I was playing, I was like, all right, your life doesn't matter, and I just like chased after her with like, all right, come here, come yeah. here, Nora, and then I got to her, and I relished in each time I tapped square in the scene. Ah, oh. 
I mean, I, I, I'm just of the perspective that this is nonsense to me. Like, it's like the first game just doesn't fucking exist. Um, and some people are referencing the David kills being proof that like she has trouble with murder or whatever. But it's like but it's what clearly about not people up until that point in that sequence. It's clearly not the violence of David's kill. It's the uh, how close she came to possibly being raped. How she was trapped and set to be eaten by the rest of them at some point. And the fact that she's alone and fighting for herself for so long. I see that scene. It chopping him up into pieces of meat as like, oh my fucking god, like this this is stressful. <laughs> this also, whole situation yeah. is it's very also stressful. Pointing out that for a lot of players, that was one of the most terrifying scenes in the game. So the terror that the player is feeling, Ellie would probably be feeling that a thousand fold. Yep. But to say she kills like fifteen people in the mall and left exactly. behind, yeah, like that, yeah. she didn't have any problem with that. And it's it's because they were trying to kill Joel. Like that's that's why she killed them, and she didn't have any problem with that. So yeah. We see her exacting her revenge in the same way as him, except it takes a toll on her. I personally. Oh, and uh, sorry, I, I forgot. Mahler, during your playthrough of the first game, she is carrying on a casual conversation with you. And then she just kills two guys <laughs> while in the middle of that. Also, uh, killing for revenge, like Joel, did Joel ever kill people for revenge in uh, in Last of Us? Uh, no. Well, yeah. okay, so, um, so he, like, breaks Robert's arm for revenge. Okay. Remember? In the beginning? <laughs> yeah, there's this thing there's where like he's that. interrogating uh, the two guys to find out where Ellie is, and he just kills the second dude. You know, just like, yeah, it's okay, I believe him, but that's not really revenge. Uh, uh, that's that's not necessity, that. I think. They were yeah, it's, it's necessity, yeah. They were complicit in Ellie's kidnapping. They were gonna they were going to kill him. It's like, uh yeah, it's I, I'm I'm fine with him doing that. Also, it looks as if Mr. Drinker is gonna have to abandon us. Leave us to the, the pain that is Cosmo Variety Hour. Um, I know. And you've got like another twelve minutes of this shit, which will probably equate oh to about five God, hours of talking Jesus. time. Yeah. <laughs> um I I was gonna say I feel bad about leaving, but considering what we're having to suffer through, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm assuming you've seen tonight's fucking highlight. I seriously doubt we're gonna be able to someone's gonna outclass Joel is not a beloved character. It's like Okay. And he kills That's... for no reason. He kills because he wants to kill people. He's a monster. That's what he is. Oh, I, I just realized that the uh, description doesn't have people's channels names and links in it. Why did nobody tell me? <gasps> Outrageous. That's your uh, job. Not no mine. reason. Damn it, Joel. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, was, I was mainly referencing Joel when I said that. For you. No worries. Uh, yeah, do you want to... Even though you, you were here relatively recently and everyone knows exactly who you are, but why don't you talk about your channel and what people can find over there? Yeah, you can find a bunch of stuff about movies and TV shows, and I, I also try to make things better that are broken, and I've been working on that recently. And I'll try and make the occasional recommendation for movies and stuff that I really like. So, And there's the occasional live stream. Uh, and I've had you on... Most of you guys have been on at some point, I think. <laughs> um... But yeah, so that's what I do, and I have a few drinks in between, so it's been working out quite well for me so far. Yeah, I even I even cameoed in your recent fix, trying to warn you, you of the dangers of talking about Ray. It takes a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you you did an excellent cameo, so thank you for that. Um, and I tried I tried my best to fix Ray as a character, which wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, man. It's been uh, it's been what what do we call it? Fun? Let's call it engaging. It's been engaging. It's been an experience, and, uh, for sure. Yes, it has. Just like and Last of Us 2. Oh, yeah. <sighs> but, yeah. No, thanks for uh, having me on, and uh, I'm actually going to watch this, like... Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, best of luck, and I'm going to go away now. See you later. Right, catch you, dude. Bye-bye. What? Oh, wait a minute. All right. Wait, can you guys not hear me? <gasps> and then there were five. Then there were, yeah, five. Wait, the chat can hear me, but you guys can't. Oh One second, though. This is no good. Here we go. One. It's hard to believe that we're, like, not even a quarter of the way through the material yet. I... <laughs> oh, yes. Well, it was going kind of smooth at the beginning. We were...
saying that Joel is not a beloved character <clears throat> deserves quite a bit of time to refute. Wait, to say like wait. you start saying stuff like that. It's like, oh, okay, let's let's break this down because we're going to be here a while. Uh, for yeah, some reason, a, I wasn't being picked up by Discord, but now I am, so it's all good. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. It's a technical issue that you guys are unaware of, but chat was aware of. How weird is that? Oh my goodness! Wow. Oh my god. Great. So anyway, let us continue. Uh. Personally, mm -hmm. love. I love how Joel's death has consequences for every character. It's handled wonderfully. But people are mm -hmm. mad. They're mad because you don't kill Abby and get revenge in the end. And I cannot understand that at all. Then oh, you're an idiot. If it's... you let alone, it's not about. Even if you don't agree with it, the fact that you don't understand it shows how dumb you are, unable to empathize, which you think that you'd be big on if, you know, the whole message of the uh, Rags, hang on. M Mahler, uh, chat's saying that audio keeps on going out. Oh, my God. I mean, I mean, we're all us. Uh, everyone, press one if fixed, press two if still tism. Let all us right, see the um, results. Yeah, I suppose we have to keep on talking while we're waiting for them to press one yes. or two, because if yeah. we don't keep talking, then we won't know oh, if the yeah. audio issues are fixed, and we gotta make sure that's the case, because so, I don't want to be wait, all these pearls most, of wisdom dropping. Mostly ones, but someone said nine, so I think we should stop streaming. Uh, I, oh, I, okay. I'm scared. Well, of we got the nine. The big nine. Okay. All right. Sorry, I, uh, Rags, I didn't want to keep on going while you were like breaking up or something, but um, go ahead and continue, I guess. Um, yeah, it's just the ability to, like, one of the, I guess, I, I, I want to call it basic, but one of the fundamental aspects of reviewing stuff like this, especially in terms of story, if you're talking about how they relate to audiences, is understanding, even if you don't agree, you can see where people are coming from, surely yeah. you aren't thick in the head enough to not be able to understand why people really, really want to get revenge on abby like even if you don't agree that that's the right thing to do surely you understand why well let's you'd have to be pretend he's a here for psycho. a second and he's like well why do you want it and then i go uh i don't feel justice was really served to this character i feel she got away with what were heinous actions created in like a a context that she had no idea about according to the game for the most part i feel like we not only didn't get to under get we didn't see a scene where she understood what she'd actually done nor do we get a scene to really punish her for her horrific actions. And if someone cites all the horrible stuff that happens to her that's irrelevant of Joel, I'm going to go ahead and sweep that away. I'm not going to listen to it. Bye-bye. Going on a crucifix yeah. has nothing to do with Joel. She's basically uh, the karma Houdini trope, in, like, embodied pretty much. Like, um, it's one thing to have a character get away with uh, all the horrible stuff that they've done. The problem is that the game is trying to frame this as a good thing. Yeah. Like Kylo? <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. My, uh, I don't see how it's hard to understand why people want justice served or karma to make its way to Abby. Um, I suppose you can make an argument that karma kind of did. But the problem for me is that she never understood why she did the the wrong thing. Why what she did was fucking wrong. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it it shocked me they didn't have some kind of a discussion at the end or something. something. There's brief That's moments in the game where she seems to be experiencing some guilt over something. And, and a lot of people like to say it's over Joel, and I'm just like, I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah, if you like, want to like, keep it in with, with you, her not killing Abby at the end, what you need to do is you need to have a conversation scene. You can have dialogue where they talk everything out. That's the solution. That's well, how you, you have Ellie yeah. making Abby feel like a piece of shit for doing what she did and then letting her live and saying, yeah, now you gotta, you gotta live with that. You gotta carry that shit with you. All your friends are dead. Now carry that knowledge with you. Go on, get out of here. You'll never live it down. You'll be sad for the rest of forever, just like I am. Asshole, There's get your boat. <laughs> There's some people in chat that are comparing her to Gabby Gabby. We should call her Abby Abby. <laughs> Abby Abby. <laughs> oh my god, she's like Gabby Gabby. She really Abby, is. Abby, Abby, good. She, like just her. like just like Gabby Gabby, she's worse than Hitler, right, Rags? Yep, worse than Hitler. <laughs> in the words of, in the immortal words of Boogie, at least Hitler was doing something he believed in. Oh, yeah, James Moore. Thank you for reminding me of the joke that I said before we went live. I'm surprised that Cosmonaut is able to empathize with Abby without knowing how much money she has. Oof. Yeah. So, 
Good point. You, you can tell she's not that rich. But then again, relative to the world, nobody's rich, yeah. so she's rich in resources hey, she of some gets, kind. She gets burritos every morning, man. Yeah. Why she the fuck do I care about her struggles? Yeah. She has a gym that she can work out in. She's apparently got access to uh, to protein shakes and gets those gains. It's, <laughs> it's like I feel like that take I, should haunt him forever. If ever he's like, you threw him insult, it's like, who cares? You're rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, I, yeah. You, I mean, he's rich, so I don't give a fucking shit. Like about he said, you've happens, covered my videos several him. times, I mean, rich, so right? I'd just be like, well, you're you're rich, so. Is that, is yeah, that, sorry yeah. for you. Yeah, no one's gonna feel sorry for the rich person. Ugh. Yeah, fuck the rich. At the end well, of the game, you know, our two we, we really shouldn't feel bad about um about Tony Stark's family. They're rich. We shouldn't care about Bruce Wayne as he's inside the prison that is possibly escapable by design. He's rich. Oh, well, he was actually. So there, there to, <laughs> we have more reason to to feel bad for Bruce because he doesn't have his money. We shouldn't feel bad for him in the Dark Knight when he loses Rachel. He had money. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. Abby and get revenge in the end and I cannot understand that at all. At the end of the game our two protagonists have this crazy yep. final battle and as Ellie is drowning Abby she flashes to an image of Joel. And at first yeah, so instead of choking that bitch doubly hard. Encouraging her to finish the job. <laughs> Here's the thing if now normally when you are uh you're holding someone's head underwater, you're choking them, and you're holding their head underwater so they can't, like, breathe. They're going to probably drown and choke at the same time. And you get a flashback to the person who you are avenging, because this person that you're drowning killed that person, killed someone that you really love. And they've also just bitten off two of your fingers. You're probably going to be so angry that you're going to finish the job. In fact, I, I said this on the other stream, but I would actually become a lot more sadistic. I would probably let Abby's head out of the water for just a couple seconds, and then I'd put her right back under. I would prolong the shit. I'd be fucking playing around with, with her like a cat plays with a, a an injured mouse. And I'm just, I'm stunned that anyone can empathize with this happening and, and think, yeah, the sensible thing for this person to do in this context is to just let her go. That's where you're wrong, kiddo, because... When she sees that flashback, she realizes that all Joel wanted from her was forgiveness, and forgiveness is a powerful thing, and that she should provide it to Abby, because Abby is suffering. Well, wouldn't it be great if this was actually an arc that we saw develop over the course of the game and not happen at the 11th hour? I mean, it's, it's pretty hilarious that this game simultaneously crosses off all the options for the first game in terms of interpretation, but then ends with, like, a scene that basically is like, what do you think happened? It's like, uh... She thought of Joel... And his, Joel's force ghost is like, no. Why Violence did she think that? Like, why did that memory all of a sudden come back to her? She's choking Abby, and then she thinks about Joel playing guitar. It's like, where did that memory come from, and why did it stop you? It's like, they don't explain that. First, I thought this was just some cliche way to remind us that, oh, no, Joel wouldn't want Ellie to do this. Yeah, but later, we see that she was actually flashing back to a very specific scene where Joel and her are talking about forgiveness. And I would say yeah, that that's and the theme. If of anything, this means that she would know that Abby's the person who robbed her chance to forgive Joel. Also, what a juvenile fucking take on forgiveness. Everybody should forgive everyone. Like, what? No, fuck that shit. Justice. Well, it's weird because um, when I watch this scene, the, the immediate read should be, oh, Ellie's not is mad because she's been robbed of the chance to, like, you know, fix this relationship. Like, that's yeah. what I got. Not that it's, like, forgiveness good, yo. Like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> like, the, the idea is that mercy is, like, the foil of justice. You can't have it all one way. If mercy is the delaying of justice, it's not enacting justice, right? So this idea that you should just be merciful to everyone, you should just be nice and kind, like, no, drown that bitch. <laughs> I, I've, especially in a world where um, everything's topsy-turvy in terms of systems to be able to account for any kinds of justice, it's like it's individual justice or even small pockets of societies and stuff. Um, but, the, but the part I find, I guess, even more interesting is that it's often said that, like, you know, think of the themes. Like, we, we've been doing dealing with this for years now. Just the themes trying to... Does anyone ever say, like, yeah, the characters are shit, but it's more about the world building. Yeah, the world building shit, but it's more about how good the plot is. 
Like, themes always come in when everything else sucks. It's just like, yeah, but the themes, though. Yeah. yeah I, I, love, the theme. I love the implication that uh, Ellie only remembers about, like, the, the value of forgiveness as she's in the middle of, of drowning Abby. So what if, I said this on the After Party stream, I'm going to say it again. What if she uh, decides, you know what? I'm going to take Abby prisoner. I'm going to drag her back to my little uh, serene, peaceful farm that has no zombies attacking it whatsoever over in Wyoming. And I'm going to keep her in a little shed and then I'm going to keep her in the, in the, in the, in the barn, you know, and then every few hours or so when I feel really pissed at someone and feel the need to forgive them, I'll fill up a bucket of water and I'll make my way out to the barn. I'll be like, Abby, it's seven in the morning time for your morning drowning session and just hold her head underwater until she remembers how, how good it is to forgive people. My God. I feel like my more fundamental problem with, I guess, the assertion that he's making is that it... So, the fact that Ellie lets Abby go, to me, is not necessarily a problem, but it seems a lot more absurd when you remember how many people have died up until this point who were not directly responsible for Joel's death. Yeah. Yeah, like the, the most the guilty game person forgets. is the one who goes free. Yeah, it's it it at that point it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me that she wouldn't just commit to see it through. Yeah, there like, is this I, I, aspect of just yeah. one more that comes into play, and well, especially when you get to the very end, man. It's um, ludo narrative dissonance. The game forgets that it's a well, game in which this is all happening. But you could possibly excuse it if Ellie knew her really well, like personally, she understood the struggle, she understood the decisions. But does but Ellie really know much know at all she about know any of it? About Abby. Yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah. They never have the discussions. Yeah, I feel like if they if there was just a a point where maybe maybe uh you know she flashes back to seeing Jules smashed in the head, and maybe she instead of like telling Abby I can't let you leave, or throwing her down to the water or something, she could just say Hey, can we talk for a minute? Like, can we just talk about what's happened between us? Just Choking back tears and saying, "Why? Why'd you do it?" I have to know. I could even believe that. I could believe that if if she did that, because it seems like she's certainly willing, like willing to let Abby go at that point. Maybe he has taken pity upon her after seeing yeah. how she was on on the pillars. Got it. But it's very weird to see her wanting to have her dead, and then she decides that she's going to just let her live after having her fingers bitten off, and she's holding Abby's head underwater and is about to kill her like and is having a flashback to the night the, like the last conversation that she had with joel that would also just be a reminder that she was robbed of the chance to forgive him i don't know um, i could i could have gone for that ending too as baywin just brought up as well and this is part of another problem ellie's like the only one who's like i'm gonna go and fucking hunt down the person who killed joel and and beat the shit out of me and tommy and despite Joel having been a part of this community, to the point where he's apparently one of the most important killer protectors of it, that no one else wants to come, except people who are like, Ellie, you shouldn't go alone, I guess. Like, nobody, nobody's invested in Joel to the point where they're like, I want to avenge him. Well, he didn't, he didn't save any zebras. That's why <sighs> when Abby takes her posse, like, everyone's there. Everybody wants revenge. I'm just picturing, like, even, just make it a fucking cool story. You have, like, a bu the local butcher <laughs> is like, Joel's a fucking legend. Okay, son, you know, son of butcher, you take over butchering. I'm going to fucking go with this team. Like, I, Joel was one of my, my closest buddies. And then, like, my the, boy. The, the tailor's brother or something who who fell on some hard times and Joel looked after him. Joel taught him how to shoot. He's like, yeah, I'm going to. Loads of westerns do this. Like the, the it begins with like the town. You you ruffle up some some people who are like invested in in what's just happened. Some people came in, did some things, and left. And it's like, nah, we're gonna go get them. You have your little fellowship. Instead, we get Dina and Ellie. <laughs> it's like oh. the only two people who give yeah. a shit, I guess. Except Tommy, but he leaves mysteriously on his own without his weird shit. What are you talking they about? They never explained that. She's a character, though. She's, she's so great. She's got this amazing personality. Let's bring yeah, Seth. Let's bring Seth along, and we can even have some drama. Seth is like, I'm gonna fucking avenge him, too. I like Joel. She's, Ellie's, like, having this, uh, this meeting with the town, like, okay, I'm going out, and I'm gonna try to retrieve Tommy, but I, I could use some backup. Who's and with me? No one. No one raises hands except for Seth. And he's like, he's still <laughs> feeling bad about about calling her a dyke. <laughs> he's like, 
Fuck. I'll make you some bigot sandwiches. Well, on the journey. I would see it. Yeah. They could make it a joke. Do you guys remember Shaun of the Dead when uh, the end, like the last time Shaun and Ed talk to each other, is, is a relatively light-hearted thing. A couple of references, even though he's dying. You could have Seth's bleeding out, and he's like, "I could make you a bigot sandwich," and she like giggles. She, like, giggles. I just be like, "Aw, good job, good game. Job. You made something cringy, kind of funny." I want, I want the redemption. I want just for Seth. Seth, yeah, Seth doesn't need a redemption. Arc. He could just be a hero. He, he's like the super. He, he and Fat Geralt team up, chainsaws, spinning around, just chopping them all up. You know what? I think it's time for a profile picture change. <sighs> So many options, and yet they went with the shit one. The game, Ellie has to learn how to forgive Joel for what he did, and then she, she has to learn how to forgive Abby. To be so no, this is not a... He did nothing wrong. No. He did nothing. He lied, though. Yeah. So, okay. Story and, yeah. about revenge. It is a story about forgiveness, which is much no, more interesting. No, it's a story about revenge. It's, about it's revenge. definitely it's a story about revenge. revenge. Yeah. 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 Bad things happen to those who don't go all the way off of revenge. Aside from this scene, when is, like, the idea of forgiveness ever reinforced by the game? Like, not even when Dina and um, Ellie are in their farmhouse together. Dina never appeals to the concept of forgiveness in order to stop her from going out. Yeah, like, no, she was, like, very not pragmatic. Not like, yeah, very yeah. Pragmatic. It's, it's bad. And also, like, I like how Ellie has to forgive, but Abby doesn't get to, <laughs> like, she should just yeah. forgive Joel. <laughs> again, this is the huge problem with the game. Abby kind of gets away with it. Yeah. And you, again, people are going to be like, no, she didn't, though. She got, just like, ah, blah, blah, blah. she got away with killing Joel. That's the point. Um, yeah, the others I, didn't get away with it. Yeah, no, but I, she I, did. I, the others got their fucking hardcore just desserts, I suppose, for being complicit Best in the, of the game. sadistic torture and killing of, of a person that they didn't even know was fucking. A wrongdoer. So yeah, they got what they had coming, but she didn't. And she's the one person that we would want that for. And he's like, I don't understand why you'd feel that way. It's like, ah, oh. Okay. I just don't, how do you th he has no ability to understand people at all. He's just like a, a weird psycho. You, you get, you can't have money and he can't, he can't understand you. It's just, oh fuck me. Bit of a psycho, not gonna lie. That's how he comes across. Mm -hmm. Interesting to me. If you got to this scene and you thought that the best narrative choice is for Ellie to kill Abby, yes. then I truly cannot fathom how you consume stories. <laughs> uh, don't I, even go there, I buddy. Don't, yeah. Yeah, we're not dumb, man. You're just you just don't get us. You do not understand our perspective and you cannot empathize with the people who are criticizing this game. That's a pretty common well, one. Like uh, if you're him, yeah, go ahead. Just, I was just going to say that this perspective is pretty common. It's surprising that he has no idea how to empathize with it. Yeah, I was uh, about to say something pretty similar. Is like if you're making this video and you see that everyone is super upset about this, like pull a couple of them to the side and be like, why do you feel this way? Because I don't feel this way and I need to understand why you feel this way because I'm making a video about it. He's like, nope, I am correct. I don't even need to understand why. No, I don't even have the ability to understand why people feel differently than me. And it's like, wow, you come across as a bit of a psychopath, honestly. <laughs> Can't get down on an R level, man. Indeed. No. Because Fucked to up. me, this was never a revenge story. I never saw it that way. Then Ellie I have no fucking clue what to tell you. Like, this is insane. Let me, let me explain to you how it's a revenge story. Um... The, the opening inciting incident for our protagonist is someone taking revenge on someone and then she spends the entire game taking revenge slowly on the entire group that did it to her and then someone tries to take revenge on her and is stopped by it and then she decides to take revenge once again on this person and then stops doing it. Um, the big faction war that's happening on the other side of the campaign is all fueled by taking revenge on, on other actions that are made. This, this is a story of revenge. I don't, I don't know how you missed that. It's, yeah, it's got that. revenge like, everywhere to the point where when we were watching it and playing through it, um, it was just like it's so on the nose. It's yeah. pretty, yeah. Like there's a scene where um Abby's chilling with her buddies and they're like, Oh, remember the truce? 
how did that end? Well, they killed some of our guys, but we killed some of their guys. But that was because they killed some of our our guys. It's like it's so obvious what you're so doing in game. Thing. Oh wow! So, someone said it's a revenge plot. It's like it's a revenge story. They're making points about oh, revenge. Mm -hmm. It's not just a plot line that's involved. And besides, it's several several plot lines that are getting digged in, as well as all the little notes you pick up about different stories we're taking. Remember Owen's story? The fucking Seraphite was like, I'm just done with it, man. Like, I don't want to, just enough of this sort of thing. It's like, oh, another perspective about how revenge just, it's not as satisfying or, or violence in general. Which again, if someone said it's a story about violence, I'd be like, that's fair. Violence, revenge, forgiveness, you can throw them all in. But to say it's not about revenge at all, I'd be like, uh... That's fucking nuts. Uh, the forgiveness aspect comes at like the 11th hour, and again, it comes out of nowhere. Like, there's nothing building up to her forgiving Joel. It happens at the finish line. It's like... It's about family, and that's what's so powerful about it. Amazing. Abby both suffer immensely for the things they've done wrong. Abby takes revenge on Joel, and it causes all of her friends to die. Then she's tortured Which isn't and... her to die. Note, note <laughs> is a little bit of a difference. Other people dying? Not the same as her dying. I like, yeah, I like that it's it's her problem that they're dead, not their problem that they've been killed. <laughs> yeah. She's Cosmo's fucking big-ass brain, man. He's, <laughs> she... oh, he's oh, involved as a critic. I like that he... also willing participants. He treats yeah. them as characters as much as he should, probably, because they're all paper thin. He's yeah, one of the people like, who well. says, like, the real losers of war aren't the men who get killed, it's the wives who lose yeah. their husbands. It's like, yeah, that's that's Cosmonaut. That's him. He says that. And she <laughs> could, like, when we see her in Santa Barbara, she's pretty well adjusted. It's not like she mopes around because of all the damage she's dealt to her friends and co-workers or, or faction leaders because of her decision to kill Joel. So what I mean, the Joel aspect of her decisions barely weighs on her at all. She doesn't see the death of her friends as her fault because she killed Joel. She sees it as Abby's fault. Uh, Ellie's fault, sorry. Ellie's fault, yeah. yeah Ellie's she fault for not appreciating that she could have had a happy life because they let her live. Yeah, we, we killed your, your loved one in front of you, but we let you live. You should have just let us off the hook right there for that. It, like, Ellie loses her fingers. She loses uh, fucking everyone that she loves. Uh, Tommy, her relationship with him is fractured forever for sure so is her relationship with dina and you know her ability to like raise a kid i mean what does ellie have at the end can she at least play the guitar oh right no she doesn't have the the fingers necessary she doesn't even want to like flip the turn the guitar over and play it left-handed you know uh whereas what does abby lose she loses her hair she loses her gains she still has lev she, yeah but she could still get her gains back and her hair will grow back yeah, exactly. But fingers can't grow back. I mean, unless in Last of Us 3 they want to retcon that too. They might as well, right? Yeah, why not? I mean, a couple fingers is way different than entire segments of the plot. Yeah. <sighs> what a shit video. Really I something else. I can't fathom how you guys consume stories. And enslaved for months and literally crucified when she Ellie was, starts okay so first off <laughs> enslaved for months boo fucking who uh two right i don't think you know what being crucified is she like was it's put kind on of a in the name it's a jesus stick though it's a jesus stick it's not being uh, not that if she were Abby, actually like given the that. nail treatment she'd be dead as dead dead onia yeah, but instead it's Ellie seeking revenge that leads to Abby surviving. That's weird. Hmm. I, yeah, we said this earlier. I'm not. I'm not buying it. <laughs> you can't tell me stuff that happened to it irrelevant of Joel is justice for Joel. It's like nope. Besides, they already said that. Like, he said that Joel was a bad guy anyway. So I don't even know. Uh, it's it's, yeah, it's all... like if if someone kills a loved one of yours and it turns out that they died 30 years later of cancer. It's not justice. <laughs> no, not really. The important it's, it's part is her like... understanding why and knowing all. Like it doesn't. Who cares? Like if I fucking you know save a baby from being torn to shreds by a guy and shoot him in the head, and someone takes revenge on me for that, I'd be like, why? What's what's the issue? And, you know, well, it turns out that baby was actually just a cuddly little toy that had a bomb inside it that was going to kill everybody, and that guy was trying to deactivate it, and you killed him. And then that bomb went off and killed everyone. I'd be like, oh. 
Wow. I, yeah, I can tell- oh shit. You know, there's, there's none of that in the game. And it's because yeah. the game doesn't realize that killing Joel wasn't actually justified. Or at least yeah, not in like, the simplest of terms. The, um, the scenario that I, I came up with about, like, how Joel ambushes this family and kills the dad and is hunting the, the, the mother and her kid. And it's like, you know, that very well could have canonically happened, even though we're not shown that. But the fact that he dies to Abby, that doesn't mean that there's justice for the horrible thing that he did there. You know what I mean? He didn't die because of that action. He died because someone got mad that he killed her dad when she when he was going to operate on a 14-year-old and kill her in surgery without her consent. I need that scene where she says, you killed my father, and it's like, he threatened to kill me, and he can't say my daughter, but he may as well. Do you ever wonder why? Do you ever stop for one second and ask yourself why he did that? I need did a, you? Fuck it, she doesn't know. If he said he threatened to kill my uh, me and my daughter, what does, what does Abby say back to that? Well, I don't care. It was for the greater good, yeah. Joel. It's like, greater good? Like, I don't give a fuck the about greater your greater good. good. We don't even get that. It's like the most basic exchange. We don't even get it. Ugh. And yet, you get all these reviewers who are like, yep, Joel evil, Ellie suffered for trying to take revenge, Abby wins. This is good. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You stupid old man. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? Trying to get revenge, it ends with her having absolutely nothing. She's left with no one. And I really like how both Who, of these Ellie stories... Ellie or Abby? Ellie. Ellie, because Abby's at least not Ellie. Left. Yeah, I guess she's got Dina, sort of? Well, no, no. Dina's gone. Dina's no. gone. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, shit, you're Dina, right. Yeah. Dina got, got her hands on a U-Haul and was able to get all of her possessions <laughs> Look, listen, out of the house. We saw a letter from Dina's parents. Dina's parents must have taken her back home and been like, what happened with that girl after? She's like, no, she's a bitch. And like, okay. And then uh, uh, Ellie's going to turn up in a couple of months or whatever to this house, and they'll be like, oh, hey, um... She's like, is Dina here? And they're like, no. <laughs> Please leave. I hate that you are describing what very well could be the opening. It's probably the to case. The where where would Dina go? If not there, it would be Jacksonville, right? Yeah, probably Jackson. Ugh. Ugh. He's so really, Jones. she'll just bump back into her when Ellie inevitably goes back to Jackson. The Last of Us Part 3. It's going to be really endearing. It'll be all about Dina. We'll control <sighs> Dina. Dina, and it's your choice at the end. You press X to forgive. <laughs> <laughs> and your videos be like, I do not understand anyone who didn't press X at the end of the game. The game is about forgiveness. And the game that's the thing you'd say jokingly. Yeah. I hope it happens now. <laughs> press yeah. X to forgive. Adventure in the last game. For instance, Joel makes a selfish choice in the first game. What? That's insane. Uh, it's not selfish, but okay. Ah, uh, the selfishness of saving someone's life at great personal peril <laughs> I, to yourself. I'd be curious to know what your definition of a selfish act is. Inclu he treats this as though Ellie has talked to Joel and said, I want this to happen to me. I am okay with this. It's like, that didn't happen. I'm sorry. I, I love that the game didn't have that happen because no one can say it happened. All right? Last of Us 1 didn't go down that way. You have to retcon it if you want that. I think that, like, the selfish thing for him to have done would have been if he just simply... Killed that one firefly so he grab his gear and then he just gets the yeah. fuck out of the hospital. That's the selfish thing to do. That's him not risking his own life. He just simply kills the one dude that he has to kill so he can get his, his shit back. The stuff that, that belongs to him, by the way. That's rightfully his. And then well, just... think about what was going to happen. So they walk you out into Salt Lake City with no guns and nothing. What right. What is that if not a death? You know, like a, a death it's sentence by exile. Yeah, like if I was yeah. if I if I was to theoretically take away Wilfred Brimley's access to high quality, low cost diabetes medication <laughs> delivered straight to his door, then that would be more than me just taking away his possessions. Exactly. Everybody forgets, like, what happened at the end of the first game. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And the game, in this game, really wants you to forget what actually happened. Well, they do, yeah. They want to recontextualize everything. They are, they are walking him past the backpack. They are not going to give that to him. They're not. Gonna yeah, because why the would they give it to him? That, they were just going to use it to kill him all. Which why, not, 
<laughs> no, they could they could just say, okay, we will give this to you when once you're out of the hospital. Yeah. That would have made it a little less like, okay, they're not totally assholes. Or they would have just lied to him about Ellie and what they were gonna do. They would have said, Yeah, we're just gonna run some tests. Um well, or they maybe Something they could have done like anything else. Like I said, it's like they followed point for point specifically the the how to appear. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so bad. Selfish decision, my ass. Game and it damages his relationship with Ellie forever. No, but arguably, it shouldn't. this is the thing. And I don't think it did in the first game. This is the problem with canon. Like, so if The Last of Us 2 theoretically came out and we got, um, you know, flash forward by a year and she says, look, it's on my mind. I get it. Something happened back there. I need you to tell me what it is. And he explains all of it into the detail. Not necessarily what we've been over, but at least mentioning a lot of the significant points. And like, she sighs. They have a conversation about it all and it calms down a bit and then they move on. And the story itself is not going to be about that. You, you could have that, you could have it so it's never addressed again. Literally, The Last of Us 2 could have been about anything. It didn't have to be about this. But because be. that's what I The Last of be. Us 2 is, that means that that's what The Last of Us 1 was. You know what I mean? Like, like they've yeah. directed it in one direction, therefore that is what The Last of Us 1 was, which is like, oh. By that the way, I watched really... um, a review, I think it was writing on games, he's talking about the second game and what he likes and doesn't like, and he says that uh, he released a video on The Last of Us 1 like a month before it came out, but it's pretty obsolete now. <laughs> right, because yeah. this game has now made that the case. Yeah, yeah, your analysis of the first game is probably fucked by the second game. You know what the, the, the moral of the story between both Last of Us games are? This is how we win. Not saving what we love, forgiving what we hate. At the end of this game, Ellie makes a selfish choice by leaving Dina to... It's very selfish to try and get closure on your PTSD. Yeah, it's a horrible and, and, person. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's a horrible person. For her to be person. very unsympathetic to it. What a, what a narrow-minded <laughs> fucking view. <laughs> Ellie is way off without Dina. It's like, it's a blessing that she's out of her life. Apparently, if you open up the journal during this section, it becomes clear that Ellie has been trying to talk about her trauma with Dina, and Dina doesn't really want to talk about it. And then you have this scene here where she throws Joel's name in her face to try to manipulate yeah. her into saying, like, she's fuck, emotionally fuck. manipulative. She's dismissive, and she's like, she's like, she's wooing her at one point, like, no, no, stay. And then she like kisses her. It's like, it is horrible. Like, it's like, Dina, you. You are coming off as completely selfish in this scene. It's like, yeah, that is not a good scene at all. Reeks of total emotional manipulation. Like, this is the one scene, well, like, one of the only scenes in the game, at least, where Dina seems to get any type of character whatsoever, like, any sort of agency, any sort of conflicting desires. But she is a total asshole in this. Like, I, in, I, I, wait, in this scene? Yeah, in this scene, I'm saying that um, this is one of the only scenes where she has any type of character, right? Where she is actually contributing any sort of conflict that's driving the story or whatever. And uh, like this, this makes me going from thinking she sucks, she's bland, she's boring, I don't care about her, to I actively hate her. Do you, to Dina. To Dina. Why here? Because she's throwing Joel's name in Ellie's face to try to stop her from getting closure on her PTSD. I definitely don't. I, I think what Dina's doing is extremely understandable, and I don't feel bad at all for Dina here. Like, she, I totally understand why Dina would be doing everything she possibly could to keep Ellie here because, like, they have a relationship, they have a life, they have a place, they have a, a kid together. I I think it would be weird. It would, in fact, I would put it against Dina's character if she said, "Oh yeah, go if get revenge." Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm it's... totally on Dina's side well, here, kind of. I, I wow. I'm in the middle on it. I I I, I get that she would want to condemn the action of going forward with it, but um, to abandon oh, it afterwards. Does seem weirdly, I I guess it's it's that she's weirdly unsympathetic. Yeah. To uh to why Ellie has this problem, like she treats it as though it's like. I can't even understand why you would be feeling this way. Whereas yeah, it's like, that, I do what, understand. It should be more like, I do understand why you feel this way, but 
Yeah, it's like, the wording that changed here. <laughs> yeah. She pulled yeah, the victim yeah. part at one point. She's like, I put up with all this, like for us, like for the family. And it's wow, like, she oh, did, she I did get it. justified. Beaten out of her. Yeah, she got the yeah, shit beaten out of her by Abby. Totally Abby's. justified. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she should yeah. just account, uh, appeal to the fact that like, it's a suicide mission. And what are you really going to achieve by doing so? And then you have the back, which is that she can't rest until this is sorted, this is ended. And, uh,. I, th I think we could have done a lot more interesting shit than just having Dina go, all right then, fuck you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with her trying to, to make a case, to make a plea to Ellie to stay, but it's the fact that she just throws Jules' name in her face like that. And yeah, but that, like, what, I guess, uh, what do you think she threw it in her face for? You know, so, she was trying so, to say that people just die, you know, people don't plan on dying. It's like, yeah, <laughs> they yeah, don't. Yeah, like it's kind of a so miracle we didn't die before. Dead. Like yeah. we we shockingly are still alive. Like don't <laughs> press your luck. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing the the shit that they survived in this game. Mm -hmm. Like if I if I uh, if I were Ellie or Dina and and I had gone through what they went through and magically survived, I'd be feeling pretty confident. Plot's gonna I'd take feel, care of me. <laughs> I I think I'd feel the opposite. I'd say, man, I came that close, and it was through sheer luck I survived. I can't rely on that to happen again. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just goes to show, though, the fact that this scene is it could have done it could have been done so much better. Fits in with the rest of everything about this game, like everything just could have been done so much better, basically. Yeah. Mm. The problem is characters don't talk to each other. <laughs> they talk yeah, around any... each other all the time. Is, is more plot discussion than, um, well, yeah. goal and value discussions and information and context. Like, no, that's really is it's way more focused on what's next. What are we doing next? Like the, 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 the like for example, why do you think they spared your life? Wow, really interesting co uh, question. Oh fuck them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe Try they're dumb. Go. Get revenge, but it damages her relationship with her forever. This is the level of storytelling that I want from this series. I love shit like this. I oh. like. Oh what well, that? I hope you uh. never make games. <laughs> I just I hope you never make games. I'm, I hope you enjoyed this. Can we never have it again? <laughs> I'm glad you got yeah. what you wanted. Can we please never have this again? I love having. I want strong... every game to be hated by most people. I was like, okay. Themes that permeate throughout the whole story. I remember when the first game came out, and people were furious that you had to kill the doctors and make Joel do the bad. No, you didn't have to kill uh, the doctors. Were people were they? furious? I don't remember. Really? Yeah. Also, you didn't have to kill the doctors, plural. No, just the one. one. Yeah, and, and you can still shoot him in the foot. That's still an option. And he's threatening your life. Yeah, he's threatening the life of you and Ellie. I'm sorry. Like, so the people I, who took I, issue I with like this were this okay with you killing difficult. all the other guys? I'm I'm pretty sure that he is just making this shit up whole cloth. I don't remember any outrage over having to kill the the, the doctors or doctor at the end of the game. Yeah, I don't either. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we're all there's, just on a faulty memory, but well, there's always I do gonna not be remember that. Some people, I like I said, I just I don't know how could I, how could I take that seriously. Like, let's just say someone's here right now being like, the one thing I hated about The Last of Us was that you're forced to kill that doctor at the end, and then you go, do you know? Did you try shooting him in the foot? And then they'll say no because otherwise, if they knew that, they'd know they didn't have to kill him. Secondly, you have a problem with killing him, but not all the other people in the game. It's like, yeah, but the other people are trying to kill me. I mean, this like. I don't know, this what guy's got a do? deadly weapon pointed at you and he's about to kill Ellie. I feel like this guy's basically... Well, yeah, I mean, because what is what is the implication? It's like, walk away and allow him to kill Ellie or just let him kill you and then kill Ellie? Like, or kill is, him. Also, is... <laughs> Internet Historian just said, he, he, me neither, I'm assuming he'd reference... If the Internet Historian doesn't remember people complaining about this up in arms, then I don't know what to say. Yeah. Look, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember it and I don't really see... Why they would be that upset? Maybe just a little bit, but no, I don't even know. I <laughs> look. I don't care how many zebras this man saves. If he is going to see this this arm to the teeth dude barrel into his operating room, and his response is to grab a scalpel to try to defend himself with a scalpel against a guy that's got a flamethrower, a shotgun, uh, a, a a fully automatic rifle. You know, it like, it, I mean, 
Natural selection is going to take this guy out sooner or later. Just, just saying. Fire an arrow into his toe. I say a point to get at him and say, listen, fuck off. Oh, it might have been out of context. His, his story was talking about something else. I don't care. It's, it, I don't remember this. Neither does he. I'm sure of it. Moving on. <laughs> Thing. But that's the shit that I love. I actually really like that these games don't give us a lot of choice. Oh. 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 Don't ever make a game, ever. Please make, make a make movie a game, at ever. this point, dude. <laughs> Uh, the one medium that's perfect for using player choice to tell a narrative. I am like that we don't have a choice. I'm glad we don't. Like, uh, mm. It is so... a little heavy-handed in some scenes. But oh, a little, oh, just a little bit. Some, just a little bit. In some scenes, it's a little heavy-handed. <laughs> I'm the kind of gamer that prefers it when I have no choices. I just want to be told who to kill. And then I do. <clears throat> Brains 100 Cosmonaut. But this series is not about us, the player. It's about the characters. What? Then just have it. Okay. <sighs> is there any reason why a story that does have characters can't enable you to make choices? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Is he precious? suggesting like that every it, everything that ever Mass had a Effect choice doesn't have characters? You know, Mass Effect doesn't have a character. Everyone focus. is you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's baffling to me. It's like. It's, it's like this, guys, the least qualified person in the universe to talk about games and movies, and he's doing it, and people eat it up. It's, it's baffling. Okay. Like, what do you want just to, you just want a movie, it sounds like. It sounds like you just want a movie. I'm tired of you guys saying this is less than a 10 out of 10. It's 10, shut up. Did you see the scene with the dog, Neil? Avert your eyes and ears. They don't know what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> If oh. Ellie gets attacked by a dog and almost dies, she will kill the dog to survive. Fucking, I will kill the dog to survive. Yeah, what do you mean? and it, I will kill a dog to survive. <laughs> like, if I gotta. I mean, you kind of have the rights here, Rags, since you're a dog yourself. You have uh, you have dog killing privileges. It was just like I I expect anybody to do that, but that's so low tier for what? this example that you can't. I have like choice. how he's implying that this is a choice. You choose to die. Have <laughs> <laughs> a choice in a like, video game. <laughs> what a shit example. I don't. Well, that's the thing. It's like who would choose to die in this scenario? Why would you choose to die? I don't understand. <laughs> Could you imagine Mass Effect having the option to shoot that enemy shooting at you or stand still and allow the bullet to hit you in the brain? What, then... what is this point? Like, I want to hear this a bit more context. Well, I'm so confused. It's a little heavy-handed in some scenes, but this series is not about us, the player. It's about the characters. Okay. If Ellie gets attacked by a dog and almost dies, she will kill the dog to survive. You don't get to spare the dog because Ellie wouldn't spare the dog. You, you can you no, can't. you can spare the dog. Oh, man, but you, 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 you don't have the option to spare yeah. the dog. Also, if you no, want I, to I, live, I, presumably, if you to want die, to live, the I dog is dying. Yes, technically. What? But this, I'm going back a little bit further to the first part. How come the first game is super beloved? If it's not about us, but people still adore it. Also, he already. And this one is like the opposite. And he referenced like, what's the difference that like. You have to do the same horrible thing in terms of making a choice that's self, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, then how come everyone's reacting completely differently to this one compared to the first one? What's going on? Yeah. And how come we don't have the choice at the end on whether we want to spare Abby or kill her? Like, it's, it's, it's the, if the whole thing ended in a choice the player could make, not only would one, everyone kill Abby, but two, we'd have the choice to do it. I, I just, so he's, he's, this is all fucked up because. You know, like I think what he's referencing, the actual argument when, when say for example, um, let's just say Joel did everything, he, the actual example would be Joel did everything he did in the end of The Last of Us, and you sit there going, no, Joel wouldn't do that because he had to kill so many innocent people. I, I don't think Joel should have done that. I, I And then you we would be like, well, just because you clearly think you wouldn't do it, doesn't mean Joel wouldn't do it. That would be the perfect time. He's referencing a time where a dog tries to eat your face and you stab it with a knife. As a time... Pretty low tier. I don't understand. Yeah. I feel like 99% of humans would have done the same thing. This is not much yeah, of a it, it, moral choice. Like, you or the dog. It's like, well, most people probably want to survive and the dog is clearly the aggressor. This isn't some kind of, like, you know, stale 
sterile, sorry, uh, setting where you have to just end a life, yours or another. This is the dog has chosen to try and end your life. No, so... the, the only way to win this game is to just like not press square and just let the dog rip your throat out. That's that's the end this of the game. Such a bad you example of what I assume he's talking about, though. It's like just because Ellie would, uh, you wouldn't do it, doesn't mean Ellie won't. It's like I would expect not only Ellie to do this, but myself as well. Yeah, the disconnect comes from all the other parts that the characters don't do what we would do. The disconnect comes from choices where there is a reasonable discussion, like there is actually a decision to be made, like a real decision. Oof. We as an audience have become far too comfortable with the idea that our choices are the one thing that matter in video games. No, it's it, it's context specific. It needs to, whether or not a character will make a choice, whether or not we will make a choice, it really depends on what we're dealing with. Yeah, <laughs> if you have characters constantly making decisions that the player is actively against and doesn't want to do and doesn't want to play through, you're having an issue. You're going to create a lot of disconnect between well, I mean, players and what's going funny, on. Uh, I, when you watch uh, like the old Bungie Vidox on Halo, they'll often say, like, yeah, we made Chief a blank slate on purpose because it makes yeah. it easier for people to connect with him. And it's the whole idea that Chief never does anything that you wouldn't do, and Chief never takes any definitive action outside of gameplay. Like, every action is something that you do or aligns with what you do. Not and then it makes it really easy to play. But if you're playing a game where you hate the character and you don't like any of the decisions you're being made, but you still have to do them, in order to make things go like yeah it becomes really frustrating yeah people you're just building bad will against the game the players don't want to participate in the game where they have to participate that's going to gonna cause a lot of friction but um so the, the 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 other way you can do this by the way is so is fundamentally right we we we'd be like wait if you think a character is going to make the choice and how can you have it so the player can make the choice? Because whatever you choose may 50-50 end up being something that they wouldn't have done canonically, right, according to you? And I'd be like, so the scenario is something like killing Abby. Could you see Ellie feasibly killing her or sparing her based on whatever circumstances and that you could leave her in the hands of the player to, to consider what they think is right? And before anyone rushes to saying, like, no, obviously Naughty Dog believed fully that Ellie would spare Abby, I'd be like, no, the original ending was that she killed her. So they yep. clearly weren't sure about that. And I think that if they had left it up to the player, it would have made for much more of a poignant ending for a lot of players. I think so. Have, having her saying... take revenge and then come home to everything being gone, I feel like that works infinitely better than what we got. Yeah. Because well, uh... here, yeah, it's like, it's, uh, it's the whole idea of generally you get the revenge and realize it wasn't worth it, or you abandon the quest for revenge and then retain what you have. Here, she abandons the quest for revenge and loses everything. It's the worst yeah, of both. She gets nothing either way. She gets it's nothing, like, yeah. You don't, it's not like revenge at a great cost. It's, no, she's, no, at, the, it's, she's at the lowest no she's ever been. No revenge at a great cost. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, life has my, never been worth. <laughs> my takeaway from the ending is that, well, if I'm going to lose any th everything anyways, you know, if I go for revenge, I might as well commit to it and, you know, commit the deed once I'm at the finish line. Might as well, because it'll certainly feel a lot more fulfilling than just, you know, pussying out. Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's the whole, like, sunk cost fallacy, right? But the sunk cost mm -hmm. fallacy exists for a reason. Most people are susceptible to sunk cost fallacy. Well, what about, like, right. you strip the skin off someone, strip by strip, and it's only on the, the final strip, you're like, this wasn't a nice thing to do. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Someone in the chat to... said, um, <laughs> what if the character is like, well, no, Rags, what if the character is supposed to be a bit of a villain, like in Breaking Bad? So if you're playing the role of a villain in a story, someone can be the protagonist but a villain, but have motivations you understand and even can connect with, or if you're playing purposefully an evil faction or an evil person in a game to live out the fantasy of, you know, being evil, you know, that's fun in a lot of ways. Also, but those... when you have a situation like in The Last of Us 2, where if you're putting yourself into this character's shoes, you still wouldn't do the things that character is supposed to be doing, and you disagree with the direct on-the-nose messages the devs are trying to give you as a player, that's where the huge disconnect comes in. And, and we're also getting into the, the weeds of role-playing almost, because uh, you could play the game and be like, I'm going to play according to exactly what I think this character would choose, or I'm going to play according to what I would choose if I were in this position, or I'm going to play as a psychopath and just choose all the negative options whenever I can find them just to see what happens. Or altruistically or chaotically. Like, you, 
is really down to what the player's running along with, what the context of the choices are, and what the game is. Like, there's so much to this, instead of just going, some people think that their choices should supersede the character's choices. It's like, oh. And if, if, if you go by what he said, what Cosmonaut said here, it's not about the players, it's about the characters, well then, that means that you have doubly much reason to have what the characters are doing make more sense. Yep. If you remove the players out of the equation, then man, you better be super solid with that character, the the, the in game. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Because you ain't got anything else. You pretty much might as well actually just watch a playthrough of the game rather yep. than play it. Yeah, um, it's, it's the point it's where like you're, the first off of us. We're really why removing so the interactivity beloved? benefits, and I don't know why. Because people were totally on board with Joel and Ellie in the first game. Like, yeah, I, I, me as a player, it's not really about player choice. It's about you know role playing as these two people and doing their stuff and they're doing stuff that yeah makes sense to me i totally understand it if i was in their shoes i'd do the same thing totally down with it you can't use the whole player choice it's not it's about the characters not the players in last of us 2 because the first last of us was beloved no it wasn't i don't hate it Let at least go. like the <laughs> at least like the first game the choices that you can make aren't going to be overall consequential like the, the guy that you um that you run into in the tutorial his gas mask is broken and you can choose to like leave him behind or put him out of his misery like that's overall not going to be too consequential and you can just save the bullet just so that you know you can um like again there's no reward to putting him out of his misery the reward for not killing him is you keep the extra bullet which might be important um but it can still say a lot about the kind of person that you are if you decide to uh to kill him at your own personal cost. And there's also, of course, the <laughs> kind of invisible choice to just shoot the doctor in the foot. Um, and yet, Last of Us 2 doesn't have fucking any of us. What you I mean, just if, described if as I well guess... as small is the kind of thing that you'd be like, let's build on that. But instead, we revert. We get less. It goes thinner as time goes on. It's like, ugh. Yeah, like, what are the differences? Just look at the, it. It's so easy when you look at the fact that the first one, and the second one, are so similar in the way that they try to do things. But the first one is beloved. The second one is reviled. What's the but, differences? What do they do different? You know what I actually noticed? Uh, here's, here's a clear difference. In the first game, uh, when you're at the dam and you create the little bridge with Ellie, uh, she offers you a high five at the end, and you can choose not to give her a high five. But everyone goes for that high five because they love Ellie at this point, you know? But there's the option to uh, to totally um, just leave leave her hanging, right? In the second game, however, there is a room that you cannot progress past unless you play fetch with a dog. And you're it's supposed to feel comparison. bad about killing that dog uh, from earlier in the game. Well, if you don't play fetch with it, how are you supposed to feel bad for it? Aww. Exactly. It's such great video game direction. Some games really benefit from taking choice away from the player to contextualize the character's role in that world. Yeah, um, there are certain things that you could say you'll take away from the player as being a choice because you need the story to run this way, the character would do the thing. Um, but when you're trying to teach lessons of morality in your game, and then you don't let the player contribute whatsoever and see the results of their actions at some point you're just like so what, what are you trying to do what's, what's the point here you just want to preach but then of course the preach lessons get very confusing because they counter each other in this game yeah but he's you know he's, he's not wrong there are, there are formats and elements in certain narratives where you can't let the player choose for a certain thing which is why we've been advocating that um at least the end. Just give us that one choice at the end. It seems perfect. It seems so set up for a choice. And this is where you I mean, I feel if you're really confident that you did a good job at doing what you tried to do, give us the choice and watch us spare Abby. But you know we won't fucking do it because you did a bad job. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you were allowed to do a pacifism run of this game, then this scene would be absolutely ridiculous. No, it this wouldn't. A... No, no, why? He doesn't. He doesn't get it. No. He's, he's already said he doesn't empathize with it at all. 
Well, if you were able, if you were going through this game and you didn't kill anyone who was actually responsible for wronging you and only killed the people who were, like, what's the problem with that? That sounds pretty good. I mean, if, if I had the chance to do that, that would be a pretty nifty thing to go through. I mean, think of narratively the, the effect that would have on, you know, Abby and all that, and, and, and Ellie and all that. Like, man. Wait, what's the... Um... Um, I'm, so, what we just saw, uh, what I just sent there is from your playthrough, Mauler. And then this is from Cosmonauts video i Why just noticed it. different well yeah if you go to abby's perspective in my playthrough uh ellie is holding the other pistol entirely not neither of those revolvers is that one is did you upgrade it and it's showing the upgrade for a longer barrel is there a longer barrel upgrade for the probably revolver? Not. probably not. like i said the, the more interesting continuity issue is that abby has her throw away the uh, the other pistol which is the pistol she ends up with shooting her with uh, in, in the following cutscene and that continuity can break based on, I guess, it's weird. Um, and you can't call the unreliable narrator on that because it serves no purpose at all. There's, there's nothing. It's just a... Swap. Why would you unreliably <laughs> say what gun she has? <laughs> but listen, what gun a person is holding is subjective, okay? Oh, no. Problem that I have with Metal Gear Solid Five In that game, you are playing as a bad person. However, you can go the whole are game you? without killing anybody. Well, but at the same time, the like game the is still going to treat you like a bad person. Oh, well, here's the problem with Metal Gear Solid Five. Like, I, I don't. You have to know a lot. Of, I guess you have to know a lot of previous information. Yeah, I don't know stuff. anything. Because I had. Yeah. That's why I was legitimately asking. Because I don't feel like I was doing bad stuff. Um. I mean, I did a non-lethal playthrough. I generally do. Those are yeah. more fun. Well, from, I um, think from what I understand, the whole idea is that Metal Gear Solid Five is meant to be, oh, this is why big, this is like big boss's descent into villainy. That's what the story is meant to be. But again, I don't understand Metal Gear Solid Five at all. Yeah. I didn't know anything that was going on. I was just playing it for the gameplay, really. Yeah, I the story was super confusing, and I was just kind of along for the ride myself. Um, really like that mission where you have to... You know, kill all those guys. It's like, man, this is... Oof. Poor guy. ...allowed to do a pacifism run of this game, then this scene would be absolutely ridiculous. No, it wouldn't. This is similar to a problem that I have with Metal Gear Solid Five. In that game, you are playing as a bad person. However, you can go the whole game without killing anybody. But at the same time, the game is still going to treat you like a bad person. So there's kind of a disconnect. I'm not. How does the game treat you as a bad person? Is that true? Yeah. I don't know enough like, about I... Metal Gear Solid. Like, yeah, say, someone who's I really. Just... Someone, chat. some weeb in the chat, tell me about the Metal Gear game and how it treats you bad. Because I played through it and a lot of this is a memory, but I don't feel like the game treated me like a bad person. And more to the point, if you're going to ask me, hey, would you rather have more options in gameplay if it means a little bit of ludonarrative dissonance? It's like, yeah, I think I would rather have a more fulfilling gameplay experience. Everyone uh, in the chat uh, is saying that you it doesn't, and I don't remember it doing that either, so I'm wondering what he's talking about, because I did we're, a... We're weak on context for this one. Yeah, I, I, I remember you don't have to kill a lot, basically anybody. No, um, you can go non-lethal basically for the whole thing, except for a few specific instances, I think. Yeah, um, and I was non-lethal basically everywhere. I think you have to blow up some tanks here and there, but I mean, yeah. if they're... No, you don't. You could hoist them away. Yeah, that can, then they become part of your army. Yeah, that's what you do. You can Fulton extract the tanks and stuff. Um, but for the most part, yeah, you could be super non-lethal. Um, and you even feel like super shitty about having to kill your own guys when you do. Um, and you don't really have much of a choice and really emotional. Um, and you don't shoot the kids. You know, that's the whole meme. It's like, they're kids. You can't, you know, be lethal with them. Stuff well, like that. People are saying, uh, people are mentioning, and I, I think I remember this. Yeah, the, 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 the rock that's sticking out of your head it becomes longer and sharper if you do the wrong, like if you kill people. So oh, yeah, I'm that was a sure, thing. Yeah, yeah. So there is like some kind of morality system. Um, yeah. Hmm. So um, 
He's uh, I, what I'm gathering here is that Cosmonaut is lying. Um, I don't know if he, I, I feel like it's more likely that he's just had a strange interpretation of what Metal Gear... Like, I'm much more willing to assume that his interpretations are just bizarrely wrong, just, as opposed he's to, He's very like, incompetent. Malicious. Like, yeah. He's, he's not... Well the, like, the tools you need for this job are to really empathize with how viewers uh, sort of experience each of these things and why behind all of these things are these scenes doing that for a viewer. Like, and he's just not very good at this. He's never, never been very good at this. Yeah, I don't, I can't, that's, this is why I can't rely on anything he says to be honest. Like the fundamental of being able to repeat to, you know, like, like act as a conduit for the thing to then project what the thing was to someone. He fails at that part, like, really badly. I feel like if you can't get that part right, you're kind of fucked. Not doing bad things in the gameplay, but the story doesn't really care, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. People are upset that you are forced to do mean things as Ellie, but this is not a nice story. And are so we? Is that why we're upset? So I've heard this argument, but it's a little bit more specific than that. They're saying, it's frustrating that in her campaign, you do a lot of stuff that you more so associate with like a person of dubious morality, while as Abby, you're doing exclusively altruistic things. Yeah, and it's because of their super transparent, artificial way to try and make Abby look like an angel. Exactly, which the is at odds with the fucking scene that we introduce like her to. The entire game and everything that it does makes just, it makes it so apparent what's happening. And it just completely makes it imp it like makes it so difficult to engage with the game and the story like earnestly. You know what I mean? Like to yeah, to accept what it does without being like, I know why you're doing this though. So you've kind of lost me. It doesn't feel like you're playing the game. It feels like when you do it, like the writers want you to feel this. Yeah. And that scene happen. They're, it's they're like, sitting oh, there it's over just... your shoulder, just like, ah, oh, good, good, good. You did what we wanted you to do. It's like, well, I didn't have a choice. Yeah, yeah good, yeah, good. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's more the character oh, doing it than me, but all right. And the idea that the game is, at the end of it is like, don't you see? Abby's just human, and Ellie, ooh, she's on a path to the dark side. It's like, well, yeah, but you made these things happen. Like, yeah. I don't believe for a second that this is in character for either of them. When my when I was introduced to Abby, I was like, damn, she's a sadistic fuck. And then you play her campaign, you're like, wait, who's this? I don't know this person. Yep. And then in reverse, you're like, wow, Ellie well, in fairness, Ellie's more stupid than she is sadistic. She just does she makes those stupid decisions regularly throughout her campaign. The idea that is it evil that she killed this dog that was trying to kill her? I'm like, no. But I mean you guys were the ones that put the dog there and had it attack her, so what do you want me to say? One of them kills dogs, the others plays fetch with dogs. Well, except when Abby kills other people's dogs. Yeah, but those dogs. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure she does. Ellie's not a nice person. And I have a lot of friends who can't finish the game because it makes them miserable. And I think that's fine. This one is not for everybody. It's not for anyone, fuck it. <laughs> This is, yeah, this game's not for you. Just oh don't God. play it. This scene, the scene that makes no fucking sense at all. Yeah. Oh. If you're a, if you're a utilitarian one, who thinks that it's okay to scoop fourteen year old girls' brains out without their consent, this game is definitely for you. For people who hate Joel, if you hate Joel and you think he's a monster, like you will love this game. That's that's absolutely. What... If you hate Joel and Ellie, you will fucking love this game. This was tailor made for you. Mad and furious because a game makes you do evil things. It you, you, want, you are not you're showing missing, an evil you're thing. You're missing the point. He's though. not showing an evil you're thing missing. right now. This is the wrong visual. You are you are you are yeah. killing someone to prevent them from killing you and your your girlfriend. What are you, what are you doing with this visual? It feels I, like he's so much missing the point though. Like that's not the main problem people have is that like Ellie's decisions are just so mismatched with what the player's expectations are of, like, what she would do, or what she ought to do. <sighs> is really stupid. The biggest meme about this game right now is, don't you feel bad? And I think this is kind of silly. No, it the game is, like, the game is so in your face about trying to make you feel bad about things that, like, I keep saying, artificial, artificial, artificial. This it feels like a game that someone is crafting for the express purpose of making me feel things that I shouldn't feel 
it doesn't feel like an actual world with characters in a living universe. Yeah, Remember playing the, the dog, you, the, the game forces you to do that. And it's like, why did it do that? It's, it's to make you feel bad that you stabbed it to death. And yeah, it's like, it just, in my mind, I was like, the dog was trying to eat my face off. That's why I killed it. Plain Remember and simple. The, 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 the bit where a pregnant woman um, who has a gun fixed to her decides to attack Ellie with a knife and Ellie kills her in self-defense and then feels bad because she killed a woman that she did not know was pregnant and the game is uh, supposed to make us feel horrible for meanwhile her. abby was going to <laughs> purposely kill somebody she knew was pregnant good remember yeah then, ellie's the evil one ellie's the evil her. one and i have to i have to compare this to spec ops the line in the white phosphorus scene when you're first playing through it you don't know that those soldiers are well the interesting thing with the white phosphorus sin is when I was playing it, I knew that the uh that part with the civilians, I'm like, wait, wait, hold on, what is this? Like I, I got the I was like, oh no, there's something wrong here with this part, but you can't progress in the game unless you uh <laughs> finish that sequence. So that's what I mean. Like Spec Ops the line I do really like, but it has a couple of those moments where it forces you to do things. That, sure. Um, but I'd say, like, at least the character of Walker is going to... Oh, I think Spec Ops The that. Line is a lot better. Let's, let's mm -hmm. put it this way. I think Spec Ops The Line works a lot better because there are a lot of instances where the game won't tell... Like, I feel like the most obvious moment is uh, when there's that crowd of civilians around you. The game doesn't tell you, like, what to do. Mm -hmm. So what you actually do kind of set is, like, it kind of cuts deep, depending on if you do the right or wrong thing there in that sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I just I I felt um when when playing through that scene that, that was a uh, like a pretty believable reaction to doing something yeah. that he didn't realize was going to hurt a lot of, of people. He's just trying to clear out an area of enemies that uh he he believes will kill them, you know? And uh I don't know, man. I I I I buy that reaction a lot better. Then oh, Ellie, I, I, uh, it's probably woman. worthwhile to note. Like, I buy, I buy the reaction, and I buy it in character. It's more just that I immediately recognized that there was something wrong with that particular, like, yeah. part because I identified ahead of time. Like, oh, I see what you're going to make me do here. <laughs> you know, the only <laughs> the only choice that you have in Spec Ops, I think they they make a pretty big point of this, is to just turn off the game. Which is really a choice. Well, that, that's that's the point of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. said I can't help but spoil, dude. If you didn't play Spec Ops: The Line, it's been out for eight years. Sorry. Like, yeah, I should have played it by on. now if you wanted to, and you shouldn't be here on a, talking about The Last of Us Two when they're both very similar games. This, talking about this, the same thing. This game's been out for like a month and a half now, and people have been comparing it to Spec Ops: The Line. It is honest to God your fault if you have not played the game at this point. How long do you expect us to wait <laughs> before we can talk the, about any video game ever? talk about an eight-year-old video game. <laughs> if, you can try and talk around certain things and older stuff, but I mean, it's not on the person if they end up spoiling it, I would say. Unless they're doing it on purpose. Like, say, for example, someone goes, I haven't seen that yet. They go, oh, haha, -ha, fucking... Oh, yeah, haha, -ha, rose paper sled. Yeah, ha -ha, it would be like, oh, well, that's kind of an asshole move, but... There you go. Huh. I'm just assuming that everyone here has, has played the game. Well, no. I guess Evan hasn't because he's uh, he's not a gamer. Well, yeah. I haven't, but I have a total understanding that people will talk about it. And I'm fine with uh, people. Right. Like, I'm not going to be angry at other people because mm -hmm. of that. Uh, I spoil Simpsons in the run. I have a general idea what happens, and mm -hmm. so I spoil I'm... Tetris. Huh? It's... Spoil Tetris? I'm gonna spoil it. Uh, the blocks get to the top, and you lose. No, don't. No. People have so much hope until you tell them that you fuck. If you didn't feel bad, then maybe the post-apocalyptic drama narrative isn't doing its job. But this sentiment is also post -apocalyptic really Post-apocalyptic doesn't mean it has to be depressing. There's, there, you could absolutely make a post-apocalyptic game that is extremely hopeful. hopeful. I yeah. mean, Fallout 3, one of the first post-apocalyptic games that I've played, has well, a very hopeful ending. You could have a post-apocalyptic setting for like a little farming game. It could just be the, it could be Stardew yeah, Valley, absolutely. but in post-apocalypse. I mean, the, um, in fact, just a second, um, Fallout 4, oh, the Fallout 4, uh, theme song that plays in the menu is called, like, Rebuild, Renew. Like, We've it's, it's very everyone. hopeful and optimistic. 
See, I haven't played Fallout, but I'm not going to give a shit about spoilers here. I mean, it's the, it's the name of the main menu theme. I don't think I'm <laughs> spoiling that much. It. I just, uh... <laughs> well, I remember there was some dude who was like, you spoiled Mass Effect 3 for me because you told me that Cerberus are the bad guys in it. It's like, that was... But like, they were in the trailers. They were they were introduced <laughs> as the bad guys. Like Shepard yeah. goes the whole game being like, "Y'all are bad." Yeah, Snubbers are revealed as the bad guys within the first hour. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, guys. Wow, you the just whole point is that they're forever. bad, but they're doing things that are good, or at least useful from your perspective. Your goals align to a degree. Is really stupid. The biggest meme about this game right now is. Don't you feel bad? And I Why think this is kind of silly. That is... If you didn't feel bad, then maybe the post-apocalyptic drama narrative isn't doing its job. Yeah, uh, this well, could have, yeah, this was... story could have taken place in modern day, and it, it, the post-apocalyptic stuff can be window dressing to a degree, and the characters and everything could have been the but, same otherwise, and it could have played out the same. He's not addressing the actual argument, though, because it's... So if I said to you... Um, the game is having... You, you love the game in this scenario, okay? And you're like, uh, didn't... Did, how did you feel about all those scenes where, uh, you know, you have to do different things? And I go, oh yeah, I totally felt bad when it forced me to just keep killing people over and over and over again. And then you go, Muller, it's, it's a post-apocalyptic game. If it wasn't doing that, it would be bad. And I'm like, no, I'm not highlighting that I do feel bad. I'm highlighting that the ways in which they executed it was incredibly cheap. Yeah. And I didn't feel incredibly it. Incredibly cheap, artificial, ham-fisted, in your face. And thus it didn't work. But he's wrong, like, he can't even beat the straw man, because someone is actually right if they say, uh, oh yeah, I was feeling bad in the post-apocalypse game, which I don't want personally, and he goes, well, you should want that in a post-apocalypse game. It's like, not necessarily. What do you mean? Yeah, like, fuck that's, off. All that's these the other... funny statement, isn't it? From subjective yeah. man. You're supposed to feel certain ways. Oh yeah, yeah they do this all the fucking time. In all of the beloved post-apocalyptic games that we have, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, I mean, even Fallout 4 to a degree, well, contentious as it was, all of these are very dark worlds with you trying to do good things, generally. You know, you're improving the world, you're making yeah. it better, the story's about you doing good stuff. I mean, there's nothing about a post-apocalyptic scenario that has to... It doesn't have to be bleak and horrible and terrible. It can be very lighthearted and it could be very, you know, comedic in a lot of ways. I mean, certainly Fallout does that. You know those videos where people are, like, fighting um, a sign or a post or something? Like, they try to punch it or, like, a little figurine, a thing that, like, a mascot, and it flies back and it flies into their face and it knocks them over or something. I just picture him erecting the straw man. He goes to punch it, misses, pushes it, and then it flips around and hits him in the back of the head and he falls over and it's like, ugh. Nearly had hmm. it. But this sentiment is also really silly to me because the first game was just as miserable and it also made you do- No. No. <laughs> no. You are not correct. That is inaccurate. I you have fucked a, up. He's playing a cutscene as well. You don't do anything- Well, it's the bingo scene. card. They You're play a clip it. that disproves their point, not bolstering it. Yeah, he, uh, oh, he's yeah. only doing this because he needs to know some shit. If a person can get and most through... people were happy with this sequence, by the way. <laughs> like I don't oh, know, yeah. if you know, most people are glad that Joel does what he does in this scene. Yeah. This is this is Joel putting Liam Neeson from Taken to Shame with the torture. It's fucking I wouldn't, awesome. I wouldn't go that far. You do remember what Liam Neeson does, right? Um, like, what is what does he do? Liam, Liam Neeson shoots a man's like, life in front of him. I, I'm I'm referring to when he puts the rods inside the guy's like kneecaps and electrocutes okay. him indefinitely. Yeah. That, mm. that was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, Liam Neeson ain't uh he ain't playing around. I don't I don't think I saw that cut. I think I saw a different one. That's the unrated cut. I... Oh really? Uh, there's yeah. Cut? There's okay, so the cut that I've seen, he uh he puts the, the rods like on the um the arms of the chair instead. He doesn't do anything to the guy's kneecaps and in the, uh, the the cut that I saw, it might not be his kneecaps. It, 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 it's his legs for sure, though. He stabs him in his legs. I, I violent. Oh yeah, people saying that's an alternative cut. I didn't know that. I've only ever seen that cut. Hey, it's subjective as to where Liam Neeson put the prongs. Okay, <laughs> um, interesting. But no, um, I didn't like taking all that much. 
hot take. I, I don't think Taken is very good. I don't think the oh, first. Oh man, I think it's quite good. I think it's awesome. I think you're wrong. I'll kill you. It, it, I don't know. I, I think. I don't, I, mean, actually, actually, I don't know. I I, I rewatched it uh, like a couple of years ago, and I was like, uh, I kind of cringed through a lot of it. The whole Maggie Grace, the 30 year old teenager. A lot of the action is. Uh, not very easy to make out, although it's not nearly as bad as Taken 2 and 3. All right. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like 2 and 3. I don't think anyone does. No, I mean, I'll, I'll, no, I'm just saying that that Taken 1, it, like, I don't think it's action is good, but it's certainly a hell of a lot better than the sequels. I'm, I'm trying to give it credit where credit's due. All right. Um, but yeah, this scene uh, is not... Like, you're doing bad things. It's like, well, he needs information on how to save a girl from being eaten alive, potentially. Uh, these guys have the information. So... And they tried to kill him as well, so... I guess it comes down to that. your ethical position on torture. Uh, when is it okay, when is it not? Do bad shit against your will. It had a lot of moments where Joel was forced to murder. If you think this game is bad because Joel died, then I really want to know how you feel about other stories like this. I don't Who, know why, why are you focusing on these people that I've I've never seen these people? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, they're always more specific. Always more... That. He keeps Talk saying up, like, on, man. Use like this. It's like use examples or like at least try to support your points a little bit or understand what's going on rather than just saying. People think this way. It's like, really? Do they? It's like, okay. Do they? Yeah. Uh, maybe someone out there somewhere that I can't find and never hear from. And if and you explore them on it, they're probably going to start referencing things that aren't late, related to his death, more so how it happened. Mm -hmm. Like the string of coincidences that caused it to happen. Yeah, I, I highly doubt you'll find many people who, who will say that there is no possible way that I would ever like Joel to have died, regardless of any context, no matter what it was. You will get people saying, like, oh, I wanted to play as him. This was bullshit. I'd be like, well, there's some relevance to that in the marketing, as well as he's the protagonist of the first game. And games definitely have um, a sense of carrying over characters and stuff, but I, I would be like, I mean, you can totally yeah, empathize with that, right? That doesn't have to be, like, an actual structural flaw. You could just be like, yeah, I can understand you wanted to play as Joel for longer. And that's independent from Joel's death. You could not play as Joel and he could have still survived. Yeah. This is what I mean. I feel like if you were to really dig into someone's reasoning for why it's bad that he died, it's probably connected to something other than his death. No Country for Old Men must be a very hard movie for you to watch. And I'm not trying to compare uh, the two. Old Men's I feel like Lost it's a non He's comparing Sorry. that guy to Joel? It's a non sequitur as fuck. That's like taking a yeah. tiny element apart from a big poop stew and being like, this tiny element was inside this other meal. And you're like, oh. How dare so you say that film's name? They'll just say something like this that's big and takes a lot of exploring to prove the points and they'll just say it like they don't need to qualify it at all. Like he needs to qualify that statement before just saying it. Ugh saying this story is flawless it has huge problems there are a ton of things that are actually really stupid in this story and i don't see anybody talking about any of them <laughs> well <laughs> he doesn't see anybody talking about any of them huh i'm okay. curious what, what his examples you must not will be watch a lot of videos in the last of us then or learn anything about what these I, people I, are saying. <laughs> I, I hurried through the game at an easy difficulty to rush out this review and i just don't see many people talking about this stuff <laughs> I'm curious what it, if we've covered the examples he's going to bring up. Let's see. For one, see. the pacing in this story is fucking awful. We've definitely brought that up. I agree with you there. Immediately after Joel dies, we ruin all tension by making Ellie and Dina turn on generators and lackadaisically ride their horse around the city looking for treasure. This game does not make a good first impression. And like I said, the it doesn't make an, any impression that's good. Yeah, none of <laughs> no impression. Have you. Opening scenes in this game were not fun to play for me. At this point, I was ready to give the game a 5 out of 10. I really was not having fun. But then things start to pick up a little bit, and I ended up liking it a little more. Tell me why. As Ellie's story kept moving, I was enjoying it more bit by bit. Why? We even have this really oh. cute flashback scene with Joel, which... See, the structure of this video is more rambly than anything. So yeah. the, the beginning of this was... People aren't talking about what's really wrong with it. Number one, the thing that's wrong with it. Pacing. Pacing is bad. Sometimes it's actually good. This flashback's pretty good. You're like, wait, what's going on? Where are we going? Yeah, what do you... I don't <laughs> like, 
Don't talk about the bad things. What are you doing? You, you, you're running away. Which breaks up the scenes of hectic violence. But then this wasn't the only flashback. And with each subsequent flashback, I felt like the story wasn't properly balanced. There's one flashback. Why is he taking so much time to explain the pacing specifically? That's, that's interesting to me. Because he hasn't taken this much time to explain why something is good for any of the other elements. That's because I thought he was going to list us a bunch of things in his usual fashion, not actually list one and then actually explain it. It feels weird to have something explained to you by Cosmonaut Variety Hour, you know? I guess mm -hmm. pacing isn't typically addressed by a lot of people because it's very hard to nail down. Like, the, the basic formula I always try and use is the amount of progress, be it mechanically or, or story for games, per time spent. It's, uh... Gotta be careful. This this game really likes to drag. Oh yeah, the oh it is plodding. It is outright fucking crawling backwards. It feels like <laughs> at some points, which I feel could have really fit better as the intro tutorial of the game. And then there are lots of flashbacks that don't serve any purpose at all. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I agree with him one hundred percent on what he just said right there. Um, especially the flashback where you're uh like it opens in the the ferris wheel um like on the ferris wheel with uh, abby and owen like jesus christ um well that's I, um that's supposed to make you feel as though her and ellie share um because because i i always took it because i think i mentioned it in the stream was she jumps off into the water and ellie jumps off the dinosaur into the water they, she goes to the zoo and she's like, oh my god, a dinosaur. And when, when Abby goes in, she's like, oh my god, an aquarium. I remember saying the dinosaur zoo better than the aquarium zoo. Hmm. Because it is. Okay, dinosaurs are cooler than fish. Alright, I'll fight you. Yeah, but like, I don't know. The... Oh, I'm just I'm saying that sure. I think that's what they were going for. Not that it wasn't poorly paced. Sure. Get it? Abby and hmm. Ellie are kind of similar. We're not so different, you and I! Oh my god. I mean, ah! things get Judging even by their worse when we stop a playing woman. as Ellie. About halfway through the game, we play as Abby, and we see what she's been doing while Ellie was going on her lesbian murder hobo rampage. And when things first shifted over, I was actually kind of hyped for this. I was excited to see the things that I've done, but in a new context. But that's not what Abby's story is. Abby's story follows a completely different plot that is- Oh my god. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, that's I'm the thing. Of... You have no idea when he's gonna say something right. I'm, I'm or he's actually just excited. Gonna fucking lie. It's like, yeah, but I completely agree with this. Right. Please carry that's on. Not right. yeah. 100% disconnected from what we experienced as Ellie. A big chunk of the Abbey plot is based on finding medicine for this one girl, and then after hours of looking for the fucking medicine, you give it to her, and then she just gets shot by the main villain, and then the main villain of Abby's plot immediately gets shot by the girl that he shot, and then you realize that he was so didn't poorly fucking... directed, by the way. Like, like, the first time I was so confused. Like, he just gets shot out of nowhere. It's like, wait, what? And then she's on the ground. It's like, what? Like, blown up. And then they just... I guess, I guess... Like, I guess, like, so like, those three to four people just didn't notice that she was right there lifting up a gun, pointing it at Isaac? Or that she was alive. Like, she would have had to have been able to process the situation before deciding to shoot this guy, right? So she would have had to have looked and listened and, and been like, I'm gonna do this, and none of them noticed her or heard her. Nothing. Convenient. Fucking matter anyway! People like to say, oh, well, since Ellie didn't kill Abby, I feel like I wasted my time. No, dude. This is what it feels like to waste the player's time. Um, both are an example of wasting both the players. Are, yeah. yeah, I'd say both. both <laughs> like, not a false dichotomy. They're, they're both bad. Um, right. one, of, one of which I would say, I'd say the fact that Ellie doesn't even kill Abby is arguably worse because it just makes the entire journey feel pointless. Whereas mm -hmm. this is like a detour that the plot takes for a couple hours at, at worst. It'd be one thing if this story was connected to the one that we had been playing for hours. Okay, well, so the way that the game feels it's connecting it is that the Scars and the Seraph... Uh, sorry, I, I always do that. The, the Seraphites and the, the WLF, they're all battling each other on the core of a, a petty revenge, getting to bigger revenge, getting to outward war, right? Which is supposed to be, I guess, allegorical to the experiences that Ellie and Abby are having with each other. And I think that's what the game is going for. It's just a large scale. So a lot of people would say that's thematically consistent. And it's teaching you even more about this concept without being directly about these two characters. 
that's I think the point is going for. I just once again think that it, it bungles this delivery hardcore. And we don't learn that that's the reason behind the, the faction more, um, other than that really awkward conversation where they're just like, they did it because X, but X did it because Y. But why did it because X? Because X did it Y. Okay. Hmm. You're like, wow, well, yeah, that, that, was, yeah, okay. yeah, that was beautifully right. handled. Well, sure, okay. You know mm -hmm. what would have been probably better is for, as far as the WLF are concerned, it's this big thing that this, the Scars did, and fuck them. And when you go over to the Scars, they're like, well, wait, but that event happened because you guys did blah blah blah. And then Abby's like, huh? And it's like, yeah, that thing where you guys did blah blah blah. And then it's like, oh, that thing with, with the thing that started because you guys were like in our territory or something? It's like, that's not, you, you think that's a good, re you know, like have the actual conflict instead of just, it happened because revenge, I guess. Oh. Okay. What I mean about like putting themes before everything else? It's just, it's just, you know, stories these... are great when I just want all the characters to <laughs> die. Yeah. But it's not. I have no idea why these two stories aren't connected in a more cohesive because way. Because it's a shittily written. I almost said so close to saying movie. Video game. <laughs> What's the thing? I think that it would have benefited to have actually given our perspective, uh, Abby's perspective, all these days, and to have it be that like Ellie is fucking things up without necessarily realizing it in different ways, maybe even re related to the factions. And that Abby's trying to chase her and find out where she is and stop her from killing all of her friends. Seems like it would make a lot more sense than mm -hmm. this whole journey. Like, yeah, when they, when they were like, oh, you need to get medicine for the arm, I think even in my stream I was like, oh, hopefully it won't, you know, take too long. I'm looking for, like, uh, I want to see what happens next. And it's like, no, that's going to take you a while. That is a long time, getting that fucking arm medicine. <laughs> For Abby's whole story, she doesn't even know anything about Ellie. And for Ellie's whole story, she doesn't know anything about the crazy jungle cult. This game is divided in half, and the two halves have almost nothing to do with one another. This could have been fixed by ditching this time hopping shit. Stop doing flashbacks within flashbacks. It's. I don't know that that would fix it. You'd still have that plot. No, I just wouldn't have the flashbacks. I think yeah. your, your fundamental change. Yeah, the flashbacks wouldn't change any of that. I, I, I. I agree that the flashback stuff is a really poor decision for the most part. Um, man, uh, it's you just you gotta you gotta do a lot. There's a lot of work to do. It's messy and never works out. If this game was laid out chronologically, I think it would have been really cool. Imagine you're playing. I mean, I agree. I think the chronologically would have been better. Yeah, that's like the obvious kind of thing to say. Is like this. This film almost does it. No, not almost. This film does it exactly backwards. Pretty much. Playing through a part where you're Abby and she's hanging out with her friends and talking to them and interacting with them. And then immediately you switch over to Ellie and you're forced to kill the people we just met and were acquainted with. You play as Abby and you hang out with people and then you fight them as Ellie to get revenge. I'd be more interested in trying out that structure than what they did. Oh sure. yeah, that would be. I feel a like whole I'd be saying more. like this was structured a little de too deliberately for my, my taste. Like I'd be like, all right, so we're gonna kill this person next, I guess. What you know would yeah. introduce him. Like, oh yeah, here's why we're petting the dog. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, you still could have a pacing if you problem you kept... back and forth as much as you would if you did that, but it would probably turn out better. I mean, I just... mean, go for the simple vision. You get the cutscenes and recontextualizing of the father I'm I'm not doing the zebra thing we're cutting that we'll do we'll do other ways of endearing us to the fucking dad fuck the zebra no other way then you build up through a couple more bits of her life you know that she wants to get strong she wants to fight she wants to be on the front line she wants to find she she's driven by justice you got to fuck up the people who are trying to destroy this world and then she gets a team together because she's got a lead a lead that goes nowhere and and slowly we find out this lead is all about Joel I guess. You, you can try and leave this a little bit thingy. And then her fellowship, that we get a whole bunch of characters, all these people, Nora, Owen, Mel, uh, Danny, <laughs> Danny the favorite, the fan favorite Danny, um, Fat Geralt, throw him on there as well. Have them all, you know, travel across, defeat some zombies, have some dialogue with them all, and we get to know them as a team, and then we get the scene at the beginning of the actual The Last of Us 2, and it's less sadistic, uh, make it so it's hard for her to do it. Then we have Ellie's campaign, and Ellie doesn't know it, but we do all these people's lives as she's killing them all. And also make them a fucking a bit more likable. Don't have them go, that little bitch got what he deserved. Like, oh, that's gonna oof. Oh, yeah, you you're you are so dead. 
Oh, so there's... much better dialogue we could have had. Good thing this guy's not beloved. There is, like, nothing that you could do to make me regret killing that character after she's said that. That was it for me. This, I would love if I was Ali in that scenario, I'd be like, do you know why any of it even happened? Are you this, like, you have this much conviction when you have no context. Wouldn't it have been kind of cool if there was, like, an option to, um, start dialogue with people before shooting them? Like, you can opt to just go ahead and, and start, like, attacking them, or you could just try to trigger a conversation. I like to go. Um, yeah. Nora was extremely memorable. I remember when she did the thing and talked a bit once? I mainly remember her for being the get-out-of-jail-free card for Abby. She just lets her go, despite the entire WLF wanting Abby basically imprisoned for going AWOL. Mm -hmm. so, um, a little bit of a non-sequitur, but we are talking about games, and this might impact games uh, to some degree. So... Uh, President Trump has signed a pair of executive orders on Thursday that will prohibit Americans from doing business with ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok. However, um, ByteDance owns Tencent. Whoa. And Tencent owns Riot Games, Blizzard, Riot. Epic Games. Um. Tencent partially owns Reddit, partially owns Discord, and a lot of Hollywood studios are partially owned by Tencent. I feel so like, I feel like that, this can't be implemented. Mean? Like half of all media is. Like is, it, is that bad. one of those things where it gets signed in, but no one can fucking implement it, so it just doesn't happen? I don't know. Um, you, you I'm can't... very eager to see what happens as a result. Imagine they banned the use of Discord for all Americans. That'd be fucking hilarious. Rags, get a VPN. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm 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 eager to see where this leads. Yeah, I, I doubt. I doubt that it would go the worst way possible, but yeah, interesting. Oh yeah, I don't think yeah. it will, I'm just very, very curious. As a player, you wouldn't know who's gonna live or die, and there would be a lot more tension. In this game, whenever I saw somebody that we killed as Ellie, I was like, oh yeah, that's the dude we killed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was even worse than that. I go, wait, is that one of the ones we killed? <laughs> I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> and then I, I remember the no Vita girl. I, I guessed that we killed Danny. We didn't kill Danny. He wasn't one of the ones we killed. I was like, I'm pretty sure he's one of the ones with the horse explosion bit. Further interest in them as characters, because I already knew it was going to happen to them. As it stands, this game is incapable of making us care about anyone who isn't Ellie or Abby. No, it's and incapable of those two <laughs> as well. <laughs> it it's drained don't, my don't care. Throw them in there. They're not exceptions. My care for Ellie was just sapped throughout the whole game, and then as for, as for Abby, I, I, I never cared about it. Never yeah. they, they tried. They sure did try. A lot of angry gamers don't even like Abby, and I can't even blame them because Abby's half of the story is not fun to play. I can remove large chunks of her- I mean, not fun to play. I found Abby's section's a lot more fun than Ellie's section. This is, it's really weird how he's saying this game isn't that bad while saying that half of the game isn't very fun to play. Very strange. Kind of strange. Of some things that I would call pretty big problems with the game, and I'm like, you seem to be defending it though. I mean, mm. look at the title. It's weird. I don't know what his thesis even is for this video. Is it good or is it bad? I guess it's not that bad, but you've said half of it's not very fun. So, I mean, at least half of this game is not that fun. Okay. Her story and the overall narrative will be unchanged. I also have no idea why we introduced another faction of evil murderers in the last three yeah, hours. At Geralt. Uh, they introduced a bunch of legends, I'll have you know. Yeah. <laughs> Chads. Chad Legend. The game. These slavery right, marauders are actually legends. way more interesting than the jungle cult that we fight for most of the game. And I think I agree with that, That's actually. probably because... Yeah. We, I think it's because we don't get, like, any time from the jungle cult's perspective. Yeah, we I get... I don't really even understand who the Seraphites are. We get really. Yara yeah. and Lev, but all of their information isn't really tied to the cult itself, more so to just, hey, you know, life in general. These guys... I mean... This one scene with Fat Geralt is, is more interesting character-wise than basically anything to do with the Seraphites. Um, Fringy, what was the name of the, um, did you play Far Cry New Dawn? No, I didn't. All right. Uh, oh, um, Joseph Seed, the, uh, yeah, uh, the leader Joseph of the Seed, cult. His, yeah, I Far his Cry group in, in Far Cry New Dawn, you find, like, the remnants of them, like, they're, they're a faction. Um, 
and you go into their compound and talk with a bunch of them and things of that nature. And I was just thinking, if you want to have the the hippie religious types in the woods, like, man, I can't believe I'm doing this, but New Dawn did that way better. Not to shit on New Dawn, it's a totally fine game. Off. I mean, there was it, off, like, Surface were just nuts in uh, Last of Us 2 for the most part. I was like, man, I just, everything that this, that's kind of what all these conversations turn into, is whenever we talk about The Last of Us 2, we talk about other game, all the games that did everything better. Everything. Everything. <laughs> the one accolade it can try and get is graphically amazing, but that's already the world of console, so. At least it got that. And if you ask me, they should have just mixed these two factions together to create one threat that carries between Ellie and Abby's stories. This is just another sign but of the game. But then the cycle of violence theme wouldn't have worked. Yeah, they <laughs> can't. Because that's why they exist. To fight each other. Yeah, like, I don't even like it, but even I would be like, well, dude, now you're just changing the game fundamentally. You can't, you can't just do that. Yeah. Oh no, he can just do that. Well, we want to do that, but he's he's pretending as though the <laughs> game is intact. The game is fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, no, stop. Ah. It's just another sign of the game feeling really disjointed. So yeah, while I spent most of this video defending the story of this game, it still bothers me a lot. You've barely talked about this story. You barely <laughs> scratched the surface. I cannot say that I love the whole story in this game. I love parts of it, but there are just as many things that I think do not work. I don't get oh, mad so when you kill half. a main character. I get mad when you waste my time. I get mad when story threads don't matter. No, I, I am way more mad when you shit on beloved characters than wasting my time. Wasting my time even comes across as like, well, almost benign in the sense of they probably didn't think that this was bad pacing, or if they knew, they would have changed it. Or how they treated Luke. Counterbite or how they treated Luke. What annoys you more? Oh, it's, yeah, it's obviously how they treated Luke. Yeah, I can get over Counterbite. So. Yeah, it it doesn't come across as malicious. They're just like, here's a section, and not much happens and stuff. It's It's not, like, offensive to me. It's just boring and incompetent. Yeah, like, I'd rather be bored than mad and see things I love be destroyed. You know, like I said, um, I kind of long for the days when sequels were as good as uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which is not a good movie at all. Just before chat rips into me for saying <laughs> that sentence, that's going to be taken out of context, I know. But, I mean, Crystal Skull, you know, has that ending where Indy's hat is, you know, blowing across the floor and Shia LaBeouf picks it up. And Harrison Ford grabs it from him and he's like, no, I'm Indiana Jones. You're not Indiana Jones, you know? It's, But in, in, in the modern day, Shia LaBeouf's character would be played by a woman and Indy would just let her have the hat. If that movie was made today, you know, that's how it would end. You forgot the part where she puts the hat on, it doesn't fit quite right, she doesn't want it, and she throws it in the bin. Oh, you're right. Yeah, maybe maybe the idea of Indiana Jones was shit all along. He's like, I'm standing right here. I don't care. <laughs> What, what, who are you? Ray. Ray Jones. <laughs> God, yeah, she'd and be I played by Daisy Ridley. One day. Main character. I get mad when you waste my time. I get mad when story threads don't matter. And I get mad when I don't care about the side characters, and then they just end up getting killed to shock me. This death is not done for shock value. It but, yes. um, <laughs> what do you mean? So it's You're specifically, wrong as shit specifically done for that. That's like, I'm pretty sure you can get that from the devs. They're like, the whole goal is to f fucking shotgun this at you. You're like, whoa, this is happening now. And it sh the whole point is to tr charge your emotions into Abby. Abby has to die. She has to die. That's the goal of this scene. Why do you think they had it in the first two hours of the game? It's to get it up as quickly as possible to shock the audience. That's exactly what it's for. It's it's like that gamble paid off. I mean, if Joel had died, like sacrificing himself to save Ellie or something, that would be one thing. Yeah, a lot of people would have would have been fine with that. This people would have been like, "Yep, that's Joel. That's just what Joel would do. That's the Joel I know and love, and that's Joel doing the right thing. And I love Joel, and this is what he deserved." And see, to this go out that, like a hero. That's a cathartic send off. It's satisfying. That makes sense. This is purposefully unsatisfying and shocking. Hence, shock value. You know, it reminds me of like if 
TLJ uh, actually went as Luke agreed that he has to uh, save the day. Comes to crate. Kylo and him ignite their lightsabers, and he's like, "I have to defeat you for the for the good of the galaxy. You have to be stopped." And then he just like clash, clash, chops Luke's head off. It is over. We'd be like, "What?" And I'd be like, "That was clearly done for shock." Like there's there's, there's and it's like, well, no, it's, we're going to justify it. We're going to explain that he was old, retired, you know, have a theme about how you always expect your heroes to win. I'd be like, well, no, but that's clearly done for shock. <laughs> like, I don't know what, what else to say. This was obvious. The, the way it's filmed, the whole, like, screaming, screaming, and then slapped down to his head. They do the, the save in Private Riot. Ears have been blown out. It Everything's wasn't meant nuts. to be a shock when it panned over to Abby shooting Joel in the leg. That wasn't meant to shock you. I mean, you should have seen that one coming. The ones that aren't shocking are like slow, explained, and set up deaths. Um, but even then, you can yeah. have those be pretty fucking done for shock value sort of things. The whole point of the game is that you're not meant to know who Abby is or why she would want to kill or who she was even there for up until that point. Yeah, it's almost as if this scene is done for shock value. Hey. I, I kind of think that you could still have Joel die in this manner and then sympathize with Abby if, for it's instance. It's going to be tough, dude. That's the problem. Well, I feel like. You know, right from the start, you, people are they against took the her. toughest I mean, of the possible action, the ways they could I mean, have done. Hear me out. Hear me out. Don't yeah. have Joel save save her life. And in this uh, ideal like flashback where uh, he like ambushes Abby's parents and kills her dad, have him kill her dad in the exact same manner that Joel ends up dying. And then it's like, okay, well, I would understand why Abby would want to kill Joel the same way that he killed her father. I, would also I don't believe that Joel would beat somebody to death with a golf club, like, slowly. I don't know. I don't buy that. There's something that he would do. Maybe. Yeah, but even, I mean, and even it, then, it, I, like, how far back are we going to go? You know, that's kind of like the problem with doing it after the fact. Mm -hmm. It's like nobody, yeah. nobody doubts that Abby is a human being. It's we, just like, that's you, the thing. you we, set me up to hate her from the start. We picture sure. that as much as he would have done immoral acts, as in he kills people to take their things, I imagine Joel was the kind of one that was like, as little suffering as possible, please. That's yeah. true. That's true. So, I, I, and yeah. I don't think that he would fall back into old habits or anything like that. Well, no, at this no. point, I think no, no, he would no, actually, no, no. he would just outright refuse, especially after being a part of Jacksonville. If he had a choice to save himself or someone to take someone's stuff and kill them, he'd probably be like, oh, fuck it. I'll die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I can't deal with this anymore. Yeah, that's reasonable. Um, and of course I would want, in all these edits, I would include, let's drop the line, you stupid old man, and let's drop her, like, yep. her snarkiness with the whole, because we have. It's like, shut the fuck up. Don't, st don't talk. This needs to be a silent moment, and you need to be shaking yeah. and upset, because this is something that you... Does she even come across to you guys as someone who's been waiting for this for four years? No. She, no it it really. also comes across to me as like, ha hey, hey, ha, I get to get revenge. Yeah. As opposed to, like, she should be, her emotions should She's... be off the charts. She should be, like, just fucking jittering all over the place. This is him. This is the guy. Yeah, I feel like she should say so much more, and there should be a conversation. Once again, we lack a conversation when there should have been one. Explanations, answers. I want to know, why the fuck did you kill my father? I'd want to know. That'd be what I ask. Like, tell yeah, me she's why. Just, she's just angry. She's just blinded with rage. That's such a relatable, likable character. You don't get the feeling she's there for justice. Well, compared to Iron Man in Civil War, when he loses his fucking shit, he's not, he's not like, it's not pleasurable, and it's not snarky. He's mostly quiet. Whenever he's forced to answer a question, he, like, shouts. And then, oh, that bit where, uh, where he says, do you even remember them? And Winter Soldier says, I remember all of them. Mm. Fucking Civil War is Kino. <laughs> that shit's top tier, okay? But um, Yeah, Civil War is some good shit! And that's the moment he finds out that that's the case. Abby's had four years to deal with this, and then she finds out way ahead of time that this is the person they're probably going to be finding. And it wasn't even her who, it was someone else who had come up and said, Oh, hey, we got this lead that... That's shockingly vague, they, but it's it's a it's a lead to that thing you wanted. And they fucking foolishly, foolishly had Joel save her life before this happened, so now we're all just confused. Also, yeah, where's the conversation about that? It's like, I fucking saved your life. Like, oh, imagine he... You're welcome. <sighs> so many missed opportunities. 
I just want to make it clear, by the way, I'm not saying that they um, necessarily should have had her kill Joel with a golf club like this. I'm, I, I was just trying to propose a suggestion of for how they could make her sympathetic afterwards. My ideal solution that I will present in my critique after the whole idea of you're, you're, you're playing this unarmed uh, woman trying to escape undefeatable NPC antagonist Joel is she shoots him in the head and it's quick. And she she explains why she's doing this. Um, it's like they, they they fucked up on every level with this. Um, yeah, and, I would. And once even, again, I want to. No, we just said this ain't the wrong. This ain't the way to go. As spoiler free as I can. Else. But um, how how a certain police officer or uh, fuck, what's the what's the narcotics? I always forget the name. The, DEA. The DEA. A certain DEA officer at the end of Breaking Bad, uh, season five or halfway through, I guess. Um. The way that scene is done, very elegant in terms of an execution, and still mm -hmm. rushed, still shocking in terms of just like how it goes. But of course, what you were bringing up is is how do we? Because this is a fun thing we like to try and do on EFAB every once in a while, which is how do we keep one element and fix around it? Assuming that someone wants to keep the bludgeoned and bloodied corpse of of Joel, it's like how do we get to keep that and do everything else the same way? It's like okay, we gotta. And I think one of the fundamentals we have to actually alter is Abby's character. She can't actually be as uh, as good of a person if you want to have that happen. Yeah. I mean, if he's got to get beaten up like that, they are screaming at, like, he's not giving up where Ellie is. He's not giving up something, you know, that sort of thing. Then do that. You know, there, it still involves Joel being Joel, even in his final moments. And it's mm -hmm. super admirable and virtuous and incredibly brave of him. They just but, can't make him likable afterwards. That's the point of no return. Look, okay, people are only following me. The name of the character I was talking about. I was trying to not name him. That was the point. Chat, weren't? Isn't this the same chat that was, you know, <laughs> yelling at me for spoiling an eight-year-old video game? You're spoiling a seven-year-old TV show now. Oh, you're spoiling it for all the people who haven't seen it yet. Rude. Yeah. It motivates the entire plot. A shock value death is one that we forget about immediately. Uh, no. That's not how that works at all. Oh, what? You think people are just gonna forget what they did to Joel? I didn't even forget are what they insane? did to Jesse. I was I was still pissed that they did that to Jesse. It's like I didn't get to learn anything about that fucking character. Now he's just dead. I was definitely I mean, for shock. Like he seemed like What's a that? nice guy, but I mean, okay. Yeah, that's I guess what I mean. He's it's like, oh, I guess he's dead now. He's he like, gets, all right, I guess move along. Along. He gets. That was a, the thing. He gets a, he gets a, like a much more survivable headshot than Tommy gets, and he dies. <laughs> yeah, Force goes. Yeah, Jesse's yeah. like, "Hey, <laughs> I'm super. I want to explore Cosmonaut's ideas about how what shock value is like, and and I think he thinks that if something's done for shock value, it can't have t more than that. Like, it has to. It, it, if anything is done for shock value, it can't have a simultaneous purpose. I think that's how he's judging it, and that's why Jesse's is just shock value, while Joel's isn't because Joel's death." you know, motivates Ellie throughout her whole campaign. I'd be like, okay, but it's still done for shock value. Yeah, shock value doesn't, like, exclude other things. Literally, the way they film it, where he's like, y'all might have heard of this, I guess, and then the camera pans over <laughs> to the shotgun, <laughs> boom. Yeah. That's your best American accent ever. Oh, that's my, I hate you, Joel. Who are you? I've <laughs> <laughs> uh, been fine-tuning it these last weeks. <laughs> y'all must have heard of us or something. We have <laughs> Well, I sure didn't hope I didn't kill none of y'all's pawpaws earlier. <laughs> I was just I was just asked, would you count the red wedding as having shock value? It's like absolutely. It doesn't mean it's yeah, not it's informed. Not it's true. that shit well, is why, shocking why as hell. The implication that, that shock value can't also be good is almost Because we're talking about a fucking cosmonaut variety hour opinion. Well, yeah, it's just <laughs> such a weird thing to say. Like as though shock value and good are diametrically opposed matter and i get mad when i don't care about the side characters and then they just end up getting killed to shock get, me this you death get mad is not done for shock value it motivates things? the entire plot a shock value death is one that we forget about immediately why can't no, a shock value no 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 we didn't care about jesse's shock death because of the shock value death it's because he wasn't like very memorable or interesting because we forgot see, about him it's kind of like tommy you just sort of forget about him i mean he was actually the shock value death motivates the plot then it's not 
for shock value or it can't be like because joel's death motivates the plot it's still for shock value but it motivates the plot it's also, Those things it's also are not, i would argue I would... um we kind of like to get shocked and stuff and so as a, as a creator it's um it can be useful to try and build your story and then be like how can we deliver some of these plot points in a shocking way or a surprising way or a subversive way dare i say Hate so much when people call a story bad when it kills a main character. Yeah, no stop saying, saying that. that. Stop saying that. I know you feel really fucking big brain and smart because you think that's what people think, but they don't. Remember so how everybody ripped into Game of Thrones season one because because of Ned Stark? They were like, "Oh, what a shit yeah, people show!" Hated it. It's not like the season. People stopped watching after that first season. They hated it. Oh, the chat wanted me to know it was a joke that they were all saying his name was Hank. I mean, but how am I supposed to be able to tell that? All you were saying is his name was Hank. <laughs> you have to put emotes after it, like laughing face or kappa to face would be perfect. Know that it's a meme. Yeah, I, <laughs> it'll still like it'll still give it away technically, but yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me, man. It feels like The Last Jedi all over again. Well, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I don't know why, but uh, for whatever reason, it seems like The Last Jedi created this trend in media where you just have to shit all over things and oh, we've, say it's good. We've spotted, that one was the one that, like, made everyone aware of it to a to a really wide audience degree. But before that, we, you know, Terminator Genesis still predates that, yeah. so it's Halo 4, right? Or is it Halo 5? Which one was the one? I think it's, it's kind oh, of both. No, it's Genesis and then Halo 5. Uh, oh, but they both predate out. TLJ, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> Nightmare media. That's what we should call it. There were actual real reasons to not like that movie, but when it first came out, people were just mad because Luke Skywalker died. No. What? That's <laughs> false as well. You can keep saying this over and over. It doesn't get more correct through it, repetition. Yeah. I don't, Wait, I don't remember that really being the argument from anybody that it was he died rather than he... F everybody was pissed off that he went out like a fart. I think, like, not to mention, he didn't really get a chance to act the way that we would expect Luke to act. And so there, there's a sort of bitter feeling of he's kind of gone before we really get a chance to see him back to his, uh, like, restored to his former glory. Um, not to mention, uh, did, did anyone bring up Logan in regards to, like, killing off a protagonist? There's loads of them. There's so many of them. I, <laughs> so, like, that came out, like, earlier in the same year that The Last Jedi did. And everyone loved Logan. Well, it's it. Th I uh, we we cannot live in a universe where we're going to pretend like people can't deal with a character they like dying. It's such a common thing in stories: characters dying. I would argue that a lot of us like to see deaths for main characters in kind I mean, of in a well, I mean, a, a good example. Way. Like, again, spoiling spoiling ten year old games. Everybody really likes Red Dead Redemption, and everybody really likes John Marston, and everybody really likes the way that he goes out. We just brought I mean, like, one of the oldest stories known to mankind is the Epic of Gilgamesh, and fucking Inkadu dies in that. Like, I, I don't know what to say. Like, people are totally okay with uh, good characters dying in media. It dates back thousands and thousands of years. The Iliad. Did the Iliad die? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, the Iliad died. died. Yeah. His, friend, his friend Odyssey had to watch him as he oh. died. <laughs> But yeah, uh, not many people I knew, and in the same way with Joel, if you found someone who said, I hated The Last Jedi because Luke died, you're like, so what bothers you entirely? It's like, well, you know, that he died. And you're like, specifically that he just died, the fact that he died. It wasn't anything else, it was just the fact that he died. And it's like, yes. I didn't meet anyone like that. <laughs> not a one. I like Chad's like, uh, wow, fuck, spoilers, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Because we can't kill a beloved character. No, what are you no, talking don't about? Disrespect that. beloved characters. Who it says hurts. these things? I don't know who he's talking to. Critical <laughs> audience that he's invented. That's what all this is. He's like, I don't understand your position. These people are saying this. It like, who is to understand this? positions which don't exist? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, people reference in Spider Verse, like in in the opening. The beloved main character fucking dies. 
Yeah, like he he's the definitive Spider-Man of that movie. Everyone else is kind of like a different iteration of it. But he's like, that is Peter Parker dying. It's like, that's pretty shocking. Yeah. Spoilers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Spider-Verse, everyone, you should have seen it already. That's your fault. You know, if you told me like 10 years ago, hey, we, they should make a an animated Spider-Man movie where Peter Parker dies in the first 20 minutes. I'd be like, are you fucking insane? Are you, are you having the piss? I mean... <laughs> In the piss, and, and, and then it turns out fucking great. You having the piss? <laughs> Are you having the piss? I'm look. I, I'm not British, okay, and that's definitely a British term. Are you term. taking the piss? Uh, Are but... you currently robbing me of my urine? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So this is interesting to me. So if you were this call, I'd be like, "Oh, people hate it when the beloved characters are killed." Yeah, and he goes, "Yeah," and I go, "Because everybody always referenced the worst part of Endgame was Iron Man's death, right?" He'd be like. Well, no, I mean, that's a heroic death. I'm talking about when beloved characters have shitty, oh, nonsensical, okay. embarrassing, like, disrespectful what deaths. What are you talking about? Huh, interesting. And, like, what, and I'd be like, oh, you don't mean, don't oh, shitty, embarrassing, disrespectful deaths. Yeah, no, you're right. People don't like that yeah, when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's really interesting? Was like, I remember when I saw Into the Spider-Verse, I'm like, oh, are they going to do to to Peter Parker what they did to Luke Skywalker like a year ago? I'm not sure if I'm into this. And then... The actual arc that they give Peter B. Parker and how it ends satisfyingly and he gets back with MJ is like, this is this is a respectful treatment of the character. I like this, you know? <laughs> I, I, I left Spider-Verse feeling happy and satisfied and... Ooh, should I have been depressed. That. Uh, yeah, it's right. No, it's supposed to be miserable. You need to learn You're about right. revenge. The best, the best stories are not made to please you. Oh... Her. Now, real quick, let's take a second to look at things from a different perspective. Oh boy. Let's go oh, to an alternate universe. You. The year is 2013, and The Last of Us 1 has just come out. It features a doctor and his daughter in a post-apocalyptic world. We're actually world. doing this. The We're doctor's actually constantly doing this. trying to do I'm curious what his overall point's gonna be. I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna let him do this, but oh, you better make a good yeah. point. I'm expecting yeah, a good yeah, point. He's saying the, the right thing, but the world is decaying so fast, and it's hard for him to recognize right from wrong. Then at the end of the story, he finds a girl who's immune to the virus, but he realizes that he has to kill her to make a cure. And since the world is already looking really bleak, he decides that he has to make the hard choice to sacrifice this girl in order to try. Uh, some choice. one of you might one of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. But it's a what? sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> like, hey. I love uh, John Lithgow's fucking voice acting in that. It's so awesome. <laughs> Aging Doctor Farquaad. Try to save humanity. Oh. It's a tough choice, but he knows that he has to do it because he is one of the last people alive who cares about mankind. Last mm. people who cares about mankind. Fine. Okay, fine. fine. So his pitch is that it all runs on the alternate... Like, you get what he's doing, the POV thing, so let's see where he goes with this. But then, that little girl's dad kills him because humanity truly is selfish, and at the end oh, of the day... Oh, fuck off! Doesn't, with this that movie. doesn't follow. Ah. Humanity is selfish, therefore a father protects their daughter. That doesn't make sense. Fuck off. We're just gonna take your daughter again, you know, from you. But you're just supposed to do the right thing and let us kill your daughter. What? Oh, oh. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. How is it not selfish to decide that you are the one that's going to like force this girl into the surgery without asking for her consent? Isn't that a little selfish? Yeah, this is what I mean. This this revisionist fucking history for the Fireflies is embarrassing. The Last of Us Two has really just provided Kool Aid to a lot of people, and they've just downed it. Yeah, I, I'm convinced that Cosmonaut did not play the first game recently enough. Like, he didn't re replay it to actually have his memory fresh on. Oh, yeah, the Fireflies Very are actually doing some shit. No, he's he's uh, played through the second game, and the second game has confirmed his preconceived biases about what the Fireflies actually were, and that's good enough for him. Yeah, this shot that he has, that this surgeon is not making a heroic sacrifice right now. Like, he took it upon himself to kill a child, like, because he thought it would save the world. That was... That's all that's behind this. And you know, to be honest with you, if he was truly altruistic, all about saving the world, he probably would have gone with the whole, like, this guy is fucking armored up. Okay, sir, please. Yeah, if like, I, I die here, you I can't make the cure later. Yeah, like, like, please don't do this. We need her. And it's like, look, let's, we'll not do the surgery, okay? We'll, 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 we'll do whatever you want, but please, please let us work on this. This is the only chance humanity has. 
Instead, he's like, "Fuck you, scalpel time." And you're like, "What are you? What are you doing, buddy?" He's got he's got all of the weapons. <laughs> I don't think you yeah. want to. Don't do it. Can he um? Can he kill you? No. There's well, absolutely. Absolutely. He you just, you. He's like an invisible wall, basically, and it's like, uh, yeah, you, you just get by him. You have to kill him. It, it, See, that scene should have been a cutscene. It shouldn't have been um thing it, uh, in reference to the Last of Us Two. Sorry, not in reference to the Last of Us One. He never advances on you. Uh, if you walk towards him without like shooting at him or anything, Joel just simply takes the scalpel that he's holding and digs it into his own neck. Oh. Which is oh. the canonical <laughs> way that he kills him, but there are, of course, plenty of other ways that you can kill him that would then render this game un like non-canon. So, if only. that's the thing in games too is like if you have multiple endings, then forcing one of those to be the canonical ending is going to automatically ostracize a lot of players who didn't do that one thing. I mean, it just like allows me to, you know, it gives me incentive to use a flamethrower on him uh, on each one of my uh, later playthroughs of the game. Oh, James Moore wants us to, to recognize well, which I think is fair, that Cosmonaut's referring to it as a cure when it's it's important that it's called a vaccine um, because it's a potential... The, it's very shaky ground that this vaccine is being created on, okay? There's a lot to it. And if you take it 100% as I stab her in the brain and the whole world is cured of cordyceps or whatever, it's like, oh, I can see how that might affect your uh, your thinking in this scene. People don't really want to be saved. Seems like a decent story to me. I could see that no. being in a video game. But then... If the if the story ends with the... Do, that like sounds the guy like such a it, shit uh, ending. <laughs> no, like, if, if the story ends with the guy basically uh, choosing to operate on a girl without her consent when she arrives at the hospital unconscious and he dies, I'm like, good. He got what he deserved. I would, Dude, I would be so confused. I'd be like, what the fuck is this story, man? Like, I'm supposed to... This guy we've learned about this whole game, he, like... The second the, the, the hope of the salvation of the universe comes in here, he like wants to do it without her consent. He doesn't want to tell her? This is weird. Why have we not done more tests? I'd be like, this is so weird. It feels like the game, let's assume it was good up to that point, was really well paced. And then suddenly they slap this ending on because they want him to get killed by a father. But a father can't just kill him. The father has to have like some sort of a reason so they contrive this ending. This is what I mean. The Fireflies are either really incompetent or really poorly written, and we've got no choice but to accept that The Last of Us 1 is entirely canon. There's nothing about it that's, like, plot holy. So the Fireflies are fucking terrible people. Yeah, I'm just happy to say that they're incompetent and they're awful people. Um, it's once they're trying to say, oh, no, but they're actually the good guys, like, uh... Um... I don't know why we're fucking with the first game. <laughs> Just, just don't. You don't have to change the first game at all. It's the second one that or, that's shit, alright? <laughs> Worry about that one. It's the state of writing well, sequels in 2020. I oh yeah, he, we gotta fuck he, with the original stuff people like. I think he's trying to make a point of, about POV, probably, so we'll just see where he goes with it. That little yeah, girl's sure dad kills him because humanity truly is selfish, and at the end of the day, people don't really want to be saved. Seems like a decent story people to me. I could see saved. that being in a video game. But then, a few years pass, and in this alternate universe, The Last of Us Part 2 comes out. And then we have to play as those other people. How dare Naughty Dog make me play as these lunatics? Uh, was, why are you doing started. this? Uh, why are you He's trying why to you invert it, it to be like, as, as though it could have gone either way, right? If we played as the Doctor, we'd be angry that we had to play as Joel. Yeah, nah, this, this takes a lot of breaking down for why he's wrong. It's not the same thing at all, so... Yeah, you can't just swap the people and have all the things they did makes sense like described is not the doctor from the original last of us and it's not the doctor from the last of us part two he described a different character so we it's, it wouldn't hold up how is so the we're transposing like watching abby be happy in her life is the frustration he's saying it would ju be just as frustrating to watch the girl that was going to be sacrificed without even knowing for something that might not even work who was rescued from that fate by her father being happy i'd be like why would i hate those two yeah, you like I said, you could change the order that you see them, but it doesn't change what they actually do. If you like, um, we can justify the stuff Joel does one hundred percent. We can't justify the stuff the Doctor does. Nor can we justify do. Abby. Yeah, like that's the problem. This is the huge problem yeah. the game experiences, and he's already commented on this, but he didn't, I guess, finish the Pay point in terms himself. of. Like he's, you know, he said like the whole game has nothing to do with Abby's side of the of the of POV. I was like, yeah, you should have spent more time with Abby explaining her decision. 
explaining what she knew about Joel and why she did it all and how much she regrets it. We didn't do any of that. Or if we did, it was incredibly thin, is kind of... <sighs> Not the same, I but... Right. I don't even know that I can say good try. Like, this was just nothing yeah really. i don't even think this is a good try territory i don't know what to say <laughs> i'm just not i don't know what i'm meant to think of this I mean, people are making the memes fact... about this shit where it's like what if a prequel to lord of the rings comes out and it's fucking sauron in his little house saving zebras <laughs> 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 like the fact that um abby is present for the conversation between marlene and jerry and knows that uh, ellie is not conscious to give her consent and she gives uh, Jerry consent for Ellie, this person that she doesn't know at all, is like, oh, this just makes Abby worse. It would be one thing if she didn't know what a monster her dad actually was. Um, and she just doesn't have the right information. But no, she does. She fully understands that they were going to operate on Ellie without her consent. And it's funny how Cosmonaut has to tiptoe around that fact that they were they didn't get Ellie's surgeon consent. Yeah, they don't mention that. Well, shit. that's just the that's the theme of Cosmonauts' videos: is that those pesky facts keep getting in the way of what he wants. Um, Rex, right, you say that as if he remembers the content he's reviewing. Like, yeah, I, don't he even, I don't even know that he knows that happened in the game. And once you have to like confront that fact that they were going to just kill her without telling her anything or getting her, like getting the okay from her, it's like, man, good luck to anyone that's that wants to argue that Ellie was not owed consent. So, yeah, um, by the way, with that Sauron reference, you might be like, yeah, that's uh, funny, but it, it provides you the actual answer, which is, I don't care how human Sauron is compared to the horrors that he committed on Middle-earth. So what you need to do is take your time to explain to me why he did what he did, as opposed to, yeah. look, he's a nice man. It's like, I, 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 that doesn't help anything, yeah. actually. <laughs> Getting me to be on his side is totally different than just informing me why he made the decisions he did. We're clearly the villains of the last game. Dr. Abby's dad was the true hero. He wanted to save the world. They so killed did my Hitler. dad. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, man. Like, you gotta be smarter than this. He almost seems like he's almost got it because he's d delivering it in such a dull way as if somebody didn't even pick up what was happening in the actual story. They were just like, he's a nice man. He's tried to save the world and Joel killed it's him. So that's Thanos. mean. So, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the, you don't analyze any of the specifics on how this all went down. And now Holy they live in this job. peaceful country town. Are you fucking kidding me? That's not fucking fair. Joel is evil. Why would Naughty... Why would anyone think he's evil for saving his daughter? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, this is this is all built on the idea that you don't know how characters and works of fiction work. Well, it's a is, tragedy for is, someone with your occupation, of course. But it's not analogous. Like yeah, one like is you a can't guy flip saving it. his daughter figure, and the other is somebody maliciously targeting him and beating him to death. Like I said, same. if if you just have it so that Joel killed Abby's father, like you know, as a hunter, right? He ambushed them when they were innocent. He's one of those innocent people that he's killed in his past. Like, that fixes it pretty much. We would then suddenly sympathize with Abby because, yeah, she didn't deserve to lose her dad and Joel took her dad from her. That would make sense. You can make us feel like, a, you know, kind of a dislike for a character that we previously liked once we're given new information like that. And we can, or we can at least sympathize with the character that's going to kill them. But we didn't get that here. She's not justified in her quest for vengeance. That was what they needed to spend their time on, and obviously it was going to be almost impossible to justify what she did in that scene, so you need to change the scene a bit as well. Unfortunately, they were driven too much by the fucking prospect of shock value to let this go. They were like, nah, let's beat the fuck out of him with a golf club and then spit on him. People are going to find that so shocking. Yeah, we're going to make this so hard for ourselves. <laughs> dog try to make me feel bad for killing him wait now i have to play as his daughter are you kidding me she's a psychopath do you see how silly that sounds i mean it I sounds silly but not for the silly. Silly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not quite for the reasons you're trying to illustrate it does indeed you're sound not silly. good at this you're really bad at crafting and explaining and analyzing stories also, what is that tweet? Someone said Mola doesn't have. It, it was wrong to say Mola doesn't have any passion for his content. Clearly, he does. Uh, what he means to say is Mola has no love put into them. What? Um, he has passion for I, it, but not love but for not it. Love. Yeah. I'd be curious how you cross all that out. Yeah. Hmm. Um. 
But yeah, I, I love a lot of a lot of media, and I would argue it's what drives me to criticize shitty media because I want more of the stuff that I love. Um, yeah, you might love it, but do you have a passion for it? Oh no, of course. But uh, I, I, it, it amuses me as well because it's every time we talk about some of these bigger franchises getting destroyed, it's like, where do you think this starts? Starts with loving them. Yeah, yeah. like I didn't give a shit if I didn't ever give a shit about Star Wars. I don't know if I would have ever. We if if we didn't love Star Wars, EFAP might have never been a thing. I would have never met Mahler potentially. Mm -hmm. I did like an eighty-minute-long review of Shazam for like shits and gigs because I thought that that movie was like kind of poorly written. Shits but gigs. dude, then then I saw Toy Story four after I finished my Shazam video, and I was like, I dedicated the wrong. Uh, sorry, I, I I dedicated an autistic amount of energy into analyzing a movie like for the wrong movie, <laughs> you know? Um, Cause I, I'm way more passionate about that than, than I am about the DCEU. DCEU is trash, but Toy Story used to be like one of those franchises where every movie was good. Well, you know, and... Star Trek getting destroyed, like Rags and I haven't covered that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you look at Red Letter Media and the difference that they have between their Star Wars and their Star Trek commentary, you can absolutely tell which one they care about more. And I think if really we were obvious. asked to cover the Star Trek stuff, we'd probably be like, yep, that's stupid, that's stupid, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, we'll see you around. Because, like, yeah. there's not much, dare I say, passion. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. But anyway, yeah, I did like him saying, like, doesn't that sound silly? It's like, yes, it does. Killing him. Wait, now I have to play as his daughter? Are you kidding me? She's a psychopath. Do you see how silly that sounds? Mm. I didn't even change the story. I just put it in a different order. What do you change mean? The story. <laughs> there you go. To an insane degree. <sighs> My point is that people are criticizing this game with the most surface level observations. Oh, that's right. I'm not. You just haven't listened to them. He you doesn't even know what they are. are. He thinks that everyone's mad just because Joel died. He hasn't listened to what people are actually saying. He's just like assuming this is what people think. That's your problem. You gotta be kidding me, dude. It's so shallow the way people are talking about this story. When Cosmonaut Variety Hour calls you shallow. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, Joel yeah. wasn't a beloved character. All those shallow people out there just don't get it like I do. Can't imagine why this video got like the lowest rates of his videos in history. I'd say that I enjoyed about 60 to 70% of this game, and the rest either bored me out of my fucking mind or made me angry. So as a whole, did this game you really just- You said half of the game wasn't that yeah, great. Yeah, all of Abby's campaign <laughs> is yeah. shit, so... You also still and haven't explained what justifying itself means. Mm -hmm. Like, did this game do that? No. It's, like, we're, we're still ha it's still conjecture justifying what that even itself. is referring to. Justify its existence for me? Yeah, I don't really know. I still personally feel like this story did not really need to continue. Oh. I really like the ending, but the 20 hours leading up to You liked the it, ending? You liked the ending. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you liked the ending. Jeez. Uh, doesn't surprise me. Maybe you are a maskist. <laughs> when it felt bloated and unsure of itself. I can't just forgive the mountain of dumb shit only because I love the ending. I have to look at the whole picture. I don't really care if you love or hate the game. I'm obviously some. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, You're you saying that we're you dumb. I mean, I'm can. looking at. You can. Yeah, I'm looking at the no, title fine. here. I think you care a lot. Look, like you... I'm. I'm gonna at least I'll be honest and say I don't like it that people love the Mandalorian. Look, he's he's being objective. Okay, he's saying he doesn't care about it, but he's stating the fact that you guys are dumb if you think it's bad. Okay, there's, there's no there's no personal like interest in there. He's simply saying it. What That's I do just care because about people it. only complain about dumb stuff like, you know, Joel dying. That's all that people are mad about. Those yep. losers. It's how people all those talk people out the there somewhere that, that maybe we'll see one day. Because currently the conversations about this game are really not fun to engage with. And I Because like you're on the wrong to... fucking side and you can't justify it. I mean, that's why it feels shit like it's shit to lose. Yeah. I don't remember conversations promising to be fun. Like that's an engagement uh, contract you sign. You know, everyone, you have to have fun. Like, oh. Okay. I mean, well, of course, one side is going to be very disappointed here. I was just, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious. This is, a, of course, a subject people are getting emotional about because they fucking care about the, this IP yeah. getting destroyed. They're angry. You don't see this level of passion for the new episode of Teletubbies where they, they fuck up a continuity with the sun. <laughs> like, I am. Oh, I. The sun was fucking... an important character. 
to change. But anyway, we have to put a number on this game because number scores are really all some people care about. No, you don't. And scoring this game is kind of tough I for don't me. put it on mine. Part you don't. Why do people do it? I didn't have to make, I didn't want to make this video. I, I guess I have to put a score on it. Yeah, I, I didn't want to make this video I mean, as the fun one. <laughs> give, give, a, give a score if it helps categorize it into where you, on the scale, kind of place it. Not because everyone wants a score. Yeah, a lot of people... Uh, it's kind of like a meme how dumb they are, almost. Part of me wants to give it a 6, and part of me wants to give it a 7. I think about all the stuff I love, but then I remember the stuff that pisses me off. So for now, I'm going to give The Last of Us Part 2 a 6.5 out of 10. That could probably change if I replayed the game. I might replay it one day. Who knows? Bye! Yeah, that was really shit. You're horrible at your job. Legitimately one of the worst YouTubers I've ever seen. I usually uh, qualify the statement with just in terms of ratio. Like, his level of um, exposure compared to his quality. I think he's possibly one of the worst, if not the worst. He's insanely low quality. His takes are worthless. He doesn't get things accurate. He says things that are just flat out lies. <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, there is no justice in the world. And there's also just the really smug tone that he takes in a lot of his videos. He also, yeah, he thinks he's cracked the case every time he covers anything, doesn't he? He spends so little on it. He, he even said, he was like, I already played it to get the review out. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. What, um, what numbers are we all sitting at for this game? Was it 2.53, something like that? Mine, mine is accompanied by the huge asterisk that I have not played it but so mine is a parentheses uh, hmm. <laughs> i'm pretty sure that when i first played it i was on a six but that was because of like what i thought about the game play where i thought it was just okay <laughs> I that first time I went with that, a four. That changed, that, that changed now. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking three ish. I was on a four, uh, and that's like being generous. I'm, I'm closer to saying two now. Um, I, the gameplay well, is way the worse. The whole game, or like, because I kind of have to try and split them up. Because like I story, feel that I if, think it's pretty bad. Um, well, if the game wants to like be a story, back. then you if you if it, this game has by design made the story a huge part of it, so it has to be a part. It's got to be the score a part of the score as well. It's a story driven game where the story absolutely sucks, and the game part is worse than the game part from the first game. Like the gameplay is a, is overall a step down, despite the expansion of features in this one. Um, yeah, so but the game looks good and animates really well. Well, yeah, so that's like what gets it up as high as it does. It. Yeah, I think that's why I can give it. I can still. I, I'm I'm very secure in putting it below the five mark. Um, because stuff like, you know, the graphics and things of that nature. It's like sure good but it's all in service of something terrible because graphics should be in service of something because i'm not a 12 year old who claps at pretty lights you're gonna have to do better than just making giving me something pretty to look at i didn't come here to look at things but to do things and experience things graphics aren't aren't even close to being everything for me uh i, I will play through a an early PS3 game before I play through The Last of Us Part Two. Oh, I'm like, sorry. Someone in chat was like, "Lola animates good. Get out of here, dude!" Like, yeah, it it looks good. Yeah, like, of course it looks good. There's stupid shit in it. Like, you can't just be like, "Well, you skate towards people, so it's not well animated." Like, come on. <laughs> The yeah, like well it, there are shortcomings. There's problems, but like when, especially yeah, when it comes cool. to the cutscenes like, and stuff, cut like it's fucking hell. Yeah, it's kind of like, like without like peer when it comes to facial animation oh yeah when i was uh doing a review uh it doesn't exist so don't ask for it but when i was kind of compiling information to do a, a modern warfare review i was gonna say like these cutscenes are the best cutscenes i've ever seen in my life and like that's worthy of pointing out and praising mm -hmm. absolutely it, it excels on a on a technical aspect on a technical level uh yeah, unless yeah. you include ai <laughs> 
Well, it's, yeah, it's, I'm talking I mean, like... I will say some of the animations don't quite work sometimes. Maybe that's a, a, oh, yeah, a, sure. a mark against um, mechanics rather than animations. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's more like the, the animations themselves are pretty good, but when the game is, like, messing up, then uh, it screws <laughs> them up in, like, gameplay, basically. So I'm not sure. Like, that's what I mean. I would just say that visually it looks really good. Um, it sounds good. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if, what if else we're, I would If say we're talking it, strictly really writing gameplay... I'd probably go as far as maybe two and four averaging out as a three. I, right. I don't know. It's like I, I, I put my more priority on the story and gameplay above everything else. And it's like, yeah. I think you should too, yeah. Um, it, it, it excels at like a lot of other things. Um, however, they're, they're overall inconsequential to my experience, I guess. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, if like a game can have uh, bad graphics, but as long as the story and gameplay is good, it's like, okay. Or even just the gameplay. Um, fuck, man. I, I, I don't know, man. For me, two is low. Not, two is I'm very not, low. I'm <laughs> not moving it below two. Sorry, above two. I'm not moving it above two. It's You can say it's as low as, <laughs> as it is, but it's very it's very low. Like, that's what I mean. I, I feel yeah, like I could never say that. I feel say like two is too low. Um, two is very low. I yeah. feel secure at a three or four. I feel like I'm hovering around a five, like probably. No fucking way! Again. I'm letting this game have a five. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, five, five is, is average. Five is totally average. Yeah, this was so a. I can't make it that high. I guess it's worthwhile to note that story-wise, I think it's like a two. <laughs> this was a. Story. This was a miserable, poorly paced slog of a game that I would compare to like torture um I, like maybe i am just blinded by <laughs> hatred by what this game made me feel what it did to uh like i, I don't know the, the the disappointment that i felt because i was actually sort of anticipating it for four years not seven because i felt like the the first game was a, a good complete story but i saw the first trailer i'm like oh you know this is actually a pretty cool trailer. I liked the, the slow little build up to the, the the firefly symbol and everything. And oh, look! It looks like it's going to be Joel and Ellie kicking ass together again. And man, I'm really let down. I'm really let down by how it turned out. Um, and it was giving me like like it was causing physical pain by the time that I was done playing with it. So I don't know. It, it's a it's a very subjective score for me. I know someone's saying, like, get better materials up, blah, blah. No, I'm genuinely saying it's like, I don't know if I can um, give a completely unbiased score. Yeah, that's there we go. Um, what about you, Evan? I said three. I, oh. I'd go with a three. Like, some stuff redeeming in the story, not much, and decent mechanics, but yeah, it's just overall the story is what kills it we did it oh. we made it through cosmonaut variety hour calling us idiots for <laughs> not liking last of us 2 um since uh, yeah critical drink of fringy and evan have all voted on christmas halloween i suppose it's your time southpaw which of the two teams will you join in the war against uh thanksgiving <laughs> Well, let's see. Uh, so I work in retail, and every December, all that I hear for an entire month oh, no. is a dozen different covers of each Christmas song. And I don't have to deal with that shit in October with Halloween. So it's got to go to Halloween. No! Music. Kills it all. Music's good yeah, for like yeah. a month. I'm just like, I'll, I'll take it, man. The joy of the season. The Halloween well, is well, growing numbers. You know what? It's it's just easier for me to get into the spirit of Halloween than it is for Christmas. I'm afraid. Um, okay. I haven't really enjoyed okay. Christmas for for a few years, but uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> the fire. The fire. <laughs> the side is losing. There are more on Christmas. The spooky side grows in ranks. 
I didn't actually expect this many people to be on the Halloween team, honestly. Fucking got Mark After Dark, Jay Longbone, Armored Skeptic, Metal, Sitch, that's bullshit, Jay, that's Star Wars Girl, and Rick Worley, and so this is Southpaw right now. I guess the other guys chose the other thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. probably the objectively better holiday. <laughs> And yeah, so originally we were going to do two. I feel like uh, um, there's no fucking way I'm going to be able to do a second video and Super Chats. I'm not even sure I can get through all of Super Chats if we were to start them now. So mm. I think we'll have to save the other one for another time. As you Looks probably like guessed, it. This people, one was dense. Yes, and uh, The Last of Us 2 is probably not finished being covered. Um, oh no, people ain't <laughs> going to let this one go. Besides, you know, I'm fucking making a video on it. I'm gonna want to keep keep checking out them um, them wonderful arguments in favor of slash uh, joining the conversation in general about it. The brood remembers. Though I haven't really learned how I was dumb for thinking it was bad. But uh, there we are. That's the, the promise of the video in 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 the wind. Though I think it's pretty clear because he doesn't even say it in the video. I'm guessing it was uh, just to attract clicks. Incendiary people are, clicks. People are saying, "Do do the do the second video." Mm. Oh, well, yeah, Green but... was to be invited on to talk about his favorite game, <laughs> The Last of Us Two. <laughs> what do you? I mean, does he? Do you want to just just give you a speech about it right now or something? What do you? What do you want? What do you want, Internet historian? Oh, please come on! I want to be in a call with the guy that made the Fall of '76 video. Come on, Internet historian. You're in the call with the guy who made the Fallout 76 video. Yeah. No, the, uh, <laughs> the Fallout 76. The, the, you know, Internet Historian's Fallout 76 video. Did you not watch Internet Historian's Fallout 76 video? I haven't seen it, no. Oh, uh... It's fucking amazing. Is it as good as his uh, No Man's Sky video? It's, it's pretty incredible. I, I showed it to uh, my brother who had no knowledge whatsoever on the Fallout 76 fiasco. And uh, I was like, you know, we'll, we'll just watch the first five minutes. And if you're not liking it, we'll, uh, we'll we can stop. He watched the whole thing. And yeah. I'm going to come yeah, on like stream with that. Death Adact as Abby. Do it. I mean, his fucking stupid ass Discord friends list is apparently full. He can't even accept anyone. You really? Discord really? Why? is the limit. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, I, I suppose. And I... I know Steam has a limit. Yes. Again, that was another one of those high. But, um... Still don't know if he actually wants to come on or not. Talk a bit about this wonderful game. I still haven't watched his playthrough of it, though, but that's on my list. I've heard it's very meme -y. Too many friends. Far too likable. <laughs> that's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with a face like that, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't actually know how to get any further with that. I guess try me on Twitter if if that's if that's what you're interested in. I don't know because I would suppose that now, um, like I said, I won't be able to do another. I didn't expect us to take. How long was that? On it was uh, six, six, six and a half hours. Six and a half for twenty minutes. Fucking hell! There was so much to talk about. Why do you do this to us, Cosmonaut? Why couldn't it have been an agreeable video? I uh, I can't wait to see your guys' reaction to the Internet's janitor. It's a uh, pretty great video. Oh, you said you'll shoot one for the next one. I'm down. Very well, sir. Alright, alright. Um, so yeah, I think... We, you bet! Like I said, I, we would've... If this were, were three hours of coverage, maybe three and a half, maybe four, I would've pushed for a second one, but I don't think... I th yeah, we're at six hours now. So, and that was dense, and we've covered a lot, and we have talked about a lot. And uh, I'm afraid I, I can't go to the cap today either, so I'm gonna have to um, get 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 going. Also, by the way, the King Kong game, I fucking can't get it to work without glitching out. It makes me very upset for potential Super Jack catch-up. If it's on PC, though, I might be able to get that vision working or something. The GameCube <laughs> one just keeps fucking up. I was showing Fringy. It doesn't load everyone's yeah, legs in. Feet. And legs <laughs> load in and people like from their torsos. The models explode and then the game freezes. And I was like, wow, oh. I'm having a lot of conversations with Fringy without me. I get it. No, it's all in DMs. <laughs> I yeah, would, yeah, I would yeah. never. 
I would. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm just going to show Frangie my glitchy game now, Riggs. <laughs> he wouldn't understand. In fairness, I wouldn't want to put such curses upon you. After you have to watch all of the Last of Us Two videos, like enough. That was really, games. yeah. I'm, I'm in. I'm. I got a short fuse. I'm putting up with bullshit right now. I'm still recovering <laughs> from watching the Last of Us Two. I'm still on recovery from all those reviews. Going through all those reviews of the game. Yep. This is so tiresome. It's funny how every single time, though, and someone could make a fucking career out of this, just aggregating all of the video reviews on YouTube for each game and showing how much they essentially eat each other. Well, we'll yeah, say the because same one shit. of the things you notice is just how interchangeable they are. Like IGN, GameSpot, Games Radar, or whatever, like they're all saying the same things. Do you want to say the. Wait. Do you want to save the internet's janitor for EFAP 100? Oh, we actually had a video set up for them, but uh, possibly, possibly. You never know. EFAP 100 is all, you know, a wonderful little up in the air experience. Is that, is that the zebra's ass? Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to slide into, it. into Jerry's DMs later on. It's, it's called Jerry now. Is this canon? Jerry? It's, yeah. Abby's dad's name is Jerry. Yeah, he is Jerry. Cool. Oh. But that's the zebra. The way he looked at that zebra and it was running away. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Man doesn't get um, many chances to fuck a zebra. So true. We're, uh, I suppose I'll boot up the good old, old reliable little Mr. Third Age and then uh, we'll get, we'll get to it. It's funny enough, the first, the very first one says, um, Southpaw, really? Fix your mic. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking racializer. In which, yeah, yeah. In, in this case, if anyone had mic trouble, it was Evan, so how about that? Uh, I don't know. I think everyone was having mic troubles uh, when, like, sound was cutting out on your end. That was great. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. You guys caught it for me. Hmm. Uh, the King Kong game can be simulated on PS2 and Xbox. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's on PC, so if I'm gonna... Is it on Steam? That's a... I'll check right now. That's a question I should have fucking looked for the answer for a while back. King, King Peter Kong. Jackson. Uh, take a look. Uh, there is Harambe Kong. <laughs> oh. oh man, apparently it's not on Steam. Boo. Oh well. Um, I'll see about getting that working at some point, I suppose. Uh, though I guess I actually should say, I apologize for not doing this a little faster. If any of you would like to um, exit at this point, that is absolutely within your rights. I was rights about to say, actually. As provided. Probably... Um, okay, go ahead. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll probably bow out. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Every time is such an adventure. Mm -hmm. You know, Cosmo hey, video. We don't you know, use the way they're going to go. We we don't use fun. the word fun here, Fringy. <laughs> no, no fun. Oh, that was a quote, wasn't it? Somebody yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said that. Yeah, uh, when you oh. give us your $60, we're going to make you feel fucking miserable about it. And then oh. you compare it to good old Reggie. If it's not fun, why bother? You know, this is a good... Oh, right, what, wait, what, what is this? Hold on. <laughs> Rags, right, can you read this out? <laughs> yeah. All right, um... Philosophical rumination is what Druckmann believes sets The Last of Us apart from other stories in the post-apocalyptic genre. A narrative framing that has become bloated in recent years across various forms of media. A lot of stories in this genre are very pulpy, says Druckmann. For us, the goal is to make it very character-driven and focus on themes that exist outside the genre. <sighs> um, it, by what? Focusing on themes which pretty much just well, so... That's a... Themes side of genres. Those are two different things. Weirdly throwing other zombie game, uh, zombie genre stuff under the bus there as well. You know, a lot of other people do pulpy stuff, but not us. It's weird. Our, yeah, <laughs> ours are shit. Yeah. Everyone's effing the stream. Stop effing the uh, stream. It, it went down for one second. It said stream offline, and then it just came straight <gasps> back. Um, Guys, you're effing it. But, uh, Stop. One second. But, yeah, I guess I will talk to all of you later. Well, wait, I fucking... You're supposed to be like, Oh, right. come to Fringy for reviews on apples or whatever you do. Oh, right. Is this my pitch? Well, you know, just... Just give me a little more time to figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't have a pitch for you. 
No, nothing in the pipeline. Uh, nothing to consider. Yeah, maybe, but I don't want to say anything yet. <laughs> you should promise them stuff like... so they can get upset when you don't give it. Yeah, but I've done that too many times. I'm just going to be quiet until something's finished and then just throw it out without warning. Very well. Subscribe yeah. to Fring Daddy G, and once uh, stuff comes out, we'll just tell you to do it again. Okay, guys? We'll have it work. All if right, stuff, yeah. sorry, if stuff comes out. Oh, if, yeah, that's right. Don't, I'm not promising anything. <laughs> I'm kind of like you're promising some stuff. I don't know. I'm just saying. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Bye. Don't, don't push me. Don't make me do this. <laughs> make chat, me. make him do it. Chat, go. Don't put on up. Me. I don't like pressure and stress. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys. <laughs> Toodles. Bye bye. Bye bye, baby, baby. Uh, bye, yeah, of course. Bye. Southport, Evan, would you like to hang out or uh, escape? All right. Uh, I'm I'm happy to hang out. I'm, I was waiting for uh, for Evan to talk first. Wait, did you not hear me? No, I did not. No. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I think that my mic has been doing that. Where like it. it it cuts off the beginning of my sentence. It's like, oh, uh, I don't know why it does that. I have mic troubles. We still don't know your we answer. Still don't... Hello? <laughs> Wait, you can't hear me? <laughs> no, no! Oh, no! It's funny that we get lots of hmm. bits of bobs explaining how his bike's not working, but not quite the Hello? yes or no. How Hello? You doing? Can you, can you uh, hear me now? Yeah, yes. these, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can hear you. Something went weird there. I okay. got a new victim. So, is that your way of saying yes? You will hang around. Yes, that's my way of saying yes. Yes, we did it. <laughs> Nailed it. It's well, been wow. quite a journey. That was a better journey than The Last of Us Part Two. I like I'll that arc. To... Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Better arcs. Yeah, good character work. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. oh, Evangelion Efap when fucking weeb stuff. Disgusting. Ew. Get it away. Uh, this is no, leave Cosmo alone, crying face. I mean... He, no, he deserves it. He kind of... the title, you know, is just kind of... It's just like, hmm. The title, the argumentation... I mean, if you're gonna say you're just stupid for not liking The Last of Us Part Two, you better have some airtight, bulletproof fucking arguments. And then chooses to create a bunch of straw men. It's like, oh, fantastic. <laughs> This is my favorite part. This is my favorite kind of video. Oh my god, more racism from Hadhod against the elf. Feels like they're trying to reference something with that. Mm -hmm. I used to play this game. I think a lot of people did. It's kind of weird. In a good way. Yeah. Such a long game, too. Yeah, yeah, you get a ton of content in this. this. Dust, I've seen it before. Does Dust belong to your mother? Oh, she's got some. I, I didn't, I didn't see that before. Also, uh, I like how the object doesn't track properly in her hands. No. <laughs> Good old PS2 era graphics. Picturing like some dude actually, you know, took the time to do that specific thing. I almost want to have a little time machine to go see it. It's like you're making a little little animation in Lord of the Rings. Do you think that they just that. make it part of her model for that one scene? It was like actually her model was that thing in her hands, and in between cuts they just use a different model. That well, mm. what do I know? Ooh, woo, am I, rags. Uh, am I crazy huh? or stupid for uh, preferring the Return of the King gameplay to Third Age? I, I mean the. They're vastly different well, genres. So. Action, yeah, one's action, yeah, one's no. turn-based, so... I wouldn't blame you. No. Alright. Uh, I mean, I went through those two already, so... Mm, like, I prefer mm. it. <laughs> Gay. Do you prefer this or Return of the King? Return of the King, I would probably, probably say. I'm not sure. The thing with this is, like, I enjoy it, but I'm pretty sure it's more so on a superficial level. Yeah. But then, it's not like I think the mechanics are that strong in the Return of the King games, either. They're a little bit floopy. They're all very floopy. That's what you get for movie tying games. The floop factor. Um, yeah, this said, ooh, ooh, hi, rags. Ooh, ooh, I hi. Know, didn't know if you wanted to deal with that now or later, you know, it's a, it's a complicated 
sort of thing. Anytime. I'm always down always. for it. Um, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, a lot of people were interested in covering Cosmo. It was mentioned throughout the last stream when we were like, um, checking out the dank and the just right, which, looking back, that was a 15 minute plus a 7 minute one, so. Kind of makes sense that they end up in similar times. We should have seen this coming. Uh, can't wait for you to read this super chat and try to pronounce I swallow and then come. <laughs> in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in like 10 hours. Also, something flirty to rags. Also, 2 plus 2 equals 4, not 5. I agree. I agree with that. We got a math major here. I was going to say, a lot of people don't agree with that. Uh, Terrence Howard doesn't agree with that, right? Doesn't he have a different math system or some shit? I think uh, he says uh, um, 1 plus 1 equals 4 or something, or I can't remember what the... Uh, what the idea? No, I think he said one times one is two. I'm trying. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure he said that one times one is two. For some reason, that's how I'm remembering it. Is that the I don't chat? Like, am I fucking it up? I'm probably fucking it up. I don't I, remember. I that doesn't weird sound happened. correct to me. I mean, uh, well, yeah, what he said was not correct, but I mean, <laughs> clearly, he's clearly, evolved as a mathematician. Oh, he's he said one times one equals two, apparently. Mm. But he's got a tweet filled with context to explain how it works. So there you go. Okay. Get wrecked, mathematicians. Read all of it out. Figure it out. Um. Hmm. Finally. Oh wait, I'm very excited for this one. Good luck, EFAB crew. We survived. That's something, right? Drinker was defeated at one point. Not enough drinking. That's what it is. I mean, I hope this fucking person isn't immune to stuns. Uh, hello, Rags. Hello! Still pooping with the door open? Oh. No, I, I, I... No, I've never started. Yeah, that's the thing. That question assumed an answer that was never the case. That is fucked up. Another Last of Us 2 stream? Good. People seem to think this is a good game, though it's gone from its 10 out of 10 to, well, actually, guys, it's a solid 7. It's not a solid 7. <laughs> no. Yeah, keep going down. Keep it going. Um, Angel Season 4 just hits. How does... Oh, I don't know if I should read this out. It's a little specific. How does person do the person thing? What the fuck is person? Why is that thing? Who wrote this? Yeah, Season 4 of Angel is really bad. It's unfortunate. But um, you pull on through to get to that season five. Have you have you actually like read this math thing? No. After thoughtful reflection and literally thousands of hours of observation, coupled with five decades of deep, deep and contemplative work upon the subject, it has brought me to the inevitable conclusion that this false concept must have been the brainchild of a godlike figure of some sort. What? Someone whom the people possibly credited for giving them their multiplication table and their geometry. Um, like, some of this is... Some call them the Anunnaki, the sky people, whoever... That, like, some of this is really weird. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Roll it back. <laughs> the sky people made their own back. The Anunnaki? A gift that set that civilization apart from the rest of the world. A multiplication table and system of calculating that would enable that civilization to rule the then known world from the time of the late Egyptian dynasty till the Medi and the Persians brought a sudden end to their way of life. Um, like, so, um, <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm, some of this is, and I went through the tweet thread. There's a lot of people calling him out for this weird stuff. I can't imagine um, why. Yeah, I, which is what I expected. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I I call up. I call on all the elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. I call to all the nursery school. There's a he misspelled all. All the nursery school teachers and kindergarten teachers. I call upon all the schools of higher learning. He misspelled higher learning in all of the thinking branches of academia to do an immediate audit upon this false statement of one times one equals one. <laughs> I mean, he's passionate. That's an interesting sure. one. Um, I would like to see the sky people 
be taken seriously. Personally, I don't like, yeah, they're sky people, but that doesn't mean they have nothing interesting to say. He talks about me Mesopotamians and stuff. It's interesting. Or maybe the, yeah. the First Order is just racist against the sky people. And that's why they don't know which way is up. Hmm. Mm. Maybe the sky people, uh, you know, were able to um, build the the wooden structures on the crane in between the buildings in The Last of Us Part Two. Oh. The best explanation I could give to that is that by happenstance, due to neglect of the towers, one of them crashed and just happened to land on a nearby tower and they converted that happenstance occurrence into a useful sky bridge. I'd like to this see how that could happen in that way. Yeah. And I then am... secondly, there's two of them in the same area. Um, and then <laughs> I guess the first one gave him the idea to do the next one themselves. Push it over. <laughs> Get over, I guess. I need someone to animate how it's possible. Draw it in several images. I just don't understand how it's possible. I don't get it. Joel Almost... did it. <sighs> what, no, what Joel would have. No, that created a sky bridge. Joel wouldn't yeah, have done evil. that. It, he would have destroyed everything. No, but listen, Joel was doing it for the Seraphites who were fighting against uh, the the WLF, which is the side that Abby's on. Hmm. But he would have known that. Would he have known in his godlike omniscience that Abby would use that to complete her mission? Hmm. That's true. Good point. Well, no, the Joel is a mysterious one. I and mean, so too are his ways mysterious. If he is omniscient, like he did give his name to someone that he should have known was going to kill him if she knew his name. Maybe it was his plan to get killed? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm... you could shrug away anything that doesn't make sense by saying that he works in mysterious ways. Who is exactly. Sky Skyman? The person they. They the great to. big J upstairs. Mm -hmm. I need to look real quick. Um, EFAP, Fat Geralt, Cosmo, Lev, one, and, oh, one punch. I get it. There's several punches, though. Lots and lots of punches. Small punches, big punches, all of the punches. Death Stranding also has it where you strap a baby to your chest, but it's also for Amazon delivery services. However... Hello, Sir Raggleton, alive. I have to wait for Rags to get back to hear that one. But, uh, yeah, we've got a theme of, you know, taking babies into combat. I think that's something that we need to really look into as a possibility. I don't think we should write it off immediately. Like, baby combat. Why not? I'm gonna use dead. Targeted strike makes it sound like I won't miss it, but that's not what it means. Not at all. Episode 100 of Andromeda had a blooper reel. It was charming and showed the fun they had along the way. Maybe you should watch Hardcore Henry. Hi, Rags. <laughs> That's a, an interesting jump from that initial thing there. Hardcore Henry. I mean, if more people were, like, interested, maybe, but there's only, like, you know, like, like several people. That's, that's, that's totally it. Don't you want us to see Wrinkle in Time 2, the wrinkling and ninging? The, the, the wrinkler? I think there should be a villain called the Wrinkler. Also high rags. Three high rags, damn. Muller, I heard you mention a few times that Dark Knight Rises isn't a quality film. Can you do a breakdown of the major criticisms? Oh, boy. <laughs> just tell people to start from the top, man. There's so much wrong with just that opening plane scene. Like, it's okay. so much okay. of the story just doesn't make sense at face value. When but it's a real look at what's happening. Though. Thank you Thank for you asking. For asking. Question while I was here, by the way. Yeah. Thank you so fucking much. Um, well, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, although I, I am plan on, planning on doing a full-length breakdown of why it's so bad. But uh, Evan, do you want to actually get out your notes that you took on the movie? We can we can just jump well, on the I have to dig that up on my Twitter. I watched the movie and I took detailed notes on everything that was happening, and it, like it blew my mind how much. Let me look it up. Dark Knight Rises, rags. Oh, 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 yeah. The movie where uh, they trap the police in the sewers for six months, I think. Five or mm. six months. Yeah. They supply them with food and razors, and <laughs> Batman finds the time to uh, 
paint a, a bat symbol on a bridge in gasoline. But how about the fact that like we got a fucking uh, plane crash in the beginning that's done to fake the, the scientist's death. And it's the most suspicious fucking plane crash possible because there's bullet holes all on the outside of the fuselage. And the tail is and, and the wings are far away from where the fuselage is. And the fact that the dental records of the body that has Dr. Pobble's blood in it uh, are not going to match Dr. Pobble's dental records. I mean, it, it's pretty crazy. Six, six months six pass, and no one's like, yeah, pretty sure that Dr. Pobble isn't actually dead. It lies on that looking like a completely fine plane crash. The wings have been snapped off. There's bullets in the fuselage. The bodies are going to have bullets in it. Like, they're... There's no way that that plane would be able to crash and destroy all of the evidence. And if so, you wouldn't even bother trying to put a fake body in there. It's just like... They it's send every to the sewer at once. And Bane somehow knew that that's what they would do. Just brains 100 writing. Oh, Alagos leveled up. <laughs> Good old Alagos. Yeah, there you go. It is pretty useful you guys were around because uh, I'd have to rewatch it to be more specific, but I just remember lots of tism. Lots of tism. And as, as I just said, they've only covered the opening there. I think yes. that we're going to do like a, a watch party of that at some point, right? Is that, uh, is that the agreement? I mean, I'll, um, I'll be on board. I probably want to watch the trilogy, I guess. Hmm. Um, maybe we could do the Free Fat Movies ranks. Yeah, uh, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rises, and the Dark Knight Rises Suicide again. Squad. Oh, <laughs> he fell down twice. It makes sense. But hey, you know it's it's okay for him to survive the nuclear explosion and get back to Gotham with no explanation because he's Batman. Because montage. Oh, brown table. Uh, that video oh. blows my mind how many like likes that video's gotten to versus dislikes. Like people like. Like a hundred thousand people saw that video and were like, "Yeah, this is good." I'm like, "It, it really isn't." That that video is like easily one of the worst videos I've ever seen in my life. It blows my mind. With everything we've covered on EFAP, are you sure about that? <laughs> it's up there for me. There's there's been some tismy stuff that you guys have covered, but even just editing on a basic level, man, he, he applied like that grain filter, and it's like it's got text on the screen at all times to just make it like. So it doesn't even look good. It's yeah. It's pro gamer move. Fun, fun fact: the first super chat that I ever sent you, Muller, was during EFAP Gaming number one, asking you to do a critique of The Dark Knight Rises, <laughs> and uh, and you were, you answered like, I, I want to do a critique, maybe an unbridled rage, and uh, I I was so happy to then end up on EFAP and then cover a video about that movie with you. I mean, it's quite, quite, quite an interesting arc. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, I would, if I was to do a video on it, it probably would be that. But I, I don't know when or where. And at this point, it's just like, hey, why don't you do it? You do it. I will do it. Take but it I have down. to cover. I have to fucking cover Last of Us 2. I have to, which, by the way, uh, I'm planning on getting my video done by Halloween, the best holiday. How do you, um, how do you know? That's, are you guessing that? Or are you going to delay it until? Or are you going to just hope you get it done then? So I've still got uh, plenty to work on with the script. I'm hoping to have a finished script by end of this month. And then I'm going to record, audio edit it, and then just crunch on video editing. Mm -hmm. And because it's a video game, I'm not going to have to focus too much on like shortening clips to six seconds or less for copyright reasons. Um, so I can you know, just kind of have gameplay playing when I'm just... Uh, talking about various criticisms but of course i'll have like accompanying footage when necessary you know um well like what if you finish the video two weeks before halloween you're just gonna wait until halloween i'll probably just wait till halloween yeah hmm. Hmm. why'd you want to know on halloween <laughs> um i don't know i i just i it's a good holiday so <laughs> fair enough is, is there is there a problem with uh releasing it on, on halloween Do no you? i just don't see the connection between the Last of Us 2 and Halloween, outside of it's a scary game in terms of what they tried to achieve and failed to do. Well, it's also, um, it's, uh, it gives me a reasonable deadline, I feel. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just giving myself a deadline, I'm setting something that I can work towards, and, uh, it, it's, it, it is working at 
prompting me to actually work on it rather than just keep on putting it off as I have with other videos. Yeah, with, with mine I'm still in information collection phase, but I do think structurally it's going to be very different. Uh, this is the first kind of video of its, well, first of its kind. An Unbridled Rage, but for a video game. Not even mm. I know exactly how I'm structuring it yet. Yeah, because I've got like stuff, I've got sort of sections and I'm wondering do I want to like first tackle tackle like technical aspects, then gameplay, then characters, then story, then themes, and then conclusion? Or do I want to cover story first? Or do I want to like not even do sections and I just I just go through the story mainly? And people are encouraging me to talk about the gameplay as well. Um, but honestly, like even though I have gripes with the gameplay, I don't think I can do a fully like in-depth breakdown of why I feel it's just inferior overall to the first game. The best I can say is like the combat in general is just way more clunky than in the first game thanks to that stupid dodge mechanic. Um, and the shooting also feels like way worse. It's just it's difficult to fully qualify it other than well the aim wobble is much higher and the dodge mechanic doesn't seem to work half the time. You could prove that with uh, getting your controller projected on screen so that people can see when you're pressing it versus when you're not. Right. Because um, I don't I don't know how to set that up for PlayStation 4 at the same time as streaming it through uh, Elgato and stuff. At but the I know same that. time? Like for comparing the the wiggle? The sway? Well, uh, um, no. So like if you wanted to test whether or not the dodge is working, then the, the what people rely on is to trust you that you're pressing the button because some people we can't see your controller. Oh, just get but, a webcam. No, if you get a um, a program that projects the controller onto the screen, like mechanically, like it'll show like a little cartoon version, but it'll you know be well rendered, and it'll show oh, the analog uh, sticks moving as you move them, and it'll show the buttons pressing as you press them. Hmm. And you can resize it to however you want. Uh, of course, you could still fake that theoretically, and you could you could fake a webcam as well. But I mean, it's what you know. Yeah, <laughs> at eventually that point. all of this can be faked. You're gonna have to some level of confidence yeah. to put into the. Yeah, uh, I mean, th at, at the very least, there is um, there is footage of me playing the game. I, I streamed my whole playthrough of it, and there was like several moments where I'm like, I'm pressing L1. Why is the dodge button not working? I felt the same way. So. But it's perfect, though. I was told. It clip. is perfect. It's perfect. Uh, a great upgrade from uh, the first game's gameplay. So, Rags, there's three things you missed while you were gone. Oh, okay. Hi, Rags. Oh, hi! Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. Hello, Sir Raggleton, alive. Oh, hello to you. Oh, no, my whole team's dying again. I guess I'll have to resurrect them. This game is, is very uh, difficult. Is it do 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 Emil Shal Shalin from Valiant will always be a more tragic character than any Last of Us character. I'm not familiar with Valiant. Neither am I. But I'll uh, take your word for it. Mm hmm. Um, the only thing that's good about this game is that it might actually get me laid. Told my new girlfriend about it. She hates it and loved my arguments. Hey. Oh, sweet. Hell yeah, my dude. Hey, there's there's got to be a silver lining for everything. Yay, the angry boys. That's what this is. It's more of a rage fueled podcast. Just shouting, saying very many do. words. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got a little carried away at a couple points here and there. Well, I, I just mean that you spend this long, mostly calm explanations of something, and it's like, you guys just rant. You know, okay. No, yeah, mm. well, I don't think so. Sad. I think there's a lot of, lot of knowledge up in there. Hmm. Juicy, juicy knowledge. Uh, Muller, I love your David A. voice. What are your favorite documentaries of his? Oh, well, I mean, oh. the easy ones would be Planet Earth. Like, that shit. I think a lot of people found... You'd be like, why would I care? And then you watch it and you're like, oh, this is really interesting. Mm. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, Earth, I like that. I've been there. I like it. Yeah, Earth is pretty cool. Well, sometimes. Sometimes Ooh, it's hot. Don't, don't want to oversell it, you know? Nah, nah, nah. Urukai Bane, that should do some damage to an Urukai, right? Oh, you missed. Never mind. Yeah, well, you'd think. Bum, 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 bum. But yeah, I haven't seen. Well, I probably have seen a bunch of David Attenborough stuff, but I don't know the names of all of them. 
I remember I saw a David Attenborough thing in uh, an IMAX theater. It was really cool. I can't remember what it was. Hmm. I think it was to do with fish. The, oh, Planet Fish. The objectively inferior to dinosaurs type of fish. Just, just wanted to make sure that I established that. Um... Uh, guys, did you think the Remarkable Republican guy is not real? His channel is called The Sites the Historian. He uses that channel as satire. Yeah, I think uh, he's yep. just trolling. We, uh, when I when I was sent that or found out, I can't remember how that actually happened. I was just like, aha. He uses um, the character, I think, as just a way to further humiliate his perceived his his perception of that side. Um, but I mean, there's some funny videos. Like that. that was funny, yeah, but... The Last of Us 2 is the equivalent to circumcision via cheese grater. That Oof. sounds painful. That Hi. sounds preferable. I don't preferable enjoy that at, at all. Hi, Drunkly Frongloid, Evan, Southpaw, and Mulberry. Hello. Hi, Jay. Hello Hi, Carl, Paul, Jim, and Todd. Rags. It just says rags. Ah, I, I think, see. I think that's a form of hello. Can't be sure. Uh, I guess... Cloud Water Fury, you. Die, Batman. Oh, he did die. Uh, EFAP 100, Movie Bob and Patrick Willems versus Remarkable Republican and No Bullshit. A debate. Joker, a homosexual? A <laughs> Joker homosexual, <laughs> that's it. You know what's so funny is No Bullshit would probably assume that Remarkable Republican is, like, on his team, you know? Oh yeah, he would unironically, absolutely. Be like this guy knows like, what he's, he's talking about. He's not really a parody. That's why we didn't know at first, because some people are just like that. Yeah, that's it's tough to know. Um, have you uh, have you guys checked out Black Pilled's video on Joker yet? No, yeah, I no. remember that one. So, <laughs> oh, boy, that's the, ending, wait, is that the one, or is that the one that says it's a ripoff of the other films? It's it's called King of Joker Driver. What do you think? I'm gonna King go with of yes. Joker Driver. Yeah. I miss um, original copies movies. from so many, so many different films. You you really need to check out that video. That's an that's an EFAP worthy joke for take if I've ever seen one. Hmm. I mean, yeah, sure. I, I think it's actually in my backlog. So, who knows? Dude. Uh, Fringy, I recently played all Jack games. Whereas the games are still fun as hell. The wheel building is very air. <gasps> Fring, Daddy G. I'll you know what? I'll save that for him if if. Uh... If I if we can remember or repeat it, I'll see after we said. Anybody here played the Jack games? No, I, I never played them. them. Never I played them. First uh, Jack and Daxter game, yeah. How's the will building? Is it Tism? It's been so long since I played it, Muller. Wow. I, I Useless. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, you know, I haven't <laughs> played in like fucking 10, 15 years. Let's leave it to um, let's leave it to the audience. Is the will building in Jack and Daxter? Strong, middle, or weak? Let's have a look. Is it is it middle? Is it everyone knows? Is the world means. building middle? Oh wait. Let's war call this bitch. Fucking shout at him. Do it. You got nay. I don't know. I don't know about that. Strong. Will building's kind of flizzy. Perhaps will building is meh. You know what? If I treat you all as one person, this is very confusing. K okay, meh no. Will building is middle high. All of the above and middle. There's always the middle. Middle too weak. Yeah, it's not great. Strong middle? Yeah. Strong? Yeah, I'm getting... I think there's enough... There's enough, there's enough comments in relation to it not being too strong to conclude that it's probably got weaknesses. Chat's still a more consistent character than Ellie. Mm -hmm. Out of context, EFAP quote. I can't believe you have 10,000 death star destroyers and you just die. I mean, that one kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um... I, I I agree with that that quote. <laughs> it's it's really surprising you have that. It is. Armada. Yeah. You don't need us to explain how you could fuck up that big of an advantage all at once. Like man, ugh. hard to believe this is the same guy who got control of the galaxy and dissolved the Senate essentially and got total power. Well, I mean, he's also the same guy who apparently just sends out uh, a message to the to the galaxy saying he's back when he could just surprise them all with his uh well, that's like know. a different character than the one in the prequels well, the, the, the post even. first not death yeah it's pretty yeah 
pretty new. Mm. Announced my engagement mm. on EFAP last October, but Koof has ruined all of our plans. Now we're going to elope. Mola, would you please officiate the wedding? Rags can be our witness. Chat's invited too. Um, like online. Very memorable. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you should print out little uh, little Discord icons and just pop them on the on the table. We'll be there in spirit, but. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, what does it mean to elope again? Is it like the... Run away and get married? It's like getting married with all the official elements, but not in like a big uh, event way, right? I Pretty think much. it's like running away from the parents and stuff. Like like getting married against the wishes of people, running away to do it. Hmm. I'm not sure. It's it's kind of like rushing through it rather than throwing a, a big proper ceremony. That's what I'd do. I don't want ceremony. I fucking hate ceremonies. That's the worst part about people dying, is I know I gotta put up with a shitty funeral. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, oftentimes they'll uh, go to, to Vegas and have an Elvis impersonator uh, officiate the wedding. Man. Well, um, I, I hope it goes really well. Uh, the, the chat, you're apparently invited to the eloping of, of Everyone these Everyone better be there. Wonders. Yes, all. Uh, hi, Southport. I didn't know what depression was until I played The Last of Us 2 and saw what it did to the first Last of Us. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> kind of how I feel. Uh, it's kind of soured the first game for me a little bit um, in, in ways that TLJ did for the original trilogy and Toy Story 4 did for the first three uh, movies. But the good news is that in both of those cases, I there was like a healing process that I went through and... I'm able to enjoy the original trilogy still, even if there's that little, like, sour feeling, that little, you know, aftertaste that I get. Nagging certainty. Like, because once you see something like TLJ, you're scarred, right? But there eventually comes a time where it doesn't, like, hurt anymore to uh, re-experience, to, to relive what was good that came before. But... That's that's not me right now. Um, Uncharted 2 is still the best Naughty Dog game. I feel like Fringy would uh, definitely challenge that. He likes his mm. Crash, and he likes his... Uh... I wonder what Fringy would choose, Uncharted 2 or Crash 2. If hmm. only we could know. I'm not sure. I always thought QTs were extremely lazy way to have gameplay. It's um, it's when they want something very specific to happen, but they also want to maintain the fact that you're playing yeah. a video game. So they're like, how about yeah. we play out this very specific thing, but we just put these little numbers on. Well, button prompts, and you're like, eh. And then you get to the point where you're like, how about we make them hard instead of easy so it feels like the player actually has in involvement? And then when you have hard QTs, you're like, oh, I don't even want to do this, really. Like, this is annoying now. Guitar Hero with a controller. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people don't like him. Turns out Stalin, Adolf, and Mao's were all related. Their great-grandfather's name was Joel. Oh. And that's Can't outside of the fact it. that Joel is the root of all evil. That's just a coincidence again. Well, I mean, what are the odds that they actually, you know, were all related? Because maybe they were all descendants of uh, Genghis Khan. Hmm. It all makes sense. Hello, Longman. Hello. Just making sure you know the EFAB 100 Remix is done. Sent it to you basically everywhere. Also, hi, Rags. Oh, hi! I recognize your name, so I believe I've already captured it. Um, watched Falling Down and The Game last night. Is it just me, or are they the same character in different timelines? I suppose you could argue the similarities. I've seen both of them. Uh, Michael Douglas films. Uh, the Game is a, is a weird one. Um, uh, uh, so so on that movie that's probably one of my least favorite Fincher films uh, yeah premise wise it's like you pay a firm to run a like incredibly complex multi-layered game in your own life that's trying to I can't remember quite more than that <laughs> but yeah it's, <laughs> um... it's kind of banking on the ending twist as well and the ending twist like you kind of look at the entire film you're like eh I don't, I don't know if this could all flow the way that they're saying it could. But... Yeah, they, they put a lot of effort into trying to make it, like, make sense, and then you're like, but wait, what about, and then it's like, shh. Oh, Pretty oh. much. So you're just like, yeah, it's stick for an interesting film, though. It's it's still fun to watch, I suppose. Yeah. Falling, falling Down is fucking great, though. I like Falling Down quite a bit, yeah. 
Very, uh, very easy to <laughs> empathize with that man. Um, my four favorite massives together again. Hello, Longman, Frogold, Professor Drinker, and Big Hello to Rags with Belly Rubs. Oh, hello. Thank you. Hello. Wow, just ignored the other two. That's so racist. Uh, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I'm fighting Shaku, the boss of the wogs, and I have a perfect mode. Can I send a wog to go bite him? That seems... Like it shouldn't be like his ability should prevent that from happening, but fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna make him bite him. Do it. Fighting wogs with wogs. We must fight wogs with wogs. Wurgelheimus. Who is this Brian? I should have sent my tree to go and attack him. My bad. My tweet. New theory. Joel made Last of Us 2 to drive people to suicide and claim even more victims. Also high rags. Oh, hi. I think that makes sense. He's trying to do it in subtle ways, but this one was a bit of an overstep. It's like, come on, Joel. We can see right through you, buddy. Making something like The Last of Us 2. Like, really? You gotta chill. The enemy is relying on me having missed all of my moves so far. It's an interesting tactic. Oh, wow. Lethal Bite took off about 20% of my HP. That's not that lethal. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, hmm. I'll probably try a little harder next time. Just saying. We got an F- minus according to the game's test because I wanted Abby to suffer. Yeah, me too. You failed. You were supposed to feel bad, or, well, good, about the ending. I've said my piece on what I wish happened instead. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing to like condemn the audience for an experience that most of them had. It's kind of crazy that you'd be like, you f you felt wrong about that ending. You're like, huh? Don't you want to find out why it may have gone that way though? I'm not saying you're playing games wrong, but you're playing games wrong. In fairness, we did discover that cinematic venom is actually the evidence that someone can watch a movie wrong. So, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's proof right there. If ever you needed it, there it is. You know, it's funny, um, because a lot of the arguments in favor of, oh no, the the fireflies were right, and the cure totally would have worked, and the world would have been saved, it relies on authorial intent at best. Like, if you have Neil Druckmann and even Bruce Straley saying, yeah, no, uh, it's, it's true, Joel did the wrong thing. It's like, okay, cool, death of the author is a thing. You know, move along now. And uh, one of the things I'm going to use to talk about why authorial intent is not a good idea is hypothetical scenario. J.R.R. Tolkien says that Gimli wanted Frodo to die. What what happens if he says that when there's nothing in the text of the Lord of the Rings supporting that? I mean, yeah, we usually we've talked about that a couple of times. I just, I just go to extreme examples like um, just. Uh... Cinematic Venom is actually a very good example of, of an extreme example, you, you're right. It's just something where you don't even... You need a reference, it's like, help me out here, I don't see how you got there. But, you know, it's the whole idea of someone says, this is my argument, these are all my reasons, and you're like, those reasons aren't very good. It's like, what if they're said by the creator? It's like, okay, the reasons are still not good, though. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, um, another, like, like a, a less extreme example, because it actually happens, is, well, who shot first? Is it Greedo or Han? Creator says I mean, one thing, everyone else says another. Well, but that one's literally based on the, the version of the film you watch. Mm -hmm. so. I, I guess, you know, also, kind of like uh, the Taken thing that happened earlier, where exactly does uh, Liam Neeson, like, put the, the prong thingies for the electrocution? Again, it's, you just have to be... This is this is the difference, like, when you cover Blade Runner, you need to be explicit with what version you're, uh, you're reviewing, I guess. Because I don't think everyone agrees on which one is the ultimate or canon version. But as long as you appeal to something, I'm, I'm totally fine with reviewing any fucking one. Like, for example, um, should I judge Dark Souls 2 as Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 2 Skull of the Fist Sin? And I was like, well, I chose Skull of the Fist Sin because that's what the developers decided, uh, called their definitive edition. But that doesn't mean someone couldn't judge Dark Souls 2. And it also doesn't mean the Dark Souls 2 isn't superior. It might very well be. I, um... By the way, I have been compelled to give Taken another shot. Um, <laughs> I'm willing. 
Uh, I've, you know, when I when I rewatched Taken uh, like a couple of years ago, it was like kind of amidst a string of like really great action movies, and like comparatively, I guess it just wasn't that impressive to me. And a lot of it had to do with just the action is not the best. I don't have a problem with the story. I don't have a problem with Liam Neeson's acting and sex traffickers getting theirs is definitely uh, one of those things that gets a, a thumbs up from me on like an emotional level. Um, but yeah, action and editing didn't really care for it much, mm -hmm. but I can, uh, I can give it another shot. I, I can gain an appreciation for movies that um, I previously didn't like over time. Also, wait, I so. killed the boss of the wogs, and it just said, Helm's Deep now. Like, oh, <laughs> you okay. killed the boss of the wogs. <laughs> now Helm's Deep will be wargless. And, uh... Yeah, like, Taken's not perfect for sure. I, I just, um, I think his score's higher than, than average. I'd be like, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty solid. And... I certainly think so. It's, um, it was fun rewatching it, because I was like, oh man, he's competent. I miss competence. It, was, it wasn't long after we were discussing Mandalorian quite a bit, and it was like, oh, look at him go. He doesn't mm. even have body on I remember that. Mm. Characters yeah. with motivations and doing stuff. and the whole history and that is reflected in all of their actions. Straightforward story. I, I remember the pacing being pretty good. Like, there isn't really a, a moment in the story where I felt bored. Oh. Yeah, I'd say one of my few issues is the very ending. Like, it, there's some stuff that doesn't quite add up when you remember, like, what plot points have been dealt with. They're just like, how did all this kind of wrap up with a neat little bow? Like, there, there should be a little bit more to this ending. So that's that's probably you, one. If you take it. Go. All, all, all the, the carnage that he wreaks upon Paris, you should feel like there, there should be a little more consequences. Uh, so, yeah, this is... Sean claude was after him in that, and they're like, how did he... Like, how did the French authorities not go after him? And like, may, like, how did he even get out of the country at that point? It's they also, like, okay. when he's captured, sure. they uh, execute him in a very fucking poor manner, and he kind of escapes through what I would definitely reference as a bit of luck. They um, they like tie his hands to a pipe, which is what they always tie the hero's hands to when they they need to get the hero trapped, but they need to have him be able to escape. This is just, it's a, it was a thing that happened in 24 all the time. Remember, Evan? Yeah, that's, Jack, it's not a whole lot of situations that you shouldn't have. At least, like, with uh, The Last of Us, because Bill handcuffs Ellie uh, to a pipe when, when he uh, meets her and Joel. It makes sense because, like, well, that's just what he has available to him, and he's just trying to uh, check them for bites and, and whatnot. But oftentimes in movies like Taken or, or shows like 24, um, no, they have plenty of other possible options at their disposal. They they choose the easily breakable pipe. Well, I mean, um, he's lucky they didn't just execute him. Because they yeah. basically clarify, I think, it, it, his motivation. They're like, why are you here? And he's like, give me back my daughter. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, kill him. It's like, oh, why don't you just kill him anyway? Just they didn't uh, want to get it done quietly, but it's like still, you could have stabbed him. There, there were a lot of faster ways than to, like, yeah. choke him. Bad, and then he like breaks the pipe You're like wow that was that was lucky <laughs> yep but it's not nearly as dumb as um what happens in the last of us 2 when dina stands on the oh skylight shoots so dumb. A different skylight gets you know knocked on her ass because the guy shoots at the skylight that she's standing on and then decides well i have a gun but i think i'd rather just strangle this bitch yeah, and apparently if you let if you don't do the QTE, he does actually strangle her out. Like that is actually what he's trying to do there. He's definitely trying to kill her. And it's like, dude, just shoot them. Why are you not shooting them? Because you, you um, could I'm... hold on to the thin hope. He was just trying to knock her out. But no, he kills her. I'm gonna fail that QTE on my next uh, playthrough. I don't think I failed it on my first one, but I'm gonna stream another playthrough of that game so I can get more clear footage of, uh, of gameplay for my review. That's going to be a thing that I'll, I'll start doing next week, I think. No. No, where would, no. Where would you say the Fireflies are on a good to evil scale? Um, With five being true neutral? Three. Uh, um, solid three, possible two. Like they have good intentions, but like they don't have the means to carry them out. They're like they're low on men. They're like they, 
Oh, and the way they carry out their supposed good intentions is, <laughs> like I said, it's like they're taking all of the pages and pointers from the how to look like an evil organization handbook. Well, every extremist believes that they're well intentioned. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm judging them based on my moral standard, right? Mostly because I don't have a chance, a uh, choice. But um, I yeah, they're pretty pretty bad. I mean, based we can on almost what they do. And how if we knew more about them, we'd be able to judge them on their own set of morals, assuming they have them. But we just don't know so little. We get to find out about anybody in the fucking world. I can understand their desperation because the game makes it pretty clear that they're running low on men and they're losing their fight. So as far as they're like, they're wanting to rush into this operation, like, I don't think that's necessarily bad writing. It's just like, I, I feel like there's a cause and effect that leads to that, but it doesn't make them good. Wait, you don't think it's bad that they're rushing the operation? No, I'm saying it doesn't. Wait. Wait, we're, even if they could provide somebody who was immune, even that has value that they could use to bargain with. Yeah. But no, like, obviously hey. it was bad for them to rush into it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I've, I'm i uh, not able to detect sarcasm as, as well as I normally am. Hello, Ragamon. Hello. Please tell Mubi, <laughs> Mubi why you should watch uh, Ghost in the Shell. Uh, movie, I think you should watch Ghost in the Shell because if you liked Soma, then I think you will like Ghost in the Shell because they're kind of similar in the way that they treat the existential understanding of what makes us us and why we are the way we are, what makes us who we are, and it deals with these kinds of issues. I personally am a big fan of Ghost in the Shell. In fact, recently I watched, um, the, uh, I watched Solid State Society. I thought it was pretty good, and I thought it felt really nice in Ghost in the Shelly. I thought there was some good character stuff in there. Um, I will say, uh, it does sound pretty predictable. Like, it's gonna be a beach, they find some shells, and they'll find, like, some guy died inside a shell, so his ghost is in there. <laughs> Gotta study I was it. killed by a hermit crab, so I'm <laughs> haunting forever his house. Like, I don't really, you know, unless it's subversive, why would I want to watch that, you know? Yeah, um... And the whole thing about how I hate all anime is like, I don't, Ghost in the Shell isn't good for any reason that has to do with it being an anime. That's the thing. Um, it's, it, it doesn't even feel like an anime to watch. It just feels like a good show. Um, but yeah, Standalone Complex uh, is like the first season. Second season is, um, what, Invigil 11? Or second, no, it's called Second Gig. Um, and then there's the movie, and I think there's two other movies. There's that, Solid State Society. I know there's the mini series, which had like four episodes or so, and that was uh, Ghost in the Shell Arise, which wasn't bad, but I um, still thought it was fairly good. Um, but honestly, I'm a really big fan of Ghost in the Shell. Uh, I think if you if you are a fan of Soma, I think you'll like Ghost in the Shell. And All I right. even think that the movie for a live action movie for for a to take that, it goes to the shell's very niche stuff. To take that and adapt it to a mainstream audience version of what it is, I think it did a pretty darn good job at making an approachable movie that most people could watch in the theater and get interested in. My dad, who's a huge fucking boomer, he liked the Ghost in the Shell live action movie. And I'm curious how many people got interested in the show and that kind of content because they watch the live action movie. Um, mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, and so is it. I really like Full Metal Alchemist. I do. I've watched Full Metal Alchemist. I've even read the manga. I had a friend who had the old books. Full Metal and Alchemist. They're really good. Uh, but again, I those things are good for reasons that aren't because they're an anime. Those are just good stories done well. So yeah, that's probably going to confuse good. people. You saying that because they. Like, they, they probably don't know what you mean when you say that. Well, here's the thing. When you have a bunch of characters on a beach together, just explaining out loud all of their motivations and character, just blurting it out, I think that's lazy, shitty writing. Doesn't matter if it's in an anime or not. So, well, like, yeah, Ghost in the Shell's good stuff. Anime is simply medium classification, right? Like, it doesn't really tell yeah. you anything necessarily. But, 
there are some trappings slash tropes that come with them that can be very frustrating and are present in a lot of them. Yeah, and if I was going to say what is my least favorite part of Ghost in the Shill as a series, it's the parts that have to do with anime. It's the, the cutesy anime robot sort of stuff that feels super out of place, but it's just in there because anime trope. Um, and if I could get rid of that part, I certainly would change it in a heartbeat. Um, it doesn't benefit for being anime. Um, it, I just feel like it's good despite it, not because of it. <gasps> I get to play as Grima. Belch. Wow, are you have you been drinking some carbonated uh, liquids I've, today? I'm drinking booze right now. I, uh, I'm just about done with my first Blue Moon Belgian White. Belgian. Unleash the Urukai Blood Frenzy. What does that mean? Is that like a attack up? I don't know. Fine, let's unleash the Blood Frenzy. There, I did it. Also, dude, the Urukai Captains have 9999 AP. 9999. 9999? Nine, 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 nine. Nine. Jeez. I'm gonna so, say very, uh, very much a protesting German right there. 9999! Wait, what was that? Well, I guess I thought you meant they were protesting Germany. I was like, would they no, be no, no, no. A, a protesting German? <laughs> um, I remember when I was a lot younger, and I noticed in video games that things would max out at nine 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 and stuff like that. Like you could have ninety nine somethings or nine hundred ninety nine somethings or ninety nine ninety nine. I was like, why is that? Uh, how? Why? Why is the max of something always just a bunch of nines? And then I learned that well, if they added another digit to the things that you could have then you know then you might as well max it out at the next thing when mm -hmm. you go all the way up nine's as high as you can go without getting to the next you know value but that was you know it's one of those things i remember as a kid being confused about and then i learned it's like oh i see all learning right. is gay also wow Grim is almost dead what the fuck Grim, you suck i hate him Shit. black speech oh my god here here goes i'm gonna cast some black speech you guys ready Oh, good thing Barathor missed. <laughs> uh, also, have any of you played Hotline Miami? Yes. I no, I awesome. haven't, but I've heard it's uh, good. Very fun little game. Recommend it. Hey. Also, also, thoughts on Scott Pilgrim vs. The World? Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. Still thought, haven't seen thought, it. Saw it when it came out. I haven't seen it since. I thought it was neat. And Edgar Wright is showing himself off as a great editor. You know what I was kind of surprised by tonight was that there wasn't really a big discussion between us and the drinker about whether or not the vaccine would have worked. Because I remember on Twitter, he seemed to be on board with the idea that, yeah, sure, the like, the vaccine, uh, could, you know, could have worked because that's just, uh, I don't know what the story establishes, I guess. The characters believe that it would work, so we should operate under the assumption that it would. I'm fine operating under the assumption that it would. It still creates a huge amount of issues and problems in the world with you know, distribution and what they're going to do with it and what their plans are and you know actually creating one of the. I'm fine with the idea that it could work and that they believe it could work and they're justified in believing it could work. I don't think that's where the problems are for the most part. Where like, I don't think I'm okay with assuming it can work. Um, mainly because the more I get told about how vaccines work, the more I'm like, this is absolute bullshit what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know that we can rely on that. Just like, if you lack the knowledge of how, you know, police, firemen, medics, how, how anything procedural works, then the thing that the show is showing you is just true, it's something we should accept, it's like, eh, I don't know. Like I said, if you're going to break away from how things work in real life, I think you just need to do the whole unobtainium thing. Just bring in something that isn't real and say, like, this is I how it works. I certainly wouldn't have gone with vaccine as my No, thing. They, could, they probably um, would have been better off if they'd called it the cure, and then maybe argue... Yeah, you... just cure. We have a cure. We can prevent it. We could reverse it. When We have an antifungal spray or something. Yeah, I actually um, saw two videos Many going in depth on how it works, and basically at every level... They're just not doing the right thing. It's all n insane nonsense. And like, you know, The Last of Us, uh, both one and two, they have like certain breaks from reality. One thing that I, that I thought about was everyone in these games seems to have like perfect teeth. Like where are all the dentists and orthodontists in, in this world? 
but also like uh, gas power generators and the fact that there's any working vehicles when all of the gasoline would have soured by that point without the, the use of refineries. Yep, and as much as people say these are nitpicks, it's like, not really, unfortunately. Uh... I'm like, I'm, I'm happy to say, okay, well, obviously if gasoline is still working at this point, then it just works somewhat differently than how it does in our world. However, when it comes to a vaccine, we don't have anything proving definitively that fungal vaccines work any differently in that world than they do in ours. Whereas because of the fact that we see running cars and we see working gas powered generators, obviously gas would have to, you know, work differently in that world than, than in ours. It'd be funny if like, that's realistic or, or even good writing, but on yeah. like infection day for their narrative on the news as the story opens is like, um, it's been five years now since Petrilizon has been discovered, uh, you know, a, an infinitely perfect gas alternative. Uh, you know, before they start, it's like, hey, hey, we've got it sorted. <laughs> Our narrative will make sense. And, and yeah, the, the, the teeth is definitely a nitpick. I'm just pointing out, like... Well, is it? I mean, if Abby didn't have good teeth, she couldn't have bitten off the fingers of... Uh, oh, dude, she LA. bites down all of her feet, 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 feet teeth, that break off and it's just like oh <laughs> then yeah. again i can't imagine that they have a very high sugar intake so that I mean, probably has a lot to do with yeah, all the chocolate they, bars that you eat maybe they found some oh those... yeah i guess the chocolate bars you're constantly working down oh yeah but you think in their day-to-day -day lives like sugary stuff wouldn't be very common at all it'd be I like in the old days people didn't have get get a lot of sugar at all if basically none so i, I would say this like regarding the gasoline if they at least establish that yeah there's still people that are like working on on like drilling oil and there's gas refineries that are around if they like showed that like oh neat little world building you know i people could believe are, that i could believe in that. how how long has it been in the last of us two 20 well uh 24. 20 that in 24 years people could get some small you know stuff operating to a degree um nothing big but if every community had a truck or two and it was, you know, a, a, a very valuable resource. Like, yeah, I could believe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You I, say I, some I, around here, people have little tiny pumps. Um, mm -hmm. Every once in a while, you'll see them. If you're driving out in the country and stuff, you'll see out in the field, someone might have a little, might mm -hmm. have a little pump. A little pump. I mean, they have guys, like, working on a hydroelectric dam in the first game. So there's people that have some type of knowledge of engineering um, mm -hmm. that believe yeah there's probably like some oil drilling plant somewhere in in this universe that could explain where all the oil is is coming from but we don't see that i'm not necessarily saying that's bad writing but i would have i would have given it points for stronger world building if they if they well, have yeah, that. this is the world building category and a lot of writers don't care about world building unfortunately especially when they're in a um you know in a, a real world setting they're like who cares it's like oh well hmm yeah. yeah, stuff like, I mean, rationing of items and lights uh, Lights can only be turned on after a certain hour and people are outside as much as possible to make use of daylight and cut down on gas consumption. And there's huge, like, you was saying, there'd be farm, every, every, every bit of land that you could convert into farmland would be farmland. Like, all of the area outside of... Um, the first settlement, Jacksonville, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson. Would, Jackson. That would all be farmed. It would all have plants grown in it. Every every speck of place that you could start growing food on, you would. Because it takes a lot of land and a lot of crops to support people who are clustered in a city. Um, and then, I mean, that it kind of explains why Seattle is in the condition that it is. Because, I mean, the people that tried running a farm in Chaz, do you see how that fared? Oh yeah, like farming is a big deal. We take it for granted now, especially, mm. but it's kind of a very, very important thing. And most of the people in that society would probably pretty much almost inevitably become involved in farming. It's like, you gotta grow that food. There's more, you know, understanding of farming in video games than there would be in real life at this point from general and knowledge. It's like, I don't know how to farm on Stardew Valley. Someone said ammo would be a huge problem. And I don't think it would be that much of a problem. 
uh, because when you when you factor in how much ammunition exists right now, and then you take away ninety five percent of the population, mm. or however much it is, that is a shit ton of ammunition. Um, that that's that's being spent, and that'll just be lying around. Um, and making it, you wouldn't have to make super high quality stuff. But just going off of what is available, because ammunition doesn't really degrade um, in the sense that, like, I, I have ammunition from World War II that I use in one of my rifles, and it works perfectly fine. Ammunition lasts a long time. It, it, in 20 years, it, it's not going to degrade to the point where you can't use it at all. Well, it's 60% um, uh, of the population now, and we're talking about, like, 20 years of a lot of people fighting, and... Uh... I mean, there is a ton of ammunition that's out there. Um, I can at least... Yeah, burning it. through it would be, like, t it would be hard to burn through all the ammunition. That um, okay. And reloading exists. I the Really, the only thing would be... I, I mean, and once somebody finds factories that produce it, then it's about access to raw materials, but you can make casings out of everything from brass to steel. Steel is generally the cheap stuff that you buy. You can't reload it, but you know it's cheap to get access to, and raw materials are everywhere in terms mm -hmm. of scrapping. Um, I don't think that that would be the biggest issue. You just tell people not to waste it because you'd want it to last as long as possible because it won't... It's not like it goes bad, so you might as well use it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the idea of, the like... Like, what if they went back to using muskets once, um, like, you go through all the ammo? Like, I, I, I know it sounds retarded to you, probably, but... Um, so you'd have to make things that are specifically designed to be muskets. Because mm -hmm. um, you can't just... I don't think that you can make a... You could probably make musket balls that were the caliber of... Like, if you, if you had an AK-47... Mm-hmm. I don't know if mechanically there isn't a reason why you couldn't have a musket ball in them. Um, they wouldn't be very big. They would be not very effective. Um, and the because modern black, uh, modern fast burning, you know, black powder is different than the powder that you would use in a musket. Like you couldn't, you couldn't take an old rifle that was designed to fire like older, slower burning accelerants. And you put a modern bullet in there and expect it to be the same, like pressures would be different and all that stuff. So I oh. think you might theoretically be able to, but at that point, I'm wondering why you don't just yeah, my focus on like so bows and maybe blunderbusses, that kind of thing, where you just pack That's shit true. into a uh, just a, a tube of a sort. But I, yeah, I, I think at that point, it'd be better to just teach people to just get bows and arrows, honestly. Because that's, that's the kind of stuff we know you could make in a relatively primitive fashion and have them still be effective. Or slings. I bet people would be would, would start using slings again because slings will fuck you up. Like the Roman army used slings. Yeah. Um, they they just get lead, melt it down into kind of bullety shaped things, and they sling them at people. It'd fuck your day up. Yeah, the idea of, of them using like bows and crossbows i mean that makes a lot of sense especially in the last of us those are silent weapons and they're not going to draw even though in actuality if you actually uh fire a bow there's a pretty loud sound that comes from uh from the snapping of the the bowstring um, uh, not as loud as like a gunshot but oh yeah they're definitely way more quiet and if you break a bow or you lose an arrow, it's not nearly as big of a deal as, oh shit, we misplaced a rifle. You know, that th those would be things that are, like if you had a quartermaster for Jackson, mm -hmm. then they each gun would be, you know, tagged and cataloged and they'd want to know where they are at all times so that they could pass them out and know that they're coming back and maintain them and stuff like that. Um, they would be val very valuable resources. And the idea that everyone just runs around with them and you don't take advantage of all the guns being dropped everywhere is, is like, eh. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things that I, one of the big things that bothered me about the last of us is that they send people out to clear areas of clickers and they don't give them armor. Like clickers are guys that will bite you and claw at you and gnash at you. And you're just sending them out there without armor. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take much to stop claws and teeth. 
And, and if I was told the to, okay, your job is that next week you're going to go out and you're going to clear this area of clickers. And I'm like, okay, if anything, I'm wearing multiple shirts. I'm wrapping my forearms and my Wear neck scarf. in leather and heavy scarves and stuff like that. Like these people are not dressed for the job that will potentially kill them. Um, I'm reinforcing my just all this. I've, I've taken leather straps and putting it around my neck. And I is like, think of just wood, just just wood and metal braces and all this stuff that you could pass out to people. So where would they get armor? Uh, in the chat is like again these are clickers that are just clawing at you with their hands and trying to bite you with their teeth if you just wear really thick clothing they can't get like um, I was forced to walk across loads of armor in the game with plenty of enemies yeah all there's body armor uh, and that stuff does not degrade in 20 years by the way that ballistic stuff um, well, but at, just wearing thick that? clothing um, you can't bite through it um, What what is it uh, I should know this it's Shad talks about all the time it's um the, the the padded armor that people would wear that's made out of tightly woven fibers um gambeson Gamb gambeson is what it is um it's very very it'll stop swords it could stop arrows very effective armor that's made out of very tightly woven fibers it can be replaced in segments it's just it it bugs me that a world that's trying to be very realistic doesn't have stuff like that and i think that would go a long way um, like they'd be outside, they'd be checking each other's armor, essentially, all their paddings and everything, securing it, making sure it's tight. And it's like, all right, we're going in. And then they go in together. Like that would be a really great touch. I mean, look at what I just sent in the, in the, um, group chat. Rags. Like I'd, I'd at least wear that, you know? <laughs> I mean, honestly, part. yeah. Like this is your life at stake and you have all this material that you could tie to you with. I need an embarrassing it's... looking man in this post apocalypse and then he survives where the people die and he's like, Yeah, that's so funny now, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's just wearing a neck pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they always go for the neck. The clickers always go for the hey neck. Guys. So Yeah, I'm just I'm like oh, I, I'm shocked people don't protect their bodies. Like these guys are trying this should be easy. Clearing out clickers should be fucking easy job stuff. Like, it, you could, in your house right now, you could create armor that would render you pretty much fully protected from a click. Possibly. Yeah. Even if it's just putting on five shirts at once, like, you're pretty much solid. Because yeah, they chew into that shirt and they're going to be stuck for a little bit. Like, eh. Also, um, I'm in Helm's Deep and every single NPC is talk -to -able. They'll give you a line or a few sentences and they're all different. They've gone further than The Last of Us 2. Good job. All the NPCs in the opening area of The Last of Us 2 wouldn't talk to me. I felt very alone. Except for like a one hey, or two. But do the NPCs in this game all have names? Yes. Are there any NPCs in this game named Amber? Look at this person right here. It says Rohan Villager. That is her name. <laughs> she was born for this. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fucking nail this. That's a, that's a very, uh, very interesting last name. Villager. Loads of people are from the Villager family in this area. Yeah. Like, I don't uh, know that that awesome. villager guy. He oh, was yeah. oof, he wasn't wasting any time. Mm. This is a great map in Killing Floor too, by the way. It's just cool. Whenever you see this map in anything, it follows the same model, so it's like familiar no matter what you're playing it in, because everyone follows the same sort of design, which they should. Good old Horolms Dorolp. Wonder where King Theoden is. Um, hi Rags. Hey. Hi Rags. Hello? I ra -guz. No, I don't know why they did this. But they did it. Where am I supposed to go, game? There's lots of red bloops on the map. Tell me what to do with these bloops. With Infamous, if you were good, you could get abilities that help keep civilians safe and restrain enemies. If you were evil, you have more powerful AoE attacks and civilians are health packs and bombs. Yep. Yeah, all right. Your weapons here take any that you require. Hmm. Speak with Aragorn's friends and return to me. Okay. I would say, like, uh, while it seems like it's more rewarding to play as a bad guy in Infamous than a good guy, um, what's interesting is that when you have a good reputation, um, civilians will actually attack 
the bad guys that you're fighting. Um, like once you're maxed out on hero reputation, which uh, makes it a little easier than everyone attacking you, because oftentimes if you're you know if you're a bad guy, someone will just run up to you and start punching you or throwing rocks at you. I could take him, guys. <laughs> Throwing rocks so fucked up. I'm currently playing Red Dead Redemption 2, and that game is not only better with, than The Last of Us, but it also has a better revenge plotline. Plot lines. Yeah, that's what Fringy uh, mentioned to me. He was, he was like, it's just another example, as Rags was saying earlier, just everyone keeps bringing up all the games that did better. It's because The Last of Us 2 isn't new. It may look new, it may kind of seem new in terms of release, but what it's doing ain't new. We can all see right through it. Um, he's obviously a massive Ewok. Damn. I like how the best doctor the Fireflies could find to make a cure was a veterinarian. Um, I don't think he's a vet veterinarian. Probably a vet would be an extremely drug? valuable um, asset in any community, especially with the added value of what livestock would be. Mm. That's part of what makes um, uh, the guy at the beginning, Bigot Sandwich Guy, um, uh, <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Seth. Seth. That's part of what makes Seth apology so meaningful, I think, is that he gives her steak sandwiches. Steak is super valuable. Like, in the medieval ages, people didn't eat steak that much. It was mostly, like, pig. Pigs and chickens. Yeah, he didn't so. just make her some shitty PB&J. Like, he he made her some top-of-the-line luxury steak. Yeah. Like, steak is not something you're having often. Yeah, he appeared on that restaurant too. It, like, he's probably a pretty good cook. Imagine after the scene where she leaves the house, it plays another scene where she's arriving um, at back, back at the settlement, and she walks up to Seth and she's like, I forgive you. And then the credits roll, making the message nice and clear. Someone said steak doesn't belong in a sandwich. Ew, it's tough and chewy. Like, what the fuck? This guy. Wait, wrong. did they not have any meat in in sandwiches then? Because to to be fair, steak and even chicken and ham they can all get chewy. Yeah, they can. I'm not sure about that one. But there'd be a lot of pigs and a lot of chickens, and they probably use the chickens mostly for eggs. They just mm. they keep them because eggs are really good. Eggs are good for you. Anyone that eggs. says that steak does not belong in sandwiches has obviously never had a tri-tip sandwich. Or, or a steak, or a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Try to visit. They must they not have, have eaten the components. <laughs> oh, is this Legolas? Oh, hello, Legolas. Oh, I got a cutscene for each of Aragorn's friends. That's what they're called. Aragorn's friends? <laughs> I feel like they have names, but okay. Yeah, Alright, well, I guess if that's... Uh... Uh, every black character that was introduced in both The Last of Us games have either died or they committed suicides. Uh, concerned face, I guess. Yeah. Goes to Have show you, Neil Druckmann hates the black man. Of what, sorry? Have either died or committed suicide? That sounds like they just all died. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you got it covered with dead, if, uh, mm -hmm. if you mention committed suicide too, but, you know. Um... Abby's original character model was black. They knew the original Doctor was black. She was changed after further development of Last of Us 2. Debate settled. Is that true? Really? That's weird. Yeah, that... actually. There's there's some uh, concept art of her where she's clearly not white. Hmm. I think last... Here, let me Very see if I can find on r slash Last of Us 2. The, the free folk <laughs> of Last of Us 2 subreddits. Somebody in chat said, Then I will fap as one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you seen Senator Abby Strong? That sounds funny. I can already imagine such memory. Oh look, it's Aragorn. Is he one of Aragorn's friends? Yo, what up? Aragorn's over there talking to himself. <laughs> These are no soldiers. All eyes and guard has emptied. Ten thousand strong at least. I shall fab as one of them. Abby, you killed my father, Joel. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Yeah. 
That was the beeb we showed. I like how his eyes are moving left to right <laughs> randomly. <laughs> Uh, Mahler, you might want to pull this up on screen. Like, who the fuck are you? Or here, I'll just copy image. Ba, ba, ba. Abby Design. Ba, ba, ba. And she's black. Hmm. No, it's just the lighting. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know? In that case, I do not think it is just the lighting. Um, all right, someone man. said, um, yeah, so to be honest, it'd be so much funnier to have to play as a girl that looks like she could bench press the planet. <laughs> someone said in reply, she almost looks like a character that's supposed to get a response out of us from doings and not from a comical physique. Yeah, everyone, this is the Last of Us 2 Reddit, isn't it? And everyone's like, yeah, she looks so much, she looks like a normal person, not this comically oversized monstrosity. Hey, they have to justify a Hulk smash gameplay, okay? Look, I do love running up to enemies and giving them the fat Geralt special as Abby, okay? That is actually legitimately enjoyable well, gameplay. This is why, yeah, why, when Cosmo said, like, it's like the shitty side of the gameplay, it's like, I, I, I don't know. I think I preferred Abby's gameplay, actually. I'm not sure. You know, no matter what, she has, like, the crossbow and, like, a bunch of, like, significantly better weapons than Ellie has, so it's like, okay. That's, I forgot. That's enjoyable on that front, at least. I forgot to mention that, like, I really like the addition of uh, jumping off a ledge onto an enemy, pressing square in midair and killing them as you land on them. Fucking great. Love that addition. Look, it's Kimley. The one from the movie. Finally, someone I could speak face to face with. So, uh, Gimli, how do, how do you feel about Frodo? You, <laughs> or you, do you want him? Do you want him to live or, or die? You just mentioned the word Frodo, and Gimli's like, Ugh. still alive. And why? As far as we know. This is no All right, man. All right, this cup must clip into my face. This is my first time catching EFAP live, and I am pledging to stay until the last super chat is read. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hello. He's just saying lines from the movie in different places. That's yeah, kind of amazing. It's because they can play the, the audios if they've got the voice actors there. I, am more ready than ever. I assume, anyway. I don't know if they actually got original lines for this. They did from um, Ian McKellen. I know that much. The surgeon is clearly Sean King. He identifies as a transracial dude. Ah. Hmm. All questions answered. Um, he just Abby, had uh, Michael Jackson skin syndrome. Abby poops with the door closed. That is not true. She is definitely the type to open that door. I'm just saying. Open the door. Oh, she has oh. to assert her dominance in every uh, every imaginable way, you know? I've spoken to all the people now. Do I win? Did I do it? Mom. I think it is. Do I have any quests? I'll probably answer. All of our soldiers are trained to be exactly a Defend Helm's Deep and talk to Gambling. Alright, yeah. Gambling, here I come, buddy. I'm ready to defend Helm's Deep. Do you remember this part of the game, Rags? You have like several sections, each one with each of the characters. And they're oh, all yeah. super OP. Like, your characters are okay, I guess, but Aragorn has like fucking five hit move, and you're like, oh man, I don't want that. Which you do get eventually, so. Are you holding Stormbreaker? Um, it's a pretty good, pretty good hammer. You just randomly find it in uh, Helm's Deep, and apparently it's yours now. Like, fuck Gimli, I guess. He's not allowed it. I am. And Gimli, um, his, he likes his older, he likes his own. I guess Gimli's got his own one. He don't need, he don't need no gay hammer. But yeah. Pretty neat, if I say so myself, and... You know, I'm hardcore leveling my had hard out of everybody, so hopefully he can hit people in the face with this thing and it'll work out really well. Um, the game changes the doctor's race and half the enemies you kill aren't white. Is that even... Half the enemies you kill aren't white? Uh, so, yeah. I don't know about that. So... Uh, with the focus on bow skills, they should rename the game Horizon Zero Talent. Oh, 
Oh shit. Do, 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 do. Explosive arrows are really useful for bloaters. Shit immersion, but justifies their inclusion IMO. Oh, well, the point wasn't that they could simultaneously have mechanical value, it was that it's clearly fucking awesome to shoot an arrow at something and it explodes. Like, that's... Yeah. And we're talking about how they mechanically are at odds with their theme. Which a lot of people have pointed out, even just right. I feel like, I don't know, if, if you have access to explosives of that caliber, there might be way better uses than a oh. redundant arrow that is going to explode people. That is no oh god. Showing the movie. No, stop. Fucking playing music too. Shit. Um, I'm thinking Cosmo Variety Hour is the main villain of EFAP now. I, 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 I don't know. What, who's the... Isn't it Diabito? Isn't he like the dominant overlord? I don't know. So, uh, I don't know. He's being usurped by Cosmonaut, you know, pretty Cosmonaut quickly. Cosmonaut has bad takes on like everything, so... Well, I think like... The, yeah, the, the Twitter antics that happen, as well as the the videos and the piss poor takes that he provides, eh, it's possible. Mm. A battle shall begin. Now a Desert Eagle chambered in .50 AE to face. You'll be lucky if you still have a face. Uh, yeah, ooh. it's a big, big bullet. Ooh, look, I'm Legolas. Oh, I am Legolas. Legolas' most powerful sword attack. Let's do it. Oh, wow. He just dealt a casual 11,000. Nice. What do I even... I don't even know what I want to do. Let's see how shit my moves are compared. 1,700. Ugh. Thanks God Legolas is here. <laughs> but you can't Legolas. use his arrows. You'd think that would be something... But... Mm. All right. You think? Yeah, that's a good point that Chat's raising. Cosmonaut variety hour is just tis me, whereas Movie Bob is actually kind of repugnant as a person. Well, like if one of them was given power, one of them would lead to the destruction of humanity, while the other would probably just do some silly shit. I don't know. So yeah, uh, there is a difference. I'll give you that. <laughs> I don't know the way that Cosmonaut talks about like the rich people and everything. True. Like, could have some concerns there, I suppose. I Though, definitely don't want uh if if I had to choose dictator of the world, the cosmonauts. Yeah, I'll go with cosmonauts, alright. Yeah. It wouldn't be good, but man, under movie bob, it'd be way worse. Rat ranks, the the ladders have health bars. The ladders have health bars. Yeah, fuck up those ladders. It's like D D. You know, <laughs> doors and ladders, they have health bars. <laughs> It's weird. You gotta fuck. Yeah, you gotta destroy. It's you have weird. to destroy the ladder. You think you're just gonna hit a ladder once and it breaks? No, they got health bars. No, no, no. Oh, they got replaced. Give me my perfect mode game. I need it. That's oh, no. kind of funny, though, that these two orcs are standing there and this dwarf just runs right between the two of them <laughs> and hits the ladder. They're like, oh no, he's coming for. Oh, wait, no. Fucking up that ladder. Why would I. Oh. Orc Hewer is better for uh, Urukai Hewer. Let's see if this does better on... No, that's way worse. Why would I use that? Legolas, just tell me what your best move is, okay? Racist. Um, amusing to hear all this conversation about clips versus magazines, given I just took home an M1 Garand earlier today, which is the only gun I know of that primarily uses, uh, primarily uses clips. It's certainly one of the ones that instantly comes to mind. But yeah, they use man liquor. Mm hmm. Must have been. Like, what What made it so the clip entered common vernacular so hardcore exactly? I don't know. It's probably just a carryover from. It, it might just be that it stuck around from when clips were far more common. Mm. And people just sort of. It just stuck. Um, because you could have. Because even as clips were being phased out and more people used magazines, a lot of weapons came with a magazine, but you would load them with clips, and the magazine would be internal. Even the SMLEs in uh, World War One, they had a detachable box magazine, but you what? were expected to keep the magazine in there at all times, and you'd load it with clips on the top. Fucking had, I'll just casually throwing out a triple critical. 
Jesus, buddy. Impress it in front of... You see, he's just trying to impress Legolas. I knew it. Like, I'm really good. You should take me with you on your fellowship. Fuck these guys. He wants to replace Gimli. He can join Gimli. It would be fun. They can they can hunt Frodo together. <laughs> I'll watch it. Uh, Britain man. I assume that's uh, a superhero. I watched Cosmonaut's video and stopped halfway because I couldn't take his stupidity. Not a great video, yeah. Definitely. Um, still maybe not as bad as his worst. For what's that was, what's what it's worth? That was about the point where he said that Joel is not a beloved character, which. Is that the dumbest thing that Cosmo has ever said? He's so video? sure of it. It's so weird to be so sure of something so wrong. <laughs> it's, it's like you literally don't know the definition of the word. So it's like, what, what do you do with that? It's like, okay, that's not what beloved means if you think he means altruistic, I guess. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a weird one. You're, you're just mad that Joel is dead, but Joel is not a beloved character. Why, why would he's facing his audience telling him this and he's like you guys don't love him like what what a weird I, circumstance it, it makes me just want to ask are you trolling like are you actually just trying to fuck with people a little bit must be i need that healy blade at some point California ain't america hello again rags hello uh, not only did they swap Jesse for old man Joel, uh, Troy Baker recorded a line specifically for that trainer. You think I'd let a uh, trailer? You think I'd let you do this on your own? Yeah, they um they openly admit to this in a way that's like you, you can see it on their podcast. I need to watch the rest of it where um they talk about the leaks. Um, it's the Troy Baker, Ashley Johnson, and Neil Druckmann. And they're like, yeah, man, we went to such great lengths to hide, like, the plot details. We even, you know, had new animations created and, um, voice lines recorded that weren't even in the game. Like, as, as if it's, like, um, a really cool thing they did. It's like, what the fuck? No? Like, you, you, you sold people on a game that didn't even exist. It's like, the... Uh... I don't know, man. It's just... It's not cool, yeah. but I guess they didn't... Could it... Is it possible they didn't realize? Like, that they were doing that and that they thought they were just protecting people from plot leaks? Like, hmm. If you had to choose to do one thing on repeat forever, watch all of Batwoman or play Last of Us 2. There's only a right answer to that question. It's a no-brainer. All of Batwoman. One of those experiences is wonderful. The other makes you want to kill yourself. Mm-hmm. Go, Legolas. They've done the replacing a character model in the trailer thing for Uncharted 4 and Hector Alcazar as well, but nobody complained about that. Probably, be, like, I'm assuming, because this happened for um, Hulk in the Infinity War trailer, the reason is that um, we know now that their plotline was Joel gets obliterated in the opening and the rest of the game is playing as someone who killed him. You'd want to hide the shit out of that because if you sold the game as that, premise and trailer-wise, people would choose not to buy it. But that's why they hid it. Meanwhile, something like Infinity War, it doesn't want to tell you who's fighting who at what times. Um, so it's like the Hulk could be in the final fight, the Hulk could also just be in the opening, it could be Bruce Banner inside the fucking, uh, inside, what's it called? Jessica, Matilda, something? The uh, uh, Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster, yeah, I can't remember if it had a name, like Jasmine, I don't know. <laughs> Point Veronica. being, um, this, this is why it's all inference, it's like we would try and figure out whether or not they hid things maliciously or not. I have to say, like, if the appeal for the first game for so many people was Joel and Ellie's relationship, and you are marketing the game based on, yeah, you're going to see more of the, these two characters that you love, and you know it's not going to be that, that's where it crosses over into you're selling people something that uh, they think that they will want, but it's actually the opposite of what they'll want. No, it's a bit fucked up. That just crosses a line for me. But Infinity War didn't change footage, did it? Yeah, they showed the Hulk in Wakanda fighting with the rest of the heroes, and that doesn't happen. He's just Bruce Banner. Uh, that first think... shot in the first trailer, like, that literally isn't in it, like, where they're all running towards the camera, so it's like, yeah, that w that's a little bit deceptive, but it's like, he's still in the movie, he still fights, so it's like, it's just kind of something to mislead a little bit. And it's very small, we're not talking about the two main characters, like, 
it's it's uh, Hulk, whether or not he's actually Hulk fighting in that battle, which he isn't, but I wouldn't consider that a loss um, a, until endgame, where they, I'd say, bungle it a little bit. There's, there's a couple of shots from the uh, MI Fallout trailer that are not in the, the film. There's one where Ethan is, like, swinging from some, uh, like, zip line that's above the, the dance floor of the Grand Palais. And then the final one, he's in the helicopter, and it looks like he's about to collide with a truck. It would basically seem like just about impossible for him to actually, like, uh, raise the helicopter up and avoid the, hitting the truck. Um, and I remember feeling like, oh, yeah. yeah. Would have been cool if well, we had the those deleted scenes, right? Like, those weren't, like, filmed to mislead in any way? Like, that was just cut from the movie, right? Uh, the Grand Palais one certainly was a deleted scene. I don't know about the helicopter uh, one. Um, I said that that was uh, on Twitter. Uh, wrong. I I think he said that that was deleted as well. That they didn't have time to put it in. Oh, and the, like the the beginning of the trailer as well uh, it had some shots that definitely aren't in, in the film. Uh, where it's like um, there's some dead soldiers near the uh, the like medical camp in Kashmir. But the thing is, is like, that's not the like the main draw of the movie. Mm -hmm. It would be more analogous to like if they um, if they killed Ethan Hunt off in the first thirty minutes of the movie, and, and he's then you're of the trailer. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and and I think you have to take it case by case and really go for like what are they trying to say versus uh, what the thing is, and that's why I would say we're not really misled with Infinity War. I don't think. Um, hyper Hulk fans might have felt they were, but uh, the last of us two. When you see all of it, like, oh, I start to get a little bit annoyed. Like, on behalf of the people who had consumed all that shit, like, damn, they were really selling a narrative that doesn't exist in the game whatsoever. Like, if you sell people, a lot of it has to do with the fact that if you if you sell everyone as like uh, something's advertises, hey, if you you buy this carton of eggs, it's twelve eggs, and they open up, and it's like, oh, actually, there's thirteen eggs. Oh, you get a free egg. No one's gonna go. I want my money back. That was false advertising. No, a lot of it will be. Oh wait, I got what I expected, what I didn't expect, but in a bad way. Oh, now I'm upset. It's more like, yeah, there's twelve eggs in here, but they're all rotten. People don't like to be surprised in a bad way. People can be surprised in a good way, and they'll be fine with it. But it's stuff like Last of Us that makes you really question that sort of thing. Dude, I can... Earth Spirits Gee, Unleash Smashing Ant Roots fucking... on, the, on the ladder. <laughs> 4,900 damage counterattack. I'm gonna get... I know, right? I'm gonna get the fucking tree to attack the ladder. This is this is top tier this third age gameplay. This is tree wood violent... Wow. I know. Wow. Oh no, the ladder was immune to stun, I guess. <laughs> the ladder can move freely now. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. There's a ladder and like a hell point damage. Dude, it, it's not even immune. It lied to me. The, the ladder is stunned. Look, it's got the little symbol on it. <laughs> the ladder is stunned. <laughs> You've stunned this out of an object. Man, you guys are really trying to take this ladder down. I know, it's they funny. put so much effort into it. There we go, we got it. Mahler, yes. it's an inanimate fucking object. You're an inanimate fucking object. <laughs> Sorry, fucking I called it that. <laughs> fucking in Bruges, everyone should see it. It's really good. I, 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 uh, movie. I got my yeah. mom and my sister to watch that movie for the first time recently, and they were like cracking up at every other line. The dialogue in that movie is immaculate. Yeah, it's really good. Uh Remember good stuff. Um, you should play Plants vs Zombies for super chats. Uh, Plants vs Zombies is good, rat. I can, Look, I can peggle. lower the armor rating of the ladder. Oh my god, that's awesome! The ladder has lower armor. Oh no, someone's rising on the ladder! Boo! Um, but yeah, I mean, possible. Joel killed Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, obviously. Last of Us Infinite. Joel going on a quest to kill Joel for revenge for killing Joel using Joel. 
See, I think that actually... See, a lot of people make fun of that. Like, oh, it doesn't make sense. Like, it does, though. Oh, fucking Legolas missed. As if that's possible. Please tell the group that a revenge story was the original plot for the first game, but it was scrapped for being unrealistic. Let that sink in. Yep. And yeah. now... Think of how shitty Neil must feel about that. Oh, yeah. He didn't get to make the game he wanted with the first game, and everyone loved it and adored it. And now he got to make the game that he wanted to make, and people hate it. That must sting really bad. No, he just knows that they don't understand his genius. Clearly. He's too three smart, five me. Those oh, fools geez. don't know what they had. He's getting 10 out of 10 scores from the gaming journalists, and that's all that matters to him. In fairness, they know what they're talking about. They said The Last Jedi was awesome. And he loved The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, even the people who want to defend The Last of Us 2 are probably like, Oh, he thinks that's good? Okay, ignore that. That's fine. Whatever. We're just, that's... Shut up. Fucking out of mana. I can't attack a ladder. Feels bad, man. Imagine missing a... Rex, can you, uh... Oh, give, give me one sec. The mm -hmm. image is loading. It'll be there in a sec. Alright. Uh, you guys are the Michael Jordan of podcasts. By the way, you should watch Michael Jordan highlights because he's pretty good at basketball. <laughs> that's what I hear. Well, that's, that's pretty kind uh, of Michael Jordan of podcasts. Pretty, pretty high praise. Thank you very much. Different story for uh, baseball, though. Um, Rags, you wanna you wanna read this out? Let's see. Um, let me zoom in. Uh, ten out of ten IGN. If you don't like it, it's probably because you don't get the subtle nuance and me say seen uh, it making a statement about society and the subversion of expectations of the player as a complex metaphor for the dichotomy of the duality juxtaposition of man human condition challenging the underlying principles we take for granted. You're supposed to feel bored. So you can empathize with a character. No, Sony, I'm not just going to give them what they want. Die, Joel, spit. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, this is what he's going to be remembered for. Unless he fucks up again. You can join D&D, &D, Ryan Johnson, and... Uh, I guess Alex Kurtzman. There's, there's a couple at this point. Quite a few. Yeah, well, that's the thing. All they're going to be remembered for, at least so far, is how they... Fucked something up. How they ruined something. They took something people loved and just pooped on it. Gave it a big ol' poop. Big ol' poopy. I don't think Idril has two mana draining moves. It's kinda nuts. Who's your president? <gasps> Michael Jordan! Miguel Jordan. Ale Longfather. Upload to BitChute, or I'll declare war. Automatic uploads can be set up in like 10 seconds. Grow your audience. <gasps> uh, like I said, it was more so I was probably going to do it if, if I got booted from YouTube, but it's, yeah, I mean, setting up a backup is never a bad idea, I suppose. Especially if YouTube go boom boom. Upload to shit boot. Hello. Why are you doing this so late? Imagine how utterly unstoppable Joel would be in avenging Ellie. That would get dark quickly. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'd all be willing to check it out. Also, we're late to to match everybody's timelines. Do you think Rags and I would want to keep you guys up this late? No. No, not. I mean, what time is it for me? I don't oh know. fuck! It's midnight. Oh my god! It's so fucking late. midnight. It is six a.m. for me. Wow. This is why I said I and after this is done, I'm gonna fucking crash. Mm. Double critical. Uh, since you were playing GameCube games for Super Chats, may I suggest Fire Emblem Path of Radiance? It's really good. So I remember that. I I'm, liked it. I'm partially avoiding games that I've not played because otherwise I could get stuck or need to pay attention more so, if you know what I mean. Um... Yeah, but if it's I'm simplistic, third age and... because third age is super like I can I can I can yeah, mostly get you gotta, through it. You gotta really know what you're doing with this Big game. Brain. Wow, triple critical, Jesus! Also, you know that move where I can just resurrect my team infinitely? I haven't had to use it in ages. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I didn't even have to use the OP bullshit move that the game gave me. 
It's just four guys staring down a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> like, who will win? We fucking got this. I can fucking do it. Whoa, triple critical. Oh, there it goes. I think we got like a th set of third ladders. I don't know if I know. Gilgalad Rampage. Hmm. Triple critical. Oh, look at all these upgrading. This is amazing. Ooh. Batman Beyond. An old Bruce Wayne has a lot to contribute to the new Batman, but Neil would like to be... No, he's old. Kill him. Like, yeah. So, I can't remember. Is Aiden any good? I think so. I, th I think so. I just never got to grips with the other characters, because at this point, I just like my main three, you know? Yeah, these are my boys. It's too late to swap now. Mm-hmm. Which probably would have been better for this game, to start with the six and be able to choose based on what... I don't know. What you find interesting about each one. Or they should have had you play half the game as the other, uh, half the game as one group and half the game as the other, and then they meet in the like a third act and you get to use them have, all together and have one three, kill the fathers of the other three, and then you play as them <laughs> seeking revenge for ten hours. Oh my god. Trust me, this will work. Oh, fuck everyone's low on <laughs> mana. We can make it about revenge. Yeah, maybe each movie had its own group of people that were, you know, in that area or that zone or something. And then they all meet at a later point, and yeah, that would be cool. Uh, please make an EFAP on Girlfriend Reviews Last of Us 2 video. Also, love you, Rags. Oh, thank you. Uh, very possible in the future. I shall look into it. Lots of Last of Us there 2 videos have. to check out. There's like a thousand, and we're just picking ones that uh, work the best, I suppose, because... A lot of people want lots of different ones covered. You know how it be. Um, after apparently, watching, go ahead. No, no, no. no. I, I was just gonna say. Uh, apparently, some people are not understanding the context behind my latest super chat. Oh, do they not know the meme? <laughs> I don't think that they, do you want to explain? Meme, that's so just, funny. just in case they haven't seen your playthrough. So during my playthrough, I guess someone was very upset that um, I was shitting on the game. Which, by the way, it doesn't need to be loved by everyone or hated by everyone for me to fucking choose one of those two. I am very honest about my reactions to media. I really don't mind going against or with the grain. I thought that would be obvious by now, but apparently not. And someone was very upset with me for having shat on the game and said, I have lost all respect for you, Muller. How embarrassing. God. Choosing between to be blinded by hate. I have never thought of you more of an idiot than right now. Your critiques are poor. <laughs> <laughs> the ending, it's so great. Your critiques are poor. You're like, whoa, <laughs> calm the fuck down. Hold okay. on a minute. <laughs> Chillax. Your critiques are poor. <laughs> and you like, <laughs> you like took time to just like, you pause the game and you just read it out on stream and then everyone <laughs> started copying and pasting it. <laughs> 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 the ending makes it. Your critiques are poor. <laughs> no. Oh my good lord, Idriel. Look what she just did to that ladder. She's uh, She's got some rage in her. I'm going to say that much. Oh, balls. Uh, slow the attack rate of the ladder. Do it. <laughs> did 10,000 damage. What the fuck? I'm gonna do blue, I'll be right back. After I... watching reviews and gameplay of The Last of Us 2, I can say with certainty that Bible Man is a more honest and less emotionally manipulative form of entertainment, even though it's trying to blatantly coerce children into Christianity. As yes. someone who grew up on Bible Man, I, I know, it's, uh, it's a totally Chris Stuckman thing to say. I 100% <laughs> agree. Um... But yeah, I, uh, I'm on board with the uh, Bible Man teaching you about values as you grow up. I think that's great. Shit, dude. I think Bible Man would be prime EFAP movies material. Oh, it's... Uh, I think Rags really wants to check out Bible Man. <sighs> Please do it. it it's Bible actually not, not even EFAP movies. Like, EFAP mini. Like, it should just be a series. EFAP reacts to Bible Man. I see no reason why we can't. It'll be wonderful, I'm sure. Yeah, like when Batwoman is on is on break, is on hiatus. You guys need to check out Bible Man. 
I just realized you could infinitely farm these lads too, because you just don't attack the ladders and you'll just keep getting enemies. What are you what are you doing, game? I guess the the deterrent is people not wanting to spend this much time doing it. Be like, nah, it's boring. Cleaving wound, I guess. On you. Hmm. Um, at Nuremberg, Joel claimed was just following orders. Mate, he was the orders. It was all Joel. He can't escape judgment. Oh, oh, oh. What? Having an old mentor character that we know from the last game? Screw that. Kill him. There's a lot of that lately. Humiliate the older, older heroes. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what's going on there. Bit of a weird man. Because I like old people. They're cool. They have knowledge. The glowing reviews about a depressing zombie game during a pandemic shows how detached from reality and unrelatable game journalists are in contrast to everyone else. Greetings, Mola. And bonjour, rags. Um, only a couple of the reviews I've seen actually mention the fact that it's fucking COVID times in relation to the game. You'd think more of them would. It's like, damn, what a coinky dinkle. I think that, like, yeah, so some of the backlash has gotten more intense because of the fact that people probably wanted something that wasn't this miserable to play through during <laughs> yeah. this time. Um, and then also releasing it on Father's Day weekend was uh, an extra kick in the nuts for some people. Hmm. So, it's like, I, you know, no bullshit made a, uh, a video saying that Naughty Dog tried ruining Father's Day, and I don't think that this was an intentional thing that they did. It's just, it's unfortunate timing. Well, because so, Mother's and Father's Day are different for each uh, country, right? Everyone... Um, June 19th was Father's Day weekend, so I don't know what it was for, uh, for you guys over in Wales. Hmm. Uh, but I mean, if they if they were gunning for the American one, that's how they would have done it. It's just, yeah, I, I don't know. That seems like a weird thing for them to want to do, isn't it? It's like, fuck Father's Day. They're like, oh, okay. Well, I, I don't think that was intentional. I, I mm -hmm. think, like, I'm not sure if they chose that specifically. Because the thing was that it was supposed to originally release in February, and then it was supposed to release in May, and then it got delayed, and then the leaks happened because a fucking hero found the, the 90 minutes of footage to leak to the internet, and saved a lot of people their time and money, and then forced Naughty Dog's hand to uh, release the game earlier than they than they had intended. So, um, I don't buy the whole, oh, they were trying to ruin Father's Day, but it's just unfortunate timing. That's all. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. ladder. Uh, the Last of Us 2 is the TLJ of video games. Agreed. The real The Last of Us 2, Joel fights the Dawn. If it was the real Last of Us 2, those two wouldn't be fighting. They would Joel, be Dawn, the fuck and up. Pat Geralt would be forming a fellowship. To defeat Abby. She hasn't even done anything in the story yet, but they have to defeat her. She has to be stopped. At all costs. Oh man, I'm running out of Lembus. That, that feels bad, man. Greater action points? Oh gosh, there we go, let's do that. A 56 of those things. Holy schmizzles. Uh, can we now say that the phrase subverted expectations now means we intentionally made it suck? I mean, most of the time that seems to be how they're using it. They're like, hopefully nobody notices how shit this is. That's the attitude. Which is a shame. Oh. Subverting expectations seems to be just a fancy way of saying it's anticlimactic. It used to mean something way better. That's what I'll say. The vision should make sense, whether or not you want it to. Ooh. This is probably Cosmo Variety Hour's worst video. He is such a smug idiot in this video. This review feels like an angry conversation with someone off screen than an actual review. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know why he was addressing arguments that like no one gives a fuck about. Why? It was a weird man, for sure. So fucking those ladders. Oh, yeah. Uh, Last of Us 1 did not have a happy ending. It was bittersweet with a hopeful undertone, which is uh, why it was so thought-provoking. I mean, yeah, I'd agree I with that. I think... Um, happy that they're together. 
that you know they can go and do stuff they have each other their relationship can continue to develop um certainly very hopeful i think of course the plot line coming to that kind of a close is like oof well that's the way it goes i suppose and that in this world it's rough lots of lots of eviltisms and bad schloops but what kind of good good shit can we carve out of it right that's that's the that's the nice yeah. way of looking at it yeah you, you can't blame us we have to we have to adhere to the rules of the world that we arbitrarily made so yeah but you know we can still have abby survive getting smacked in the head with a hammer we can still have yeah, tommy still be... living from a, a fucking getting shot in the face Look at... Why? Why, why, why? Oh, she didn't miss Ugh. much. Good. Hi, Rags. Hello. I'm planning on upgrading my PC, including the CPU. Do you have any general advice in choosing the right CPU? No, not really. I'm not a big tech guy, especially when it comes to CPU stuff. Um, I think it would be better for you to take a look at some reviews in relation to what you're trying to use it for, be it video editing or for gaming purposes, to see what people, you know, look up a lot of, you know, the resources online. But I think you'd be better doing that than having me recommend something to you. Because um, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a tech guy. Uh, you could probably get better advice from others. Um, I recommend Gamers Nexus, Gamer Nexus, mm. uh, Line It's Tech Tips, and all the other kinds of forums online talking about, you know, it, talking about, you know, the, get get a list in your head, I suppose, of good ones that you'd want to choose from. You can find a list of the best ones or the most budget-friendly ones, and then look up the individual reviews for those. Oh, is that a point of contention? Tommy's gunshot. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, it, yeah, I think it's kind of uh, weird that they would show him. So, the reason that I'll tell you why they did it. The reason that they showed Tommy getting shot in the back of the head is so that in that moment, they could have the shock of a character dying. They wanted the emotional resonance of that happening without committing to it. Like, we care. See, in my playthrough, when I saw it happen, I was like, Tommy's dead. Well, fuck. Like,. Cool, you killed another one. That was my reaction. If I was invested, I could have felt like, Oh my god, like, no, favorite, oh, oh, this is horrifying, I'm so engaged now to defeat... Funnily enough, to defeat Abby, when in that moment you play as Abby trying to kill Ellie, so again, just fucking... Oh. However, he's not dead. He's okay. <laughs> and, and you might think to yourself, well, as long as it's not impossible to die, for, for to live from a gunshot to the head, it's okay. I would I would question that logic quite significantly, but yeah. um, the likelihood they is not would, only they just strained. Pay off without committing. Yeah, the likelihood is not only strained quite significantly from the act alone of surviving a gunshot to the back of your skull, but uh, it's stretched and stressed to the point of ridiculousness um, when you have to consider that a wounded and broken two girls have to carry a guy with a gunshot wound in the back of his head to somewhere where he can get medical attention, who knows where, when both of them are pretty much going to die at this point as well. Like, I don't even know how he wouldn't have bled out by the time they got back to his fucking... Let's put it this way. How, get... far, did, how far back did they have to get him? He's unconscious too, obviously. <laughs> so... They got a, yeah, because they, they fell through the fucking floor at one point, didn't they, in the fight? God, that game is so oh, yeah. bad. That's the thing. They the, they just fall through the floor. So, yeah, Abby uh, just fucking hulks out and... Ugh, so for uh, reference, it is a major point of contention. He's saying that he, that he wasn't shot in the back of the head. And I'll show the screenshot here from the exact moment. I mean... That was oh, like, okay. Are we wait? Are we supposed to believe it grazed his head? That bullet hole in his brain. Yeah, it seems pretty cut and dry. Just pull it up on screen. Uh, yeah. Hang on. It's almost like which incredible piece of luck do you prefer? 
<laughs> this fucking game, man. That's and blown out the front of his skull. Eugene dies by getting shot in the cheek, which is way more survivable than this. Like, look at that. And that blood splash as well. Look at where it, look at how his head is oriented in relation to the gun. Which is like, okay, so the, the reason why it's not fully lined up is because of recoil, you know, but... Man, yeah, that that's bullet fine. going into his brain. Poor Tommy. But used throughout the whole game. I'm if he sure. was shot there, it, wouldn't, it shouldn't kill him instantly. Well, he's gonna bleed out. Yeah, like yeah, uh, assuming that doesn't kill him instantly, which I imagine it would. Even if it doesn't kill him instantly, like he is yeah, fucked up. Medical attention. Well, I mean, let's not ignore uh, yeah. the arrow through the leg. Th there's a lot of ways to bleed the fuck out. <laughs> the amount of blood that comes out of him from that shot is intense. Yeah, if you look at um, the shot before and after the. Uh, blood comes out. That bullet, in the, in terms of where the impact would be in the center, that's going through his head. Yeah, there's just like this line of dialogue where Tommy just goes, "Man, it's a really good thing that I got that that metal skull implant, <laughs> you know, before the outbreak occurred. It's really saved my life." <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't actually take away from the fundamental argument that it's manipulative as hell. They want you to think he's dead. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they were originally going to commit to him being dead, but then they needed a reason for Ellie to get information on Abby, and they're like, wait, let's just pretend that fucking Tommy survived, I don't know, because I don't think they actually cared about him as a character. Oh, uh, no, not at all. They didn't give a fuck. They were just like, oh, fuck, we, he can do it, I guess. As someone that already, like, lived through it, seeing your stream, and you're like, oh, so this is a dream sequence when Tommy shows up, like, oh, he doesn't know. I'm just, like, just waiting for the realization to dot on you. <laughs> as I said, I was... Expecting them to do a thing where like eventually Joel walks in they're all happy together and it would be like this is what could have been if not for evil <laughs> be Like oh man damn that evil Honestly, What would have made uh, the game better is if Joel did walk in and it turned out that that was real and everything that took place between that and uh, and Ellie and Dina fucking was just a, uh, a weed induced fever dream it would, Like instantly make the game better all those weed fumes. Yeah, hey, it was bad weed, man. Rip weed. Oh man, I defeated the ladders once again. High five. Mola, play the last five minutes of the Last of Us 1 stream from Joel rescuing Ellie. Then compare to the last cutscene from the Last of Us 2. Want to get guest reactions? Well, I mean, we all know what they are. Um, and... They're two very, very fucking different experiences, to say the least. Uh, also, can I skip that? Oh, I can skip that, sweet. It's all very surprising, shocking, endearing, the, um, the first one. The second one is more so everyone's in disbelief. Just like, this is, this is it. This is... Hmm. It's been seven years, they won't remember what really happened. It's not like you can replay the first game. No, I don't think anyone would have done that beforehand. That would be weird, right? Oh man, Fangle and Bash doesn't even fucking kill them. You're a useless tree, just FYI. Oh dude, I'm playing as fucking Gimbo. They did the monster mash. It was a Fanghorn Bash. Fanghorn? As in horny? Is that what you're saying? Nice miss, loser. Um, end Joel, or you will watch your parents turn into zombies and eat your siblings. Fixed your story, naughty dog. End Joel, or you will watch your what? parents turn into zombies and eat your siblings. I'm confused. I don't know what to make of that. Why? Mubesbury, your reaction to abs getting bent over is up there with the lobster flag. <laughs> the lobster <laughs> flag. The Isleabad flag. By the way, oh wait, BW stopping a train with her bike? And 1.2 billion. Oh, these are all times where I've lost my shit laughing, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. The other one, the, the, the one with her in that scene, that was 
scary for me, because there was an element of like, holy shit, can my stream get taken down with this? But I don't think anyone would want to take down Pepe. Or Peepo, sorry. He's a, he's a cute He's a nice lad. guy. Yeah. Shame that he had to be ruined. Experimented with, with such horrors. He saw the awfulness. I had a different uh, way to censor that scene on my stream. Oh my god. How did you get the sex tape? <laughs> I uh, had to kill a lot of people. Um, doo -doo. Ellie should have killed Joel for defending her. Ellie should have killed Joel for defending her. Fits in with her fucking attitude with the rest of this game. <laughs> Might surprised. as well have. It's like, fuck it at this point. Uh, the real end to The Last of Us 2 was when Mola jumped off the cliff as the Roidosaurus at the first Abbey section of the game. Pre-golfing incident. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people um, feel that is the actual ending. I, I think that's fair. She, she just wanders off into the wilderness. She's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do it all, my, all by myself. And she just, like, trips and falls down a cliff. Damn, dude. Gimli's damage is shit compared to Legolas. What are you trying to say, game? Elf supremacy. Yeah, it's fucked up. I think, I, I think my fucking dwarf deals more damage than him. What does that say? Oh, if he actually well, he's, hits He's the really tanky, though. He's got a lot of health. True. No, 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 no. Leeching blow. Ugh. Uh, Bioshock Infinite, let's let's play Mola. Rip it apart. I didn't, no. <laughs> Why do I gotta do that? <laughs> you do it. Please don't make me. It's not fair. Bioshock Infinite is the big gay. Last of Us 2 is a great game. It's a game that you have to endure. Straight white men don't understand enduring struggle. Fringy is white man in spirit. Slash ass. <laughs> white man in spirit. That's why he just doesn't get it. It only makes sense. It's fucking... This one Urukai, man. He's, uh... Surviving a lot thanks to fucking misses. Which makes me very angry. My favorite part about Cosmonaut is how he asserts things and then never justifies why he asserted it. True intellect Oh, it says intellectual. You ought to say intellectual analysis. He's definitely um, a favorite on EFAB, Cosmonaut. He's really bad at his job, and it makes it very funny. But also sad. Yeah, sad. You never know what he'll say next. He's probably got some great quotes now as a, as a whole. Jeez, he's gotta have some crazy ones. Remember when he hey, just said that day. Aunt May was an asshole because she found out that Peter had a hand in the death of Uncle Ben and she walked out of the room? That was insane. <laughs> it's the kind of shit where you're like, uh... I, that uh, scene was such a great scene in the film and he just shat all over it. Mm-hmm. Joel is not a beloved character. Winnie the Pooh is a beloved character. You just can't handle the truth. Because that shit is true. Oh, I when I tell him to do Durin Wrath or whatever, he fucking misses it. But when Barathor tells him to do it, he hits it. What's that about? Listening to that guy, but not me. It's kind of fucked up. Mm. Mola described the first game perfectly. Joel and Joel and Ellie are a golden nugget. A gold nugget inside a pretty decent cake. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like I agree with that, yeah. <laughs> I guess I said it. Uh, Fringy in semi-detail is Twilight Princess objectively bad. Oh, well, we have to save that one for if ever we get a, a wild Fringled. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys, any of you guys have played Twilight Princess, or I did. I didn't care for it. <clears throat> I don't know if that's b evil or not. I, I, I haven't. I don't it. know either. I just, no, I didn't care for it. It was fine. Joel killed eight Ambers and one Chris. He certainly deserved it. Eight Ambers? Good lord. And one crit. Horrifying. A sequel in another universe and new characters, but similar themes and ideas at the core can work. Persona after Eternal Punishment and Final Fantasy. This is the thing, I, I don't see why it couldn't work. 
just your narrative makes it so that you two like characters or three or one whatever get pushed out of their universe into a different one for whatever reason you can carry it on tremor ego says cosmonauts joel isn't beloved because i don't like him is basically joseph anderson's soma isn't a horror game because it's not scary <sighs> Why couldn't he just say he didn't find it scary? Why do you have to say it's not a horror game? Like, what, what, are you, what are you even trying to do? Confuse everyone? I think it might have just been big brain time. It was talk about... I don't know. Subtle talk about some genre. people. Some of these people are... They definitely are the I am enlightened by my own intelligence types. Wow. They probably say that about us, Ranks. Don't you know? Yeah, but we are actually smart. And we say smart oh. things and we can back them up. Fucking... Tearing into the concept of interlocutals with reckless abandon. I've been chopping away at this one Urukai for 10 years. He's not dying. I don't know if it's like a glitch at this point. Very healthy man. Let's try terrible rage. I don't know. It's the same fucking move. Don't lie to me, game. Um, Drinker, where in Scotland are you from? You have been out into Perth. It's the best night out in Scotland. I will die on this hill. Uh, once again, I'm afraid I'll have to just hang on to that one. Do -do -do. Oh, oh. I saw you dressed up as Santa, long man. How could you betray Halloween like this? Oh, you see, I was actually uh, undercover. I was collecting information about He was undercover Christmas. as the right opinion. I was seeing how they operate. Judging them for their disgusting habits. Seeing if, uh, is there anything really redeemable about them? I couldn't find a single thing. At least half of the game you have to explore to get a holster and a shotgun. Abby's half, she just gets them. That irritated me. Um. I thought she had to pick up holsters. Like, Well, I think they're well, I think argue you have to find it off the beaten path as Ellie, while Abby is, like, given to you. Easier to get. I don't think players... Players don't like working to get the same upgrades again that they already had. Yeah, that's another thing that definitely hurts the game. Getting reset on your resources entirely is like, oh, okay. That's not cool, game. Now, this game is Dog Doo Doo. No offense to dogs. Speaking of Doo Doo, couldn't they... Couldn't be here sooner because I had to dig up and fix my mum's septic tank. But take my money and watch Waterloo. Wow. You guys watched Waterloo recently, right? Or, or something? I've, I've seen you talking about it. Big nerds. Or not. Uh, yeah. me? No, I haven't <laughs> no, the, the other The other two freaks in this call, but fine. You know, fine I, you know. I have heard of that Waterloo. I, th I, I think uh, Gettysburg, that's the one that we've seen. Oh, okay. I mixed them up. Uh, you Dumbos have time to talk about a game that you didn't really care about three weeks ago, but can't spare a couple of hours to see Hardcore Henry? Shame. Nope. Oh, I always cared about The Last of Us too. I just, uh, it had to wait. Could you imagine if I'd played it on release and then I was like, TFA Part 3 coming after The Last of Us 2 video? Fucking people would hate me. They would sell my organs to an alien. Because they pay well. Um, are you guys familiar with the YouTuber Savage Books? He's an editor by trade and does a really good job of scene and story breakdowns. Invite for him? Uh, I don't see. I am not. not aware of him. No. Don't know the channel. No. I don't know. I've seen a couple of his videos. He's pretty good. He did a, he did a video on El Camino about flashbacks, and uh, I think he did one on the the Rise of Skywalker recently. It's, it's pretty um, good stuff. I'm betting he was very positive about the film. He adored it. <laughs> Here's a bribe to avoid watching Hardcore Henry. Oof. Ooh, boy. The plot thickens. Fighting the tide. The thought thickens. Yeah. They try and send fucking explosion dudes at me, and you blow them up in their places, and for some reason, they don't affect the people they're standing next to. What's that about? Wow, oh, I blow this up and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, my turn, my turn. Why does Gimli's damage suck? Look, I get it, he's tanky, but he's also super slow and has low reach. It's not fair to take his damage away. I'm upset on his behalf. Um, boom, 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 boom. Hi, Rags and Mola. Hello. Hello. Forgot to tell you last stream, after Third Age you should play Fellowship of the Ring. Pretty sure it's on GameCube. It is? 
Hmm. I never knew about it on uh, on GameCube, but I think we're probably done with the Lord of the Rings arc at that point, at least with the games I'm playing. <laughs> uh, who knows if we'll cover more videos about Lord of the Rings. Roidosaurus shoots Jesse in the face. Ellie, it must have been the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, the highlight of your uh, playthrough, Mauler, was that fucking Yara just shooting a million bullets at that one Seraphite. Oh yeah, that's that's easily my favorite moment, I would say. That shit was wonderful. And the fact that it happened so soon after the animation fuck up with the girl who like glitches into the wall before I can do the melee kill on her. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and then it being like capped off with the guy is like facing towards you, and then when you actually kill him he's facing away. <laughs> yeah, that's another one that a lot of people don't even notice. It's like, oh god. <laughs> it's a proper pile up that whole bit. And it's wonderful. <laughs> I think what, what really uh, clinches it for me is is you like wheezing as you're going like it's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Muller, I did a two-part response to Cosmo Variety Hours vid um, here, inspired by your DS2 video with H Bomber Guy. Thanks for being such an inspiration. No problemo. Sounds like cool. It's it's a perfect video to do something like that with, honestly. Um. I would say it's it's pretty bad, you know? And so you have plenty to work with, plenty of references, and... I imagine he's probably moved the fuck on, you know, Cosmonaut? He's probably working on whatever other stuff. I think he did a Warhammer video, right? Um, I don't know that he's invested in The Last of Us as an IP much at all. Which, again, it's fine. A lot of reviews aren't, but... Uh, I reckon his video would have been better if he were invested. But then again, he's invested in Star Wars, and look what we get with that, so... Kind of hard to call it. The accessibility options can also be useful use while making gameplay montages and machinimas. Turning off specific things that AI can do is definitely helpful in that regard. Yeah, that's probably an unforeseen benefit, I suppose. I want to make a video slash review of The Last of Us 2, describing the development time, including crunch, delays, then the leaks before finally asking if it was worth it for this art. Thoughts? Oh, well, they didn't say I want, they just said want. I assume it's saying they they want to, but, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's any videos existing that do that really well, or if you're gonna, like, collect up all the information, but, um, I think it's always gonna be worthwhile to have that video exist. Especially for, like, historical purposes, because a lot of people aren't going to remember how it was marketed, eventually. Like I said, I stayed the fuck away from it. But, um... Oh boy, did they fuck with people's expectations. Also, oh, hi, hi, hi Rags and Molesy. Hello. Ah, hey! I want to touch upon, like, the trouble development a little bit in my video, but it's not going to be... Because I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the product itself, I don't want to get lost too much in uh, the development behind the scenes drama mm -hmm. um, but it's it's worth thinking about like just the mental toll that this game took on the people who made it um, every time that they delayed it it wasn't to alleviate the stress on the developers it just meant more months of crunch to them so I mean, like they, they admitted it as uh, as much to um, Jason Schreier when he was still with Kotaku So, mm -hmm. I um I don't know about Mike. I don't think I'll be talking much. I'll probably have like a throwaway line about marketing being shit, but I'm probably gonna focus exclusively on what's in there. Except for reviews, I do like throwing in some some pokes at them because they're funny. Especially the what do we have as the quote from Cosmonaut? Something like the 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 enemies act like real people or some shit. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, marketing. I think is. Uh, going to be pretty important to how people are going to receive your game when it first comes out. Mm -hmm. I think that um, if it had been marketed like differently, uh, it probably would have stung a lot less. Um, I've I admitted this to Wolf recently. Uh, I hated The Grey when I first saw it because I saw it in the theater, and that movie was not marketed um, for how it actually was. They they're like this is an like an action adventure movie where 
where Liam Neeson is going to punch wolves in the face. It's not what you get when you go see the gray. Mm -hmm. But when you rewatch it, knowing that that's what you're going to get, then pretty fantastic movie. Yeah, I'd say so. Great, good shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, has the 1.2 billion song been played on EFAP yet? Yes. I yeah, it was don't know great. which episode exactly, but uh, I believe we played it on MemeFap number four as well. So, what was it three? I think it was the end of three. MemeFap three. Um, but yeah, 1.2 billion song is awesome. Billion. Uh, some safes are in areas full of enemies. I'd say it's way better to have the player open the safe or fail depending on their own speed rather than waiting for an animation. Speed of opening it? So like speed of finding the codes and putting them in or speed of listening and, and acting on the, the clicks? I'm not sure. I'm not certain. Hmm. Alien Isolation did codes and combos really well. I mean, most stuff does it pretty well. I was just really surprised that you can basically brute force through all of the, the safes without actually having to look at anything. And again, I think I'd be okay with that if it took a hell of a lot longer, but my good golly gosh wow, it does not take long. In fact, you can kind of speedrun it. By scanning through, sort of thing. I thought the safe mechanics were better in the first, because when Joel finds the code to the safe, he doesn't need to look it up again, he just has it in his mind. It's weird. I think this system worked way better in the first one, to be honest with you. And it's surprising that um, they changed it, and I think now it's made it a little uh, more exploitable. In multiple ways, as we said earlier. The um, if you So, it's not necessarily a game's fault if you look up the ways to beat it online, because a lot of games can suffer in that way, but there are easy ways to subvert that possibility as a developer. And I just feel like that's that's an easy way to get around what you know that a lot of people will do. Yeah. Uh, you gotta check out Girlfriend Review's Garbo videos on this game. Neil himself commended them on Twitter. Speaks volumes. Ooh. That's like the third time someone's talked about this Girlfriend Reviews one. I shall have to have a look, say. Full Metal Alchemist handles a storyline about the cycle of violence and revenge far better than this game. They never had Scar save a zebra. True. Scar was awesome. This is the thing. Um, once again, by the way, adding that on the pile of about a thousand other pieces of media that have been compared. Uh, they didn't do well in terms of standing on the shoulders of giants, did they, as a piece of media? Not here, not the last of it, certainly. It's kind of something I think is worth being like, guys, what the fuck? Mm, so really much to work with. The legacy. I remember having much more positive feelings about The Last of Us, the, the first game before the second game came out. It really goes to tell you, like, maybe, maybe not everything needs a sequel. Maybe making a sequel might actually make things worse. Maybe we should Maybe just, just let it be good. Yeah. But they said no. Billion. Uh, where are we? Doo -doo. Dear Mola, great collab with Critical Drinker on the proper Star Wars film. I must say, the Sundere would uh, start would have made a great series. Sun. How, how does that word said? Sundere. Sun. Sunde. T S U N D E R E. I'm assuming one of you three know. Sun Sundere. I see it a lot, but I never have heard I it. I think pronounced. it's Sundere. That's a weeb word, is it not? It's one of them weeb words. I know that. Yeah. Like you can feel the disgust as you say it. Sundere. Soon diary. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was good shit. Uh, I've always had a problem with The Last of Us 2, where I had my crosshair over an enemy's head and I magically missed somehow. That stuff pissed me off to no end. I can yep. imagine. Happened to me a couple times. This one says, We didn't start the fire. Joel did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes. 
Arambe tried to tell us Joe calls Joel caused nine. Uh, well, I was gonna say nine eleven automatically, but it's coronavirus. But I'm pretty sure it was both. So. Hooray. He's been getting around. That missile is targeted to the giant's current position. Where's the giant, Mubshley? What is that talking about? Oh, uh, that's Iron Giant. Where's the giant, Mansley? Ah, oh, right. Uh, you're a new giant. Too. Wait, what is that? Uh, is that the reference? I haven't seen uh, Iron Giant in so long now. That's someone I actually that, want to rewatch. That's that sounds like a you problem, my friend. I didn't say it wasn't. So what's with the contradictory tone, you massive? Mm. No, I just you know having having to hear that you haven't watched the Iron Giant recently. It, it just I feel disappointed in you. That's all. I know we're all supposed to watch it once per day. I know I haven't held <laughs> up that, but I will get around to it. Look, it's it's one of those anime movies that has to be like rewatched every now and then, like Emperor's New Groove. Shit's Kino. <laughs> I just uh, these fifteen-hour streams with less funny dudes just makes this feel like watching the new Star Wars sequel trilogy. Damn. Fifteen-hour streams with less funny dudes. <laughs> I'm is the is the contention there that they used to be shorter with funnier dudes? I guess so. Yeah. I, know, obviously, I mean, I just think it's you're at the eighth hour of a stream. I'm fucking worn out. Yeah. Uh, also, I know that Rags and I replaced the other hosts halfway through EFAP's length, and uh, oh yeah, we not... we weren't here from the beginning. We we all we, we all we hear about is you know the old crew. They were um, so great. Far far more entertaining. I know. Big shoes to fill. We're getting there. All right. One day. Um, but yes, the Iron Giant is awesome. Playing the Mass Effect games for the first time, and they're really bad with expiring side missions by story progression without warning. They're really bad at what? Really bad with expiring side missions by story progression without warning. Um. Let's see. Because I haven't played them, so I wouldn't know. I guess, yeah, it, they're they're definitely designed to be done each, like Novaria, and um, all the, like the all the places you're supposed to do each one, and all the missions contained within, kind of in one thing. You're not supposed to go back to them. Um, I guess the first Mass Effect was, well, no, even in the second, that's the thing. There's side little side things to do during each mission. Um, I. I guess you could say that, yeah, sure, to some degree. Yeah, I could see what you mean. Hmm. Um, something Valve did in their games was they used lights to show where to go. Yeah, that was relatively common with them. There's a lot of little tricks a lot of people used. Remember the Mirror's Edge one, where it was like, it was like a yellow strip or a red strip was always applied to sort of where you needed to go. Everything that you needed to interact with and move forward with was red. Lots of different ways developers try and show where the fuck you need to go. It's wonderful in its own way. My favorite kinds of barriers in games is the staircase that has a bunch of crap stuffed in the top or the bottom of it. Yeah, that happens a lot in this game, and a lot in The Last of Us actually 1 and 2, where staircases will just be broken or they'll have a whole bunch of stuff stacked in it. And yeah. it's like, I could pull all this stuff away and go upstairs, right? And it's like, no. No, you can't. Yeah, it's good. When it comes to, like, two buildings, basically, make it so that, like, you explain why they don't go up every single flight of stairs, so it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I could buy barricades to a degree, but, like, it does get a little repetitive. Now, the AI isn't retarded. The difficulty is, Mola should have tried the hardest one. Oh, yeah, I did uh, read that one out before. Like I said, I don't think it's any excuse that you say that all your difficulty settings have retarded difficulty except for the highest one. You'd just be like, what? I wouldn't even yeah. be... You couldn't be a smart AI while an, being an easy AI to deal with. Like, it's not that retarded is, is what they make them when they want them to be, um, you know, defeated easily. Like, losing me in a few seconds when I'm behind something they clearly saw me walk behind. That's just a mechanical function of the, the AI that they don't have the tools to make understand you better, I guess. 
Someone said, in Mass Effect 1, side missions send you to empty planets where there's nothing else. No, that's wrong. Uh, I liked the side missions in Mass Effect 1. I know a lot of people didn't, but you certainly got rewarded for doing them, especially the outposts with, um, like, pirates and stuff. They could have some really good gear that you pirates? could get for your characters. And, of course, there was, you know, XP that you get from doing all that stuff. Um, but yeah, you got you get some really good stuff from doing the side missions and stuff. I didn't like the I didn't like the planet scanning in Mass Effect Two. I was like, oh, this is boring. This is just like a little mini game that isn't really gameplay. It's not interesting. I was uh, not a fan of Mass Effect Two scanning. I thought they dumbed down a mechanic from Mass Effect One because Mass Effect One, I mean, it was you driving a the space truck around on a planet on these big environments going from going from marker to marker and i feel like it would have been better for them to improve upon that instead of just delete it and remove it and just make it a, a follow the bleeping beep uh mini game in mass effect 2 mm. yeah i get why and, and i do get why people say mass effect 1 was tedious to a degree I would agree. Um, it is my favorite of the three, though. Um, I think it's got a lot of really nifty world building and character to it. They did a lot to try and explain the scale of things. Um, I think it had a great kind of aesthetic to it. I've got a lot of fond memories of playing that game, and I've played it many times. I've probably played and beat that game at least at least three or four times. Like, I really like Mass Effect. Played it a shit. I really like it. Which uh, which one did you say? Mass Effect 1. That's your favorite one? Yes. Yeah, because I think I, I'm so out of the loop on Mass Effect, but is 2 the crowd favorite? I think most people would say 2 is the best. I would say that 2 is probably my least favorite. But this is, like, we're kind of comparing Lord of the Rings films in a way. Mm -hmm. So I think the gameplay in 3 is really good. The ending is what really ruined it for a lot of people. Um, me too. It really spoils it. But I think gameplay-wise, 3 is, I guess, the most modern and solid. But I really like the RPG-ness of the first game. Um, it wasn't nearly as hand-holdy. It was sprawling, dare I say. It felt more like an adventure in that sense. Um, and it's, but they're all good. They're all really good. I think it's just sort of what do you value the most and what did you like the most about each one? Like I'd happily play all of them over again if someone like, even though I don't, I don't personally like two the most. I'd still gladly play it. It's still oh. a great game. For reference, I'm assuming you're not even considering Andromeda. Oh yeah, that's right. Andromeda exists. Yeah, we're not. I'm not counting Andromeda. I played it like an <laughs> hour and I was done. I was like, yeah, this is shit. Fuck it. So, so three is piss poor throughout. No, not at all. There's some great character stuff in three. In the gameplay itself, in terms of like combat and stuff you could do, is really fun. Like playing an adept in the um, in the third game is super fucking fun. I think it works really well. Hmm. The problem is that Mass Effect 3 had some really shitty pacing, especially early on. Um, they made some really odd decisions in terms of it takes you so long to like get to the normal game aspect part of it. Um, but the idea that 3 is bad is just... just I just... I definitely don't think that you could justify saying that 3 is a bad game. There's a fucking Urukai with a big magical staff and he fired greed sludge at me and it killed me. <laughs> Just... I want that to be in the movies. It's called Uruk Poison. Uh, in Sniper Elite there was also a mechanic where a ghost-like image of you appears where the enemy thinks you are. Huh. In what now? In Sniper what game? Elite. So, where the AI currently believes that you are, a, a, an image of that would project on, I guess, wherever they 
think you are for you to see. And I don't know how that would work out in terms of making things a little too easy for you or not, but interesting. Well, I mean, that was in, like I was saying earlier, in the stream we were talking about the game, is uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. That was a thing where whenever you, when the enemies saw you, your last known location was like a little ghost outline. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would, that the enemies would treat that as that's where you were. And so you could run away from it and you could always see that's the point where they, I am. And until they went up and actually investigated it, that would remain the last known position. Well, I'll be. I should do company might. That was a major mistake not to have done already. You can just walk for a while and they'll lose you. Mechanically, as an idea, it's okay, but kind of simplistic. It's supposed to make you keep moving, but it's mostly annoying. I think it's... Just, unless they're talking about another game, in The Last of Us 2 they make it way too fucking easy to lose the enemies. Yeah, I know, I remember watching you and I'm like, oh, did they just give up? They just lose you? I was That's like, what I mean. Oh, okay. And it just encourages right, trolly play. Like, why would I be careful when I can enjoy being an idiot and then being fine? So those bomb Urukai are just pretty weak, huh? No armor, I guess. Oh god, he's detonating. Don't do it. Oh no, hard hard. Wow, 4,000 damage. Not bad. Uh, it's a shame that the bar for stealth in games has been lowered to just crouching and basically becoming invisible. Certainly behind certain objects in The Last of Us 2 where you can tell that they should be able to see you and they just don't and you're like, oh well. Bit, bit, bit weird. You can lead the dogs away by walking into an empty uh, while it follows you, and then running back around through elsewhere. Empty, oh, that empty thing room? swings oh. the axe behind him then hits. I was like, that looks so silly. <laughs> yeah. Rags is building momentum, what do you mean? Now yeah, clearly, yeah. He just Michael Jordan's it. It makes sense, and anyone who says it doesn't is evil. It's that old dwarf technique. They call it Dwarven Flump. You can miss again, Hadhod, really? You're gonna die, buddy. It's gonna happen. Oh no, down goes Berathor. Hopefully I applied a resurrection to him. I did. Mm -hmm. I feel like the dog should have just had a rough estimate of where you are, not know exactly where you are. Um, well, oh. treat it as a... I mean, I think they should just treat it as a, they slowly but surely walk towards you so it it's just it puts a little bit of pressure on you to keep moving um, this place it's yeah it's just it says you can't just camp in this one spot here eventually a dog will get you but you have plenty of time to move but you have to eventually move unfortunately they do a dog has your scent you're fucked now and it's like it starts running toward you and you're like uh, uh, and then it does the, the cutscene thing we have to tap the button not all the time, but I just I don't think we should be celebrating the fact that they did dogs. Dogs are often the same way in all games. It's rare that they do them any justice. They just run up to you and go, bark, bark. Also, they have no idea how to deal with you and you have a hostage. Do you ever get to test that, uh, Southpaw? Uh, test what? Having a hostage while there's a dog that wants to kill you. Oh. The dogs just awkwardly look at you. They're like, um, hmm. Okay. I that happened to me when I was, when I was playing. But um, I also really have the uh, the ingenuity to throw a bomb at enemies while I was invisible when prone, which was fucking hilarious to see. Are you referring to me? <laughs> yeah, you were like doing the invisible while prone, and you threw a bomb at enemies, and they just didn't even react to it. Oh man, that annoyed me so fucking much. What the hell? <laughs> it's like, it's, okay, I guess that's just how that works. Like, uh, and that was more than once that stun bombs were not working. Uh, I love the fact that you like you place like a like a, a trap mine bomb, and then you somehow like hurt yourself. It's like, yeah, only well, Muller would fucking hurt himself <laughs> while doing invisible while prone. They uh, they activate really like. When they're really close by to the enemies, uh, really, well, no, sorry, close by, not, like, I put one three meters away, and it, like, it places, and then it blows up straight away, and I was like, oh, shit, that's, that's in range, I guess, okay. Yeah. They were just shorter range than I thought, or 
longer range, I guess. Mm. When I play through that game again, I will actually go through that section without doing the invisible wooden prone because I've heard that that is a pretty fun section to go through. But man, when when I was going through it my first time, I was done. By that point, I was just fed up. I'm like, I, I want to get through this as quickly as possible. Uh, the dogs can smell the gay on Ellie. Oh my god. That's offensive, I think. Uh, so who's got auto-resurrect on right now? Just Gimli and me. Hmm. I'm going to spend all my Idril turns just casting it, I guess. Bringy, say the line. You know he wouldn't if you were here right now, when you ask him to. That's just, he gets offended. No. Poor man. He is no <laughs> circus clown. How dare you assume so. I loved how he reacted to my rating of Last of Us 2. He's like, that's a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear you guys break down The Last of Us 2 versus Days Gone and compare mainstream media reviews. Um, yeah, I never played Days Gone. What's, what's the consensus on that? If there is one. I don't, I've got no idea. Hmm. Not familiar at all with that game and its reception. I have heard good things about it. So what's where you cover Troy Baker's own defense regarding Joel and the game? Is there like a video for that? So, yes, he says that there is uh, basically no difference between Joel and David. So when people say stuff like that, I really do question what the fuck they've been doing this whole time. I'm like, who are you? That's like the guy who plays Joel. Like, what the f <laughs> Seems like a weird take. Being completely honest, bit of a weird take. But uh, yeah, maybe. Um, is there just the one for that, or does he do it in a couple of different ways? Uh, I think. I don't know. I've seen the one soundbite. Um, so I don't. So I don't. Podcast. So you know, he could have said any number of things as well. There's apparently been some interview that he did with Druckmann on his podcast where there's been a lot of stuff that they've said that have uh, <laughs> pissed people off, which does not surprise me. It would be so awkward if you made like a, an artwork and you'd been isolated from how the fans feel about it for a while, and then you come up with all of your takes on what it is, and like thousands of people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh dear, I thought what I said made sense, fuck. Uh, Muller, I noticed you hummed the Smash Bros. theme while playing The Last of Us 2. Played Ultimate yet? Uh, that's the one on Switch? If it is the one on Switch, then yes. I always get mixed up with exactly which ones are named what, but, um... Yeah, it, it's no surprise that, uh, Melee is embedded into my fucking brain, because of the, the GameCube... I'm pretty sure that's the most played game on GameCube I had, outside of... Uh, no, that's probably it. I, I don't think any game I played longer than that one. I can't see what would compete. Maybe Mario Kart Double Dash, because of friends and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it came into my head, because I was just... You know how when you play The Last of Us 2, you often think about good games? Do you, do you know that experience, mm. anybody? Yeah. Oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. So you're just like, do 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 Instead of, you know, just watching someone else in, in the AI get confused, or a... <sighs> It's funny because the AI in Melee was funny as hell when it was, um, it killed itself and stuff. That was a game that, um, had crazy levels of effort put into it and into the days it was, uh, prior to release. People not sleeping at all to get that shit done. Mm -hmm. If Dunning Kruger and Cognitive Dissonance had a kid with a Jerry Curl, it'd probably be Cosmo. How can concepts such as those have children? That seems ridiculous. No. If so, then buy it. When do I get to play as Arathorn? Is Cosmonaut the plot sniper and Batwoman? Who are his targets? Like, um, Lost of Us 2 and stuff, I guess? <laughs> smart people? He saw a potentially good scene happening and he had to stop it. Ah. Uh. 
Uh, Dinka voice Scottish Pokemon memes, please. <laughs> Drinker, they want you to voice Scottish Pokemon memes, I guess. Do it. Do it! Mm -hmm. From most of the reviews I've seen of The Last of Us 2, it's really brought up how Sarah's death and connection to the story has now been rendered meaningless. So, I think we read that on a Super Chat catch-up. I'm not entirely sure of the argument there. Why is Sarah's death meaningless? I guess they're trying to, like, okay, if I were to make this argument, what I would probably be trying to use it for is the fact that they destroyed Joel and Ellie's relationship, that Sarah's death kind of acts as, like, the beginning of Joel's arc that allows her to, like, sort of break him down and make him warm up to her. That's the best I can come up with. Hmm. I don't know if that's that person's position. Because, yeah, I mean, all of The Last of Us 1 still happened, you know? Even yeah. with The Last of Us 2. As much as you could be like, yeah, but it destroyed their relationship as a result. I'd be like, oh, they still got to have it at some point. But, um, yeah, maybe there's more to that um, than I realize, argument-wise, I'm not sure. In the Let's Play, you said it would be better for the AI to carry their buds away rather than shooting. Uh, Far Cry 2 did this in 2008. I actually uh, was made aware of that by someone else. I looked into a video of it happening, and they can get healed and stuff. And this is what I mean by like a tier above, where you actually like have meaningful things happen in the game in relation to this, instead of, and I've said it before, but I'll say it again, paying lip service to the idea of mechanical depth. Or even narrative depth, I don't know, just... Would you call you wouldn't call it mechanical if they call out each other's names or or would you? Um it doesn't sound like it's a mechanic because there's nothing you could do with it. Like it's nothing that you can interact with in any way. It's not it doesn't affect the player in any way that yeah. has to do with a an aspect of gameplay. You don't act any differently because of it, and you don't do anything differently because of it. Um it's almost like just a sound effect mm -hmm. in, in the sense that like the sound of um, I don't know um, a good, I guess that example would be ambient background noise isn't a mechanic yeah footsteps would be you know that affects the way you play and informs you about things that relate to how you strategize and you know actually do stuff but hearing Amber, no, that doesn't do anything. That's not a mechanic. In fairness, though, it did make you feel for Amber, right? Oh, um, I can't, I can't say that it did. <gasps> I started laughing when I was hearing it later. It, the time went on, I started being like, ah, no, I think the, the double Chris was definitely my breaking point. I was like, this is fucking double ludicrous. Chris. Chris won. Oh, not Chris two. Uh... Chris. What? <laughs> um, hello, Massives. I finally played the ending of Batman Arkham Knight yesterday. If any of you have played it, can we talk about how uh, fucking awful the Nightfall ending is? I remembered it being pretty bad. Yeah. I never played it. Well, me neither. <laughs> Wait, Nightfall? Well, it says Nightfall ending. I guess it's got multiple endings? Or the ending of a DLC called Nightfall? I don't know. I read a book uh, called Nightfall. Um, Talk about that. It's uh, written by Isaac Asimov. There you go. Really good. I really liked it. About a race of people who lived on a planet where there was always light. The suns were in a way the... It was always it was always daylight and they that's how they adapted it's how their whole species was built it was never there was never a night oh, um yeah. however every once every x thousands of years there would be a day where the suns would line up in a way where there would be no sunlight um and then everyone goes fucking crazy and society collapses because people aren't they can't handle the darkness and everyone kind of goes nuts mm. um so it's really good, really, really nifty characters in there and how they deal with it, what happens afterwards. I like it a lot. Would highly 
recommend. It was written by Isaac Asimov and Robert Silverberg. So is it proof that that one idiom is correct, that hope is like the sun? No. <laughs> also read Hammer of God by Arthur C. Clarke. Very good. Why, is, why can't it just be a cool hammer? Why does a god have to have made it? Hmm? Implying that human hammers are no good. I, I hate this elitism. All forms of tism, really. Oh! Look at this! Now we're in, in, in Helm's Deep. Well, it's... I don't even know what's happening anymore. I think we're winning. Um... When I learned Wilford Brimley Eternal Past, it said, Wilford! That makes sense. Rather upsetting, don't you think? But, uh, he, as, as people have been saying, ascended the ultimate subtitle. Rag ruined Grandma and Wilford Brimley. Oh my goodness, Grandma I didn't ruin Wilfred Brimley. Don't pin that on me, that was Joel. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's kinda of fucked up. Rags ruins grandmas, not grandpas. And this propaganda relating to otherwise is, is enough. Enough! Uh, Mola, what do you think about the idea that most fiction is empathy practice on some level? Well, I would argue that um, a lot of the bigger lessons in your life can easily come from consuming media because you get connected to it in a way that feels completely natural instead of barked at in terms of what you should feel. And it can make you go like, ooh, shit, I didn't think about that thing that way, instead of having someone tell you that thing that way. Stories sneak up on you like that. And so a lot of people can consider them super important for teaching lessons and learning about things like empathy. Why it's important to Consider your fellow man. All that shit. Stories are kind of awesome that way. That's why we should probably try and get them to be pretty good instead of pretty shit. What do you guys reckon? Yeah. I would say in terms of the empathy <laughs> aspect, I don't know if you could force, like, in terms of practice, it, I guess it teaches you how, why you empathize with people and what can disqualify empathy from people. Um... It, it offers you a little insight into yourself and how you think um, and you learn about and, and you could you know apply that to the real world and it's like I know what makes me empathize with people in video games and maybe there's you know some carryover into real life which there probably is to some degree I mean like you know the simplest example for you is just have a guy who's like I hate everybody who isn't the, the color that I am and then they watch a show about aliens and the aliens are hated on all the time there's a big reveal. The aliens are just like us, and they shouldn't be mean. We can, be, we can work together, and lots of characters together. And that that guy watching it could be like, hmm. You know, other colors aren't so bad after all. That's probably the most simplest fucking way to explain like how stories can affect people. And uh, yeah, it goes way further than that with all these different concepts. This is why, by the way, that themes are projected as being incredibly important because a lot of the essays would be like, this is life lesson shit. And I'm like, oh, I'm in the same boat, but your boat has loads of water in it. And I'm trying to, like, get the water out because it's fucking shitty stories and shitty messages that are all confusing. I don't understand how anyone can play The Last of Us 2 and learn what they... What, what do they learn about violence? Like, what the fuck? Tell me, like, a straight message. What do they learn about forgiveness? What do they learn about revenge? It's all very... up in the air. Uh... But then I suppose I mean, it gets into a conversation about how uh, blatant you should be with the lessons in your stories. Over it. Uh, or messaging. I mean, um, as we've said multiple times, it's like... If they just simply... If Abby had not spared Ellie's, Ellie and Tommy's lives at the beginning of the game, then there wouldn't even be a cycle of revenge. If she had just killed Dina and Ellie when she had the chance, there wouldn't be a cycle. If Ellie just killed Abby when she had the chance, there wouldn't yeah. be a cycle anymore. It's like... Don't half have it. Yeah, that's, that's the takeaway that I got from it. No witnesses. That's what you should take away from Last of Us 2. And Abby was only saved because Ellie went looking for revenge. Exactly. This is what I mean. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> Just bad, but it's because of revenge that Abby was ever rescued. Someone in chat said zebras must live. <laughs> 
And yeah, so, I don't mean to get away from the question, but empathy practice on some level. It's like, if you care about fictional characters and their plight and you understand that each of these different people can have different lives, it may help you in real life be like, wait a minute, this is a person. Oh yeah, real people have those things. Huh. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Whoa. Um, stuff in, in real life of um, stuff that we've experienced in fiction. You know? It's the spooky, spooky mirror. You know, gives, gives you a little look at yourself. And you're like, oh my god. Um, but yes, uh, we're, we're crawling toward, uh, well, nine hours and, and, and a half, and I, I am losing my ability to properly read, explain, and, 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 and better respond to things, so I think we, we're probably going to rewrap it up around now. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm tuckered out. It's past one in the morning here. I'm been, about to die. Been wonderful. I'm sorry for the the late start, uh, but you know how it is. We've only got one EFAP episode left before the dreaded, the terrifying one hundredo. If Shit, you're trying to submit EFAP 100 stuff, you're really gonna want to jump on that gas pedal. You're running out of time because uh, Rags and I got to record some EFAP 100 stuff offline because of copyism's ahead of you know EFAP 100. So get on sending and tagging me where you can. I'm sorry if I miss stuff. I will do my best to catch what I can catch. Um, in terms of new things that are happening, Wednesday will be Batwoman. And Rags and, right. I, Rags and I, we, we could do a super chat catch-up on Saturday, maybe, uh, for the rest um, of the stream. Or Saturday, Sunday. maybe. Yeah, sometime. I, I might be gone Saturday, but I guess we'll see. And if not, we can do it another day. It shall happen. As for EFAP99... I would tell you what to expect, but as I usually don't, I won't this time. <laughs> but don't don't get too crazy excited or anything, because it's just it's probably more going to be an episode of like, holy shit, we're at night to die, the hundreds on the doorstep, how terrifying. Uh, and of course, August twenty second, two p.m. BST. I'll probably put a tweet about that soon, since people are going to want to like know ahead of time, maybe. Who knows what will happen? What a wonderful stream of isms. Uh, thank you all so much. For, for coming, I guess we'll take a moment here to uh, absolutely, allow yeah. Thanks, everyone. Mister Mister Evan Monroe and Mister Southpaw to uh, talk a bit about their channels before anything is to be headed off. Who would like to go first? Uh, I can go first, I guess. Do um, it. Do I've got a channel that uh, has topical videos that are on movies, and I I usually like counter video essayists who. Make a lot of fallacious statements, just like uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour did. I uh, I made that video that I mentioned on the last EFAP I was on about uh, Cinema Sins and Cinema Wins. That was, I think I made that three weeks ago or so. So that's what that's what's on my channel in terms of new stuff. But uh, other videos are there. I, I don't know what I'll make next, but hopefully it'll be something relatively soon. So just Sweet. to clarify, you don't let people have opinions is what you do? Pretty much, and I just—it's like, it's—it's it's gotta be me. I'm like, you know, this is a correct opinion only zone. So, and uh, Mr. Southpaw, would you like to talk a bit about your channel? I'm assuming you want me to link your uh, live stream one, right? Yes. So, um, my main one, which is currently called Dreaded Southpaw, although it's normally called Blessed Southpaw, is where I'll upload my like fully edited videos and whatnot, which I'm still working on improving. Uh, I've got a Last of Us 2 video that I am hoping to have uploaded onto there by Halloween, and I'll be uh, certain to post that everywhere that I can, but the bulk of my content is being uploaded to something called Southpaw's live streams and playthroughs, um, which is going to be the home of my podcast. We've been uh, actually, we did two recent episodes um and we're kind of irregular uh a lot more irregular than efap is because of everyone's schedules um but it's very much a sister podcast to efap and i'll also be playing through uh i'll, I'll be doing like gaming streams um and yeah that's basically what i what i do um i'm not impressed with my uh current batch of content that's available on my main channel but I'm working on improving my my skills as a as a critic. So, well, 
That's already going to be a plus compared to the majority of people we cover on EFAM. So, good job. <laughs> I feel like most of them probably feel like they're doing just fine. But it turns out none of us are. Nope. Um, but yeah, thank you both for, for staying for the, yeah. the nine and a half hours. And of course, thanks most to Fringy can't. and Drinker for, for offering their insights as well. Uh, thank, thank you all for, for watching and for your very kind donations. Like I said, uh, Rags and I shall get to them, the remaining ones, probably this weekend because this took the this Thursday. You know, it's like kind of flipping them. Um, and there yeah, will be... There will be a uh, Batwoman Wednesday. We got three <laughs> remaining. They're all bangers. I'm looking forward to it. Gonna be fun Um Outside of that, is there anything else? Um, just hard to believe that we opened this up thinking that we were gonna cover two 20-minute videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this... but there's a that one was a densely packed with uh, stupidity. This is the thing. There's so much to talk about in terms of bad for the last of us two. It's a really long one. Uh. A special kind of media. It goes. It's in the trophy case, along with so many others that we've discovered on our little journey. It's been fun. Oh yeah, this one will get talked about for a long time. This will. Uh, this will not disappear. I have a feeling that this is going to be up there with like the last Jedi in regards to uh, con like media that will be covered by EFAP. You know, I feel like it's going to be one of those things where every every, every so season, often yeah. a really bad take comes up about it, and it just has to be covered. I mean, it's got it's got two podcasts exclusively on it already, and those as soon as we manage to consume it. So, who knows what shall happen in the future? Um, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out. Uh, I'm the next video I'm working on now is a Last of Us Two one. I've already got mm. loads of shit in my timeline that I'm loving in terms of edits, and um, plenty of points to make. No idea when that'll be out. It won't be out before EFAP 100. That's not fucking happening. It's just, there's no way. <laughs> it's gonna be probably pretty long, but the editing process should be a hell of a lot easier because I won't have to cut constantly, which would be nice. Well, uh, I appreciate being invited on uh, on for here tonight, and uh, I'm looking forward to whenever it is I'll be able to uh, come on again. Of course. Yeah, thanks for coming, dude. Yeah, thank you both for um, for coming. It's been it's been good shit. Last of Us Two has Absolutely. been had his ass kicked for like almost twenty hours in a row now. Good EFAP style. Uh, who knows what we'll do in the future <laughs> so that's about it thank you very much everybody and good yeah, night thanks for stopping by thanks for watching and sticking around that was a that, that's some tough parts your, yes, it did. your troopers for getting through all that <laughs> good night all good night goodbye see ya <laughs>